to an end? Freeloader, huh? I know you're napping around here somewhere. On your feet and back to work already, yeah? Hey, get up already! <sighs> mm, sorry, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> Did your head spring a leak while you were napping? Better see if you can even remember your name. Well, looks like there's hope for you yet. Back off, you sack of guts. I'm just resting up for the battle. Yeah, well, the battle's on our doorstep, so you're lucky I like you enough to wake you. You heard who we're up against, yeah? Gerald's mercenaries. Gonna be one hell of a fight if true, especially if the Ashen Demon is here. Don't like a smidge of what I've heard about that fella. Or was it a woman? Leave it to you to fumble the details. Did you even catch this Ashen Demon's name? Of course I did. It was... I... By the goddess, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, that's it. Demon or no demon, our job is to fight and win. <laughs> you sound just like the captain. I know they paid up front, but come on. Well, at least one of you has some courage. You've certainly come a long way since I plucked you from that mountain village. But this battle is about more than just victory. Gerald's team has a sterling reputation. Rumor has it they've never blundered even a single job. But once we put them to rout, we'll finally be the greatest mercenaries in all of Leicester. Enemy activity detected, Captain. Looks like we'll be fighting by moonlight. Mind you don't kill each other in the dark. Wasn't expecting a fight so soon, but I guess there's nothing for it. You ready? Well, I don't know that I... You know what? Never mind. It's gonna be fine, so long as we both watch our backs. All right, let's get down to business. We're up against Gerald's mercenaries. Let's move out! Drive them straight into their graves! Time to see what you're made of. <laughs> Guess 
that's that. I eat steak tougher than this. Hey, you! Clear out that group over there! The main force is here! We're saved! Now push! Push the enemy back! About time a foe with some teeth showed up. But they still don't stand a chance against Burling's mercenaries. Now, over. isn't this a sight? You must be the infamous Ashen Demon. I can't wait to tear you apart. This will be the end of the Ashen Demon. No one can beat the cow. like she was nothing. You can't believe I'm losing to some damn kid. Captain Burling's in trouble. I have to reach her before it's too late. There's so many of them. There's only one thing to do about that. Just when my dream was finally in sight. You monster. The captain's dead. What are we gonna do now? Stand down or die. We're gonna stand. We're gonna fight. And we're gonna avenge the captain! Why am I so scared? It's just one mic. Run! Run while you can! No! This can't be happening! of this world. I will not allow it to perish with you. This fight is over. Hey, wait! 
Why? We've achieved our goal. Your job was to stop us, and you failed. <sighs> Another time, perhaps. Hey, we're not done here! Why, why am I so tired? Not sure I would have been able to sleep at night with your <laughs> blood on my hands. Ah! Who are you? Ha! Now that is a tricky question. For the moment, why don't you call me Arval? Arval, huh? But for now, let me speak plain. You are slated to die. Right now, I'm the only thing holding your meager life together. And to be blunt, it's beginning to tire me. Um, thank you? Oh, oh my. That's the first time anyone has ever shown me gratitude. And I must say, I like it very much. Hear me well. You are a crucial piece of this world's cyclical... Yeah, uh, no, this will never do. You're far too groggy to absorb what I'm saying. For now, I needn't tell you how you'll get back on your feet. I need only convince you that you will. I don't understand. I'm already up and about. Ah, perhaps here you are, but not in reality, where it counts. <laughs> your cluelessness is actually quite charming. I think you're starting to grow on me. Still, the important thing is what you do after you wake. And what should that be? Recall, please, how the Ashen Demon bested you came within an inch of snuffing out your life. If you attempt the fight again the same way, you will reach the same conclusion. This would force me to step in once more, which would be most annoying and also rather counterproductive, if I'm honest. You don't need to worry. I won't lose next time. Although, who's to say when that time will come? Who indeed? My captain and comrades are dead. The company is finished. So there's only one thing I can do. Start over. Huh. I thought you'd be more sentimental. Did they not take you in? Care for you? Gold's the only thing that ever held us together. And death is something we're all too used to. I never knew my real parents, and I lost the mother who raised me. Partings just come easy to me, I guess. The best way to honor my fallen comrades is by training hard and growing even stronger. Then I'll crush Gerald's mercenaries, and the Ashen Demon with them. That's what I'm going to live for now. Oh, but I like your spirit! Though I expected no less from my partner in destiny. I'm sorry, what? Yes, I suppose that was a bit sudden. I should remember, take intimacy in smaller steps. The point is that I'm here to guide you, and I promise to help you find the strength to see your dreams realized. Prologue. A Chance Encounter. The continent of Fodlan, said to be protected by a goddess, has existed for uncountable ages. Now, three ruling powers control the land. 
To the south is a region held for more than a thousand years by the Adrestian Empire. To the north is the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, ruled by the royal family and its knights. And to the east, a league of nobles that bends no knee rules the Leicester Alliance. Though once consumed in war, these three powers now exist in relative harmony. Nestled between them is Garrick Mach Monastery, seat of the Church of Seros, the land's widely practiced faith and a power that helps to maintain peace across the continent. Not far from the monastery, at the northern edge of the empire, is a small village called Ramayar, and west of this place stretches a forest where a lone mercenary awaits. Hey, wake up! Ugh, how many times must we do this? Get up already! Huh? That's weird. I could have sworn I heard someone calling me. It's still dark out, though. Hello? Yes, I was calling you. Many times, I might add. Come on, I told you not to sneak up on me like that. As if I have a choice. Do you know how many times you would have died by now if not for me? I'll tell you. 22. The three times you leapt off a cliff to quote unquote get tougher saved you. Those five mad attempts to dispatch a horde of monsters by yourself saved you. And tonight, despite my repeated warnings, you took the wrong path and ended up having to sleep on a bed of leaves in the middle of the woods. All right, this was all my fault, and I'm sorry. Strange. That's exactly what I wanted to hear, yet somehow I'm the one who feels bad now. I must remember this tactic. At any rate, we all make a few mistakes along the way. And by we, I mean you. And by a few, I mean far, far more than average. Now then, with that out of the way, would you like to know why I've roused you from your mud-caked slumber? Actually, it's probably easier to show rather than tell at this point. Look over there, if you would. Hmm? Stop plowing ahead, Claude. You're going to get us lost. Lost, schmast. We've got it on Imperial authority that this is the way to the village. <sighs> True, I said there was a village, but how could anyone know where it is in the thick of these mountains? I can't even say for certain where we are in all this gloom. Okay, new plan. I'll rely on my keen senses to navigate. Lucky for you, they're sharp as an arrow. Hold, both of you. Someone's here. Another bandit, perhaps? They're mistaking you for some common backwater thief. What cheek. Well, hold on there. I'm no bandit. I'm a mercenary. Well, that makes everything better. A bandit would be far less out of place in these woods than a sellsword. What brings you here? We've no time for an interrogation. Our pursuers are closing in. I don't know who you people are or what you want, but I think introductions can wait. You clearly need every blade you can find, and my pockets have been feeling awfully light lately. What do you say? Well, since you're here, do you mind stepping in and helping us chase off these scary bandits? Don't worry about payment. You'll receive plenty of coin. If we survive, that is. There they are! Kill them all! I'll deal with things here. Watch this! Let me show you a trick for dealing with heavily defended enemies. And 
That's how it's done. Either. Don't overstep, Edelgard. Well, I suppose my turn has arrived. Watch this! I've awaited this moment. I won't allow anyone to stop me. Was you or me? Just who are these people anyway? All three of them have crests. What's wrong with you? They're just a bunch of brats. Stop embarrassing yourself and stick at your ground that. already. Is it claw time? I think it's claw time. No problem. I got it. I'm a master of strategy, but I'm not really used to being on the front lines. Be sure to tend to your wounds, Edelgard. Lord, you're hurt. Do something about those wounds. Lucky there. Oh, well, the lucky for me, over. I guess. My turn. Not so much for you. Her bandits have a firm hold on the central road. It would be wise to move through the forest and take down the strongholds as we go. Try and keep an eye on who we're fighting, and make sure we've got the right person leading the charge at the right time. Well, to unravel their defenses? Enough of this strategy nonsense! Get out there and tear them all to pieces! Okay, how many thugs does this guy have working for him anyway? It's not over. Repent, foul bandits! The Knights of Seros are here, and we'll cut you down for terrorizing our students. This battle is practically won. The Knights have arrived. Zeros! Not now! If I don't kill at least one of them, Brett, I'm finished! Watch out! You're gonna make a last-ditch effort to rush our position. This is where you die, dogs! Do you feel that power? Maybe you can channel it like you did in the other battle. You're seriously the Imperial Princess, the Crown Prince, and the heir to the Alliance? Yes, and as the three of us are now in your debt, I think formal introductions are in order. My name is Edelgard von Hressfeld, Princess of the Adrestian Empire. I am Dimitri Alexandra Blathed, Crown Prince of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. And I'm Claude von Regan. Grandson of the leader of the Leicester Alliance. Things looked grim there for a moment. Thanks to you, we put those bandits to flight. Bit of a miracle we ran into you out there, but hey, I'll take it. Oh, I'm sure the three of you could have handled the situation just fine without me. No need for false humility. 
We'd likely have perished if not for your help. Well, aren't they an unlikely trio? I wonder why those bandits were after them. Still, it's no concern of ours. We have our own plans to attend to. Now, collect your pay and be off before they get a wild idea and ask you to join them. Say, while I have you here... Do you know where I can find Ramire Village? I took a wrong turn somewhere along the way. I'm looking for a band of hardened mercenaries who follow a man named Gerald. I hear rumors that's where they're camped. Actually, Ramire might just be the village we've been looking for, too. That ring a bell, Edelgard? I don't remember hearing anything about Mercs, but... The name sounds correct, at least. Gerald's too smart to get smoked out by a bunch of rumors, but they're all I've got at the moment. In any case, we won't find our own two feet in all this dark. We should return to camp and get our bearings before... Hello there, house leaders. Hello, brave mercenary. We've mopped up what's left of those rascals, so what say we return to camp? And I insist you accompany us, good mercenary. Who, me? You heard the man. We'll wait out the night together and make for the village in the morning. It's a great plan, especially if you want to get paid, as we're a tiny bit short on pocket change at the moment. Yes, and those mercenaries you're looking for? Gerald's band, wasn't it? They may be in Ramire Village tonight, but there's no telling when they'll move on. If you come back to our camp, we have maps that may help you get one step ahead of them. This is clearly the wisest course of action, not to mention that I would enjoy conversing with you further. But of course, the choice is yours. <sighs> Why can't things ever be simple? All right, but just for the night. Perfect. Then might I borrow you for a moment after we reach camp? There's a matter we must speak about. Nothing alarming, I promise you. Right then, so off we go. But, um, if I may, did I hear you mention a Gerald earlier? Yes, do you know him? He heads up a pretty elite band of mercenaries. So I imagine his name has spread all over Fodlin by now. Mercenaries, is it? No. No, it can't be him. Can it? Well, I'll just have to meet this Gerald myself. After I've seen my duties through, of course. After all, if I don't finish my assigned tasks, I'm mission the point. Get it? Missing? Mission? Come now, this is good stuff! <laughs> That's our Aloise. Come on, let's get moving before he really gets going. My sincere apologies for asking this of you. I know you're heading for Ramire Village in order to find Gerald's mercenaries, but... Well, perhaps you might consider changing your mind and accompanying us to Garagmach Monastery instead. And why would I do that exactly? Because you've done us a great service and we don't have the means in camp to properly reward you. At the monastery, however, we can repay your kindness in full. Also, between you and me, this evening's turn of events was quite the embarrassment for the church. We allowed students of the Officers' Academy out of our sight, and house leaders of great political consequence at that. And then they crossed swords with bandits! If word got out, well, let's just say it would sit poorly with everyone. So you see why we must ensure you are well compensated. Also, there may be some papers for you to sign. Perhaps in blood. This sounds more like hush money than a reward. Yes, that's exactly what I told the fool knight who suggested it. 
Me, I'd just as soon send you on your way, but I fear I'm obligated to escort you back. Anyway, the whole thing will be much easier if you simply agree to come along. Just as a formality, of course. I think that was a threat. And here I thought he was a big softie. Well, what do you think? Garrick Mock is in the opposite direction of where we need to be. But this man seems rather set on having us accompany them. You make a poor case, Aloise. But I can see where this is heading. I'll come with you to the monastery. But I'm not staying a single minute longer than I have to. Bless you, my friend. What a noble soul you are. I'd say you saved my bacon, but that would be utterly hammy. Alois, has anyone ever told you that you're... Don't. Some truths are simply too painful to bear. While I'm no expert, I fear the poor man's heart couldn't handle the shock. Hmm? Told me what? Told you how dashing you are in that armor. <laughs> Not just any man can pull off that look. Ah, you like it? Wonderful. I admit I've received no small share of positive comments on it. There's a grand story behind every last ding and dent. Enough to keep me talking for a week. Why, take this one here. We heard you'll be joining us at Garrick Mock. Perhaps somewhat unwillingly, I might add? I know this wasn't in your plans, but if it lets us get to know each other better, perhaps it will prove worth it in the end. Unwilling or not, we've got a long road ahead, so let's try to keep the mood light. I hesitate to ask this, considering you're only here because of us, but... Well, are you sure about this decision? The last thing we want is to delay you from your own business. The knights may seem unwilling to bend, but it's not as if you have no say in the matter. Actually, I see this as just another chance to better myself. You are more gracious than I. But, as I see you've made peace with it, I will leave the matter be. Yes, yes, that's quite enough chatter. Let's save our energy for the road. To the monastery! Listen, I know this one's on me. I'm the one who roped you into coming back to camp, after all. But I'll find a way to make it up to you, I promise. Thanks, Claude. I know you will. Hey! Hurry up back there, or we'll leave you behind! You know you've had a busy day when you rub shoulders with the heirs to the Empire, the Kingdom, and the Alliance. I think they're a fascinating group of people myself, but what do you make of them? Seems like Edelgard thinks high enough of me. She's got this elegant air about her, but somehow doesn't hold any disdain for mercenaries. It feels like Dimitri's always checking in on me every chance he gets. He'll definitely make a good king. The kind who looks after his people. Claude's a laid-back kind of guy who doesn't really strike me as noble, and I mean that in a good way. Something tells me he's gonna be easy to work with. <laughs> of course you only pick up on their rosy qualities. You really are a delight. Have I told you that lately? Still, you'd better pick up the pace before you vex these people any further. Prologue. Three Houses. Deep in the forest, the mercenary meets a trio of youths, each a student at Gehrig Mach's Officers Academy and a leader of one of the school's three houses. Striking down the bandit chief who attacked the students brings undue attention to the mercenary, who soon arrives at the hallowed gates of Gehrig Mach.
And with that, may I present the mercenary I spoke of? Greetings. My name is Rhea, and I am the Archbishop of the Church of Seros. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for rescuing our students. <sighs> it was nothing. You take a job, you make sure it gets done. That's what a mercenary does. I see you do not lack for confidence. However, the reason we summoned you here was not simply to express our gratitude. We have a proposal for you. One made on behalf of the church itself. What kind of proposal? Someone told you of the officer's academy here at the monastery, yes? We would have you join this academy as a student. You what? Though you are a mercenary, I understand you are not currently beholden to any one particular employer. Also, the students you rescued are close to your own age. Your life could be greatly enriched here. Or she's heard about our power and wants to keep us on a short leash. And yet she's taking it almost as a given that we'll accept. It's infuriating. I need to get stronger if I'm gonna do what I need to. If your fancy school can really make that happen, consider me interested. The Knights of Seros, as well as many other powerful warriors, pass daily through the gates of this hallowed monastery. If strength is what you are after, we can certainly provide it in spades. They've really talked us into a corner here. I think I see where this is going. All right, I'm in. A wise decision. We will do all we can to ensure you do not regret it. I believe you will go far. If I may, permit me to tell you a bit more about the school itself. The Academy is divided into three houses and draws in the most promising young talents from every corner of Fodlan. Some are noble-born, while others spring from more humble roots. But within these walls, all are treated as equals. We ask our prospects to spend a year living under the same dormitory roof, so they can challenge each other, work hard, and grow together. Each of our houses corresponds to one of Fodlin's three regions. Edelgard leads the Black Eagle House, which is for students from the Adrestian Empire. Dimitri leads the Blue Lion House, home to students from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. And Claude leads the Golden Deer House, for students from the Leicester Alliance. We could select a house for you ourselves, but as all of this was our idea, perhaps we should leave this decision to you. You are something of a special case, after all. So I can join any house I want? Yes, you have simply to name it. So you wish to join Edelgard's Black Eagles. Are you certain? Yep, that's the one. I'm sure of it. May you build wonderful and lasting friendships in your new house. Well then, with that taken care of, it's time to decide which of us will supervise which house. Yes, it turns out we just underwent a last-minute roster change. I guess you two haven't met. This is Professor Yuritsa, our weapons instructor. Hello. Nice meeting you, uh, sir. Don't load me up with too much homework, all right? <laughs> Do my ears deceive me? Or is that curiosity I hear in your voice, Professor Yuritsa? I thought all the houses were the same to you. 
Perhaps you should be in charge of our new student's house, hmm? I don't care. You decide. Well, you'll certainly hear no objections from me. Professor Manuela, you and I can take charge of the remaining houses. What? It's decided already? I was at least expecting a fight. Maybe some hair pulling? And as for you, my mysterious new student, I look forward to getting to know you much, much better throughout the year. The gall of these people making decisions for you. It's enough to make one's head spin. Uh, right. In any case, I'm looking forward to learning from you, Professor Yuritsa. I'll inform you of our first mission soon. Sorry, what mission? Oh, did we fail to mention that? Each month, every house in the academy is given a mission entailing some form of service to the church. Well, what do you think? I believe there is a very good chance it will work. Perhaps, Lady Edelgard. But is that chance not outweighed by the danger of matters going awry? We have managed to walk the nice edge so far, but what you are suggesting is open hostility. If they so much as catch wind of our intentions, things will go sideways very quickly. Regardless, this is our last opportunity to save her. Frankly, it's a miracle we even have the chance. I thought you once proclaimed not to believe in miracles, Lady Edelgard. And I don't. At least not the kind one has to sit around and wait for. But right now, everyone is exactly where we need them. Her, the bandits, the string pullers, and the perfect instructor with the perfect mission. I'm going to make this miracle happen, and I will do so for our future. Hmm. Then we'd best have a plan in place to finish the job, in case they catch on. I expected you to burn a few bridges, but this plan would be akin to setting half the countryside on fire. Which is exactly why I'm counting on you, Hubert, and why I'm grateful to have you by my side. Welcome to the Black Eagle House. I'm pleased you selected us. Whoa, wait, what? You're a student now? And not only that, you're one of us? That's great! Wait, stop! I don't know this person! Oh, why are there so many new faces? That's what you get for skipping this year's first field excursion burn. A lot happened. There was even a bandit attack. Did you really not hear about any of this? Bandits? Ugh! Now I'm extra glad I skipped out. I must say, the church took a bold step in enrolling you. A decision which I, of course, fully support. You helped Edelgard, and we stand to learn quite a bit from one so skilled. Yes, I have eagerness to examine the fighting of mercenaries. We should be sparring, one versus one. If anyone needs me, I'll be asleep and... Wait, hold on. Do you have a crest? Did Professor Hanneman even check? Oh, he checked all right. Sorry to say I'm certifiably crestless. Strange. You definitely seem the type. But I suppose I'm just imagining it. And now you know the rest of our house. As you already met some of us in camp, I assume you knew what you were getting into. We may not be perfect, but we support each other as best we can. Please try your utmost to get along with everyone. Here approaches Professor Yuritsa. That makes all of us. Remember your mission? We are to eliminate the remaining members of the Iron King's thieves that attacked our camp. The chief, Costas, has already been struck down, and now only a scattering of brigands remain. Even with our limited experience, we should be able to defeat them handily. Good. Prepare yourself.
Of course, Professor. Oh, he's gone. So it would seem. Right then. We'd better get all of our waterfowl in a row. Wait, but I. I need to tell the professor I can't participate? Oh, good work, Bernie. Why didn't you speak up sooner? I know what you mean. I never even got the chance to break out my best. Leave it to me, Professor. He's a real tough nut, that's for sure. Says just as much as he has to, and makes tracks. Strength and silence don't always go hand in hand, though. Indeed. Just look at Kaspar's father, Count Burglies. When that man shouts an order, it is so loud that the seas themselves part and the clouds retreat. Whatever the case, I expect all Black Eagles to participate in this mission, including you, Bernadetta. You can do this. And I look forward to seeing our mercenary friend here in action. Careful, Edelgard. If you set me loose out there, there won't be any bandits left for you. There you are, Yuritsa. I have word from the knights. It is time. Yes. The bandits have fled north into the canyon bordering Count Bro's land in the kingdom. But the knights have cut off their escape, and now stand ready to provide whatever support the students may require. We'll leave at once. I needn't remind you this is the first real battle for some of our charges. I trust you will keep them safe, though I likely do not need to worry with an old hand like you at their side. No, you don't. You there, it's time for the mission. Gather the others. About time we saw some action. Lost sight of them? Ashamed to admit it, but yes. It's possible someone magicked the bandits away. But why go to that kind of trouble for a handful of highwaymen scum? So be it. We'll follow the blood scent. Right, of course. We'll follow... Wait, what? We're leaving. Everyone, follow me! Professor, wait! Well, he must have some idea where the bandits went. Let's hurry after him. Pathetic. Professor Yuritsa, you shouldn't charge ahead like that. It's far too danger. Wait, what is all this? <laughs> Bandits! Dead by my hand. Yes, they look quite dead indeed. Are these the miscreants we were meant to deal with? How is one to tell? One uncouth ruffian looks much the same as any other. Do you know, Professor? Were you following some manner of lead? No, but it's them. They were trying to escape to that fortress. That fortress? Yes, Kaspar, that's what he said. Something you want to share? Nope. It just seems suspicious. Me or something else, Kaspar. Still, I guess the place does look kind of suspicious. We're near the border of the Kingdom and the Empire, but that is no Imperial outpost. It's not the Kingdoms either, and they're not flying any kind of banner. I'm guessing it's a bandit hideout. Then give us allowance to be storming their base and crushing them under our feet. It might be a little dangerous for us to handle on our own, Petra. Yes! I mean, I agree. We should all, um, go home. Right now. But the bandits might be inside. And they must answer for their crimes. 
It is our noble duty to finish them off before they can bring harm to another soul. This isn't about nobles. It's about doing the right thing, period. And striking down evil is the Caspar way. We'll be heroes if we manage to take out an entire bandit outpost. This is the kind of stuff I live for. Since when are you so gung-ho? Oh, right. Since always. Enough. This is not our decision to make. Professor Yuritsa? The mission stands. Enter the fortress. Dispatch any bandits you find. There are no signs of life. We may be chasing ghosts. Professor, are you having the ability to speak with ghost spirits? It is just an expression, Petra. It means there is probably no one here. Ah, I am understanding now. You have my thanks. This language has much peculiarity some of the times. Well, if that's settled, let us make ready. Make sure you're prepared before we head out. We'll put the bandits to rout. Follow me. Hey, we got it through. You must be a bad guy if you're pointing a weapon at me. Get ready to pay. A pack of thieves is no match for us. Though I do wish they had given me time to announce my name. Careful. Do not let the enemies be ganging up on you. This place is bigger than I thought. Split up. All of these dead bodies are enough to numb the senses. <laughs> No better inside the fortress than it was on the outside. I can't take this anymore. I want to go home. I'd say that takes care of securing the bandit hideout. Unless something else concerns you, Professor. Search the basement. Something is amiss. There's a prisoner down here. And she looks like an academy student? can wait. Thank you for saving me. Don't let the girl escape, or Kranya will make us wish we were dead. It's not safe here. We must take the girl and run. <laughs> We are at least. All right. Who came in here and trashed my beautiful stronghold? Hi there. I'm Kranya. But you can just call me the lady that's about to murder you. Or, you know, don't. It's her. So be it. Kill her. So, if you've got any pretty last words lined up, 
Now would be the time. Not that I'm going to pay attention. You got my back? Now, attack! We'll do it together! I've got you now! asked for it. Release the creature we captured. This is going to be trouble. On your guards, everyone. Attack in force. You'll never defeat it alone. All the numbers in the world won't save you. I am here to aid you. Unlike any beast I have ever encountered, it will be a grueling battle unless we combine our strength. Its strength is beginning to wane. Press the attack. Defeated a demonic beast? Impossible! Talus isn't going to like this at all. You'll pay for this. You'll all pay! That snake escaped. But still, Monica is safe, and that's what matters. <sighs> I thought I would never breathe fresh air again for as long as I lived. I'm not sure what to say, except... Thank you, everyone. How did you end up in such an awful place, Monica? I heard you went missing in House Ox territory. I did indeed. In fact, I was on the verge of graduation when I was kidnapped by the strangest people. Oh, how silly of me not to introduce myself. I'm Monica Von Ox. I'm the eldest child of Baron Ox and one of your highness's most loyal subjects. Seeing as you saved my life, I plan to devote that very life back to helping your cause. You've not changed at all, though I do appreciate the enthusiasm. Monica was a black eagle in last year's class. One might say she's part of the old guard. I'm not sure how I feel about you calling people old. I think I understand. This all began when the Knights lost sight of the bandits and you gave chase. Afterward, you entered a suspicious fortress and rescued a missing student. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I'll be sure to smooth things over for you once we're back. Sounds good. But, uh, why are you even here, Alois? Because the Knights sent for help after you left them behind. Did you expect anything different? Not that I'm trying to lay blame at your feet. I know you were following Professor Yuritsa's lead, so I think everyone involved can head home knowing they did just swell. For as you know, all swell that ends swell... Ugh. Still... I find this a rather grave turn of events. To think the same bandits who attacked our charges were behind another student's abduction. Hmm? I never said I was kidnapped by bandits. You... you didn't? Now that I think on it, not everyone in that fortress was dressed like a common rogue. Perhaps the bandits were mere decoys while some other villain pulled strings behind the scenes. Yeah, there was one real piece of work. Kranya, I think, who managed to escape. I've seen all kinds of people as a mercenary, and she was definitely not your everyday bandit. You're on the right path. Perhaps I should just tell you who kidnapped me, seeing as I already know. What? Why didn't you mention this earlier? Everyone was busy speculating, so it was difficult to cut in. What do you know, child? 
Out with it. Her Highness can vouch for this, but my memory is quite strong. Try Remarkable. You never forget a face, even one seen only at a glance. Your Highness, I... um... thank you for the compliment. <clears throat> I'm certain of what I saw. The one who kidnapped me was surely Tomas the Librarian. Tomas? Impossible! But Tomas has been at Garrick Mark even longer than I have. I don't want to believe it, but based on what you say, we've no choice but to investigate. But Sir Alois... Be on guard. If Tomas is in league with Kranya, he is dangerous. Very well. I will quietly report the matter to Lady Rhea and leave the decision in her hands. Not a word of this to anyone. Is that clear? Well, now things are getting interesting. Honestly, did not see this coming. So what do you make of this Kranya? Why do you think she was at the fortress? You seemed preoccupied with her during the battle. Is she a friend of yours? Sadly, I wouldn't know. My memory is but a shadow at this point. Gone! Vanished! Lost! I remember meeting you. But before that, nothing at all. And yet, the moment I saw her, I was struck with the most inexplicable feeling. I couldn't tell you if it was revulsion or affection. It was simply pure emotion. And here I thought I had it tough. Are you worried about me? How adorable! Oh, but I do love that about you. And so, the Archbishop has elected to apprehend Tomas. He has been away from Garrig Mok for days now. During his absence, an investigation of his behavior and personal effects laid bare his hostility to the Church. The Knights have been instructed to await his return and take him in. As quietly as possible, of course. We want him alive. So we might discover the whereabouts of his associates. I'm glad they actually believed me. If they doubted you, you would have known it the moment they clapped you in irons and led you away. So who is this Tomas guy anyway? You say he works in the library? He does. I've lost track of how many times I've spoken to the man. No surprise, Lin. You practically live at the library. Um, so what did he look like again? Is he the big, burly one? Burly? Not even close! He's a frail old man with a walking stick. From what I understand, he has been at Garrick Mach for 40 years, at least. It is hard to imagine that he had been plotting evil that whole time. I wonder what led to his transformation. Transformation? Would someone not be noticing if Tomas changed his appearance? He meant a mental transformation, not a physical one. Tomas must have changed his mind about the church at some point. I am excited to have learning of this strange new expression. I must be thanking you. If they were really worried about transformations, you'd expect they would turn their gaze to you. Good to know they're nice enough not to do so. So, this Tomas person sent the bandits after us? What an awful man. We're lucky to be alive. You're one to talk, Bernadetta. You weren't even there. Yes. You were not having reason to fear for your continued living. Uh, you're right! Everyone, pipe down! Something's happening outside. Are they ready at the gates? Yes, sir. Every exit is covered. Well, well. It sounds like Tomas has returned. I don't know why I know this, but you need to get out there, and quickly. Where are you going? There he is! 
That man down there. Lady Rhea wants to speak with you. I suggest you accept. <laughs> this doddering persona of mine will benefit me no further. What is this? Prologue. The Shadows of Adrestia. Upon his return to Garrig Mach, the humble Tomas shapeships and flees, and not even the knights of Ceres' most concerted efforts can track down the erstwhile librarian. Meanwhile, Edelgard seizes upon Monica's rescue as a chance to start down a radically different path than she had originally planned. Things went like clockwork with Monica. Thanks to Professor Yuritsa playing his part so ably. And equally to those arrogant fools for letting their guards down. I doubt we will see such fortune next time. Next time? Oh, don't tell me. The moment has come to take matters into our own hands at the Imperial Capital. This is our chance to finally be rid of them. But, Lady Edelgard, we aren't ready. We'll need an entire host to keep them in check. And we have one. The Church. Forgive my impertinence, but that is not the plan. You are the man who once told me to leave no sword in its scabbard. Yes, but one must also take care not to wound themselves when unsheathing it. I am sorry, my lady, but this plan is ill-advised. I cannot support it. And even if I were to ignore common sense and go along, it still throws our future plans into disarray. I thought you devised countermeasures to deal with the church. Use them. But those were meant for... Very well. Are you absolutely certain this is the path? <sighs> I am anything but certain. Yet the bandit attack in the mountains created an opportunity we cannot ignore. And I doubt the appearance of this new mercenary is simple coincidence. Plans can be rewritten, Hubert. Either we're doing this, or we're not. Will you sit around and wait for a miracle? Or will you help me seize control of my fate? I am with you, Lady Edelgard. As ever. Then let us walk forward on this path, and see where it takes us. I apologize for bringing this to you on such short notice, Archbishop. Not at all, Edelgard. But might I ask, what prompted this sudden desire to return to Enbar? We believe one of Tomas's collaborators may have infiltrated the capital. My word! Tomas tended the library at Garrig Mach for decades, with nary a blemish on his record. And then, without warning, he drops his disguise and reveals himself to be a vile sorcerer of terrible ability. Someone at the Capitol also fits that pattern. A man we know all too well. And who might that be? My uncle, and regent of the Empire, Bokard von Arendau. 
His lordship briefly defected from the Empire before reappearing several years later. But he returned a changed man, and began seizing power almost immediately. Witnesses claim he wields dark magic in secret, and is able to change his appearance at will. That does sound suspicious, if these witnesses can be believed. I would ask that you do believe them, as the information comes from my own House Vestra. I see. And when you return to the capital, how do you propose to deal with this uncle of yours? Lord Arundel has the support of a number of influential nobles, including the Prime Minister, Duke Eyer. And while we have allies of our own, it's likely they'll require some convincing. To that end, we wish to bring our friends here at the Academy, their daughters and sons, with us under the supervision of Professor Yuritsa. We hoped you would consider deploying the Knights of Seros, so the Imperial Army doesn't get any strange ideas. You wish to march on the Empire, with the Church's Knights at your back? Your support would give credence to our claims. Additionally, the Knights would keep the populace in check upon our arrival, thereby preventing the city from descending into utter chaos. The more I hear of this, the more credible the threat sounds. It's clear you have thought carefully and planned well. We intend to seize the palace with our own forces, and we'll do our utmost to contain the conflict there. But we still need your help. Please. I have two conditions. The first, when you capture Lord Arundel, he is to be turned over to the knights at once. The second, our knights are not to engage in battle directly. I would have it no other way. Step lightly, Edelgard. Should these claims about Lord Arundel prove false, we will take action accordingly. Make no mistake as to who will be held accountable. Understood. But please know we have nothing to gain from deceiving the Church. Very well. I will summon the Knights and let you instruct them as to your plan. May the Goddess watch over you all. Well, that was certainly an unexpected conclusion to the whole Tomas saga. Thanks to his shape-shifting ability, he slipped free of the knights and escaped. Shape-shifting. Yes, that's what I said. Also, I know what you want to say next. His powers are just like the ones you gave me. His powers are just like the ones you gave me. Are you in league with him, Arval? Where did these powers come from? If I am in league with him, no one has informed me. All I have is you, my dear partner in destiny. Still, I saw what you saw. Clearly, we don't have a monopoly on shape-shifting. And now that everyone knows about Tomas, some of them must have connected the dots back to me. At least they've had the grace to keep it to themselves. It's because they trust you. Hold on, someone's coming. Ah, there you are. Something wrong? I must return to the Imperial capital soon for an important matter. Will you join me? Most of the other Black Eagles are coming. What's this about? I fear I must keep that to myself until we're closer to the capital. But I promise you this. There will be battle, and you will have a chance to shine. Are you sure? I mean, these powers I have... Are like the ones Tomas used? Yes, that is a bit disquieting. Still, you've given me no reason to mistrust you. You could have wrested yourself free of us from the start, 
but instead you chose to stay here at the monastery. You fought by our side and helped us save Monica. I think I can give you the benefit of the doubt. But here's my true proposal. If you accompany us, there's a good chance you'll learn where your powers come from. Ooh, now that is intriguing. In that case, I accept. Thanks. What? Solon's been unmasked? Yes, my lord. Rooted right out of the monastery. First Kranya's debacle, and now this. What in the world is going on? I know not, my lord. What are we to do? Keep our composure for a start. Send word to the kingdom and see that Cleobulus is informed. Tell him to remain prudent. If he must go into hiding, so be it. At once, my lord. Yes? Lord Regent, I have urgent tidings to report. You may enter. Forgive the intrusion, my lord, but we just learned the Knights of Seros march on Enbar. Their purpose is unclear, but they will arrive by morning. We've been turning ourselves upside down to make ready. The Knights of Seros? No. Oh. Do you think? There's only one person who could be behind it. How dare she bear her fangs at us? They may already be within the palace walls. Mobilize the guards and search. If anyone so much as looks at you askance, kill them on the spot. Yes, my lord. Her Highness has given the signal, Baldemar. Already? I had thought they were still negotiating. Things are moving rather quickly. The situation must have changed. Our children are still at Garrick Mark, after all. I admire how strong she's become. I just wish we'd had more time to appraise her competence. Well, if she's caught us with our breaches down, imagine how they feel. I can't wait to see the confused look on those dastards' faces. Oh, I'm going to enjoy every second of this. As if you'd be content to watch. Once the battle starts, you'll be knee-deep in gore with all the rest. Which means, I'll have to make it clear where I stand. We can't afford to tear the Ministry apart by having the pen and sword at odds. These are your instructions. I imagine they may not come as a surprise to many of you. For some time now, Enbar Palace has been infested with the same darkness you saw in Tomas. They have made a puppet of the Emperor, and plot with disloyal subjects to seize control of the Empire. Our objective is to stamp these traitors out, seize the palace, and reclaim the Empire for our own. Um, you realize it's just us, right, Adi? That sounds kind of... impossible. Still, the Empire is having many soldiers. Perhaps you could be changing their minds? Those who can be won over will be. And the realization they are fighting the Imperial Princess ought to dull the other's blades. We have also secured the cooperation of several nobles inside the palace. Very impressive, Your Highness. And very you. I suppose all that remains is to head inside and take care of business. Oh, hang on. Sorry. You want to take over the Imperial Palace? You've got to be kidding me. So here we are, ready to deal a masterstroke to the heart of the mighty Empire. Life with you certainly isn't boring. We'll infiltrate the palace through the rear gate, then apprehend Lord Arendelle and Duke Iyer. From there, will secure the palace's strategic positions, eliminating all resistance we encounter along the way. If that is our plan, then time cannot be wasted. 
You can hear them scrambling in the palace from here. Let's not wait for them to find their bearings. Lead the way, your highness. Oh, and make sure to keep her safe, Hubert. You know every square inch of that place, after all. Just mind you don't fall prey to your own distractions. These villains have had free run of my house for too long. Today, I take it all back! It was easy enough slipping in the back. The knight's unexpected visit must have thrown the court into disarray. In that case, we'd best find and apprehend Duke Iyer and Lord Arendelle before they grow wise to our speed. Duke Iyer should be on the throne. They enter through the back way. Yes, that way he will never see our coming. But we must turn it. The gods along the way are in Duke Iyer's employ. So deal with them as we must. Surrender, Duke Iyer. What in the... No! Seal the gate now! Well, this complicates things. We'll have to cut around through the garden. Send soldiers to the gardens! I want a sword on every path to myself and those rats! so desperate he doesn't realize he's already lost. So let us break through and prove it to him. The time has come, ministers. Show the Duke your true allegiance lies with the Empire. Apologies, Ludwig, but if you want to leave, it'll have to be through me. And if you want back in, you must go through me. Although I must seem like nothing in comparison to that bear at the front gates. You will turn on me now. Prosperous. Wait, so those are the nobles you won over? Where did you find the time to orchestrate that? Now that we have Dugara pinned down, let us clip his wings for good. No! You're still outnumbered, and this isn't done until I say it is. It's finished, Prime Minister. Lay down your arms and surrender peacefully. Use the fire orbs! I don't care if you bring the palace down around us. Just do it! We should probably do something about that. Oh, not yet. You got my back? Let us join the forces. We'll do it together. I've got you now. I must regain what I've lost. How can this be? I have richest power. I am as great as a man can be. Well done, everyone. That just leaves Lord Arendelle. Yes, but he is the one we need to worry about. Keep moving and remain alert. I have been captured already. The wretch didn't even have the grace to buy me some time. Well, I've little interest in facing burden. So it's time for me to deploy my wild card. Dark magic. Find the casters and strike them down so we might dispel this sorcery. Come, Voldemort. 
You and I can split up and sweep the palace. A fine idea, Leopold. Let us make clear to these fell warlocks that they are most unwelcome in this place. Still didn't stop them. It seems they came prepared for any eventuality. Quickly now! We need to reach Lord Arendelle before he slips through our fingers. Wretched vermin. the darkness itself, and the darkness cannot be slain. <sighs> he escaped. <sighs> Cowardly of him, but we can take comfort in our victory either way. <laughs> I guess. Uh. Now what? Huh? Are you kidding me? When mercs want to celebrate a win, we slap our open palms together, like that. A commendable victory, Lady Edelgard. Thank you, Hubert. Still, I don't much like how those rats managed to keep skittering away. I imagine that guy's pretty close with Kronya and Tomas, since he shapeshifted and all. Yes. They're all part of a clandestine organization attempting to conquer Flodlin from the shadows. Those who slither in the dark. Huh. Never heard of them. Hmm. So, what is the plan now, Your Highness? We make ready for my coronation. Hubert, gather everyone in the throne room. At once, Your Highness. This is wonderful! Your Highness is going to become Your Majesty! Yes, but first I must speak with the Minister of Domestic Affairs, as well as the other Counts. Also, I need you to go to the Knights of Saros. I wasn't expecting all of you this soon. What are you doing here? We demand an explanation. You arrested my father, Edelgard. How could you do such a thing without discussing it with me first? I'm probably not getting the finer points here. But you basically defeated both my father and Ferdinand's, is that right? I wasn't fighting your father, Kaspar. He was aiding me, as was Count Hevering. So, um, what about my father? Did you arrest him? 
Unfortunately not. Hmm. Okay. Look, I'm sure you have your reasons for all of this. But maybe you should sit down and talk us through it. And I intend to. We'll reconvene later and clear everything up then. Monica, join me. We'll talk as we go. Hmm. And you say I have two years to complete these preparations. In cooperation with Count Hevering, of course. You and Hubert can finalize the details later. As I won't be choosing a Prime Minister for some time, I realize this may result in extra work for you. However, that also means more latitude to do things as you see fit, so long as you ensure we're prepared for a five-year war. I will not rest until I discover a solution, Your Highness. So long as our military leaders don't tread on my toes, I shouldn't have too much difficulty. Hmm. For something this big, you better believe we'll have plenty of need for resources. Leave it to a narrow-minded quill carrier like you to call that treading on your toes. In Her Majesty's name, I will decide what is and isn't appropriate regarding your needs. Also, anyone would seem narrow-minded when compared to a swollen-headed juggernaut such as yourself. A juggernaut, huh? Yeah, I like the sound of that. I see someone allowed his sarcasm lessons to lapse. Moving on. Lord Arendelle's followers will doubtless attempt to interfere, so we'll need to keep a close eye on them. Once Count Varley joins us, we can discuss the matter I mentioned further. It seems he's just arrived, Your Majesty. Apologies for my tardiness. Gregoire von Varley at the court service. My, but attendance seems light. Where is the Lord Regent and the rest of our noble six? Duke Eyre stands accused of treason and has been dismissed as Prime Minister. He currently awaits judgment in one of our finer dungeons. Lord Arundel is a fugitive from the same crime and will be taken in soon. Dead or alive. It makes no difference. Well, this is a rather shocking turn of events. I had no idea Ludwig was capable of such things. Still, rest assured that I am nothing like him. Indeed. And as for the others, Duke Gert was dispatched to Western Fodlan to conduct negotiations. And my father? The late Marquis Vestra perished in the struggle to capture Dugaya. Which makes me the new Marquis Vestra, and minister of the Imperial household. Ah! You've nothing to fear, Count Farley. Her Majesty intends to bestow a great honor upon you. Majesty? Wait, you mean... The title hasn't been formalized just yet, but as it stands, you should view it as a foregone conclusion. More importantly, Count Varley, there is a very important position I wish for you to fill. I intend to rebuild the Southern Church, and who better to be the bishop than you, our Minister of Religious Affairs? I will make my case to the Archbishop personally. Thankfully, Lord Arundel and his men are no longer around to obstruct such a move. You would bestow such a position on me? Uh, make no mistake, it is a great honor, but are you certain? Very. Now then, your first duty in the role will be to oversee my coronation. Do not fail me, Bishop. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Are you enjoying your stay at the palace? More than I expected, though I do feel a bit out of place here. Understandable. Everyone here either is a noble themselves or serves one. However, that will change. 
As emperor, I plan to end discrimination based on social status. Everyone will have a chance to rise to the top, whether they are born into the aristocracy or not. No more nobles or commoners, huh? That does sound pretty great. I'll be impressed if you can actually pull it off. Oh, I will. But at the moment, I have a proposition for you. Go on. We've successfully expunged the Prime Minister and the rest of that puppet government. But a certain amount of unrest is unavoidable. Which means I must remain here in the capital. In other words, I can't go back to Garrick Mach and continue my studies. What about the others? Our noble families will be in disarray as we transition to my system and new heads of household take power. Of course, some, like Dorothea, are not as affected as the other students. But all of them have offered to stay and help rather than return to the monastery without us. If you'd be willing to do the same, I'd like to offer you a top post in my new military. Now there's a tantalizing offer. It's not like you have any real obligation to the church. Plus, it sounds like quite the thrill. I'm more of a hired sword than an officer. Which is why you're perfect. Hubert wants to recruit mercenaries such as yourself and form a new unit. I can't put some noble in command of them. That would be ill-advised. But they would listen to a capable fighter such as you. You're Hubert's first and only choice. I don't know if I really have the experience for it. But if you have that much faith in me, I won't let you down. Having deposed Lord Arundel and Duke Iyer, Edelgard quickly arranges for her coronation, her eyes now fixed firmly on the monumental task laid out before her. All the while, the kingdom of Fargus is thrown into unrest over the right of succession, while the Leicester Alliance finds themselves pitted against an invading Almyran horde. Realizing the troubles of Fodlin will fall squarely on her young student's shoulders, Archbishop Rhea closes the Officers' Academy and permits her charges to return home. Scarlet Blaze. The struggle commences. It is the end of 1181. Two years have passed since the Officers' Academy closed its doors. Having ascended the throne of Adrestia, Edelgard has begun to enact sweeping change. The Holy Kingdom of Fargus now calls Dimitri its king, while Claude reigns over the Leicester Alliance. All three house leaders have found their wings as rulers of a new generation. With the whole of Fodlin still reeling from these rapid changes, Edelgard decides the time has come to usher in a new era. People of Fodlin, the Empire will stand by no longer. Together, we rise against a church that has become steeped in deception and corruption. The church has used their doctrine to deny you power and reshape Fodlin as they see fit. They thrust upon you the illusion of nobility in order to oppress who they choose, and they helped create the kingdom and alliance as a pretext for war. Finally, they teased you with the promise of salvation from pain they themselves inflicted, and did so in the name of their own prophet. Well, I say no more. The Empire has severed herself from their hypocrisy by restoring the Southern Church and nurturing her people's well-being. And today, 
We purge the world of their evil forever. We will retake Garrig Mach from the Central Church and stamp out any nobles who abet its depravity. By my title as Emperor Edelgard von Bresfeld of Adrestia, I hereby declare war against the false Church of Saros. The past two years have flown by in but the blink of an eye. And while they felt short, they were certainly eventful. The Empire has come far since we removed Arendelle from power. We reformed the government, remedied our diplomatic troubles, and bolstered our military. And most significantly, we gave strength to the Southern Church, creating the perfect wedge against the Church of Saros. A shame our bishop has become the target of relentless censure as a result, when the Central Church even targeted him for assassination. Poor Count Varley. It could not have happened to a finer man. And then there's the matter of Lord Arendelle. What are he and his minions up to now? Slithering in the shadows of Fodlan, much as they have done for centuries. It will not be easy to drag such adept skulkers into the light. Perhaps not. Then for now, let's remain focused on the formidable adversary ahead. Did you call us here, Edelgard? It's good to see so many familiar faces. I did, and thank you for coming. This may be the first time I've seen all of you in the same room since the Officers' Academy closed. Likely, yes. We have all been rather busy marching down the separate paths life laid out for us. Or most of us have, anyway. Others, such as myself, managed to eschew work in favor of a more leisurely existence. Hey! I was working hard at staying in my room, but still... Father's been dreadfully busy, so he's never home, which has been pretty nice, actually. I was returning home to Bridget. I finished my task, and now I have been returned here. Well enough. Now, as you know, the Empire will launch its attack on Garrig Mach in the coming days. Emperor Edelgard will lead the invasion personally, and wishes for those present to form the backbone of her army. And as it has been some time since Adrestia had an army under the direct command of the Emperor, I fear we currently lack for officers. I trust each of you, and can think of no candidates better suited for the job. Will you do this for me? So you've got other plans for my father's army, I take it? Well then count me in. I'm ready to go whenever. I would have been happy with a life serving you here in the capital. But if war is coming, I want to see it through myself. I'll go wherever you go, your majesty. I'm always ready. Plus, it's good to know I haven't been training this hard for nothing. I've high hopes for you, and trust you will prove the wisdom of my decision. Just you wait. I'm gonna hurdle clean over those high hopes and show you what I can really do. Be certain to save some of your hopes for me because I most assuredly have what it takes to succeed. And with that, new Empire Army, move out! Ferdinand, kindly leave the commanding and naming to me. I don't believe I ever asked your feelings about this war. On the surface, it must seem as though we took Fodlan's fragile piece in our hand and shattered it into a thousand pieces. What? Is it deep conversation time now? Where'd that come from? It's merely that we've never discussed the matter, 
and you are in a fairly unique position amidst this all. I thought you might be able to provide some perspective on how an outsider views the actions Adrestia has taken. I don't think I really feel too strongly one way or the other. You have nothing to say. Nothing at all? That's how it goes when you're a merc. War? Peace? Doesn't matter. My job's the same either way. It's just money in, blade out. All there is to it. I suppose that's one way of looking at it. It's like you said. I'm in a unique position here. Meaning you would have answered differently were you not a mercenary. Uh, yeah. If I was a farmer, for example, I'd be hounding you day and night to end the war. Sure, you say you're gonna bring this bright and beautiful future, but am I really gonna suffer for years, maybe even decades, waiting for it? The stuff you're doing now, enlisting my farm hands, trampling my fields, destroying my crops, just doesn't make it worth the wait. But you know the toll it's taking on your people, yet you choose to press on with the war anyway. So you've got to have a good reason, right? Yes, of course. You certainly don't mince words. Is it the years of mercenary work that made you this way, or have you always been like this? Pretty sure it's who I am. It was just me and my mom growing up, you see. We lived in a village, but for whatever reason, she liked to keep to herself. So, I guess it rubbed off on me. I learned pretty quick not to get attached. Is that so? I would be interested to hear more. Trust me, it's not as interesting as it sounds. Who says it has to be? Interesting or not, I'll have you tell me one of these days. If you say so, just promise not to freak out when you realize how boring I am, okay? Do I seem like the type of person to freak out about such a thing? <sighs> Perhaps don't answer that. Well, there's a face I'm not used to seeing on the training grounds. Something wrong, Hubert? I have merely come to examine the equipment. I hear whispers that it is in quite the state. Further, my being here should come as no surprise. Her Majesty and I train in these grounds often. No kidding? I don't think I've ever seen you two around here. Naturally. We tend to pick times that allow us to avoid a crowd. In any case, if you do desire a session with either myself or Her Majesty, you only need ask. A mercenary with no backing such as yourself has much to gain by earning Lady Edelgard's favor. Of course, we would not be without benefit. Your rise in standing would paint an ideal picture for our people. How do you mean? Many commoners crave progress. A path upward in life. And your example would prove that path exists. The common folk would never expect to see their emperor train alongside someone of your dubious origins. At least not outside the pages of a fairy tale. Dubious origins? <laughs> a little harsh, don't you think? Still, it doesn't sound too bad if I can use that to help lift people up. On the other hand, your presence would also cause great turmoil amongst the elites of our society. They may even despise you. A symbol of the ungrateful commoner, granted privilege well beyond their station. Oof. But hey, Dorothea's a commoner too. Why don't they hate her? Dorothea is a famed former songstress, well esteemed in the upper echelons of society. Your situation is vastly different. Right. Well, no point worrying about it if it's gonna happen no matter what. 
Precisely. Things may yet change in the years ahead. But for now, all we can do is live with it. So coddling the elites means the commoners end up oppressed, while hoisting commoners up only agitates the elites. Glad I'm not the one who has to rule the Empire. This whole thing sounds like a total mess. <laughs> a mess, indeed. Monica, why are you just standing there? I was waiting for you. You were speaking with Her Majesty, yes? Yep, just going over some strategy. Why, did you need me for something? No, not exactly. So, what did Her Majesty say? Well, she wanted to get my opinion on how best to utilize our mercenaries since they all use different weapons. We're gonna be fighting some upcoming battles on terrain that'll make it harder to use lances, so we were trying to figure out how to deal with that. And you didn't speak of anything else? Well, yeah, but it probably wouldn't interest you. Mercenary stuff, you know. That's not quite what I meant. There was cake for everyone, was there not? And I'm pretty certain there were fresh flowers throughout the room. Did you not see them? Oh, yeah, that cake was great. Did you want a piece? Flowers, though... Hmm... I think maybe there were some little white ones? Ugh, I have no interest in your opinion. I want to know what Her Majesty thought of them. Why do you want to know so badly? Can't you just ask Edelgard? You never know if a person is giving you their honest opinion when you spring a question on them. I just want to know what Her Majesty genuinely thought. I can't help you there, I'm afraid. I wasn't really paying attention. You were summoned by Her Majesty and granted the honor of giving her counsel. Then, she graciously offered you cake. And you didn't even have the decency to watch her eat it? Honestly, what is wrong with you? Sorry if I let you down somehow. I don't think I really get what the big deal is, though. Want me to go ask her right now? No, please don't. If Her Majesty learns I was prying about such things... <clears throat> I do not want to bother her with these trivialities. Forget I said anything. I see what's going on here. The cake and flowers were your doing, weren't they? That's why you were asking me about how Edelgard reacted. Yes, okay? Just please, not another word of this. All right, I get it. Well, not really, but... I beg you, forget this ever happened. The situation is far more complicated than you realize. And that's the situation. Now put your head down and see it done. Leave it to me. I can do this blindfolded. And don't neglect your night training. You'll be a wreck in the morning if you don't put the hours in. What kind of lazy jerk do you take me for? Of course I'd never skip my training. Very good. Well, I must be going. It seems you have a visitor anyway, so farewell. Wait, a visitor? Oh, hey, Petra. Sorry, were you waiting for me? What can I do for you? Uh, everything all right? You don't look so good. I am well. You have my thanks for your concern. You sure? I, I can walk you to the infirmary. I think Professor Manuela is in, actually. No, I am well. Do not be troubling yourself. If you say so. I do. Kaspar, I was not realizing that your father was visiting. Yeah, he dropped by to talk to Edelgard and some of the others. Guy's so busy he hardly stays in any one place for more than a few hours. I must be remembering that. Oh, 
You have some business with him? No. Not yet. Hey, sorry, but did you need me for something? Huh? Oh, um, Edelgard is needing you. I was coming to tell you. She appeared quite upset. Her composure was almost lost. Wait, she's mad at me? Oh, no, I totally forgot she wanted to see me! Thanks, Petra. You're a lifesaver. One day, I will be having revenge. Leopold von Burgles, you will be ruining the day you stole my father's life. I'm tired. Time to find a good spot for a nap. <sighs> Bernadetta? Why are you skulking in the weeds? <laughs> no reason! Not getting in the way of two people's love at all! No, sir! Huh? But I'm alone here. Ah, I see. <laughs> that. Yeah, that! I was out walking when I saw them! A man and a woman together in the woods! Well, neither of them seems to be dead yet. They're on a secret date, you dummy! Not fighting! <sighs> Regardless, how does two lovers stealing a moment alone lead to you curled up here in the fetal position? Because I'm hiding! I mean, if I messed up their date, they might try to get revenge on me! Relax. To them, you're no different than a pebble on the side of the road. Hey, I'm not a pebble. I mean, sure, sometimes I wish I was just a rock, but... Then just roll away quietly and you'll be fine. Just roll away quietly? Hey, yeah! Wait, no! They'd see me! Stop trying to get me killed! We've made enough racket over here to raise the dead, and they haven't even noticed. I think it's safe to say they're off in their own little world. Still, good for them, sharing words of love when either one could die tomorrow. Wait, they could die tomorrow? They're both soldiers who serve on the front lines. I doubt a rosy future awaits them. Not true! Couples swearing their love and defying destiny are a staple of classic fiction! Sure, but the fact it wouldn't happen in reality is what makes it such a good story, right? Wait, but there are tons of stories where two people who have sworn their love don't ever meet again. Likely because that's something people are familiar with from their own lives. two can be happy together, so they can, right? I hope that's the case, but reality is cruel. <sighs> anyway, I've talked myself right to sleep. Try that turn into a pebble and roll away quietly plan. The Imperial Army has invaded Burgundy and will reach Garrig Mach within the month. With no way to stop their advance, we must ready ourselves for a siege. We sent the bulk of the knights away last month after the Western Church occupied one of our sacred sites. The forces that remain are thin at best. How are we to hold the monastery with such short-handed numbers? It is possible the Empire orchestrated that entire incident to bleed off our strength. Look at how thoroughly information about it was buried, and how quickly the Empire invaded after declaring war. It all feels carefully calculated. I would not put it past them. If they bring war to our doorstep, 
They will want us on the worst footing possible. If the tides turn against us, we may have to abandon Garrett Mach. Never! Edelgard is already using the Southern Church to erode our legitimacy. And now she has the gall to try and remove us by force? There can be no mercy for tyrants. So help me, I would like to put her entire army to the sword myself. Is it truly too late to prevent bloodshed, Lady Rhea? Edelgard must have her reasons for doing this. If so, they elude me. The woman seems to consider our church's very existence an abomination. Yet she has gone to the trouble of reviving the Southern Church, which implies she does not mean to destroy the faith outright. Perhaps Garrig Mach is the true prize she seeks. Or worse, this entire invasion could merely be a precursor to conquering all of Fodlan. Hmm. Her purpose matters not. Our charge is to defend the monastery at all costs. I took an oath. I swore I would never again suffer the boots of thieves to sully this land. Rhea. It is a low form of comedy we find ourselves engaged in this day. To think the descendants of their empire will be the first to invade Garrick Mach. All the more reason to prevent it. I care not if we shared blood countless generations ago. I will not permit anyone to defile Mother's resting place. Feels like an eternity since I've seen the walls of Garrick Mach. Who knew we'd leave as students and return at the head of the Imperial Army? Lady Rhea must be so angry at us. Oh, why did I agree to come along? We'll be lucky if angry is as far as her feelings go on the subject. I imagine she's apoplectic. I don't know that word, but it has way too many syllables not to be scary! The Knights of Saros will likely fight tooth and nail to stop us. Well, we've got teeth and we've got nails, so I don't care who we're facing. I'll brush them all aside. Worry not. While they may have a monastery to hole up in, we possess the superior numbers. Garigmach is well fortified, but not impregnable. We're gonna smash the place to rubble. While I appreciate the enthusiasm, we need to keep it in one piece. The Empire has use for the monastery once we're done here. Understood? Uh, right. Sorry. The soldiers are ready, Your Majesty. We can begin the attack at once. The scouting is also finished. We know with certainty where the enemy will be taking its positioning. We are owing this to Monica and her perfect memory. She has incredible knowledge of this place. As usual, Monica, your talents are invaluable. I really didn't do much, Your Majesty. That is, um, well, it was truly an honor to assist you. Not to say I've finished helping you, of course. In fact, I am always at the ready. Don't ever change, Monica. And finally, who do we have here? This is my little sister, Flesh. I was given approval to make her my attendant. Fleisch von Burgley's at your service, Your Majesty. My brother and I are, um, in your hands. Ah, so you're Kaspar's famous aunt, who's actually younger than he is. Yes, Your Majesty. The very same. Fleisch is too green for battle, but she'll be providing support from behind the front lines. You can rely on me. I realize saying this might make the situation worse, but there's no need to be so nervous. If you act to the best of your abilities, all will be well. Now then, everyone, the time has come. 
the time to take Garrick Mark and reclaim Bodren. Jumping straight into the maw of our enemies, eh? Ooh, how exciting. Is this where I should talk about my heart racing? Huh? Since when do we talk about your feelings? That's new. Do not throw away your lives, friends. Be not reckless as you attend to our defense. Our defensive position within the monastery walls? This is merely a storm. We must dispatch them at once. Then the brute force approach it is. Garrick Mark must fall. We'll start on the lower level and work our way up, taking control of the walls. Split into groups and take those strongholds. No, not yet. The enemy is desperate. Then we'll most likely dispatch troops to recapture any strongholds we see. Be on your guard for this tactic. Why'd they drag me into this? Not fair. If you don't want to fight, then surrender. I swear no harm will come to you. That's very nice of you, but they gave me a home here. So I should probably put up at least some kind of fight. Okay, I'm losing. That's really bad. To think I would be serving the church and fighting my own homeland? Is this the goddess testing me? Constance, Watch why this. are you of all people cooperating with the church? All I can say is I was unlucky enough to be nearby when the church had need of fighters. I beg your forgiveness, your majesty. So ends my grief and meaningless existence. Is this what you want? To die here in shame? This doesn't have to be your end, Constance. Join us. Fight with the Empire. As you wish, Your Majesty. I do not deserve to throw my feeble existence away in such a manner. I sense a darkness in your power. If you harbor ill will towards them, then help us best them. I know which them you're talking about. Well, it's not like I want revenge or anything, but sure. Sign me up. I have to defend the monastery, whatever it takes. shows no sign of stopping and if we don't keep an eye on our strongholds we'll be sure to lose them thanks for the rescue we owe you it is not a problem we have preparedness for these things We're making progress! No! I have to do better! Does that mean he's given up? I care not for your reasoning. There can be no excuse for war. No! Send reinforcements at once! I must do everything in my power to stop this! With me, Hubert! For the Empire! All who oppose us will fall! Get out of my way! Retreat 
fight while you still can, Flame. I beg you. Very well. Stay safe, my brother. I will not ask you your reasons. Not anymore. But I will see your evil punished! can fight no longer. The rest is up to you. Worry not, Seteth. Nor you, Flame. You both did well to hold them back this long. Now come forth, all of you. Protect Garrig Mach from those despicable rebels. So Lady Rhea has decided to show herself at last. Stout hearts, everyone. Victory can only be ours if we strike her down. Let's do this! This stronghold will fall! Explain yourself. Let us go. Why do you betray the teachings of the goddess and seek to shatter Roblin's fragile peace? Seeing as I have no idea what you speak of, this is going to be a short discussion. Now either stand aside or face me. And what do you stand to gain for involving yourself in this? It's not a mystery. I'm a murderer, and she's got the point of pain. I will not permit you to desecrate Garrett Mock for one minute further. This land is precious to me, and I will not permit you to have it. No, not yet. That's what you get for trying to target Her Majesty like a pack of cows. You. Huh? you like that? With me, Hubert. For the Empire. All who oppose us will fall. Get out of my way. I yield you the monastery for now, Edelgard. But know this, there will be no forgiveness for your blasphemous actions this day. No, I don't expect there will be. Take heart, everyone. Garrig Mach has fallen, and victory is ours. Lady Rhea! Are you hurt? Oh, Catherine. You came. Not soon enough. Garrig Mach is done for. It is all right. For now, we must retreat. This path is unknown to the Empire. It will take us out to ALL, the Valley of Torment. From there, we make for Fargus to seek aid. The Empire attacked from the east which means at least some of the Alliance's lords must have aligned with them. But those of the kingdom are devout. We can trust them. I have already sent a messenger ahead requesting reinforcements and, should the need arise, asylum. In that case, I'll talk to my parents and ask for their assistance as well. Regardless, we should hurry. We can't let the Empire get ahead of us and send troops onto Kingdom soil. Now, follow me, if you would. Thank you, Catherine. Let Edelgard have Garrig Mach for now. Let her enjoy this fleeting moment of glee. 
Because when we return here, Edelgard von Hressvelk will suffer a death beyond her greatest imagining. <sighs> Garrick Mach, you remain ever as resplendent as the day I left you. The place cannot be so dear to your heart that it requires inferior poetry for an introduction. Inferior? I will have you know that lion comes from one of my favorite operas. However, I concede I may have gotten carried away, what with my head still swimming from battle. Hey, I know exactly what you mean. Something about Garrick Mach is just special. And our victory here is going to have a huge impact on the war, right? Yes, this should be enough to lure some of the more indecisive nobles into our camp. I only wish I could vanquish the guilt I feel for turning on the church like this. Still, it was my decision to fight by Aedy's side, and I stand by it to the end. I see. In that case, proceed as planned. Deploy the pursuit units immediately. At once, your majesty. So, Rhea and the others escaped with the help of a great white beast, did they? Almost as if the Immaculate One that saved St. Seros has returned from the mists of legend. Although, it's a bit unnerving the way it sprung out of nowhere. I knew we shouldn't have messed with Lady Rhea. She can be so scary. I'm just going to go back to my room and stay there until forever, okay? Okay. Do as you like, Bernadetta. But realize your father will be arriving in Garrick Mach soon. This is the seat of the Church of Saros, and as bishop, his place is here. R really? In that case, I think I'll just forget about the monastery and go with you. Good. Just be aware we may be marching for the kingdom next. The kingdom? <sighs> I possess no love for the cold, but I will try to grin as I am bearing it. Point at the path to your foes, and I will be hunting them to their final breath. Don't get ahead of yourself, Petra. Whether we capture or kill will depend on the foe. Now then, enough wasting time. We need to find Rhea, and we need her alive. Two years ago? I never would have imagined we'd be fighting a war like this. You say fighting, but I think you mean instigating. Let's be fully clear about our role in all of this. Still, this is a positive turn of events for you, yes? How do you mean? When a war breaks out, every mercenary in the land starts crawling out of the woodwork. And those associates you happen to be working with should be tough enough to take on you-know-who. They're not just associates. They didn't have to trust a down-and-out mercenary like me, but they did anyway. And that makes them friends. Still, you're probably right. This will be a great chance to drive Geralt's mercenaries out into the open. And then you can give them their just desserts or die trying. Could have done without that last part. Thanks. Relax, relax. You know I'm on your side. Our destinies are forever intertwined. Listen up, boy. You're not going to believe this. Judith, do you think you could ease up on the whole boy thing? I'm your fearless leader now, remember? But sure, tell me what happened. You might want to take a seat for this. <sighs> Garrig Mach Monastery has fallen. Not even the Great Knights of Saros could stop the invaders' overwhelming numbers. Wait, what? That's not possible. They should still be days away from the monastery. How did they manage to deliver an army of that size to the gates of Garrick Mach so quickly? Unless... 
This can't be happening. Did Count Gloucester turn? And Acheron too? I'm afraid both houses fly Imperial colors now. House Phlegathon yielded the north side of the Great Bridge of Murden, and Gloucester waved them right on through. Those filthy liars! When I warned them the Empire was raising an army, they couldn't stop puffing their chests and crowing about how they'd hold the border. But it looks like the Empire had already gotten to them. This is all my fault for not keeping my ear to the ground. I'm afraid that wouldn't have helped, Fearless Leader. All the dirty dealings were handled via letter. But now I've lost the initiative, and against Edelgard no less. She can come at the Alliance with gloves off now. This is a real problem. What is it? Sir, we have an unexpected guest. It's, uh, Lord Holst of House Goneril. Holst? What's the strongest man in Leicester doing at my door? Besides thinking about battering it down, I mean. You can ask him yourself, sir. He is present. Apologies for dropping by without warning, my lord. I just happened to be near Deirdre when word reached me about Garrick Mach. I didn't realize you were in our neck of the woods, Holst, but please, come make yourself at home. As fate would have it, I was just pulling my hair out over the exact same problem. Can you believe that Count Gloucester? He turned on us like it was nothing. If I don't handle this situation with the Empire delicately, it will fracture the Alliance. If you have any sage advice, now would be a great time for it. Or muscle. I'll take muscle if that's what I can get. I came here to help however I can. We must work together to keep Lester safe, and more importantly, free. Garrig Mach has fallen to the Empire, Your Majesty. I did not expect it would last long. Is Lady Rhea safe? Yes. She escaped, and is on her way here with a small force. I see. This won't be like granting asylum to your standard refugee. If we take the Archbishop in, it will be tantamount to declaring war on the very Empire. Is that a risk you're willing to accept, Your Majesty? It is. We have already thoroughly discussed the matter with the Kingdom's Lords. Even if I refrain from deciding publicly one way or the other, the Empire will still insist that we hand Lady Rhea over. The Kingdom's people and government are too frail to stand without the Holy Church's support. I agree with her ultimate goal, but such a situation calls for gradual reform over time. The Emperor's desire to tear it up rapidly will not do. Then it is a good thing we've prepared for such contingencies. I will start by sending a party to ALL to welcome our new guests. Thank you. I would go myself if I could, but I'm needed here to prepare for the war. For now, send messengers to Counts Galatea and Karen, imploring them to muster troops for our defense. Oh, and send for House Fraudarius as well. Let's make sure our new Duke earns his title. Grave news, Your Majesty. Hmm? What is it now? Count Roe has declared fealty to the Empire and is marshalling his troops as we speak. Also, one of his bannermen, Lord Lenato, is moving to hunt down and slay the Archbishop. We have long held our suspicions about House Roe. But I never expected their actions to plunge us into war. And after all the discussions we've had to prevent exactly this, we must believe his reason is just. Very well, then. Our plans have changed. I will go and meet with Lady Rhea personally, and House Fraudarius will serve as my guard. Inform Galatea and Karen. They are to gather their troops in Erebus and Geraint lands. Lord Lonato was once a faithful servant to the Crown. Will you now see him executed? I have no mercy for traitors, no matter their pasts. 
On the contrary, I have an obligation to protect the kingdom from his kind. We've struggled long to attain this peace. I will not permit the Empire to crush it beneath their foot now. Scarlet Blaze. Skirmish in the Fog. The Empire captures Garrig Mach, and when the Lords of Fargus and Leicester declare their allegiances to the Central Church, they incur Edelgard's ire. She sends one army to the Alliance under the command of her war minister, Count Burglies, and leads a second herself to the kingdom's castle Gaspar, the bastion of Northern Roe. Lady Edelgard, we have received an urgent message from Count Roe. Apparently, he has taken up arms against the kingdom. What is he thinking? He was supposed to join his troops with ours so we could use our combined strength to strong arm more of their neighbors into declaring fealty for us. What use is a plan if the man won't follow it? It also seems that Lord Lenato, one of Roe's castled bannermen, has gone so far as to mount a one man crusade against the Archbishop. He has long held deep enmity for Lady Rhea and likely leapt into action at news of Garrick Mach's fall. I should have suspected he would lack self-control when it came to his vengeance. Naturally, the kingdom mobilized troops in response, and now move to strike Lenato down as we speak. So, where does this put us? Can we get reinforcements to him in time? You want to save the man, Your Majesty? If I may. We would march all that way for... what, exactly? Imagine the consequences of leaving him to die. We need our vassals to believe the Empire will always come to their aid. Always. Of course, Your Majesty. I will make the arrangement straight away. The region northeast of Castle Gaspar is shrouded in deep fog this time of year. That likely accounts for why they are currently only engaging in minor skirmishes. Which means we still have time to intervene. Good. Now make our plans known to the others. I'm counting on you, Hubert. At once, Your Majesty. All of this makes me even more concerned about the situation in Leicester. Nothing has impeded Minister Burglies' march east, has it? It has not. In fact, Count Gloucester has given him leave to garrison our troops there. I hear he has begun turning the screws on House Ordelia, and any other lords who have yet to make their allegiances clear. On the other hand, the Alliance's more powerful houses have united in their condemnation of Count Gloucester's actions. The Minister may soon face a battle with Houses Regan and Goneril, if not others. I can't picture a battle the Minister wouldn't win most handily. Still, the Alliance's new leader, Claude, is an unknown quantity. We can't risk underestimating his skill. Quite right. One can never be too cautious. Ah, fiery as ever. What an inspiring sight. Oh. Hey, Ferdinand. You think so? The way I see it, a mercenary who doesn't train every day probably won't stay a merc for long. Hmm. I cannot dispute your logic. Though, I must say, you never did strike me as a typical mercenary. And your upward trajectory has proven me right. To go from nothing to a commander rivaling even the finest of nobles as quickly as you have is... Astounding. You are the most intriguing woman. Well, that's because I've made a habit of giving my all. I'm honestly just happy to have earned Edelgard's respect. You're all, you say? 
something wrong? To the contrary, I find your attitude inspirational. We are birds of a feather, you and I. Every task I undertake must also be done to utmost perfection. Polishing my armor? It shall have a mirror sheen. Cooking a meal? Let not even a single ingredient go to waste. True nobility means surmounting any challenge before you with no less than every fiber of your being. Uh, that's taking it a little far, don't you think? Maybe you're not wasting food, but what about your time and energy? And I'm not any sort of noble, you know. I am aghast! Are you suggesting that devoting myself fully to every endeavor is wasteful? I mean, yeah. If you put your all into every little thing, you'll run out of stamina right when you need it most. You're like the knight in that proverb. The one who spends all day building a fence around his pegasus, only for it to fly away. Valuable advice for a pegasus, perhaps. But I am no beast. I am Ferdinand von Eyre. It doesn't matter who you are. Everyone needs to take it easy sometimes. If you always keep your bowstring taut, it's just gonna snap when you actually need to fire. I assure you, I am no bowstring either, but I take your point. However, there is no cause for concern. As I have told you on multiple occasions, I am Ferdinand von Eyre. Whether I am resting, enjoying leisurely pursuits, or simply in contemplation, I always apply all my energy to the task at hand. At work, or at rest, I will forever give it my all. <laughs> Seriously? What's full on resting even look like? An opera company smack dab in the middle of the Imperial capital, huh? I can't even begin to imagine what that must be like. I mean, I've been all over the place for my mercenary work, but it's mostly just been for small time rural lords and the like. Honestly, I'd never even met anyone from the big cities like Enbar or Ferdiad before coming to Garrig Mach. Even after I ended up in the capital, all the glitz and glamour made me feel almost like I was living someone else's life instead of my own. You know, shows in the capital are about a thousand times flashier than the little town festival shows you might be used to. Every important moment of the drama is conveyed through elaborate song, and at the center of the musical ensemble stands its star, the diva. I think I get the idea. These divas sound pretty incredible. They probably get stage names and everything if they're that important, huh? Oh, but of course. I was known as the Mystical Songstress. Hey, that's pretty good. There always has been this kind of indescribable aura surrounding you. Thanks, but I have mixed feelings about the name myself. They called me that because of how suddenly a street orphan like me was discovered and debuted. Yeah, I see how there could be some complicated feelings wrapped up in that. But if you were able to rise from that to D.Va, you must have the chops to back it up. Not that I can even picture what that would sound like. Hey, do you think you could sing something for me? Since you asked so nicely, but I'm only doing it this once, okay? How the crimson rain of pain it came, falling hard upon a land of flame. When the sacred blade it split the sky, until the heavens heard our cry. In the hour of vengeance, will you heed the call? On the red fields of revenge, will you help avenge? We must fight strong and stand tall. Well, what did you think? It was... Uh, yeah. What? You didn't like it? Not quite the booming applause I'm used to. No, it was incredible, honest. It's just... I'm not really sure I got it, you know? I mean, the only songs I know are the ones sung by mercs in taverns or village girls as they tend the fields. 
You're kinda in a different league, Dorothea. Sorry I can't really give you much more than that. Oh, don't worry about it. This sort of thing happens more often than you'd think. Well, as long as you're not mad. If you don't mind, though, maybe you could try again for me sometime? I'd really like to hear you sing some more. And hey, I might even get better at telling you what I thought. <laughs> sure. I suppose I can give you one more chance. Oh, hey. Looks like I'm not the first one to show up. Hello there. No need to pay me any mind. I'll just be absorbed in my book here. I assume you've come to meet someone? As they've clearly not arrived yet, why don't you join me? Here. I, uh... Thanks. Hey, Linhart, you're into all that spooky magic stuff, right? Like sorcery and crests and whatnot? Yes. Why? Is there something you'd like to ask me? Oh, no. I was just thinking it's kind of weird that you've never really been interested in my power. Do you want me to be? I mean, not really. But I would have at least expected you to ask about it by now. That and Hubert scared me half to death talking about how you might experiment on me. Just so we're clear, I'm not into that. Uh-huh. Well, not everything piques my interest. Your circumstances simply do not. If you're not interested, then so be it. But is there any particular reason why? Hard to say. Perhaps because a sword is the only thing you're able to manifest? Strictly speaking, I suppose your power does raise some questions. But that sinister weapon of yours, it just doesn't leave me all that interested in learning more. Sinister, huh? That's one way to describe it. Tell me, have you ever beheld one of the hero's relics? They also possess the most peculiar aura. And yet, there's something almost divine about the terror they instill. But your sword? It's cold. Maybe even inhuman. In more complex terms, it's little more than an inorganic, dispassionate construct. Not a hint of the goddess's divine guidance in its design. It's not as if you were able to choose what you manifested, right? It just came to you. True. But what if I could turn it into something else and start manifesting different things? Would you be interested then? Is such a thing possible? I would like to see that for myself, I must admit. In fact, I'd be quite excited by that. What a fascinating topic to lay at my feet. Hold your horses there. I'm not really sure I've laid anything anywhere just yet. But aren't you the one who brought it up? Now here's a rare sight. Since when do you read tactics manuals? Do you miss your days at the Officer's Academy? There's nothing to miss. No, because I seem to recall everyone being in awe of their incredibly talented combat professor. I had big plans for you after you were assigned to us, but then the Academy was forced to close its doors. Still, you played a small but critical role. Still not one for conversation, I see. Even so, I feel I understand you and your thoughts more now than when we first met. You see, that silence of yours just said, I don't need you to know me. Such a typical Emil thing to say. <laughs> don't call me that. 
Why? Because Emile von Bartels is dead? Because he was already hunted down and killed for slaughtering everyone in his house? He should have been. Is that so? Well, I disagree. This is why you live on as Yaritza von Hrim, and why you remain in good standing with a house that will one day be yours. This is why the world has the Death Knight. For my goals to be achieved, both men are indispensable. You're greedy to desire that monster's power. His thirst is endless. Every soul he takes makes him less human. If so, I'd say the Death Knight is the greedy one. I must watch my step, lest he and his sight come for me in the night. You are my master, for now. You let the Death Knight hunt. I am grateful. Your life is safe. There's nothing to be grateful for. This is, and has always been, a contract that sees to both our needs. It just so happens I like having you, and the Death Knight, in my corner. Oh, there you are, Hubert. I have been searching everywhere for you. And to what end? Has Her Majesty summoned me? Oh, she would never use me for a task like that. I just wanted to thank you, albeit reluctantly. I do not recall having done anything that would merit such a sincere display of gratitude. Well, you probably just saw it as part of your normal administrative duties. You fixed quite a big mistake in my last report before Her Majesty had the chance to look at it. I woke up in a panic when I realized what I had done. Imagine how mortified I was to see you'd already corrected everything. Ah, yes. I may have done something of the sort. As Her Majesty's loyal servant, it is my duty to pare down the number of unnecessary matters which wander across her desk. I must say, I was surprised to see you make such a foolish and obvious error. Have you truly grown so lax, even as you style yourself the greatest of our Emperor's retainers? I'm aware of the mistake I made, but I would never dream of calling myself something like that. Well, perhaps I said it once or twice in the heat of the moment, but I never actually meant it. If anyone is Her Majesty's best retainer, it's you. And without House Vestra's say-so, I could never become one of her servants. <sighs> At present, I very much doubt you are fit to serve as Her Majesty's servant. Excuse me? It is true that I did not make a conscious choice to serve Her Majesty at first. Instead, I simply did it because my father decreed it must be so. But such bounds no longer define our relationship. I do not serve the Emperor. My loyalty is to Lady Edelgard and her alone. I stand with her in a manner that goes beyond the bounds of ruler and servant. Do you understand this? I want to be like that with Her Majesty as well. But I am only the child of a baron, so I don't have excuses to linger in the palace all the time. I have to return to my family's estate once I've fulfilled my duties for the day, and I get summoned back to our territory often. I am not like you. I cannot just be at her side unless I have a good reason to be there. Indeed. Hawk's territory is in the far west of the Empire. I surmise you have had to spend much of your time away from Enbar. Furthermore, you will be a Baron one day. Your duties will prevent you from dedicating yourself solely to Her Majesty. Exactly. Unlike you, I have an entire territory's worth of people to protect. But I still won't give up. 
even from afar. No, precisely because I'll be afar, there will be things I can do to protect Her Majesty. In fact, always being at her side might actually cause you to overlook threats from time to time. I may even serve Her Majesty in a way you never could. <laughs> that is a promising thought, Monica. So, what did you want to talk about, Hubert? I thought we might discuss you, actually. You wish to know more about those eldritch powers of yours, yes? Ah, right. Edelgard said I might have a chance to get to the bottom of that. Kind of figured she'd forgotten since it's been two years now. Pray accept my apology on her behalf. It has been more trying to find answers than we originally expected. With Lord Arundel lost to the winds, it has been a trial combing through what little evidence he left behind. And of course, we are undertaking all of this in the midst of painstaking preparations for war. Lord Arundel is the guy who could shapeshift like Tomas, right? The one who escaped? Correct. However, we have recently learned that he goes by another name. Tallis. Did you figure out if my powers are the same as his? And what are my powers anyway? Not some kind of curse, I hope. A fine question. I think it is safe to assume that you possess some form of magic. However, it is not the same ilk as the white and black magic we are familiar with. Yours is, shall we say, dark magic. Heathen craft that is structured differently from conventional spells. <sighs> You are familiar with those who slither in the dark, yes? People like Tomas, Kranya, and Tallis. We believe they possess the same power as you. That's tough to accept, but the similarities are too great for it to be anything else. Still, what you think does not matter in the end, because my mind is already made up. So, what? Are you gonna banish me someplace far away because I'm too dangerous? It's fine if you do. I'm used to being cut loose. That's just how life as a sellsword goes. Do not be absurd. If we were done with you, we would kill you, not banish you. Fortunately, you are exceedingly talented, and Her Majesty trusts you implicitly. The way I see it, we stand to profit best by keeping you in our service. So, you trust me too? Um, thanks, I guess. But now we have a more important question to answer. Namely, how you came by your powers. I thought I heard someone talking in here. We were just finishing up. Do you have business with our mercenary friend, Your Majesty? I do. And I suspect it's related to what you were just talking about. Then I will leave you to it. Pray excuse me. <sighs> you should see the look on your face. Did Hubert threaten you? Don't let it get to you. Yes, he's quite good at that kind of thing. But it comes from a place of caution. I wish that was all that was bothering me. I want to transform the world into a place where no one has to feel trapped by where they came from. When I am done, it won't matter where you are born, whose blood you have, or what powers course through you. Everyone will be treated as equals. That's what we're fighting for, and that is what this war is going to achieve. So believe me when I say this, I don't care who you are. I only care about what you have done, and what you have yet to do. Well, thanks Edelgard. I feel a little better now. The fog is rather thicker than I imagined, Hubert. And if I'm not mistaken... 
Yes, I agree. Dark magic is assuredly the cause. We already know those who slither in the dark have had comings and goings at House Row. I doubt one of them is here, but there could be a mage present to receive their training. Then we had best leverage our own assets. Why is everyone whispering? Is the enemy aware of our coming? It's entirely possible, yes. They could be directly on top of us, and we would scarcely know it. So yes, let us all stay on our toes. Prudent of you to bring it up, Ferdinand. Ah, thank you. I, I mean, thank you. <laughs> Ooh, why so quiet, Caspar? Normally you'd be at the front of the line making all kinds of racket. What? You think I'm the kind of guy who'd get all scared and give our position away? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not afraid of anything. Hmm. You're unusually quiet, Petra. Did you not get enough sleep or something? I am listening to our surroundings. Nothing has more danger than fog. One incorrect step and you will be losing your life. <laughs> Can we all try to relax? I'm pretty sure we're alone out here, so let's just calm down before we wear ourselves out. Sometimes you all make me think we're still back at the Academy. Is that supposed to be a compliment? Well, great. I was hoping to finish this before reinforcements arrive, but so be it. I will prioritize locating Lord Lenato. Can I leave the Imperial troops to you? I know what to do, so let me do it already. Just mind this fog and make sure you don't attack the wrong side. That goes for you as well. Let us see if you can live up to your reputation. The closer we get, the denser the fog. I can barely make out my own feet. Truth will be useful for Lord Lenat. As he possesses low numbers, no matter what doubles take any edge. We need to find him before the kingdom does and take him into our protection. Lord Lenato will surely be hiding in one of these strongholds awaiting rescue. The fog will provide cover, but not forever. We need to hurry. We're not really going to stumble our way through this suit, are we? I thought we had some sort of solution. The Imperial Army is here. All troops, ready yourselves to intercept. You will pay in blood for invading the lands of Fargus. Take a breather. Thank you. You got my back? Let us join forces. Your punishment! We'll do it together! I've got you now! How am I being bested by the likes of you? We have our location. Let us not waste any time getting there.
I won't let this stand in the way of my love. So I live to see another day, do I? I knew the guns would be the I don't like how close we cut this, but I'm glad you're safe. Now we can focus on the rest of the fight. Now that Lord Lodato is rescued, we can finally dispense with the magic. Hey! The fog is gone! Now we don't have to keep running into things. How could you betray his majesty, Lenato? How could you do this to me? Ash, you came here for me. Ash is your adopted son, and family should not fight family. Let us persuade him to lay down his arms instead. We're really in a tight spot here. Stop it, Ash. You're throwing your life away. Do you want Lord Lenato carrying that weight around for the rest of his life? I... No. You're right. I surrender. Another son. Our goal here is achieved. Now we hunt down any kingdom stragglers and what? Your fun ends here. An enemy detachment. Put them to rout and make sure to keep Lord Lonato safe. You again, is it? I see you fight for the Empire now. Just draw your weapon already. You and me have a score to settle. Guess I better get in there instead of letting the kid do all the work. I may be a new arrival, but no one can arrival my enthusiasm. Ignore the Ashen team and target the enemy commander instead. Doing so will force them to retreat. I'll take this place down before you have time to strap your armor on. I know we were told not to engage. But isn't this a great opportunity to see how much you've grown? Still improving. I can't take my eyes off you when you fight. I'm getting better, but at what cost? Ashen Demon is no joke. If you don't feel like you can win, it's best to stay far away. I admit, you have a better handle on that strange power of yours. Let's wake up. Let us join forces. We'll do it together! I've got you now! Attack! Witness my train! That's enough. I did what I came to do. I let them slip away like it was nothing! Come then! 
Let us fight with honor! Wait, is that always? Since when did you quit the Knights of Seraphs? No one is matching us! I am so into this! It's over! I'm falling back, Captain! Take a breather. I'll show you! Soldiers lack backbone. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> this fight has run its course. All of you, retreat. Well done. We have kept his lordship safe. This victory will greatly further our conquest. Well, we did it. Yet you're still the saddest looking fighter in camp. Why the long face? Because we only barely got the job done. Everything else was a miserable failure. Sure, we save Lenato and put Geralt and his mercenaries to rout. But we let the kingdom's troops get away in the process. And if that wasn't bad enough, I failed to beat the Ashen Demon. Basically, we lost in nearly every way you can lose. Wrong! You were hired to do a job, and you did it. And in the process, you've received a valuable reminder about the unique danger the Ashen Demon poses. You're right. I can't believe one fighter could turn the tide of an entire battle like that. Precisely. They're surely going to continue standing in our way, so do try to dig a little deeper the next time you square off. Then I guess my goal hasn't changed. Thanks for the encouragement. We must make haste. There's not a moment to lose. Understood. Randolph, take your troops to Orion Road and await further instruction from Hubert. Leave it to me, Your Majesty. Why is everyone so worked up? What happened? It seems the troops we stationed in the Alliance are in danger, and serious danger at that. Gloucester and the other lords betrayed them, and now they have been completely cut off. No. The word betrayal suggests they were on our side in the first place. But I think we can safely assume that was never their intent. This whole time they were simply waiting for us to move the rest of our army toward the kingdom. As soon as they saw an opportunity, they cut off routes to the Great Bridge of Murden and Garrick Monk. Now that our troops are trapped on Alliance lands, House Regan and House Gloucester have them surrounded on both sides. It's doubtless one of Claude's clever little stratagems, and it stings. I don't understand. Everyone is aware of the troubled history between Regan and Gloucester. Why would they decide to bury the hatchet now? Unless... This supposed feud is little more than a web Claude has spun for this exact moment. Perhaps it is, but perhaps not. For all we know, he wants us to overthink the situation and make a greater mistake. We'd better stay on our toes. 
This all fell together too perfectly to be some kind of unhappy accident. I suppose. All I know is that our reinforcements will never make it there in time. The direct route east risks running into both Kingdom and Alliance forces. But if we attempt to skirt around them, we will all be aged in gray before we ever reach Gloucester. Which means our only option is marching south. We'll regroup on this side of the Aramid River, retake the Great Bridge of Murden to cover our backs, and then cut through the enemy cordon. That doesn't sound a whole lot faster. Will our troops be able to hold out that long? I would say no, but these are no ordinary soldiers. They are commanded by our greatest warrior, Count Leopold von Berglitz, the Minister of Military Affairs and a man who has never lost even one battle. If anyone can rally our troops and convince them to hold, it's him. What a brilliant trap. The Regan boy's even craftier than they say. I agree, sir. Even Count Gloucester's inept army seems to be acting with remarkable discipline. But will the reinforcements reach us in time? The real question is, are they coming at all? Because if they're on the way, they'll make it in time. So long as I draw breath, they will make it. So count on them coming. Her Majesty would never abandon us. Yes, sir. Soldiers of the Empire, I know fear gnaws at your hearts, and that's nothing to be ashamed of. Don't run from this fear. Embrace it. Take measure of the enemy that surrounds us and look them square in the face. Yes, we're outmaneuvered and face a vicious fight ahead. But pray to the goddess for protection and her fire will fill your soul and temper your resolve. Our only duty here is to stay alive. Be fearful of death and let not a single soldier fall needlessly. Raise your voices with me now. Let me hear your courage. We will not lose. Wow, these guys aren't backing down. If anything, they actually seem more excited than before. How is that possible? They're completely surrounded. No one will ever reach them in time. Yes, but Count Burglis is their commander. And I'm guessing a lot of those troops are veterans of the Dagda and Bridget War. During that conflict, the Count's troops held off wave after wave of Dagda soldiers right to the very end. Our force must look tame in comparison. Okay, so what now? I wanted this to be clean, but we're looking at a complete bloodbath on both sides. What I want is the upper hand against the Empire, not these people's lives. And there's honor in that, but I don't think they're going to play along. They don't have to accept every part of it. I just thought they might be, you know, scared. Well, so be it. They may have boundless courage, but they don't have boundless food. If Count Burglis wants me to tighten the snare, that's exactly what I'll do. Scarlet Blaze, Bridge of Betrayal. The Empire achieves early success in the war thanks to House Gloucester, a noble alliance house whose vows of allegiance and safe passage were key to the quick capture of Garrig Mach. But Count Gloucester breaks his oath and turns on Burglis's troops Trapped in hostile territory with their supply routes severed, the Imperial Army's outlook appears bleak. I fear I may have miscalculated, my son. How can that be possible, Father? We have the enemy surrounded. Yes, and they have yet to give a damn. Time grows short, and soon Edelgard's reinforcements will descend upon the Alliance. 
Then we will hold them off at the Great Bridge. And they will find another way. If they manage to take even one of the Aramid River's crossings, they can break through our ranks. And while that may not spell immediate defeat, it will dash any hopes of Count Burglies' surrender. Eventually, Edelgard's army will wash over the land, and then, my son, we will be defeated. Speak plain, Father, I beg of you. What does this mean for House Gloucester? Do not fret, Lawrence. This was a leap of faith we had to take to better our territory's fortunes. When Claude came to me with this offer, I determined the reward to be worth the risk. If the gamut fails, so be it. All it means is that our house will have to swear allegiance to the Empire. Edelgard will never settle for such. She will demand... Oh, Father. No! I am proud of you, my son. You have grown into a man strong and wise enough to lead our house. Is there nothing that can be done? What of your dream to claim the Alliance leadership from House Regan? It is your house now. You determine our path. Besides, when the dust finally settles from this war, there may not be an Alliance to lead. So I am to submit to the Empire and carve out as big a place for our family as I can? Is that it? You would have me put an end to the Leicester Alliance? Perhaps my praise of your wisdom was ill-advised. You get ahead of yourself, Lawrence. We bend the knee only if we lose, not before. And as you said, we may yet be able to drive back the Emperor's reinforcements and win the day. Always think two steps ahead, my son. Be clever. Survive. That is the lesson I seek to impart. I had best go prepare for my final battle as Count Gloucester. However this plays out, look for a way for our house to prosper and seize it, Lawrence. Seize it! That is how Irvin Fritz Gloucester fights, and it is how you must fight as well. Well, we managed to slog our way to the encampment. Now we just have to finalize our plan. Why is it so important to hold part of the Aramid Riverbank again? I mean, wouldn't it make more sense to cross over into Alliance territory before it's too late? If we do, we risk the enemy cutting off our retreat. We are here to break their siege, not fall prey to one. If we don't conduct this rescue carefully, we'll be worse off than we started. We must be smart. And that means establishing at least one bridgehead in addition to the Great Bridge of Murden. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. The Minister is a general of much endurance. He will be holding out until we arrive. He is more than a warrior and a maker of strategies. It would lack wisdom to be making an enemy of him. Yep, that's my father. No one can beat him. I just hope I can be half the warrior he is one day. I think even one and a half Burgleses would be more than enough. Not that it's any of my business. So, what are we to do about House Gloucester? They have indicated a willingness to swear fealty, for whatever that pittance of a promise is worth. That leaves only Phlegathon and Ordelia. And I doubt very much that anyone would take us to task for dismantling them. The head of House Ordelia is one of the five great lords. Dismantling them, as you say, would hamper Her Majesty's ability to rule effectively in the future. Consider, for example, why we chose not to dismantle House Iyer. Because I belong to House Iyer, and you did not have to. Ah, of course. You are happy so long as they install successors who are willing to toe the line. That is the plan, yes. House Phlegathon, however, must be disposed of. 
Their lord, Acheron, has leveraged his control of the Great Bridge to do whatever he well pleases. I have a suspicion the Alliance desires him gone as badly as we do. Lawrence Gloucester and Lysithia von Ordelia were Her Majesty's schoolmates, yes? They may be more willing to listen to reason than the others. Sure, but Claude went to the Officer's Academy too. And he's taken a firm stance against the Empire. Do you really think this can be handled via diplomacy? That will depend on precisely what their demands are. But first, we must retake the Great Bridge and extricate Count Burgles and his troops. Let us focus our energies on that for the time being. Agreed. And it would behoove us all not to overlook how devious Claude can be just because we went to the Academy together. If he's not willing to come to the table, I won't hesitate to meet him on the battlefield instead. I won't hold back either. Sometimes you have to kill old friends in this line of work. That's just how it is. Hey there, Petra. Off to train? I'll join you. That would give me much joy. An opponent with toughness will keep me upon my toes. You mean me? Nah, you're way tougher than I am. Also, aren't you a queen now? I didn't realize Dawn to Dusk training was part of the Bridget Royal Regimen. I have not become queen yet. But there is an understanding that it will happen. And yes, in Bridget, royalty must have knowledge of fighting. I mean, we must know how to fight. To be leading our people, a ruler must have more strength than any other. They must be the hardest to kill. My people are expecting this of me. So it's the toughest person calling the shots, huh? I love it. What could possibly go wrong? This is how it is meant to be working. But such things do not always go with smoothness. Mercenaries are always seeking strength too, correct? That's true. A merc lives and dies by the sword. If you're not better than the next opponent you face, they'll be the last one you face. Yes, dying is without productivity. But it gives me surprise that you do not avoid jobs of danger. A queen must be facing any wolf who comes to her door. But you can have pickiness when selecting fights. Depends on how much food you can put on the table that week. Most of us mercs barely scrape by hand to mouth. End of the day, it's just business. Some mercs will take the coin and blow town, and some employers are more than happy to hang us all out to dry. I guess you don't have a lot of cell swords in Bridget, huh? Correct. We do not require the selling of swords. In Bridget, everyone is a hunter. Everyone is a fisher. Everyone is a warrior. There is no need to be hiring, or to be hired. That sounds incredible. In a place like that, nobody'd have to risk their life just to get a bite to eat. Your words give me great happiness. I will always be full of pride for Bridget. Wow, that was amazing! No wonder Edelgard trusts you so much. Oh, hey, Kaspar. You weren't so bad out there yourself. Still, I'm pretty sure we both know who's bringing home the wins at the end of the day. Hey, when you're right, you're right. I can't even outshine you right now, let alone my father. Ugh, it really burns me up. You think? I don't know much about your dad, but I'd say you're on par with me at least. Maybe even better. Sheesh, sore winner much? Just you wait though, I'm only getting started. Old Caspar here's gonna upstage you once and for all, and I'm gonna do it for me. Okay, but think about it. I'm a mercenary, and you're a noble. I'll have way more chances than you to excel in battle, which also means way more chances to die. 
Meanwhile, your dad's the Minister of Military Affairs. You falling in combat definitely wouldn't be a good look. You've got that all wrong. Since I'm his second son, I'm completely expendable as far as he's concerned. Ever since I was born, me and my brother were treated completely different. I don't have a shot at being the heir. Which means the only way I'm getting ahead in life is by proving myself in battle. I mean, I guess I could always go into politics or education or something. The point is, whatever I want to do, I've got to climb up from the bottom to do it. And the climb I picked means building a name for myself on the battlefield, no matter the risks. <laughs> it's almost like you're a mercenary. I never thought a noble could have that kind of motivation. You're a lot more inspiring than you give yourself credit for, Caspar. <laughs> it's nothing. I mean, I've still got the Burgley's name to lean on and all, so I'm better off than just any old Merc. Right. I guess I'm starting to get why you're so competitive with me now. But you should know, I'm not the kind of girl to back down from a challenge. I've been honing my craft as a mercenary for as long as I can remember, even since I was a kid. So you can train till your muscles give out if you want. Some noble brat's not gonna beat me. Oh yeah? Fine. I know I'm not gonna catch up to you overnight. But it'll happen someday. Just you wait. Yeah. And watch your back out there, okay? Hey, you long clear, boss. <laughs> sure glad I got you in my corner. Now then, just gotta... Oh. What are you hiding back there for, Bernadetta? I, um... Who was that guy you were just talking to? <laughs> that? Just a merc buddy of mine, asking if I had any jobs for him. Oh, he was a mercenary? But he looked like a bandit! Hey, come on now. You shouldn't assume the guy's a common criminal just because he looks rough around the edges. But, but, what about the way he talked? Oh, so scary! You'd sound like that too if you'd been a merc your whole life. Most of these guys didn't have a mom teaching them how to sound nice and proper like I did. Um, I see. I guess I don't really know you that well, but... Are all your friends like that? Is that too nosy? That's really nosy, huh? Oh, yeah. All gang's all pretty much the same. Guess that means you're not going into the merc business anytime soon, huh? Obviously not! No, 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 no way! Not happening! Even if I wasn't as shy as I am, I'd never be able to handle all those scary people at once! That sounds like your anxiety talking. You'd see there's nothing to be afraid of if you just gave them a fair shot. And hey, isn't basing your opinion of strangers on their appearance just gonna make you feel worse? Uh, well, what else am I supposed to base my opinion on? Just spend some time with them. If you ask me, the best place to judge someone's character is either on the battlefield or over the dinner table. I already told you I can't! Not me! Nope! Please, I need you to understand! I get it, Bernadetta. I do. But let me ask you this. Is his appearance the only thing that's making you distrust him? There are plenty of guys out there who look just like that but have a heart of solid gold. Nicest folks you'll ever meet. By the same token, there are some real horrible people who cover it up with niceties and honeyed words. The kind of people who prey on others. My point is, judging a book by its cover will only get you in trouble. Trust me, you can't always tell who's good and who's bad from looks alone. Why are you trying to scare me? Nobody's tricking the iron heart of Bernie! Not today, not ever! Well, um... Probably. Maybe. I'll be fine, I swear.
Ah, Ferdinand. I hadn't realized you'd return to the palace. Yes, here I am. Not that I have official business like you. Then why come such a long way? Ah, I see. You're here to visit your father. I am ashamed to say this was my first time seeing him in his cell. My father insisted I stay away for my own safety. Though I must confess, the dungeon was not the horrid place I had imagined it to be. I was envisioning, you know, fiery hot pokers, spikes, and that manner of thing. Oh. Then it may interest you to know that we do actually have such a dungeon. I've only seen it once myself. It's further down from where we're keeping the former duke. It's a dismal place. One where rats scurry to and fro. Rats? I do not imagine father would cope well with that at all. While he did look haggard, it sounds as though his treatment could be far, far worse. We're doing our best to keep him in good health. The rest will depend on his frame of mind. Well, you will hear no complaints from me. I care only that he is kept alive and given a fair trial, and that his punishment fits the crime, of course. You'd better speed things along then, because Hubert is quickly losing patience. A fact of which I am very well aware. The problem is that I remain unable to connect my father to many of the acts he is accused of. Perhaps you're wasting your time. A noble as powerful as your father could easily have documents forged and witnesses bought off. Any records that remain will be considered far too dubious to prove guilt or innocence. Another fact I am very much aware of. In truth, I already found proof some time ago. Proof of his corruption, that is. I discovered it while looking through his tax records. When I realized what he had done, I was ready to serve him up to the authorities myself. Your own father? I'm surprised to hear you say that. I mean it. I thought I could carefully build a solid case against him while studying at the Academy. However, you had him clapped in irons before I could have my case organized. <laughs> now there is a bit of comedy. I idolized my father ever since I was a child. Yet I had to push those feelings aside in order to muster the anger to punish him. Now I find myself trapped between both of those emotions with no resolution in sight. I see. And tell me, is that the end of your story? I thought you were going to become Prime Minister, keep me in line, surpass me even. Oh, uh, well... I did not mean... You can still share words with your father and see him punished for his crimes, you know. So, if you desire resolution, start resolving matters. It's never too late. Another clear victory for the Empire in battle. You can surely guess who stole the show yet again. Our mercenary friend? Always a force upon the battlefield, that one. Their approach on the battlefield is exceptional. Yet their curious power has also proved quite the boon. It is deeply fascinating, isn't it? Something beyond the principles of magic, and yet different from the power of crests. I might go so far as to say it veers close to the realm of dark magic, but I fear that's beyond my expertise. I am possessed of some small knowledge, yet still fail to understand the nature of that power. Then at present we can do nothing but throw our hands to the sky, and with that, I must be off. Oh? I thought you would be more curious about our mercenary ally. Would you truly raise the white flag merely because the matter lies outside your usual ken? What are you playing at, Hubert? 
If you want me to investigate a specimen, go ahead. Hook it and reel it in. Ah, but you are the better angler of the two of us. Furthermore, my method of hooking would complicate our relationship with so valued an ally. An inducement from your lips would ensure things proceed more smoothly. Well, this is becoming a hassle. Can't you push yourself to learn some new hooking strategies? Like, I don't know, one befitting the elegance of a true nobleman? Involving fancy tea, perhaps? A positively hair-raising notion. Please, do not speak it aloud again. Then maybe get in their face and pick a fight with them. You two could end up becoming fast friends. So you wish me to shout myself hoarse and swing my fists about like a common ruffian? I shall pretend I did not hear that suggestion. No. Then the only option left is aggressive persuasion. Driven home at the point of an axe, let's say. Linhart, who in the world are you talking about right now? I should think there is no one quite so barbarous in our own army. Hmm? Oh, I didn't have anyone particular in mind. I was just brainstorming new methods to ensnare our illustrious mercenary friend. Why? Did they remind you of acquaintances of ours? <sighs> in any event, let us leave this sleeping dog where it lies. I do not dislike conversing with you, but we seem to procure results of little benefit when we do. And with that, I have matters to attend to and must be off. Farewell. Until next time, Hubert. So when can I expect you to have reeled in our mercenary friend? I suspect we'd make headway on the research if we engaged in it together. I'm afraid I've not the time to play along with your capricious whims, Linhart. I will, of course, be cheering you on with some enthusiasm from the shadows as you hook the subject yourself. What did your investigation uncover, Hubert? It appears those who slither in the dark had nothing to do with any of this. This plot was hatched by Houses Regan and Gloucester alone. In other words, we know exactly where the idea to encircle our troops came from. Claude Von Regan, leader of the Alliance. He is going to be a true thorn in our side now that he is in charge. Back when Duke Regan had no clear heir, the Lords were busy maneuvering to be next in line. And Claude appeared in an instant and laid claim to the seat of power. We were hoping that would be enough to throw the Alliance into disarray, but he has done a remarkable job of seizing the reins. Feigning discord with Gloucester while they privately schemed together was an especially nice touch. Sadly, it seems we're facing a gifted tactician as well as a skilled leader. Yet for a tactician, he woefully underestimated Count Burglis. I say we finish his education. It is time Claude learns the gulf between his power and the Empire's cannot be bridged with a few clever tricks. We'll reach the Great Bridge of Murden soon. Houses Phlegathon and Gloucester are defending it, just as we anticipated. But Ladislava has done her job and broken through the enemy line for us. I intend to claim a swift victory and return her to us whole. If possible, the members of House Gloucester are to be taken alive. As we discussed previously, killing them will jeopardize Her Majesty's ability to rule effectively. If any enemy commanders appear open to persuasion, try to convince them to surrender. Our goal here is not to utterly annihilate our foes. The fewer casualties, the better. 
that said, anyone who refuses to submit must be struck down without mercy. I know when to catch and when to kill. I am often being faced with such decisions on the hunt. You expect me to make that kind of decision in the heat of battle? You just do what you always do, Bernadetta. If it's all right with you, I'd prefer to focus on the diplomacy part. I'm not much for bloodshed. Then you may leave that part to me. I will happily deal with any soldiers you cannot. It should be a simple enough matter to determine which of our enemies wishes to live and which will choose the way of death. We'd better not misjudge anyone, or else our lives will be the ones in danger. Then we should fight first and ask questions later. When in doubt, take them out, am I right? We can sweat the small stuff when the battle's over. Until then, I'll do what I do best. I believe we should all do what we do best. If we do, I feel confident we will emerge on top when the dust settles. Victory is the most important thing, so leave the vanguard to me. Then, if everyone is prepared, let us show them the might of the Empire! They certainly aren't fooling around with these defenses. Count Gloucester must be located on the far bank. Ladislava is holding the central checkpoint. We'll mount our attack from there. The checkpoint is our key to taking the Great Bridge. Without it, we have not even a slim hope of victory. Her Majesty is counting on me, and I will not let her down. They have her surrounded. Time for a rescue! If we rush in heedlessly, we'll be trapped along with her. We must secure the route as we go. Never hurts to have a safe place to retreat to. Not so fast. If you want through, you've got to open those purses and pay the toll. Of all the irritating places to lay an ambush, this man is a mercenary. Perhaps offering a reward will allow us to avoid a fight. <laughs> Rain arrows down on their central forces! No! I should have sent soldiers west to deal with it. <laughs> Looks like you'll be my first real challenge in ages. Now let's dance! <laughs> Stepped in it there. And just surrender. Besides, you're a clever man. You know the Empire won't let someone as strong as you rot in a cell. Yeah, I guess you got a point. I chose to be here, and I'm going to fight the Empire to the end. My thanks. Mind taking it from here? I'll stand down now. I'll never be able to face the others again. Heavy as stone, but I will not stop fighting until I breathe my last. How do you know unless you keep living? I mean, 
Things like this tend to have a way of working themselves out, you know? I guess so, but... All right. I surrender. Breather. The arrows have stopped. Let us proceed. I will do this! Rest, Ladislava. This is a great achievement. You honor me, Your Majesty. May victory be yours this day. Now we can fight on even footing. Those are my lands at the other end of this bridge, and you lot are not welcome. Now there is a fool even by Alliance standards. Let us do them a favor and introduce him to an early grave. Listen up, rogues. You will defend the supplies we stole from the Empire to the death. I can already smell the coin they'll fetch me. We have our supplies. We must smite them before they can make their escape. I am Acheron, savior of the Alliance. Oh, and that's a good one. Let me just write that down here. Can't you idiots see I'm in trouble? Now stop standing about with your jaws slacking and help me already! I should have switched sides when I had the chance. No matter what, I will not misplace my heart. The Alliance's lands lie here, as well as Gloucester's own. So, we've taken the Great Bridge, have they? That makes us the Alliance's last defense. There must be a way to resolve this matter without further bloodshed, Father. Our first priority is to find Count Gloucester. He was on our side once. He'll surrender. There is no telling where the enemy might be left. We have no choice but to seize control of the entire bridge. If we had some sort of makeshift bridge, we could reach Count Gloucester without relying on our flying units. Those are Gloucester lands you see beyond me, and I will not suffer one heel of your boots to sully them. You got my back? No one is matching us! We'll do it together! I've got you now! Though I am reluctant to do this, I can see no other choice. House Gloucester is known for its tenacity. I took this place down before you have time to strap your armor on. Our foothold is secure. Now we need only capture the enemy commander. My, I'm more wounded than I realized. Enough. Stand down. Count Gloucester will soon be in our custody. Further resistance can serve no purpose. So be it. I am no use to my people if I die here. Lawrence, no! You monsters, how dare you hurt my son! Count Gloucester will not concede so easily now that we have damaged his precious heir. I will not shame my people by surrendering to you without a fight.
Now, attack! No more, your majesty. All of House Gloucester bows to your will. Victory is ours. But this is merely the first step of our rescue. Right you are. We need to relieve our allies who are embattled on Alliance lands. We won. This is no time to rest easy. There's a lot more work still to be done. Agreed. We will leave some troops here with the wounded to hold our position. Then take the reconsolidated force north without delay. Sadly, there can be no victory celebration until we have extricated Count Burgleys and the others. Based on our projections, they will run out of provisions at any moment. We can also assume they know we have made it to Gloucester meaning they will be waiting for us. But each hour they wait is another hour their stomachs remain empty. If we peel away House Gloucester's troops, we can create an opening in the enemy ranks. Once that's done, we'll bring an end to Claude's shady scheme. Interesting. It seems the Empire may not want our heads on pikes after all. That is good news. I was concerned they might be so upset as to seek your execution. But based on their posturing, it seems those fears were groundless. Well, I am an effective lord, if I do say so myself. They must realize taking my life would make it difficult to keep order on my lands. Few lords anywhere in Fodlan are as loved and respected by their people as you, father. Perhaps. But if so, that only makes my misjudgment all the more grave. I never should have let that man cajole me into starting such a needless fight. You say that now because we lost, but would your appraisal not be different in the face of victory? The people would have idolized you for ushering House Gloucester toward even greater prosperity. Questions of what if matter little after you lose a battle and even less after you have misled your people. The time to judge the right and wrong of things is before, not after. It is for this reason that I have decided to yield command of our house to you. I only pray you might walk us back from the terrible misstep I have made. Besides which, the Empire still views me as a traitor. If I fail to step down now, I will spend the rest of my days wondering when the axe might fall. I... I understand, Father. With all that has happened, it is hard not to see the wisdom in your decision. I will find a way to build a newer, stronger House Gloucester alongside the Empire. And just as it did before, our house will shine brighter than any in Leicester. Your Majesty, Gloucester has yielded his lands and titles to his firstborn son, Lawrence. This new Count Gloucester has expressed a desire to join the Empire. No doubt he wishes to make his loyalty plain by taking a clear stand against House Regan. Well, I see no reason to reject his offer. See that his soldiers are properly integrated. As you wish, Your Majesty. Sometimes I have no idea what goes through your noble heads. How can you possibly trust a house that just plunged a knife into your back? If a merc pulled a stunt like that, they'd either be cast aside or cut down where they stood. I believe it, and I'd like to do the same. 
But not just anyone can hold Gloucester territory together. And I have no one else to take Lawrence's place. Oh, right. I forgot that only mercs are replaceable. I did not think your feelings would be so easily hurt. Regardless, that's just the way of things in Fodland. But as I've told you, I intend to change this. The age of deciding our rulers by blood must end. A day will come when anyone can vie for the right to rule, and then we will be free of this wretched system. So stand with me. Help me make it so. Scarlet Blaze. The Triumph of Valor. To rescue Count Burglies, Edelgard seizes the Great Bridge of Murden, forcing Count Gloucester's surrender. With no time to lose, she then presses on, unbowed. But Claude is not one to be caught off guard. He rallies every resource at his disposal, determined to tighten the noose around Burglies' forces and prevent any rescue. So we've lost Gloucester. Unavoidable, perhaps, but it still stings all the same. Fortunately, I haven't been sitting on my hands this whole time. If we smash the Imperial reinforcements and stop them from breaking the siege, Count Burglies will have no choice but to give up. We're going to face that challenge, and we're going to face it with the Alliance's latest and greatest, which is why I've asked all of you here. Did you really just say latest and greatest with a straight face? Oh, he said it all right. And while I can't swear we'll have that, we do at least have numbers on our side. Yep, more than half of the old Golden Deer House is here. Some of us may not be quite as great as you say, but, well, you know best. I'm grateful to each of you for answering the call. It's more than I can say for some of our classmates. Yeah. Ignatz and Lawrence both sided with the enemy. No. About that. It pains me to say this, but how Cerdelia has made its allegiance to the Empire clear. It was against my parents' protests that I came here in the first place. If this battle doesn't unfold the way you're hoping, I may be forced to leave as quickly as I arrived. That's okay, Lysithia. You're not the only one who's here with strings attached. Yes. My adoptive father has also insisted I return home at once, should the tides turn against us. Sounds about right. Three cheers for that good old Alliance Solidarity. I'll fight with you to the end, Claude! Uh, unless it puts Maya in danger, then I'm out. Look, what matters is that you're all here, and that we settle this war with the next battle. Also, for full disclosure, I may have sort of brought along some extra professional muscle. Come on in. It's good to meet you. I'm the acting captain of Gerald's Mercenaries. Our guest here is fresh off another battle with the Empire on Kingdom soil. From what I gather, remaining in the Kingdom was no longer an option. And that's when our paths crossed here in Alliance territory. Oh, hello! I know Reliable when I see it, and you are definitely that. I'll do whatever you ask, as long as I'm getting paid. So long as we're allied, I won't fail you. All right, let's begin our council. As you've no doubt heard from our scouts, the path from here to Deirdre will be fraught with difficulties. The Alliance has constructed fortalices and palisades, and laid other traps to slow our progress. In addition, they are plotting ambushes at key positions along the way. Needless to say, we will not be able to avail ourselves of the direct route. But 
If we try to dance around all their traps, we'll never make it in time. Yes, but this is Count Burgley's we're talking about. He could probably stretch his soldiers a few extra days through sheer force of will. I would normally write off such an idea as lunacy, but sadly, it will likely come to that. We have made attempts to smuggle provisions to Count Burgley's through holes in the enemy lines, but this has met with little success. They must be so hungry! I know just how that feels. The struggle to get food when all you want to do is hide under your covers. Hello, old friend. I mean, no offense, but if time is truly so short, why do we waste it dithering in council? We should embark on our rescue mission straight away. Yeah, what are we waiting for? We're their only hope. I agree. Less talking, more saving. Calm down, all of you. Such rash action is exactly what Claude is counting on. So we must take the safe route, but do so as quickly as possible. A best of both worlds situation, I suppose. Understood. Good. With that decided, let's move on and discuss our preferred formation. Hey, Manuela. Hmm. She must be out. <laughs> Did I hear something? Oh, wait. Is she sleeping in one of the patient beds? Oh, you. So silly. <laughs> She's smiling. I wonder what she's dreaming about. Wait, don't go. So you're just gonna leave? Uh-oh. Now she's scowling. Looks like things are going downhill fast. Get back here. You'll regret this. You hear me? I'll never forget. <gasps> Morning, Manuela. Oh my, I don't even remember falling asleep. I don't suppose I was talking in my sleep, was I? Nah, I didn't hear anything. Really? I have a feeling you're just saying that. It's sweet of you, though. Actually, I had the most dismal dream that I'd finally found my soulmate, only for him to dump me. Just thinking about it makes me furious. How is it that even in my dreams I am hopelessly single? Oh, I, uh, I need a, a moment. Are you okay? I'm sorry, but uh, could I uh, trouble you for a glass of water? That is much better. Thank you. You got it. But, uh, it smells like you've been swimming in booze. Are you hungover? I might be. Is that a problem? Well, I don't think the infirmary is supposed to look like a bear charged through here. That seems like a problem to me. Off, will you? You're the one who trounced in here unannounced and eavesdropped on my private, if humiliating, sleep talking. And now you're attacking me for a tiny hangover in a messy room? Who do you think you are? My mother in law? What? No. But as your friend and comrade, I can't not say anything. I know, you're right. I'm sorry. I tend to fly off the handle when I'm embarrassed. Hey, can I ask you for one teensy favor? You want me to pretend like none of this ever happened, right? Don't worry, I won't tell a soul. You're a class act. Thank you. 
Well, I don't want everyone to think worse of me than they already do. I mean, honestly, where did it all go wrong? Did you know I was once a diva with the Middle Franc Opera Company? But now, apparently I'm just a shadow of my former self. Can you believe how rude that is? Why would you kick a girl when she's down? What? But I didn't... How about this? In lieu of hush money for our little secret, perhaps I'll let you hear me sing next time. I'll show you that this diva's just as dazzling as ever. Now you have something to look forward to. Anyway, did you need something? Huh? Oh, yeah. I'm sure I had a reason to come in here, but now I don't have the slightest idea what. <sighs> uh, Yuritsa? What's wrong? Not here, either. Hey, hold on. If you're looking for someone, I'd be more than glad to help. Uh, leave me be. Friendly as ever, I see. Guess you weren't much different back when you were a professor, either. Why don't you let me help you? You seem worried. How could you tell? You're not exactly hiding it. You nearly busted the chapel door clear off its hinges. I'm looking for someone. She is injured. Huh? Did someone go missing from the infirmary? Wait, are you talking about an enemy? Not an enemy. However, she fled when she saw me. Well, then why would she run? Oh, I get it. Was it Bernadetta? Not her. Though, the one I seek was likely frightened by me as well. Well, you're not really the most approachable guy. There's kind of this murdery aura about you. Like, if I let my guard down for even a second, it'd be the last thing I ever do. That is not my intention. I know that. But you'd probably still scare the life out of someone who's already jumpy. Even a beast would turn tail and run if it caught sight of the Death Knight. Then, what would you suggest? I will never capture her at this rate. Your biggest problem is that you always look like you're out for blood. Maybe we should start there. Just try to smile when the two of you talk. And definitely don't look like you're gonna kill her. When we talk? Interesting. Time is wasting. I must go. Wait, Yuritsa? Is he really gonna be okay? Is something wrong, Ferdinand? You're staring quite intently at those plants while you water them. I was merely reflecting on something I saw long ago in Enbar. Oh? What would that be? In truth, it is nothing noteworthy. Back when I was a child, I saw a water nymph dancing and singing in a fountain along the main street. She was radiant brilliant in the dewy light of the sun. But as an immature young lad, I grew embarrassed and ran away. Wait a minute. That sounds familiar. And you're sure of what you saw? A water nymph? Absolutely. Her song resonated within me. It was a bucolic tune sung by common folk around the capital. As I recall, she had not been wearing so much as a scrap of clothing. Anyway, once I finally mustered up the courage to return, the nymph had vanished. Such a tale hardly seems possible. 
What? That's the reason Ferdy ran away that day? No way. I've been wrong about him this whole time? I mean, considering how I must have looked in that fountain... Oh, no. Uh, I can't even begin to face him right now. I have to go back. Hmm? Is that Dorothea? I wonder what she's doing over there. Uh, he's seen me. All right, Dorothea, just be calm. It's fine. It's all fine. Everything's fine. Why, if it isn't Ferdy and Aidy, what a coincidence to bump into the two of you here. Uh, Dorothea, your face is red. Yes, indeed it is. Do you have a fever? Really? Um, uh, I feel fine, but... Well, I was just coming to check on things, but since it all checks out, I'll be going. Bye! Wait! You could suddenly take a turn for the worse. So, I will escort you back. No, I'm fine. I'm not going far. Yet still too far to travel alone. If something were to happen to you, it would already be too late. Come now, take my arm. Or, if it please you, I could carry you there. Enough! I am perfectly fine, so just mind your own business and... stay away from me. No one appreciates obstinance, Ferdinand. Apologies. Although, given the intensity of her rebuff, I worry she may not have liked me to begin with. Have I committed some grave wrong against her? What should I do? <laughs> At last, we come face to face! Constance, is something... Listen here, there's no need to dance around me, for I bear you no ill will. Uh, I am having confusion. What are you speaking of? I speak of the bad blood between Bridget and the Empire, of course. Ah, uh, the war. I am having my own feelings about. Surely you are aware that it was your father who invaded the lands of House Nouvelle, which I once called home. It was his aggressions which cost me my family, my friends, my land, everything! However, your father and many of your countrymen paid for this in the coin of their own lives. Furthermore, neither you nor I took part in that foolish conflict. Therefore, there is no merit to our dredging up the past. We need not be at each other's throats. Have I made myself clear? <laughs> Good! Now farewell! <laughs> um... Constance... has a personality of much color. I was not given a chance to give her my reply. I cannot be leaving things like this. I must be telling her that I have understanding. Constance? I am wanting to talk to you about what you were saying before. Greetings, Petra. I fear I caused you undue distress. Please accept my humblest apologies for the offense. One from my meager and reduced circumstances has no right to insult a woman of your royal standing. Um... <sighs> as galling as this must be after the fact, I humbly beg your forgiveness. You can have my forgiveness, although I was not taking any offense. Oh, what overflowing kindness. Truly your mercy is too good for a wretch such as I. But I should not expect aught else from one capable of ruling an entire people. You are a mighty boulder, and I but a pebble by the wayside. Let me speak, Constance, please. I am knowing that our relationship is... complicated. 
I think about this every day. It is filling my heart with pain and confusion. But you had the braveness to say what I could not. Stop, I beg you. You will crush my sad and pathetic frame under the weight of such undeserved compliments. I think it best if I keep my own counsel from now on. Pray pay my ramblings no mind. Oh my, now I have been so presumptuous as to tell you what to do. Please excuse me while I go crawl under a rock. Uh, I am not understanding what happened here. Which Constance should I be believing? Looks like there's lots of bugs around here. Go on and eat a bunch and grow nice and big plants. Hey, Bernie B. Doing a little garden care? Huh? Oh, uh, yes. Do you need something, Happy? Oh, wait. Wait! Are you here to finish me off and turn me into fertilizer? No! I'm completely devoid of nutritional content. I'm basically just air. No, but if you want to be fertilizer that badly, I'm certain it could be arranged. I just wanted to mention how I'm surprised to find carnivorous plants growing here. I was curious who was taking care of them, and now I seem to have found my answer. Yeah, carnivorous plants are my favorites. And mine as well. I had no idea we were such kindred spirits. That's so great! I never thought I'd find another carnivorous plant lover in all of Falkland. Yay! You really don't need to yell like that. So, which one do you like best, Bernie B? There's a lot to consider after all. The aroma, the texture, the way you prepare it. Oh yeah! Some smell nice, and some are just soft as all get out. Uh, but the way they're prepared? Like, how you take care of them? Hmm... I suppose there's a lot of variance there, too. Indeed. So of the ones here, which is your favorite? Maybe... this one. The one that looks like a jug. I like that one as well. It smells divine. And the experience really changes depending on what kind of berries you stuff it with. Can't say I've ever thought to stuff it full of berries, but I definitely see how that would change things. Oh, but I also like this one here with the leaves that act like a mouth. They're so teensy and cute, and they blossom with white flowers. I could just stare at them all day. Interesting. I always pick them before the flowers can bloom, so I didn't know that. Aren't the buds wonderful? Of course, wrapping with leaves is great, too. Yeah, the buds are unusual. I love them. And it's fun watching the leaves move. I'm happy you like watching them as much as me. Watching? Huh? In any case, now we know we like the same ones. We should have a bite together next chance we get. Anyway, I have to be off. See ya. Yep. Next time we'll go out together and... um... Get something to eat? I guess that sounds nice. <laughs> oh, I love days like today when there's hardly anyone around. Hello, Bernadetta. Do you have a minute? I wasn't doing anything, I swear! I'll take that as a yes. Listen, there's a small matter that needs a bit of handling, so I'm gathering up anyone who's available. Which, as of right now, is just the three of us. Okay, well... I'm not much good at dealing with things, and certainly not with... you know... matters. Knock it off. You can more than hold your own in a fight, and you know it. I mean, sure, we'll be fighting bandits in a cave, but how hard can it be? 
Oh, see? I should definitely sit this one out. Isn't there someone else you can ask? This is my day off. It's Bernie Day. Actually, nearly everyone else is off seeing to one task or another at the moment. Oh, I guess that's why it's so nice and quiet around here today. Enough! If we don't make haste, the enemy will realize we are coming and flee their location. <laughs> Who are you? That's Duke Gert, the Minister of Foreign Affairs. I assume this is your first time meeting. This may very well be, but I have quite often worked alongside your mother. Really? I guess I should be thanking you for keeping her safe then. Ah, not so. In fact, it is very much I who am indebted to her and her considerable talents. All right, I think that's enough introductions for now. We need to get this show on the road, remember? Quite right. Bernadetta, let me get you up to speed. Two years ago, I was attempting to recover the lost fetters of Dromi. But a suspicious personage, seemingly having learned of my efforts, managed to infiltrate my inner circle. They were likely working for Lord Arundel. In a related note, someone attached themselves to my father, Baron Ox, during the time I went missing. My investigation into that person led me to Duke Garrett's inner circle. Point B. These suspicious actors all appear to lead back to a single group. And those are the cave people? Indeed. After many fruitless attempts, we finally managed to track them down. We must strike before they have a chance to relocate. And Edelgard and Hubert and the rest of them really aren't around? It's just... me? Looks like Bernie Day will have to wait. It's bad luck we ended up getting the report today. Sorry, Bernadetta. Well, I'll just have to take it out on the enemy. Let's go. And remember, time is of the essence. We will strike a mighty blow against any who would threaten our empire and her majesty. And as I fear I'm not much of a fighter, I will be depending greatly on you all. Good luck. Is this truly the place? Because it looks for all the world like a hideout of common brigands. I think that's the idea. So first, we'll need to eliminate the bandits outside. Bernadetta, they're no match for you. You really think so? Well, in that case, I guess I can give it a shot. I got this. We can enter their base now. Into the caves, everyone. Attack? How did they find us? Uh oh. Sounds like they're onto us. We had best get ready for a tough fight. I was so bad for them. These people are just trying to hide away from the world. And here we come barging in. Kill them all! No prisoners! Okay, never mind. Let's get him! Let us join forces! I'm happy! I think this is gonna work! Be strong to survive, I guess. You're you spend this with no 
no respite. I need somewhere to catch my breath. What about that cave over there? Looks like a nice little hideaway to me. No, wait! success, I suppose. He is certainly proving to be a troublesome foe. I will have to inform Her Majesty. We should all feel good about getting through that last battle with our heads still on our shoulders. Thanks mostly to the two of you. Yes, you set my mind at ease regarding our future prospects. And I've come out of it with a fine story for Lady Varley. Oh, um, you did? Yes. She's been quite worried about you. But now I can tell her you're getting along wonderfully. Um, thank you? And with that, I must take my leave. Of all the Imperial nobles I've met, that guy seems like one of the most decent and normal. The kind of man you can trust. Yes, what you see is what you get with the good Duke. He's a truly honest soul. He tries to keep himself safe and sound, of course. But that's no different than any other noble. He also seemed pretty worried about Bernadetta. So hey, are these caves great or what? All that cold, crisp air just settles right in here. It would be a great place to curl up and hide. I have no idea what you're talking about. Come on, you know, the mountain air, the clean type, it all settles down in the caves. I like that. <sighs> hey, whatever you say. Such caves are often layers for monsters as well. Oh, and bandits, obviously. When it comes to curling up, I think this would be more dangerous than cozy. E yeah, that's actually a good point. It might be too dangerous to hang out here all alone. Plus, if heavy rains have been eroding the bedrock, a bad enough storm could collapse the entire system. 
All that to say, I think you're safer staying in a room with four man-made walls. Fine! I won't hide in caves anymore! Are you happy? Anymore? But you're always just locked up in your room. You're not! We see each other all the time! Could a locked up person do that? Huh? Uh, I guess not, no. You guess? So mean! Sorry, that came out wrong. Apology accepted. But you better watch it. Well, I think we're done here. Let's head back. We love you, Manuela! <laughs> Did you see that? Dorothea looked right at me. Well, that crowd was amazing. I thought they were going to faint on the spot the moment you appeared. Pretty impressive reaction, considering how long it's been since you quit the stage. Don't sell yourself short, Dorothea. Those people were cheering full throat for you as well. That's also a fine reaction, considering you left the songstress life behind nearly two years ago. But time passes quickly, and let me tell you, it has certainly done a number on me. Oh, stop it. Time hasn't diminished your beauty nor your voice. Well, you're very sweet to say so. But we both know I'm getting by with smoke mirrors and the skin of my teeth. I'm no longer fit to command the stage. At best, I can serve as a bodyguard to our successors in the Middle Franc Opera Company, as they look to entertain our troops. Yes, well, all kidding aside, we both know it was the current songstress, Adrienne, who received the loudest cheers from the crowd. Hey, so, not to bring down the mood, but, uh, what am I doing here? I don't know the first thing about opera, and I'm sure you had plenty of people clamoring to keep all of you safe on this little excursion. So, why me? We've already been over this, Dorothea. You and I both know this kind of thing isn't my cup of tea. Actually, your unfamiliarity is the reason we chose you to accompany us. If we brought along a bunch of star-struck fans to serve as escorts, it would end in disaster. Sadly, we've learned from experience that people will use any excuse to get close to our singers. Sometimes, they even convince themselves that we've reciprocated their feelings, when we've clearly done nothing of the sort. Alas, we've all had to get quite good at close-quarter combat as a result. The Opera Company was where I learned my dagger skills, though I admit it's hardly the most appropriate weapon for a battlefield. Sounds intense. Indeed. Behind the glitz and glamour of the stage, swirl all manner of dark desires. But when it works, everyone comes together to beat back the darkness and create something magical. Like most everything else, you just have to take the good with the bad. <sighs> this kind of talk really takes me back. Forgive our intrusion, my lady, but we're ready to begin moving again. We should reach the next town in a little over... Hmm? What's all that racket? Sounds like we're up. Don't let them harm any members of the company. We must protect the opera company. Make this a performance to remember. <laughs> Are these kidnappers? Thieves? Well, I guess it doesn't matter. We'll send them packing no matter who they are. Oh, these people look fancy. And fancy folk always got valuables on them. Now drop what you've got. <laughs> Ha! <laughs> 
Stronger. I'm getting better, but at what cost? Thank you. I can keep going now. We should be safe now. Singers, go on ahead. They're getting away! Oh, you screwed this up for us good! Still more of them, huh? This wiping them out's our only choice. long can this go on? And how many of these boars are there anyway? Have no fear, my dear Manuela. I have come to rescue you. <laughs> Adam, you came for me. Oh dear, am I actually into this? Sweet surprise. It's Manuela and Dora Kia in the flesh. Somebody sock me, cause I gotta be dreaming! You're so beautiful, Dorothea. <laughs> I was a huge fan when I used to live in the capital. Please, let me come with you. This reminds me of the battle scenes from our operas. You always were a natural at stage combat, Manuela. And you were no slouch either, Dorothea. Your swashbuckling lit up the proscenium. Oh, Manuela, I'll follow you anywhere. I've often wondered if others like you never learn of their talents and fall instead into the bandit life. Yes, I suppose it's lucky I turned out this way, instead of as a common thief lurking by the side of some... Yeah, not bad. Dusty highway. The Diva Duet! We'll charm them into submission! Apologies! I wasn't actually fishing, but I still like what we caught. It's good to know the people still really love us. Especially bandits, apparently. Not quite sure how to feel about that. <sighs> I hope everyone from the opera company made it safely to town. We had bandits popping out from every which way, didn't we, Manuela? Indeed. But those rogues were no match for our combined charms. You even managed to woo some of them to our side. I'm impressed. I could never do that. Still, why were there so many bandits camped this close to a town? Is it because of the war? In a sense. Care to explain that? Of course. You see, towns within the Empire have begun tightening their security for fear of the enemy. And in regions near the front line, such as this one here, there are naturally more soldiers about. That leaves the bandits with no place to go. Sounds like they should just abandon the brigand's life and become mercenaries instead. Easier said than done. 
take the bandits we just fought. It's not as if they have a chain of command or central organization. They are clearly a group that came together out of common interest and survival, not any manner of grand military ambition. Guess that explains why they fought the way they did. All swagger and no plan. In any case, I came the moment I heard about bandit activity in the area. I hypothesized the opera company might be targeted, and so rushed to your aid. Well done, Hanuman. That's a more clever course of action than I expected from you. You could have ended that before the second part. Oh, don't be upset. In fact, you should be pleased I feel comfortable enough with you to speak my mind. It's nice how you two can be so honest with each other. Do you think so? Well, that's certainly a more pleasant way to view things. That's exactly how I try to look at it. At least until a certain someone comes along and screws it up. All right, knock it off, you two. If you insist on indulging in these sparring sessions, at least have the courtesy to let the rest of us leave the area first. Come on, let's go. Yeah, let's leave him to it. No, wait! I apologize. Just please don't leave me alone with this woman. I'm also sorry. Let's just forget this ever happened and head back as one big happy family. All right? Huh? What's... Oh, it's a dream. Why do you always settle for such simple reasoning? You know this is more than a fabrication of your sleep-addled mind. Our first reunion in who knows how long, and you try to write me off as a figment of your imagination? Hmm. Sorry about that, though I was definitely asleep last I checked. Anyway, what do you want? To warn you, something is troubling me eating away at me, actually. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I can sense a presence closing in on you. A dangerous one. The Ashen Demon, right? This wouldn't be your first warning about that one. Hmm, that might be it. Perhaps the two of you will square off in battle soon. Good, because this time I'm gonna win. I have to. Fortunately, I'm pretty used to these powers of yours by now. Then I'll let myself stay just a tiny bit optimistic. Just don't forget that your opponent has had as much time to grow as you. Your future isn't the only one at stake here. The demon could also put an end to Edelgard's vision with as little as one swing of a sword. Whatever happens, we can't let all our hard work be undone. Since when have you been such a warrior? I've got this, trust me. I won't let anything happen, not to Edelgard or to the others. What do you mean? I'm always worried about you. After all, you're my... Yeah, yeah, I'm your partner in destiny. <laughs> I finally got you to say it! <sighs> How wonderful! I knew Count Burgley's was formidable. But I clearly did not give the man enough credit. I thought for certain he would have fallen by now. And yet here we are. If we're handing out credit, Claude deserves some as well. Maintaining a siege for this long takes its own toll on morale. Yet his troops remain disciplined, well positioned, and ready to engage us. One advantage to a siege is mobility. They can deploy soldiers up and down the line as needed to keep the upper hand. In other words, 
They are outfitted with many highly mobile units, which means they can respond quickly to enemy reinforcements as well. If we rush in blindly and are driven back, it would likely break our allies' spirits for good. Not even Count Burglies would be able to rally them again. Surrender would be the only option. <sighs> Why are they wavering now when we're so close? We're not looking to win the war today. We just have to break the siege. We should attack their lines at multiple positions. We don't need to win the battle. We just need them to break formation long enough for the Count and his troops to get out of there. Well, this is new. You are not often one to give voice to your opinions on tactics. Still, you have struck the proverbial nail on the head. It is exactly how we must proceed. Then it's decided. I look forward to your exploits on the battlefield. Today, we free our Imperial allies and reward their continued valor in the face of impossible odds. Count Burglies controls the stronghold in the center of the flame, but the enemy has him completely cut off from Ace. Our goal is to break the snake so he and his troops can evacuate safely. This is much for securing surrender before reinforcements arrive. Well, you all know what to do. Engage the enemy. There's no time for the delicate approach. Let's tear into him from all sides! No victory this day if we do not rescue both Burglies and his troops. I'm itching to show what my muscles can do. Now, who wants to be first? Wait. I stand with my friends and will not permit you to pass. That's Raphael. Don't kill him, please. Let me talk to him first. Aren't negotiations with Margrave Edmund still ongoing? Will you come with me? Perhaps Look we can win Marianne me. over to our side. I thought I might find you here, Lawrence. Yes, House Gloucester fights with the Empire now. But what of you? Is this truly where you wish to die? This is rough. My body's crying out for a break. You don't have to do this, Rafa. Think about Maya. She needs you, remember? Hey, no fair. But, uh, all right, you nuts. I'm in, but only because it's you. Her Majesty comes to rescue us. I know your spirits are weary. But rekindle them now with whatever spark of hope remains in your soul. What does it matter if I die? A fox with Margrave Edmund will go much better if you surrender here. Will you not consider it? You're right. My adoptive father would want me to lay down my arms, not my life. We have broken through! Continue pushing! We must secure an exit for our allies. Taking down those strongholds will drive a wedge into their siege. There are two strongholds. Look, I really need to hold this line. So why don't you just leave and we'll call it a day. We must deploy our forces with cleverness to be taken both. 
Now, charge and attack. Please stand down, Hoda. It would grieve me terribly to take your life. We'll do it together. should stand down because I'm not going anywhere. Get out of there, Hilda. We can't lose you. Yeah, all right. Sorry. All right, here they come. But I came here to fight and I won't back down. So Delia has already offered us their allegiance. Which means Lysithia is here of her own accord. A detachment of white mages stands ready to mend our wounded comrades. Oh, hold on! I can't fight you! You're from House Ordelia! Well, don't expect me to hold back just because you do. Not bad. No, not bad at all. about what was done to you, Lysithia. And as one who understands that intimately, I ask you to join my cause. You too? Yes, all right. I'll hear you out. Now, if they'll just be kind enough to let us escape this way... Now, heal Count Burglies' forces! Pay attention now. Thank you. The siege is coming apart at the seams. Deploy the reinforcements. Fill those gaps. They're trying to shore up areas where we've thinned their ranks. Don't let that happen. Well met, my son. For the first time in my life, I thought my end had come for me. Yeah, I've never seen you in such bad shape. You look half dead. The siege is broken, men. Your courage and perseverance have been rewarded. The way is open. Move as one and defend the Count and his soldiers as we go. You think I'm just gonna let you slink out of here? <laughs> I'm already two steps ahead. Looks like we're up. They cut off our escape and... Oh no, look who's with them. We won't put a dent in Gerald's company with the numbers he has. I vote we rush Claude's main position instead. It would indeed catch him by surprise. But do we flank from the left or right? Either way, let's choose a path and clear out anyone foolish enough to stand before us. Very well. We attack from that direction. Her Majesty places a train! Charge! His retreat is looking more and more like a full-on assault. Stay with him, everyone! Hold on. Are they coming for us? We're nearly clear of the battlefield. Just one more push and... Oh, no! It won't do to have you slip our grasp now. Ancient demon. Clever of Claw to keep this little surprise for the moment it would matter most. I'll handle the mercenary. The rest of you press on. Don't. Stop, no matter what. You'll 
never get a better crack at the Alliance's leadership, Your Majesty. Hit them with all you have. Leave nothing on the battlefield. Count Fergles is keeping the Ashen Demon busy, which means now is our chance to strike at Claude. I can stand this no longer. I'm falling back. They're avoiding us entirely and attacking the main position instead. Looks like someone over there has half a brain after all. Get lost if they've made it this far, but maybe I can still take out an officer or two. Trophy for the Emperor. Is that all you got? You got my back? Let's make a scene! We'll do it together! Has <laughs> got you now! That's all I can take. Let's see if our new mercenary friend is worth all that gold. Must be getting old. Enough! I'm falling back. Which just leaves the Ashen Demon. We're close to the finish now, so let's take whatever time we need and do this right. That clash with Count Burglies has left the demon weary. This could be our best chance to crush that pest for good. No escape. This didn't go how I expected, but I can still do some damage. How many times have we fought now? Either way, this will be the last. You're right about that. I'm not letting you leave here alive, Ashen Demon. I'll take you all on. Witness my true life. Let's link up. Let's make a scene! We'll do it together! I've got you now! The Empire has grown strong. I might actually have to work for this one. We finally got that menace on the ropes. We can win this! For one so small. Perhaps you truly are one of their descendants. In any event, you labored to destroy my vessel, did you not? That is a deed most foul. One you will pay for with your life! <laughs> You cannot hope to win so bound in flesh. Pitiful. 
This isn't a fight you can win. Get out of there! You can run all you like. Why do you... fight me? Why so this? I'm sorry, Claude. They were too much for us. It's all right, Hilda. Well, it's not, but I knew this was a possible outcome. I was hoping the terrain might let us hold, but against that many soldiers deployed that skillfully, it just wasn't enough. You sound sad. It's a little weird. Can you blame me? Look at how many people have died because I decided to fight this war. <sighs> Maybe I should have just let the Empire have their way. My father and the others never would have accepted that. You had to throw everything you had at the enemy at least once, or they'd think you were a coward forever. Wow, Hilda. I didn't think you'd picked up on all of that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Too bad everything I had still wasn't enough. Well, the next step is to put our heads together and figure out what to do next. I hope you don't mind if I lean on you and that brother of yours for support. Lester's roundtable is overdue for some big changes. Again, your majesty. You've got my deepest thanks for rescuing us. And since my lack of foresight's to blame, let me apologize again for what happened. I will not hear of it, Count Burglies. Had any but you been in command, I would be collecting corpses right now instead of thanks. I failed to see what Duke Regan and Count Gloucester were plotting. The blame is mine alone. So I will hear no more self-reproach from you. Go now and rest those weary bones. I'm grateful for the kindness, Your Majesty. Honestly, this experience shook me more than you might realize. I never would have made it through without the brave men and women who served me. They're the ones who deserve your praise. Understood. I will see they are duly rewarded. Hubert, summon Monica and have that put in writing as an official decree. And now, I want to know how we are faring with our efforts in the kingdom. And here I thought we won. As did I. Who knew the Ashen Demon had that kind of strength? Not that I'm making excuses. You gave me power of my own, and it still wasn't close to enough. That's not true. Of course it is. What am I even up against here? It's like I looked away for one second and suddenly I was facing someone else entirely. Hmm, that would explain what was troubling me before. That is the unique danger I sensed. Still, you can win this fight. I know you can. And I'll do whatever I can to make it so. We'll claim victory over that monster together. You know what? You're right. I'll be strong enough one day if I just keep at it. Still, one day could be years from now at this rate. We should probably think of a backup plan. And hey, the Ashen Demon's a mercenary, right? Might be best for the Empire to toss some coin their way and put the rivalry behind us. You want to hire that thing? Seriously? Fighting side by side with the Ashen Demon? Are you mad? You make it sound like the worst idea in the world. We have a war to win here, remember? Gotta keep an open mind. Ah, I understand now. You've witnessed your adversary's true strength and convinced yourself you cannot win. No, I just know a valuable resource when I see one. And we're far better off with them than we are against them. 
If that's really how you feel, then so be it. But trust me, you don't need to worry. You'll get stronger soon, I promise. So maybe don't go relinquishing your prey just yet. After all, I desire nothing more than to see you achieve your goals. A glove does not defy the hand, and yet you've done just that. So this is my name, yet I am also called The Beginning. I am progenitor and mother to all who call Fotlin home. Where am I? I am not here to answer all you ask. Yet, I will grant the one. You stand before my throne. If you so wish, then take a seat. But know then that your flesh is mine to wield. You lack the power to resist. My flesh? What are you saying? You should not have interfered! I could have cut that wretch down with a stroke! Oh, that one vexes me so. When next we meet, I must step in and deal with them myself. It is quite clear that you cannot my power safely wield. Do I speak plain? Not in the slightest. I have so many questions. Hey, lazy bones. <laughs> Get up already. You sure you're all right? You don't seem like yourself. I'm fine. Just a strange dream. Like the ones you used to have. Yes, but this time we talked. Huh? You fool! That was no dream! Ugh. What's wrong? Nothing. Wait, didn't you... Do you lack wits? My voice is not for him. Whenever I speak, it is for you alone. On second thought, I think there is something wrong. I mean, my hair's still a different color, right? Yes, and your eyes, too. How that happened is beyond me. Anyway, we lost the battle, so probably best to wave this place goodbye and find somewhere to rest up. Is that a fact? Actually, I think I'd feel more comfortable staying here on the battlefield a while longer. I just need to swing my sword around, get my head on straight. Don't worry, I'll be fine. If you say so, but if it gets any worse, tell me. Hubert, if you would. Of course, Your Majesty. Let me apprise you all as to what is going on. As you know, our Talons have been sunk in our little alliance problem for some time now. But now we must deal with the Kingdom, which has sent an army to claim the heads of Count Roe and any others who came over to our side. However, Roe is seated at Arian Road, the fortress city, a citadel as hard to crack as Fort Mercius. Ah, Arian Road, the Silver Maiden. Seems sort of weird to call a big hulking place like that a maiden. That's because she's as hard to get near as the purest of maidens. If you're still confused, that's your own problem. Yeah, I still don't get it. Our reports indicate that despite the strength of the Kingdom's army, they are still struggling to take the fortress city. But, given enough time, they will unless we send reinforcements. Therefore, we must direct our attention to the Kingdom once more. Will this constant bouncing between the Kingdom and Alliance not take its toll on our soldiers? Who said we were taking our entire force? 
We will depart for Garigmok with elite troops, then collect fresh units before proceeding west. Simultaneously, I plan to have Duke Garrett summon the Western Lord soldiers and march toward the fortress city. We will join up at that point and strike at the kingdom's main force together. What say you to that? I would say it is the ideal strategy, at least on paper. Okay, let's keep our optimism in check here. I mean, speaking from personal experience, nothing ever turns out the way you want it to. Should we be having concern? If the plan is good, we will find success. And the Alliance? They may attempt another one of their schemes while we're distracted. They will not. Her Majesty is taking a measured approach to resolving matters with Lester. Count Burgley's is worn as thin as they are. We will have him set up camp at the Great Bridge and continue negotiations from there. To our advantage, Gloucester's new Count Lawrence has decided to join the Empire. Additionally, the daughters of Houses Ordelia and Edmund have been given leave to fight by our side. Besides, from what I hear, the Round Table is too busy chewing itself apart to start any more trouble. That leaves only the Knights of Saros to contend with. The Minister of Religious Affairs will handle them. My father? But he's not capable of facing the Knights! I let the Ashen Demon outmaneuver me in the last battle. That won't happen again. Scarlet Blaze. The Maiden's Peril. When he learns of the Empire's struggle, Dimitri decides the time is right to strike. He moves swiftly to drive the Empire out, toppling one unfaithful Western Lord after another. Finally, he descends on Aryan Road, seat of Count Roe, the first Lord to betray him. Thus does Edelgard's army begin another grueling march to rescue a different Count. We've been here before. But we were in such a rush to rescue Lenato that we never got more than a glimpse of Aryan Road. Can't really appreciate the scale that quick. And now we're back to bail it out. If only Claude hadn't hatched his feudal scheme. We could have avoided all these needless battles and saved countless lives. Yet, in a more positive light, he handed us the perfect opportunity to show that not even the Alliance and Kingdom together can match the Empire's strength. Once we crush the army of Fargus, our superiority will be clear for all to see. And will that actually result in fewer casualties going forward? Because that is what would put Her Majesty's heart at ease. I will make no guarantees for matters beyond our control. So long as fanatics are willing to die for the Central Church, casualties are inevitable. Ah. Uh. We broke the Alliance's siege, and we can break the Kingdom's too! We're lucky it's a stronghold like Aryan Road that's under siege. It shouldn't be half the nail-biter we had to deal with last time. Yes, but last time Count Burglies was in command. For all we know, Count Roe will break like a twig and surrender the moment he hears the first soldier crest the hill. As I see it, we have two options. We can take a direct path for Aryan Road, or we can wait until we scatter the Kingdom troops that are fanned out in the north. It is a most vexing decision. As a professional at staying holed up, I think we should secure the perimeter first and get rid of as much danger as we possibly can. Time is important. We should be striking fast and hard. War doesn't wait. We should free the city while we still have the chance. Let's keep both options open and see how the situation unfolds. General Randolph. 
Yes, your majesty. I commend you for holding Aryan Road with what few soldiers you had. Thank you, your majesty. But I am unworthy of such praise when I failed to prevent the siege. Coordination with Count Roe proved difficult. It was all I could do merely to keep the enemy in check. That alone is commendable. A more foolish man would have rushed to glory, and gotten himself and his underlings killed in the process. I have a key role for you in the coming rescue, General. I know you were up to the task. Of course, Your Majesty. My brother and I will give our all. Very good. But do not let your eagerness for victory come at the cost of lives. We have many more battles ahead and must conduct ourselves accordingly. Hey there, Edelgard. Leafing through documents, are we? This is new. Yeah, completely out of character, I know. But one of these reports has been stuck in my mind. Back when Count Roe declared fealty to the Empire, other lords committed to doing the same, right? But the moment we left and the Kingdom Army marched south, they fell right back in line. It's like they never betrayed Fargus in the first place. Good memory. That's exactly what happened. Houses Elidor and Duval both made overtures to join the Empire. So why is the Kingdom welcoming them back without so much as a wrist slap? Is this another House Gloucester thing where the politics demand it? Seems like their importance as noble families outstrips the fact they're all two-faced liars. Politics are doubtless involved, but the heads of houses can change, as they did with Gloucester. We're not bound to place importance on any one individual, only the bloodline. So the Kingdom's aristocracy gets the same free pass as the Alliance's? Yes, and the Empire's as well, even though I do my best to treat everyone equally. I cannot afford to slight a minister's house, for example. They broke fealty to the former Prime Minister when they swore it to me. Would you call that treachery? What makes it different from the actions of Count Gloucester? Greed makes it different. And I'd say betraying someone for money is lower than low. That's one way to look at it. I agree that what matters is the reason behind the change of heart. Was it for land? For status? to exact revenge or seize glory. Because I view a betrayal for any of those reasons to be utterly worthless. Yeah, money and vengeance are pretty shallow motives. Oh, that's why I'm here. I'm not talking about mercenaries. I'm talking about lords. Each of their decisions has the ability to upend the lives of thousands, if not more. Only a person with the character to realize that is truly fit to lead. I've worked for plenty of nobles in my time. Until now, I couldn't have cared less what it means to actually be one. But then you gave me responsibility over all of these soldiers, and it... Well, I guess I'm starting to see the world in a different way. And the people who live in it, too. I see. I admit, your grand designs sail clear over my head sometimes. Most of the time, actually. But that's why I stand by you. I feel like one of these days, something important's gonna rub off on me. And I feel the same. You've opened my eyes to all manner of things I might never have seen otherwise. You are a commoner without the fetters of a family name, wielding your sword directly for me. That's more valuable than you may realize. Needless to say, that is the only logical course of action. Uh, excuse me, are you even listening? 
Uh, yeah, I totally am. You're gonna save this prince who's being held captive by some evil cult of sorcerers in order to restore House Nouvelle? Uh, that is not even remotely close to what I said. Where has your mind been this whole time? Creating new magic, charting unknown sorcery waters. Therein lies the means to make my dream a reality. To that end, I have decided that you will make a most fitting test subject for my research. <laughs> no thanks. What reason could you possibly have to refuse? Do you not want the honor of helping House Nouvelle regain its former glory? I don't mind lending a hand, but I'm not so keen on being a test subject. You don't even know what'll happen. Wouldn't it make sense to experiment on yourself first? Huh, a rather astute deduction for one such as yourself. However, there is one critical flaw in your reasoning. Were I to do as you propose, I would be unable to properly observe the results with my own eyes. <laughs> Well, then, you'll just have to be patient until someone volunteers. We'd have a big problem on our hands if something happened to me before the next battle, right? Actually, that probably goes for everyone. I suppose you are correct. But then, my research has reached an impasse! Hmm, I guess so. Okay, how about this? Since we're at war, why not try and distinguish yourself in battle? You could still conduct your research at the same time. Combat's more my wheelhouse anyway. In fact, we could even start right now with some training. What do you say? Uh, I respectfully decline. While I am not entirely opposed to the idea of military prestige, I am unable to accompany you at this time. Training at night will surely suffice. At night? But you won't have enough time if you don't train during the day. You're not planning on pulling all-nighters, are you? Oh, please! I am not that foolish! I simply do not wish to train at this very moment. Are you sure? I'm not trying to force you, but there's no time like the present. This is your dream we're talking about, after all. Are you just gonna give up on it? I appreciate the encouragement, but there are extenuating circumstances at play. Nevertheless, I shall succeed in all my endeavors, be they magical or military, and I shall do it all in my own way. <laughs> oh, hey, Happy. You sure like the outdoors, huh? I guess you could say that. Probably because I grew up in a forest. Or maybe it's because I was forced to live in Abyss all that time. Oh, that's right. You were at Garrig Mock too. I wasn't there for very long, but I never would have guessed there was a whole town hiding just below my feet. Well, it was. I should know. What about you, though? What did you do before hopping into the mercenary business? Before that? Oh, well... I lived with my mom in a village deep in the mountains. Feels like forever ago now. Oh, I call her my mom, but we weren't actually related. She was more like a foster parent. So what was she like? I don't suppose she was interested in magical research, was she? I don't know about research, but yeah, she knew how to use magic. Interesting. How did you two end up living together? I don't really know the details. I can't remember anything from before I was with her. Apparently, I was a foundling. Sadly, finding a starving, abandoned child isn't that uncommon. But for her to take me in and raise me as her own, I think my mom was someone special. Yeah, I guess. She was probably a good person. Something on your mind, Happy? 
I was just wondering why someone who could use magic was living in a remote mountain village. You know, someone told me one time that she wasn't actually from there. But when I asked her about it, she just gave me this sad smile. Hmm. Very interesting. Seriously, Happy, what's going on? Does it have something to do with my mom? No, it's nothing. Sorry to bring it up. I was just letting my imagination get the better of me. Sorry if I upset you, really. I'm fine, don't worry about it. No big deal. Besides, I'm sure you had your reasons, right? If you ever feel like talking about it, I'm always here. Thanks. Just some old demons of mine. Happens to the best of us. Don't sweat it. You want to head back and get something to eat? Sure. Oh, and we can pick some berries on the way. I think I saw some a little bit ago. What kind? After all my time in the mountains, I'm something of a berry expert myself. <sighs> I am stuffed. Looks like you can really pack it away too, pal. Still can't compete with you, Balthus. That sure did hit the spot, though. Got that right. Now we can charge into tomorrow's battle fully energized. Hey, let's say we make a little bet. So you can go deeper into enemy territory. No way. Warfare and wagers aren't a good mix. I mean, yeah, we're fighting for a renown out there. But it's not a game. It's life and death. Figured you'd say something like that. You seem like the type. And yet, you asked me anyway. Don't try to drag me down with you, Balthus. What's wrong with a little game of chance? It's not like it's evil or something. Then what would you call it? Financially irresponsible? Because I don't want to end up broke either. Not like some people I know. You're one tough nut, I'll give you that. But I'm not talking about money. You know what I'm getting at, right? When you're on the battlefield, the only thing you can bet is your life. That's exactly what I take issue with. Okay, I know this might sound a little far-fetched, but hear me out. This ought to be good. Whatever you do, you'll do it ten times better if you're having fun, right? That's the key to success. I'd probably agree if our lives weren't on the line out there. Battles are different, and you know it. You could be having the time of your life one minute, then one slip up and you're bleeding out on the ground. Look, I get where you're coming from. Really. But my way's gotten me this far. Living on that edge between victory and death is the key to survival. Maybe for you, but that's not how everyone else approaches it. I've known plenty of mercs who said the same thing, but they never made it back home. In fact, you're the only one of them who's still kicking. So I'm sorry, but I have to disagree. You know, you and I have a lot in common. We're practically kindred spirits. But this is the one thing we don't see eye to eye on. Strange, isn't it? From where I'm standing, the only strange thing is the way you're thinking about this. Well, I guess the bet's off then. Let's just put this little chat behind us and give it our all tomorrow. Sounds good. Just don't get too reckless and wind up losing your head, okay? <sighs> ah, Bernadetta. I see the documents I was waiting for have finally arrived. Then would you be so kind as to hand those over? They are addressed to me, after all. Oh, um, right. Edelgard asked me to bring them. Phew, that was heavy. What are all these documents, anyway? 
old records of bandit activity in this area that I need for my investigation. Hey, that reminds me. I heard we had a group of bandits cornered, but they sort of... got away. Yes, a most vexing development. It beggars belief that our troops prove unable to exterminate even these few stray vermin. <laughs> Wait, are you angry? Oh, I doubt it is worth raising my ire over. <sighs> That's good. Um, but you look like you're angry. Bernadetta. Are you aware of how your persistence often leads to the very outcome you wish to avoid? Uh, I mean, um, yes? In any event, my mood is what it is because I must now locate a den of rats. I will need to research previous stomping grounds, then cross-reference the location of their old layers in order to work out where this new one might be. Wow, that sounds like a ton of work. Yes, but there is nothing for it. These craven rats will not re-emerge once they've burrowed into their nests. Hey, neat! I definitely understand the desire to burrow in somewhere and never come out. But when there are festivals and stuff, they might slip up and leave? Maybe? Possibly? I mean, everyone loves festivals. Except when there are people around, which is usually the case. Somehow I suspect you would not emerge for even the most magnificent of carnivals. However, you and the rats may differ on that point. We do what now? Yes, of course. Unlike you, these thieves have no particular desire to live away from others. We have had them on the run for some time, which means they've not been able to earn coin through their usual underhanded work. Thus, if I were to prepare a place where they could cut a few easy purses, they might consider the spoils to be worth the risk. Um, okay. And the bait shall be a festival. Due to the war, we have not held a genuine festival for quite some time, after all. So even if we do not capture the rodents, and it merely brings much-needed succor to the people, I would still consider it a success. Done, Bernadetta. You have come up with a splendid idea that eluded even myself. Why are you complimenting me out of nowhere? Are you plotting against me? Not particularly, no. Although I am thinking I will require your assistance in this matter from now on. Caspar? Oh, what's with the mountain of books? Wait, please don't tell me you're planning to use them in your training somehow. What kind of guy do you think I am? They're books. I'm gonna read them. Read? A, a book? You? Did you eat something weird? Come on, you sound just like Linhart. I've torn through books before, sometimes even two or three whole chapters a day. Please don't use the word torn when it comes to books. You're going to make my heart stop. And books are divided into chapters, not chappers. Oh, Caspar, promise me you won't hurt those books. You don't have to worry, Dorothea. I realized something the other day. A person who's responsible for troops can't rely on physical strength alone. You probably wouldn't guess it from how my father looks, but he's pretty good about that stuff. Can't say I'm shocked that the Empire's Minister of Military Affairs has read the occasional book. Speaking of, you may have heard this story before, but I'm going to tell it anyway. 
back during the War of the Eagle and Lion, there was an Imperial general named Francis who was quite proud of his strength. But while he was indeed strong, he was unlearned, and so everyone looked down on him. Why do I feel like this story is going to make me feel like an idiot? Just listen. The Emperor at the time gave Francis an order to study, and said that if he didn't, he wouldn't be allowed to lead anyone in battle. Francis did as his emperor ordered, and studied as though his life depended on it, growing especially talented in the area of tactics and strategy. As a result, his deeds on the battlefield were great, and he eventually rose to the rank of Minister of Military Affairs. So I should take a page out of Francis's book, right? So long as you don't mean literally, yes. Incidentally, the words the Emperor used to praise Francis were memorable enough to have survived even to this day. With the passing of five sunrises and five sunsets, even the meanest soldier may burgeon into a peerless commander. It means if you study hard for five days, even a common soldier can become a great general who commands an entire army. Five days? That's nowhere near enough time. It'd take me five days just to read one book. You gotta at least give me until the end of the war. But by that point, won't your chances to distinguish yourself in battle have already passed? Oh, you're right. What am I gonna do, Dorothea? Well, I suppose I have no choice but to help you. Who knows? I might even learn something. You're the best! Thank you! There you are, Hubert. So what's going on? This couldn't wait for a more reasonable hour? <laughs> you are the last to arrive. But better late than never, I suppose. Yeah, well... You know it's not a real party until I decide to show. So what's the deal? As unflappable as ever, I see. Can I take it from your lackadaisical attitude that you know why I have summoned you here? Not even a little bit. But judging from the company, you clearly rounded up the toughest people you could find. Just thought I should play the part. It saddens me that I am not included in this toughness calculation of yours. Neither fighting or hunting have toughness for me. I am fighting and others are falling. It is a thing of ease. Get on with it. Yes, well, setting the question of toughness aside, your task remains the same. Can you please just get to the point already? I'm gonna doze off if you stretch this intro out any longer. Then I will do just that. I have received information regarding a small-scale raid on Garrig Mach. The raiders in question are the Knights of Saros, but judging by their low numbers, they are not attempting to reclaim the monastery. Rather, their goal is assassination. Specifically, they seek to eliminate Count Varley, the current head of the Southern Church. The Knights. Good. I'll enjoy this. I have knowledge of stopping assassins. Let us be going with all haste. I see why you brought the three of us along now. But still, you've got an entire army at your disposal. Why use so small a force? If we suddenly increase our presence at Garrig Mach, the Knights will realize they have been found out and cancel the raid. But I need them to carry out their plan to the letter, so they might walk right into my trap. They will be like flies to the flame. Not sure that's right, but I get what you're going for. Even if the flies are strong, it all ends the same. You both remain as inspiring as ever. Now then, as we will be heading out tomorrow, we had best get our preparations settled quickly. 
seeing as you are a long-tenured mercenary of some renown, I will leave the guarding of Count Varley's person to you. I hope it goes without saying that this is not a job which calls for improvisation on your part. Keep him safe and whole, and do it well. No worries, Hubert. Those knights won't touch even a single hair on your guy's head. That is precisely what I wanted to hear. No wonder Lady Edelgard puts so much faith in you. Seems like a lot of weight to throw on my shoulders. If you fight with confidence, you will never be losing. I will do what I must. Again, get on with it. Yes, yes, very well. Now, as far as Garrig Mach's current military capability... Why bring me from the monastery and into the outer courtyard? Is this really safe? Perfectly so, provided you remain close. What's happening? Take the church. They come for me. Strange. We had no reports of any excursions. No, no man. Our target is Count Varley. Hurry up and deal with them. The future of the Empire itself depends upon my survival. <laughs> Why do they pursue Count Varley with such fierceness? He played a rather large role in Her Majesty's banishment of the Central Church. As bishop, he gave legitimacy to her course of action. An action that carried great weight with adherents of the faith. <laughs> I should be safe here. I hope. There's the dog. Don't let him escape. A mere choice. Oh, not again. I can't take another step. You have to stop them here. Remain on guard. They're few in number, but well prepared. News of our raid must have leaked. They make me sick. Still, it looks like the two of us will have to pull this one out. Hey, Swabby! But I will not be outdone. No! I am the bishop of the Southern Church, Minister of Religious Affairs for the entire Empire. Why can't you protect me properly? If the Empire is always this tough, you've got some road ahead. Aren't you the Princess of Bridget? Who serve the Empire? I am serving Bridget. And Frick is standing with the Empire. You got my back? Oh, little perish. We'll do it again! I got you now! I should never have come to Garrick Mark. I permitted ambition to blind me. Our bait is on death's doorstep. I'm going back inside, and never setting foot outside the monastery again! I see where Bernadetta gets it from. Still, at least the guy's safe now. We finished the cleanup and inspection of the walls, sir. 
We also cleared out the Knights of Seros's base at the foot of Garrick Mach. The enemy has been routed and is now engaged in a full retreat. Well done. That should keep us secure for the time being. Still, you will want to remain vigilant, Count. But you just said we are secure! True. I do not expect our enemy to launch any military offenses in the near future. But if not military, ah, uh, of course. I get it. But be sneaking through the back door instead of trying to knock down the front gates. Imagine another assassination attempt is already in the works. Probably something cowardly like poison or a dagger in the ribs. I shudder to think of those zealots out for my blood. I entreat you to protect me, Baron Barnabas. After all, I won't always have the Minister of the Imperial Household here to save me. The war has reached a critical stage, and his wisdom will soon be needed elsewhere. As steward of Garrig Mach, my life is in your hands. I will do what I can course. To start, I want you to confirm the identity of every single person entering and leaving the monastery. Also, the gatekeeper must hear of these new attempts on my life and ensure he keeps his watch most keen. That one is far too casual for my liking. Yes, well, enough of this. I must be off. Of course, Count Varney. Weird guy, huh? Stronger than he looks, though not inclined to fight. He has reminded me of certain woodland creatures. Though he is a fighter of much weakness, he has a talent for remaining alive. When you put it like that, he comes off like some sort of mastermind. But I guess all Imperial nobles are crafty in some way or another. Crafty, is it? Hmm. Sure. I mean, the two of you are nobles, and I'd say you're as cunning as they come. Yes. Hubert and Yuritza are both nobles full of cleverness. Don't forget to include yourself among that number. After all, I specifically selected the craftiest soldiers I could think of for this mission. When the enemy is neck deep in skullduggery, I need soldiers who are adept at thinking on their feet. You think I'm like you? Really? That's great! <laughs> Only a jest, I assure you. But since it clearly pleases you so, I must admit, there was some truth behind it. Good. Glad we got that settled. I tire of this. Farewell. He sure knows how to make an exit. We should be going as well. It lacks wisdom to be far from the base for too long. But if you wish to be joining me for a small hunt, we will be passing through woodlands on the way back. Sure, if it's on the way. This is filling me with happiness. We will be landing a nice catch, then return home. Maybe a bear or a boar. Yeah, that's not really what I'd call a small hunt. Petra? Hey, wait up! <laughs> it seems we truly are a crafty group after all. Still, facing Catherine and Shamir time and again is a great burden to bear. But I must shoulder it if I am to protect Her Majesty. <sighs> but this tea was simply tremendous. A truly fitting find for nobles such as ourselves. Yes, but I fear it pales in comparison to the tea cakes you so thoughtfully procured. And yet, 
far more than the provisions themselves, it is your noble self who deserves the greatest measure of praise for organizing this most festive occasion. My dear Lawrence, you flatter me. Yet I must once again return to this lovely tea which has soothed my weary soul. Truly, it is a testament to your impeccable character and taste. Why, Ferdinand, now it is you who flatters me. Ah, but my hackneyed words could never do justice to a pinnacle of nobility such as yourself. Nay, those hackneyed words have become pure poetry by the alchemy of your noble idiom. Uh... My, what fine examples of nobility you are. The two of you shine brighter than any sun, and make my own visage all the sadder as a result. Good day, Constance. Not feeling well, are we? I had thought to offer you some tea, but... Oh, don't worry about me, Lawrence. I'm quite all right. Well, I certainly won't force you, but do let me know if you change your mind. Hmm. Yes, well, there was something I wanted to ask you. Though I fear it's a rather difficult question. I have all confidence the two of us are up to the challenge. Indeed. There has not been a question yet posed that could stump the two noblest of nobles. In that case, and again, please forgive my impudence, but... I noticed you both complimenting each other regarding your suitability to your noble stations. But it is an impossibility for the two of you to be perfectly equal in this. One must be the most suited, the most noble. So, which of you is it? Which one of us? I fear you misunderstand. This is not a competition, and would be unbecoming of nobles to compare ourselves in such a manner. But are you not constantly comparing yourselves? You are the most noble, nay, it is clearly you, sir, etc., etc. Hmm. You know, you may be right. Now, hold just one moment. It is true that we compare each other in a purely literal sense, but it is only so we might take pride in our collective peerage. And in that we are equal, for there are no degrees of true nobility. Again, forgive me, but it sounds as if there are indeed differences. You merely turn a blind eye to them in order to avoid unseemly competition. In any case, if that is the stance you both wish to take, I'll not press the matter further. Enjoy your shared throne at the pinnacle of nobility. No, wait a moment. You make it sound as if we refuse to compete because we fear losing to the other. Indeed. I had assumed we were sharing a large divan. But if we are actually squeezing ourselves into a single seat, that is another matter entirely. Not at all. You both are wonderful, perfect nobles. Uh hmm. Hmm. I cannot back down from this challenge. Doing so would disgrace my very name. Indeed. We must determine for good and all who of us is the noble most true. A splendid turn of events, and one I am most undeserving of. I knew I could count on the two of you to reach the appropriate conclusion. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, we most certainly are not. In fact, I nominate you to serve as arbitrator for our competition. Here, here. You may also select the criteria. Yeah, no, I'd rather not. Please, you have a fine eye for this sort of thing. There is no one I would trust more. The only thing I've got a fine eye for involves pointy weapons and battlefields. Still, I fear you will have to do. 
In that case, how about we use the results of the next training battle? That should be pretty clear-cut. Hmm, yes. A lord must be able to command their soldiers, after all. An exemplary measure of a noble's worth. And you will also bear witness to our personal prowess as well. For a true noble must be able to safeguard themselves from injury above all else. Sounds like a plan. I'll let Edelgard know. To think my off-the-cuff remark would lead to this. But the stakes could not be higher. For the winner will be forever known as the noblest of all nobles in the land. Haven't you fanned the flames enough, Constance? We will now commence today's training battle. Defeat every enemy within the time limit. Well, I will not be so easily outdone. I will prove to all that I am the truest noble. Watch closely, my mercenary friends. It's the might of me. Ferdinand von Eyre. <laughs> Lawrence Hellman Gloucester stands before you. Here I go. <laughs> Point for Constance von Neufeld. I wonder who fell the most. You were keeping score, yes. Once we get back, you can announce the winner to all. Sure, let me just add things up and. Huh? We heard tell of your pathetic little game and have come to put you in your place. I should have known you would look to interfere. I believe you are the ones interfering with an official Imperial training session. We are merely here doing our jobs. With me! Follow my lead! Victory will be ours! I am Ferdinand von Eider! Seeing as this was rather fun, I will overlook your churlishness. Practice is concluded. All units withdraw. What an exhilarating military exercise! But now, let's have the results. Yes, please. No need to beat around the bush. No matter the result, my pride as a noble will remain as solid as bedrock. In that case, let's get to it. So, after tallying it all up... Ferdinand's the winner! No surprise there. Ha <laughs> ha! Feast your eyes on a true noble! Your paragon is I! Ferdinand von Eyer. Well done, Ferdinand. Painful though it is, I must humbly admit defeat. You delivered when the pressure was at its zenith. You are indeed the most noble of nobles. Well said, Lawrence. And as for you, Ferdinand, I often thought you were merely an ostentatious show-off. But it's clear I underestimated you. <laughs> And to celebrate your magnificent victory, I think some tea is in order. A fine idea. You must permit me to lend my magical touch to the tea-making. Hold, Constance. 
I think we can make do without your magic today. We just had a large practice skirmish, and I imagine there are many people trying to sleep at this hour. Your magic makes the tea shine so bright, it could easily disturb them. A point well made. In that case, I'll leave the tea to others and dazzle you instead with my sparkling conversation. This will be the best tea you have ever tasted. For it comes straight from House Gloucester's private reserve. <laughs> and I will provide tea cakes to match. Each one made to order by the very hands of Ferdinand von Eyre himself. <laughs> this will be ever so much fun! <laughs> Didn't you just say people are trying to sleep? I'm starting to think these three shouldn't be allowed to hang out with each other anymore. Can you believe this, Gwendol? We've waited what feels like decades, and still no Imperial Army. What is the Emperor thinking? She promised to protect us. Calm yourself, my lord. They will come. We've received reports of a large army forming to the south of Aryan Road. They will scatter this siege to the wind. I have no doubt of that. They had better. It's her promises that swayed me into betraying the kingdom in the first place. I didn't do this just so my lands could be leveled by the King of Fargus' fiery wrath. The Silver Maiden will keep us safe. She yields to no invader. Viscount Elidor and Count Duval have both sent messages, imploring me to surrender for the sake of my people. Yes, perhaps it's not too late. I can lure the Imperial Army in and kill them, then beg the King for mercy. My lord! Lenato, you fool! Your rashness is to blame for all of this! This is no time to go soft, my lord. Turning our coats a second time would be abominable. One betrayal can be explained away with the right sort of excuse, but a second? A second paints the lot of us as feckless curs. Ugh! Then what would you have me do? Gwendol, you tell me! Command it, my lord, and I will gladly go to my grave. You, however, must not. Yet unless you have fought life and limb for your people, you cannot surrender with honor intact. Anything less would earn you the people's scorn, just as it did your ancestors. Ha! Ha ha ha! Yes, of course. It certainly would not do to forget that Roe blood is stained with treachery. Well, so be it. A weather vane must go with the wind, and a born traitor must finish the sedition he started. Wise words, my lord. Your people will thank you for this course of action. This isn't good. It seems the fortress gates have been partially breached. The Kingdom's soldiers are pouring into Aryan Road. Does that make us right on time, or a bit too late? Dimitri is no ordinary king if he managed to pry a citadel like this apart. I assume our soldiers stand ready? We go on your command. If we dally too long, some of our officers and troops are likely to surrender to the enemy. That includes Count Roe, who has a most notorious sense of self-preservation. Yeah, him and every other noble. Come now, that is simply not true. Why, take me, for example. I am the perfect embodiment of what every noble should aspire to be. You can tell us all about it later, Ferdinand. Everyone, move out. Courage, everyone. Aryan Road is nearly ours. Keep pressing until we claim the main hall. The King's army is true to its reputation. Even I can only stall for so much time. Huh. 
They're closing in on the main hall. We must help them, and quickly. We must reach the main hall before Count Rowe is put in peril. Count Rowe values his life above all else. If they get agreed to his throat, the man will betray us in a heartbeat. The main gates are closed. We could circle around from the left or right, but... But the ground along those routes is filled with traps. We'll have to do this the smart way and use the gates. Devices on the walls to the east and west will allow us to open the main gate. We'll have these defenses crippled in short order. Spikes just came out of the ground! Everyone, stay away from the pointy bit! You can count on me! Please let us take this place down! I need somewhere to hide! This place is a serious pain! Why can't the route to the main hall just be a straight line? Gates are open. What now? I'll hold the area around the gates, Your Majesty. You keep going. We can do this, Randolph. None will get past us. <laughs> the enemy controls the central gates as well. How aggravating. This is clearly going to be a multi step process. First, we must use devices within the fortress to gain access to the walls where we will find the devices that will open the central gates. So you're saying we should start by using the two devices in front of the central gates? Ah! Why does this have to be so complicated? Maybe they'll call her the Silver Maiden because our hair will be gray by the time we finish this. Levers and switches over more soldiers any day of the week. I take no joy in battling old friends, but I have a duty and will see it through. Don't make me kill you, Mercedes. I must keep everyone safe. No more. I never could bear to see you cry. Not then and not now. Oh, very well. the other devices that will open the central gates. We must move on those gates. Time is our enemy. The devices we're looking for are up on the walls to the east and west. In the name of the king, the empire must be destroyed. All troops, advance! One is to go. Me. It's 
Reach the central gates. Watch this. You will go no further. If Dadu is here, that means Dimitri is too. Take your best shot. I won't give up. It is not too late to swear fealty. I've no desire to take unnecessary lives. I have decided to fight for the king after all. Help his majesty drive those imperial dogs back from whence they came. Why, my lord? How could you change sides again after all my cautioning? So it's come to this, eh? So be it. Take our remaining soldiers and cut the Imperial dogs down where they stand. I am your knight to my dying breath, my lord. I see you've dug your grave. Now you can lie in it. It seems we may be able to disarm the traps within the fortress. I saw another device like this on the other side of the wall. Let's disable it. Forgive me, Your Majesty. To kill is to grow stronger. Come at me, you Adrestian whelps! Draw what blood you can from the lion! A mere trifle. There's no more frightening a foe than a lion unafraid of death. And to slow the enemy, we must put as many troops by the main hall as we can. Hey, weren't there hidden stairs that lead from the east and west walls down to the fortress grounds? at our table. Such a shame. If the Count has been struck down, I'll simply crush the enemy by my own hand. <laughs> Let us make this a clean fight. I'll take over. On to the next one. Show me what you're capable of. Come to offer me your head, Edelgard. How careless of you. I could say the same of you. Surely the responsibility you bear is no less than mine. work on securing the rest of the fortress. Our 
Hyperion Road is the linchpin of the West. If we don't retake it... No. We must retake it. Are you here to help? Thank you. Breaking point. All forces, fall back! Move, Your Majesty. I will guard your escape. That will not be necessary to do. Stay with our king and live on. I swear that you will return to us. I could not bear to lose you. Bring victory to Vargas, Your Majesty. So long as I stand, you will not threaten the future of Farkas, nor cause any of my friends and allies harm. I have been weak. I have been unready. But I can still atone by giving the two of them a chance to escape. You got my back? All will perish. We'll do it together! I've got you now! The king safe? Good. Then I've done what I set out to do. She laid down her life to protect Dimitri and proved loyal to the very end. Yet sadly, despite our best efforts, Count Roe and too many others perished. This is most painful indeed. We must hurry, Your Majesty. The others have already withdrawn. I know. I know. Forgive me, Ingrid. It saddens me beyond measure to leave you here. The blame is mine, Your Majesty. I should have taken guard of the rear. Then I would only be mourning your death instead. The decision was mine, as is the failure. Every death this day rests on my shoulders. Your Majesty, please. She deserved so much happiness. Even after losing her betrothed, she faced life with strength and vigor only to face the agony of death once more. It should have been me who died. How can I ever atone to Count Galatea? To Glenn? Please, don't torment yourself. Ingrid chose to be there, and she did so for you. Do not take that from her. name of this magic lance, I swear I will defend Fargus. So rest now. I will return for you when you are avenged. By your valiant efforts, Orion Road has held strong. I thank you, one and all. Ah, I hardly broke a sweat. Those kingdom soldiers were nothing. Wait, if they were nothing, then why was I having so much trouble? I thought I was surely off to my death when Count Roe turned on us. A fine job of pulling through. Truly, that dumb luck of yours is awe-inspiring. I can't believe we had to kill Ingrid. <sighs> she was a most formidable commander, Dorothea. We had no choice if we hoped to claim victory. I know that. You think I don't know that? Right now, we need to discuss our next move. I'm sending the main body of our army back to Envar. 
They'll remain in the capital until they recuperate from this latest string of battles, and until we've had time to retool our strategy. We hold Arian Road and the Western Church in the west, the Great Bridge of Murden to the east, and Garig Mock between them. We'll treat all three as key positions and endeavor to hold our lines there. After we regroup, we'll determine a proper time to resume our advance. It vexes me to say this, but I have been short-sighted. We are nowhere near achieving our goals in the Alliance or the Kingdom. My command has been riddled with errors, and for that, I apologize. Oh? And where exactly is all of this coming from? You usually exude confidence. From where I stand, we have come a great distance with minimal casualties. If time has been lost, we should be easily able to make up for it. I'm personally happy I had the chance to see Her Majesty's vulnerable side, even if just this once. Ah, reassuring her with predictable responses, are we? Well, sorry. For once, I'm not sleepy at all. Nice try. That response still registers way up there on the Lin scale. I will be using the extra time to make improvements, so I can offer more usefulness in future battles. <laughs> I'm lucky to be surrounded by such consistent friends. You can say that again. Yes, they are consistently something at any rate. Apologies, Hubert. You may be weird, but I am the good kind of consistent. So, we're finally going back to the capital. Feels like it's been ages. Couldn't come at a better time, either. My bones could use the rest after all the battles we've been through. I wholeheartedly agree. The respite will help us prepare to face the Ashen Demon. Uh, yeah, about that. I've been giving it some thought, and I don't think we need to obsess over that anymore. But what about Captain Burling and your old allies? The ones who were brutally slaughtered, remember? You said avenging them was your dream. And think about how much hardship the Ashen Demon has put you through since you joined the Empire. Don't get me wrong, I'd still love to prove I'm the better fighter. But imagine if we got someone like that on our side. We'd be unstoppable. It's time for me to put my wants aside and put an end to this war. For my friends. Unless you think that's a mistake. The Ashen Demon's mercenaries have fought for both the Kingdom and the Alliance. They don't have a cause, and they don't care who comes out on top in the end. It's all about who can toss them the most coin. And now that the dust has settled a bit, we've got a chance to lure them over ourselves. And here I thought you were intelligent. Think about it. Their allegiances have changed, yes, but no matter their client, they've always been fighting the Empire. Why would they join us now? For that matter, what makes you think our soldiers would want to fight alongside a person who's murdered hundreds of their comrades? As if nobody's ever flipped sides before. Come on. Yes, but unlike the Ashen Demon, they're not single-handedly responsible for so much killing. Hey, Arvo. Yes? Why is it so important to you that the demon dies? Because I care about you, of course. I mean, I think that's the reason. Arvel, out with it. I suppose it just feels like our destiny. Like it's something we're meant to do. Scarlet Blaze. 
unrest in Enbar. Despite successfully defending Aryan Road, Edelgard concludes it is no longer possible for her to hold the eastern and western lines at the same time, and pauses to explore solutions. Almost as if trading places, she sends Count Burglies to the Kingdom Front and returns her own forces to the Imperial capital of Anbar. Okay, I get that this little chat needs to be a secret, but if we get any deeper into the woods, someone's gonna be looking for our corpses. One can never be too safe. We do not know where our enemy lurks these days. Lysithia's here too? What's she got to do with this? Lysithia has had contact in the past with those who slither in the dark. I asked her to come along so she might be privy to all of the information. I'm just listening. Pretend I'm not even here. And besides, they're my enemy, too. Right. Now, as you know, our enemy has gone into hiding. But considering what they are capable of, we cannot relax our guard, particularly at the capital. The streets of Enbar practically teemed with them at one time. So we cannot rule out the possibility they will attempt some mischief when Her Majesty and the rest of us return. That's true. They're devious, both everywhere and nowhere at once. We have to be careful. And what's that got to do with me again? You want me to stop them somehow? I have a request, yes, and a warning. I believe that if those who slither in the dark do try something, they will attempt to approach you. Me? Yes, you. Your powers may come from the same place as theirs, right? It stands to reason they might try to recruit you. Sure, but they'd be wasting their time. There's no way I'm gonna help those monsters. And what if they appear as your long-lost brother? Same hair, same eyes, a voice full of kindness. Or, what if one of them calls out, I finally found you, my child? Maybe they are your family, maybe they are not. Could you really drive a sword through their heart with that knowledge yet uncertain? <sighs> Forgive me. That was cruel. I am merely voicing one possibility among many. Still, now you will know to expect it. It behooves you to remember how harsh reality can actually be. Oh, what a lovely breeze. Truly, there is nothing so liberating as the great outdoors. Your Majesty, Hubert is looking for you. My apologies. I didn't realize you were resting. I only stepped out for a bit of fresh air. I'll be ready to return shortly. Oh no! Please don't rush back on my account. I am more than happy to keep Hubert occupied in the meantime. Please, Your Majesty, enjoy yourself. I'll simply tell him I failed to find you. Ah! And are you cold? I can bring you a coat and some hot tea. I appreciate the concern, Monica, but I'm quite all right. But while you're here, there is something I must tell you. Why are you staring at me, Your Majesty? Is there something on my face? I was only going to say how fortunate we are to have you with us. Those who slither in the dark had you in their clutches. In another world, we might have lost you to them forever. Yes, it seemed they were only keeping me alive so they could use me for some kind of dark ritual. And I can only assume that would not have ended with me alive and well. You saved my life. I wish I could express what an honor it was to be personally rescued by the woman I've dedicated my entire life to. 
That's kind of you to say, but I only did it because I needed the military leverage. That doesn't matter. I'm serious when I say that the day you rescued me was the day I stopped simply idolizing you and decided you were the one for me. The one for you? Yes. You risked your life to protect a lowly noble like me. You need to understand the situation, Monica. I was fully prepared to sacrifice you if doing so would bring me even one step closer to achieving my goals. I had no intention of rescuing you until right before the opportunity presented itself. Oh, but, um, why not? I was under the impression that those who slither in the dark needed you quite badly. And as I required their strength to wage my war, I was prepared to look the other way. When we laid out our plans, your death was something we took as a given. All the same, you still chose to save me in the end. I don't care how you got to that decision, only that you did. You could have offered me up as a bargaining chip, but you chose not to. Instead, you closed that door just so I could be standing here today. Monica, I... I only get one life, and I can't tell you how lucky I am to share it with you. It is my destiny to walk beside you, and that makes me happier than you could ever know. Well, thank you. That means a lot. I wonder when I'll be able to return to Enbar. Greetings, Dorothea. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, you're fine. I was just having myself a little think. So, what do you need? I come with a matter involving the opera company of which you were once a member. What's wrong? What happened? Nothing drastic, I assure you. A letter addressed to you arrived, and finding myself with a moment to spare, I decided to deliver it personally. And as I was also hoping to speak with you about the company, the trip serves a dual purpose. Okay, don't scare me like that, Hubert. I figured something awful had happened since you were coming here in person. My apologies. Let your heart be at ease. Now then, I wish to discuss the matter of your return to the Opera Company. I'm pretty sure I said I wasn't going back. That is not what I refer to. Well, it is and it isn't. You have no love of violence and in fact care little enough for it that the mere sight of someone in pain nearly rends your poor heart in two. Further, I am aware that you received numerous invitations to return to the company. Despite that, you continue to remain here on the front lines of the war. I find this choice curious. Okay, that's a fair point. I honestly have given some thought about returning to the company. Touring across the land with them and using music to heal weary hearts sounds wonderful. And if I did make that choice, it would be a different way to help Edelgard and everyone else. You agree, right? Indeed. I should think it terribly useful work. But even so, I can't abandon the actual fight when all of you are still here. The thought of being safe and sound while my friends risk their lives isn't something I'm comfortable with. Does that make sense? It does. And I even share your feelings to a degree. However, we could always summon your opera company to the front so that you could use your diva talents to motivate our troops. Surely you have considered this possibility? You really see through everything, Hubie. It's vexing. But fine, there's another reason. I want to support Adi as a commoner. 
If I were here in the position of an opera diva, I wouldn't be treated like one anymore. I want to be here fighting as a representative of the peasant class. However selfish it might be, I feel this is the best way to help Adi as she tries to erase the gap between nobles and commoners. Well, this is a surprise. You choose the path of hardship for the sake of your emperor. Truly, I have undersold your resolve. Oh, but there is one more reason. Still more. There are quite a few young nobles here. Dependable ones with quality futures ahead of them. And they're a lot more attractive than the doormats who flutter about us divas in the capital. Yes, that does seem important. You are stronger than I gave you credit for, Dorothea. And you have earned my respect this day. Hmm. Well, Bernie, you were nothing but trouble for everybody yet again. <sighs> there you are. I was worried when you failed to appear at mealtime. Please do not tell me your hunger was so great that you resorted to eating those plants there. You should be careful. I have heard there is some rather poisonous flora in this area. Hey! I'm not going to eat poison! What kind of dummy do you think I am? I know exactly which plants are safe and which ones aren't. It is strange to see you this confident on a topic. But if you are so certain, I think I should give your eye a test. Just to be safe, you understand. We're doing what now? Ah, I know. What say we have a little game to see who can collect the most edible plants? What? And as an army can never have too much food, this will serve to benefit the others. <laughs> what a splendid idea. Why me? Okay, so this one would cause stomach aches, and that one would be really bitter. Um, I think? Oh, I don't know. I've only ever seen it in books. But hey, I'm sure it's fine. I'll also take this one, and this one, and this one. And that one over! Wait, is that Ferdinand? Such luster, such size, such a gorgeous crimson! Yes, this looks like a scrumptious leaf indeed. Ah, and there are bulbs under this tree! Rich white bulbs with the luster of a precious pearl! Oh, I see. You were frightened by a mouse scampering by and took a bit of a tumble when you fled, yes? Yeah, and I dropped all my beautiful plants that your dumb game made me dumb collect! Never mind that now. Uh, show me your wound, please. Ah, uh, yes. Just a scrape. Still, we should return to base and treat it before it festers. I suppose. Thanks for looking at it. Wait, that leaf! The one you're carrying! This one? What of it? If you are hungry, we could snack on it while we walk back. No! No, no, no! That plant has medicinal properties. It's a styptic. Well, what luck. We can use it to treat your wound. Well, I must say, your talent for identifying plants is no idle boast. Yeah, I eyeballed them pretty well, huh? Now let's take a look at yours and... What? <laughs> Are you at a loss for words with the quality of the plants I gathered? Every one of these is... 
What? But the gorgeous leaf, the robust vine. Death in plant form! Throw them away before we die! <sighs> Sand, rain, river? Is he writing of the weather? Are you all right, Petra? That's quite the noise that just came flying out of your diaphragm. Linhart, perhaps you can be helping me. This letter is giving me much difficulty. A letter, is it? I was under the impression that you had no trouble reading the language of Fodlin. I also had that thought, but this page is not making sense. Can you be reading it for me? What? Oh, no, I couldn't. This is a private matter. I mean, I don't even know who it's from. But I cannot be writing back if I do not know what they are saying. Please, do this favor for me. Oh, very well. Let me have a look. Goodness, no wonder you struggled with this. It couldn't be more archaic. Right, well, let me give this a shot. <clears throat> Yon world is endless sand, and I but a parched grain air upon its bosom. Oh, beauty! Was it the western wind which brought thee hither merciful rain? Soft, my river o'erfloweth. Hmm, Petra, is this a love letter? That is a possibility, but I do not have certainty. Okay, you definitely should have mentioned that before I started reading this. Well, too late now, I suppose. Indeed. I am blaming the letter. If no one can have understanding of it, the writer is a waster of paper. Well, it's not that I don't understand so much as... Look, let me just give this back to you. You have understanding? You must be teaching me. Oh, very well. The writer is using archaic speech to express his love for you through metaphor. So much so that I would say they have gone and spoiled the whole thing. So he has passion? I am pleased, although I have little knowledge of the letter's writer. Really? From what he's written here, it sounds as if he sees you every day. Also, the letter is absolutely rife with mistakes. Take this passage, for example. I think he mentioned the western wind in an effort to evoke Brigid, but it's actually the southern wind that brings rain. Besides which, the merciful rain is a gift from the goddess. This paramour of yours shouldn't be tossing such sacrilegious comparisons about. And I won't even ask how a grain can be parched, let alone turn into an overflowing river. The words have richness and color. I wish I could be reading them as well as you. Trust me, it's nothing special. Well-crafted writing has layers. This just has apostrophes. So, are you planning to write him back? This has been a most painful lesson of how little I am knowing. I must be reading many books to study the old speech of Fodlin before making my reply. I sure hope she doesn't plan on writing him back in the same style, or they're going to end up talking right past each other. Coming to a draw with the almighty king of grapplings, not a bad result. After all, you've got a disadvantage. But with our size difference and all. Okay, but don't you have the disadvantage of our age difference? Hey, I'm not that old. And I'm not that short. I've actually grown a lot in these last two years. Give me a little time and I'll be towering over you. Not sure you've got a growth spurt left in you at your age. And I'm a pretty big guy. 
What did you say? Oh, you want another piece? Let's go! <sighs> Didn't win... again! <laughs> another draw! You don't know... when to quit! We're not getting anywhere fighting with our fists. Yeah, you're right. I'm pretty much at my limit. So, what's next? Better make it something where we can compete on equal footing. Naturally. Well, beyond fists, there's money, there's ladies. How are you going to compete with money? All you do is complain about not having any. And ladies? That doesn't even make sense. I mean, unless you want us to dress up in ladies' clothes and compete to see who looks better. You're really not understanding this, are you? Stop! You're annoying! Also, this break gave me time to get my energy back. So put them up! It's back to fists! Better hope your body can pay the bill your mouth keeps running up. I'm glad we have returned to Enbar. It's far warmer than the kingdom, for one. How are you doing, Your Majesty? I hope you've been getting some rest, at least. It seems you never stop working unless someone physically pulls you away from it. I've been getting more rest than Hubert, at least. We're here in the gardens, chatting, are we not? Fair enough. And so I'm clear, even a sliver of your time is a blessing beyond all measure. Though, I suggest you find a better point of comparison than Hubert for how hard you work. This is the part where you nobles all crowd around a table slurping on tea, right? Seems like a good enough way to unwind a bit. Tea? I wouldn't mind were it just myself and Her Majesty, but... Hmm? What's happening in the throne room? Hubert, what's wrong? Intruders in the palace, Your Majesty. They entered through one of the secret passages, and are even now attempting to hunt you down. I sent soldiers to intercept them, but we should be prepared for anything. Do you think it's those who slither in the dark? I know not. But they could not have breached that passage without assistance from the inside. Though there are only a few who know of that passage, and would be capable of acting as a guide. Your Majesty, might you kindly step this way? Hubert, do you really think she would do that? Trying to annihilate me as well? Thanks to you, the assassin made their escape! As though one of your paltry skill would have caught such elusive prey in the first uh. place. What matters now is that we give pursuit. All trespassers must be felled without mercy. That was Shamir, which means the attackers. They must be the Knights of Cirrus' assassins! We must protect Her Majesty with everything we have! Stop the enemy incursion! Seal off those entry points before reinforcements arrive! Swarming in! Lady Edelgard, 
I must ask that you remain in the throne room where it will be easier to defend you and predict enemy movements. And as your protection will require my full attention, I will remain here at your side. It was careless to be allowing assassins inside. We must exterminate them with much haste. <laughs> Peace, good and true. I assure you, I'm no fighter. Says the wolf in sheep's clothes. But sure, whatever. Where's the Emperor? You're not my target, which means you're wasting my time. Creature, let's stay on guard. Over here, more intruders. Palace still teams with enemies. Crush them all. Is there even one room I can be alone? Assistance, please. Let's make a scene. takes care of the rabble, which leaves us with the true problem at hand. We will not escape our clutches this time. They're really keeping the heat on. All right, time for another approach. Enough of this. It seems clear the enemy won't come out of hiding until I... <laughs> That may be true, Your Majesty, but is it wise to place yourself in such peril? Yeah, right! My turn? Caught one. Do it. It's a trap. Try and lure us out, but such courage will cost you your life. Thunder, Catherine. It seems Rhea is not playing around. No mercy to the Archbishop's enemies. My lord, we stand ready to warp the Emperor back to the throne room upon your command. You're taking a beating, Catherine. But don't worry, I've got your back. Take me out if you want. Very strange, Shamir. I heard you quit the Knights of Saros, yet here you are. Well, someone's done their research. But yeah, I'm just another mercenary now. Then let me make you an offer. Come work for us, and we will spare Catherine's life. Don't listen to him, Shamir! I can't 
take any more of this. Shamir, stand down and find a place to rest. I'll handle this. I am your man. <laughs> 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 Run, Catherine. I'm staying. Don't make me drag you out of here, Shamir. Go before I kill you myself. Damn it. Good. We have a contract. A threat has been quelled. But we allowed them far too much leeway. The situation calls for careful reflection. Still, you've saved my life, which means my path for the future remains intact. Thank you. Hubert, did you hear? My father has... vanished. Yes. We should have killed the dastard when we had the chance. What happened to your solemn vow to not let him stage a comeback? <sighs> I told you this would happen. I think you knew he would try and scrabble his way out of his predicament. Such is the nature of a noble. Until you finally squash them, that is. I have no way to refute that point. I could excoriate you further, but we lack the time. We must get to the bottom of this, and quickly. The Knights of Saros descended on us with the fury I have rarely seen. In all that confusion, even a bear could have slipped away without raising an alarm. I would not go so far as to call them conspirators, but my father had many old friends in the palace. Some may have turned a blind eye. They should be found and questioned. I agree. That is one possibility. Though well, there is another. Yes, well, now that we have a fugitive on our hands, I intend to make full use of it. This situation affords us a chance to remedy another. If that is the beginning of a scheme, Hubert, you do a terribly poor job of veiling it. It is no concern of yours. Not yet, at any rate. Right. Lovely. Well... So long as whatever you're planning has Edelgard's blessing and will be of aid to the Empire, I will brook no complaint. All will be revealed in time. <laughs> I'm told the secret passage they used was sealed off centuries ago. Yes. The palace floor plans failed to even show it. I'm shocked the church knew of its existence. In the age of Saros, the Empire and Church were intimately related. It's safe to assume the Central Church took pains to retain its information from the time. I shudder to think what other inconvenient secrets they might be privy to. Yes, well, based on the scale of the attack, they must have seen this as their first and only chance. Ah, there you are. They said you wanted to talk? Uh, yes. I believe I owe you an apology. Oh, yeah? What for? To be blunt, I thought you were with the enemy. I had you pegged for an informant, planted among us by those who slither in the dark. It was not an unreasonable assumption. You enter Her Majesty's life at the perfect time, allure her with your strength, and choose our house to study with. And oh, surprise! You have dark powers. It was all too much to dismiss as mere coincidence. It was at Hubert's suggestion that I appointed you captain of our mercenary unit. He felt this would allow us to quietly assess your abilities and allegiances, and I agreed. I know I told you I did this because I believed in you and your strength, but the decision was somewhat more nuanced than that. I'm sorry. The moment I got wind of this attack, 
I immediately thought of you. This is it, I thought. The traitor has sprung the trap, and now the Emperor's life is in danger. But instead, you thwarted the assassination attempt and kept Her Majesty safe. I was wrong about you. Deeply so. And for that, I am ashamed beyond measure. Pray forgive me. Don't worry about it. I would have done the same. Honestly, I thought it was weird how quick you both trusted me. Good to finally know the reason behind it all. That does not excuse our actions. We had no right to deceive you as we did. But I swear, we will make amends. You have but to let us know how. You can start by trusting me. Or if that's not in the cards, have the decency to tell me you don't to my face. At least then I'll know where I stand. I doubt doing so would have changed anything. But I understand the sentiment. We will attempt to be better going forward. Be better? Really? Hubert, why not just promise to be more forthright? Because that might make me a liar. Let me speak plain. I no longer believe you to be working with the enemy. However, that does not necessarily mean the possibility is now non-existent. <sighs> I guess I did ask for honesty. But look, do you guys trust me or not? Of course we trust you. Or I do, at least. So please, let us begin this relationship anew on solid ground. Hmm. It is now 1182. The great war Edelgard instigated has swept across Fodland and looks more grim with each passing day. The Empire struggles to hold Aryan Road to the west and the Great Bridge to the east. The Kingdom cannot bring Western lands to heal. Even the Alliance must face changing times. The Central Church sends the Knights of Saros to the Imperial capital to assassinate the Emperor, but fails. Roughly half a year passes before the tides show any true sign of shifting. Scarlet Blaze, Shifting History. Five months have passed since the attack on the Emperor, and 1182 nears a close. Though each army schemes, the battle maps barely change, but now, history is about to resume its course. Today is a momentous day in Fodland's history that people will mark for generations to come. Then why do you look so conflicted? <sighs> I'm not conflicted, Claude. I'm just painfully aware of how much stronger I need to be. That's why I'm counting on you and the Alliance to make up the difference. Hey, I've got feeling unprepared down to a science, so... Let's say we help each other out. If we work together, we can achieve what's best for both of us, right? Indeed. I have reviewed the terms, Your Majesty. All that remains is the placement of your seals. Everything looks good to me. I'm especially glad we found a solution to the control of murder. You've done fine work here, Hubert. Thanks. And thanks to you as well, Holst. You know I'm not good at this sort of thing. I've never known you to shy away from ceremonial affairs like this. But it is the most significant pact since the founding of the Leicester Alliance, so your caution was most prudent. I must admit, I was quite nervous. Thankfully, I managed not to follow it up. You surely jest. You did your work masterfully, without batting an eye. I am truly impressed that Lester's most valiant general 
is so well versed in diplomacy. Don't be insulting, Hubert. Sir Holst is a duke. A man can be brave in battle and still know how to get things done. Take our Minister of Military Affairs, for example. A man for whom the term looks can be deceiving was likely invented. Speaking of Count Burglies, where is he? I thought he'd be here so we could go head to head. We never did get to finish our battle. I'm afraid the Count couldn't make it, but perhaps you'd consider my bodyguard instead? I'm certain you'll find the challenge to your liking. Is this your first time meeting, by the way? It is. Well, friend, care to go around with me? They say this Holst character is the strongest man in Leicester. But is he as strong as the Ashen Demon? I wouldn't miss it for the world. Now that's what I like to hear. I hope you mean later and not this very second. It would be a shame to get blood all over this nice paperwork. Yes. All eyes are on us. We must make this a grand gesture and show our soldiers that Adrestia and Lester have joined forces for a brighter future. Well, let's get to it. As leader of all the lords and knights who sit at the round table of the Lester Alliance, I, Claude Von Regan, hereby swear this pact. Lester pledges to work in harmony with the Adrestian Empire and do everything in its power to secure a peaceful future for Fodwin. By the covenant between the red blood and the white sword that crowns the double-headed eagle, I, Edelgard von Hressfeld, hereby swear this pact. Adrestia pledges to work hand in hand with the Leicester Alliance to deliver peace to the land and secure a future for all its people. The pact is sealed. And now it is our job to uphold it. Goodness, look how far you've risen. You're standing on the stage of history. I know you'll do great things. Yes, and greater things still. Right then. We've got plenty of bright new faces here at the round table today. First, a brand new Count ruling Gloucester. And Duke Goneril and Count Ordelia have decided that their heirs will sit for them. Unfortunately, Lawrence and Lysithia can't join us due to their responsibilities in the Imperial Army. I called you here to give you notice. The Leicester Alliance is assenting to the Empire's request and sending troops to the Kingdom Front. Houses Regan, Gloucester, and Daphne will be supplying most of the soldiers. And instead of the usual route through Aelel, we'll be invading Fraldarius directly by sea. You're staying behind, right, Holst? Indeed I am. Almira is still an unknown quantity. And we've no idea if or when Prince Shahid might stage another attack. And the same goes for House Ordelia. They've had more than their share of troubles on their border. We agreed that shipping their army away might not be the most prudent of ideas. And that's all she wrote. You'll find the details in the document you've all been given. I wish the kingdom would see there between a rock named Adrestia and a hard place named Lester and throw that white flag high, but of course they won't. So good luck, everyone. I'm counting on you. And so, the Alliance has agreed to bring their troops to bear and attack the kingdom from the east. At the same time, we will resume our invasion from the west using Orion Road as a foothold. We'll subjugate the Kingdom's Lords, one by one, as we work our way toward Blathen. News of the Pact will doubtless have spread throughout the Kingdom by now. Provided enough houses see the futility in fighting, we may be able to avoid unnecessary bloodshed. However, that is likely wishful thinking. 
We should instead expect the worst, and prepare accordingly. You think? Some of them already bent the knee to us once, along with Count Roe. Wouldn't they jump at a chance to swap sides again? An idea I am certain has already occurred to the King. Lately, we have been scrambling to reorganize, dealing with an attack by the Knights of Saros and negotiating a pact with Lester. And during that time, the winds of purgation have swept across Fargus. In one fell swoop, the King has expunged most of the nobles likely to align with us. Still, it's us and the Alliance against him, which means we've got the advantage. What's there to worry about? The concern isn't that we'll lose. It's that winning might come at the cost of too many lives. What an utterly pointless, senseless thing to do. Oh, I find it all so very draining. Whatever our intent, we're the instigators here. We can't expect the enemy to do anything less than defend their land with tooth and claw. Speak for yourself. If someone invaded my territory, I'd hand over lands and titles on a silver platter. Especially if I had no chance of winning. There is truly no other noble like you, Lenard. And perhaps no person at all for that matter. Regardless, we must proceed with caution. When people think someone is after what they possess, they respond with fear, even if the thought is all in their head. In the eyes of the people of Fargus, there is no limit to what evils the Empire might visit upon them. My father started saying he can't sleep, because he's scared the old church is coming to Garrick Mock to kill him. From the sound of my mother's letters, he's really shaken up. Remember that the kingdom has much coldness. We must not forget to be bundling up like people of the snow. Our Petra is always ready for what lies ahead. I wish I had better understanding of your Fodlin ways, so I could be giving more assistance to everyone. Don't worry about it, Petra. With all the different factions in this thing, even we have a hard time keeping it straight. <sighs> this almost seems so backward compared to the way things were in Bridget. In any case, the battles ahead will be more brutal than any we have yet fought. Keep a vigilant eye out for both yourselves and each other. That is all. Dismissed. Guess things aren't gonna be so easy anymore. We're under some real pressure to win. Oh, Edelgard. I'm glad I found you. Got a few? Of course. What is it? Well, remember how Hubert laid into me after the Knights of Saros raided Enbar? It got me thinking. What do I need to do for you to trust me again? Nothing. Hubert and I stopped doubting you the moment that business was behind us. You worked tirelessly for me, and I'm grateful for that. So please, there's no need to worry. Still, we have no idea when those who slither in the dark might try to interfere again. Honestly, it kind of feels like there's more I should be doing to help. Like I'm just floating around without a purpose or something. Very well. What do you propose? Hmm. If I had to pick something, I'd say protecting you would be my top priority. Everyone's got a bone to pick with you. Especially the church and those who slither in the dark. And they won't rest till they have your head. After all, the Imperial Army's not gonna lose if we've got you at the top handing down orders. And I figure Hubert will stay off my back as long as I put my energy into keeping you safe. Then you can lead us to victory and we'll all live trustfully ever after. Perhaps, but I think you're forgetting something. The only way to protect me is by staying at my side, and therein lies a conundrum. Allowing you that close to me would in itself be proof of my trust, without which you would have never earned such an opportunity in the first place. Uh, 
Yeah, I guess you're right. Still, I can't help but feel like that's what I've got to do to prove myself to you. Please, Edelgard. Even if it just means shielding you from your enemies. <sighs> Very well. Do as you will. In the meanwhile, I'll tell Hubert... Well, I'm not entirely sure what I will tell him. At the very least, we know those who slither in the dark are able to shapeshift at will. So, in a way, it doesn't matter who I choose to surround myself with. They could just as well turn out to be someone wholly different. Thanks, Edelgard. I honestly could have sworn you were gonna say no. Of course. What I truly want to know is why you'd risk your life just to earn my trust. Do you really have to ask? You reshaped my entire life. Before I met you, I had nobody. I was nobody. But you still chose me of all people to command one of your armies. Now I can't walk down the street without people yelling my name. And I've got a great life surrounded by amazing friends. All of it possible because of you. That's not true. You would not have earned this post if you lacked the talent. Maybe now, but before you came along, nobody in the Empire gave a Pegasus's backside about talent. You gave me a seat at the table when no one else would. Ah, I see. If you want proof you've changed the world, just take a look at me. Because this gal... She's a whole new person, thanks to you. In that case, you should just keep picking commoners like me for all the important jobs. Strength in numbers, right? The more of us there are, the less anyone will be able to complain. Hmm. I believe your point to be a sound one. But putting it into action will only heighten our chance of failure. Try as you may to troll a river for jewels. You will most often find yourself hauling up mere pebbles instead. I get what you mean. I think. Accidentally picking the wrong person could really hurt the Emperor's reputation. And provide the perfect opening for nobles who want nothing more than for commoners to be kept in their place. An utter disgrace. Here we stand, amidst the flames of war, yet some on our side only seek to drag their compatriots down. There is no rot as fetid as that which plagues our foul aristocracy. It would not surprise me if they breathed noxious fumes. I mean, it's not like they're literally poisonous. Are you so sure? Spend an hour in the same room with some of them, and see if you don't feel the life being choked out of you. At any rate, it seems you must be the one to plow forward, for the time being. Uh, come again? You are a mercenary, Captain, no? Surely there are worthy candidates for promotion among your subordinates. The situation would be far less volatile if any potential appointees came with your direct endorsement. Oh good, no pressure at all. And if the person I pick doesn't work out? Assuming they are not wholly indefensible, we would do our utmost to shield them from criticism. Though I suppose if worst came to worst, we would be forced to sever ties with them. And you. That's cold-blooded, Hubert. I'm not sure I'm up to the challenge, knowing what's at risk. Nobody is forcing you to pick someone. If you think it impossible, I will not try to convince you otherwise. Right. Got it. I guess in the meantime, I'll let you know if I think of anyone who might be able to handle the job. And oh, let's keep the whole severing ties thing to the real worst-case scenario, okay? You might look the calm and logical type, but I know your emotions can get the better of you sometimes. Hmm. A keener insight than I expected. 
Perhaps you truly are the right person for this task. <laughs> Quite the eye you have on you. Uh, thanks. My vision's not too bad, I guess. Now, if you could only pair it with some intellect, we would have a true wonder on our hands. You wanted to talk, Monica? This is an interesting choice of location. I hear you've been going above and beyond lately. That you perform miracles each time you set foot on the battlefield. Why are you complimenting me all of a sudden? I mean, things have been going well, but... Oh, I assure you, I have no ulterior motive. You've helped me out a great deal too, after all. Even Her Majesty praises your fine work. She talks about you so much, in fact, I'm more than a little sick of hearing your name. Huh. She talks about me that much? Wait a sec. You aren't jealous, are you? <sighs> that wouldn't make any sense. Indeed, it wouldn't. Why in the world would I be jealous of you? After all, you are merely Her Majesty's subordinate. Your relationship will never transcend the bounds of master and servant. It will never reach the depths of meaning that Her Majesty and I share. So you are jealous? In what way? I am merely telling you the truth as I see it. It never even crossed my mind how irritatingly close you and Her Majesty are. Not once. Uh... Yeah, you basically just admitted it. I certainly did not. You did. You said you were jealous that Edelgard and I are so close. The word jealous never traversed my lips. You sure you're not, though? Perhaps... a little. That's what I thought. But so what if I am? I have always been Her Majesty's most devoted admirer. Hubert is one thing, but you... You're just a run-of-the-mill mercenary. To think Her Majesty has uttered your name more times than she has mine, it makes me want to scream my lungs out! You've been counting? Why even keep score? It's not a contest. All this worrying is just gonna stress you out. It's no good. I still keep track even if I'm not worried. I cannot help it. I can't believe it has come to this. I have no other choice but to ask for your help. Um, what's come to what now? I will just have to show you. Come on, let's go. There you are, Lynn. Hmm? Oh, Dorothea. How unusual. I didn't expect to see you in a place like this. It's not unusual when I've been looking for you literally everywhere. You skipped out on the War Council meeting this morning, and Aidy was livid. Yes, something came up that required pulling an all-nighter two nights in a row, so I had some sleep debts to repay. Next time, maybe spare a thought for the person who'll get stuck having to track you down. We discussed important matters in the meeting, you know. There was some kind of accident, and now we're experiencing a delay on supplies. And now we need to ration our food? It's a pain, but these things happen. In the worst case, we're supposed to be considering ways to forage for food ourselves, right? I suppose I can handle it if we need to fish, but I'll have to pass on tromping through the fields and mountains to harvest wild... whatevers. Wait, how do you know all this? You weren't even at the meeting, were you? Because I had someone who attended take notes for me. Wait... You had someone... 
More importantly, you should go to Her Majesty and propose a review of our supply logistics. Considering our current position on the front lines, we should break up the transportation of provisions along multiple routes. It may cost a little more to split things up, but it'll allow us to avoid situations like this. Overall, it should provide many benefits, and the plan will be viable for use in future campaigns, too. Wow. <laughs> Dorothea? This sort of thing really gets your brain going, huh? Still, I wish you'd just go to the meetings and share all of these opinions. People would be thrilled at your resourcefulness, you know? Oh, I'm quite happy with things the way they are. Attending meetings would only add to my headaches. You can only run from this for so long, Lynn. And sure, I'll propose what you ask me to. But I'm going to do so in your name. Wait, are you serious? Oh, very much so. I couldn't possibly take the credit for something you thought up, right? I suppose that's fair. I can feel the headaches forming already. And of course, I'm worried about those who struggle at combat. Yes, we must do all we can to support them. I'll do my part to watch out for those who need help. Thank you. We'll do this together. Support people who struggle with combat, huh? If there's a more perfect job for me out there, I don't know what it is. Um... You ready, Bernadetta? Let's go! Why do I have to do this? Why do you have to train, you mean? It's not training, it's weird! This is torture and I'm gonna die! Hey, calm down. You'll only be fighting me. You're lying! There are people hiding in this armor and they're gonna attack me, aren't they? That armor isn't big enough for a person to hide in. You don't know that! I could absolutely hide inside one! Uh, I mean, yeah, okay. You probably could. See? I was right! Wait, this isn't the time for me to worry about that! The fact you're plotting against me is the issue here! Why do you hate me? Look, Edelgard said we need to help people who struggle with fighting, alright? I'm just trying to put that into action. Ah, you're gonna take me out with a surprise attack from the darkness! I know your game! And how would I attack you from the darkness when we're standing in the middle of the training grounds in broad daylight? You think all these people walking by would see me try to murder you or whatever and just keep going? No, they're watching me. I'm sure of it! Your armor is staring at me! Nope! That's it! I'm out of here! I'm going home to enjoy a life of freedom without my father! What? You can't just run out on me here, Bernadetta! I mean, trying to detect people hidden in suits of armor... That's one of my father's traditional training drills! I don't know any other way to do it! I don't need your lousy support, so just leave me alone! Maybe I'm not cut out for this kind of thing. We've finished laying out where the troops will be positioned, Claude. But, uh, are you sure about this? Am I sure about what? This isn't even remotely like a standard attack formation. It's like you're going out of your way to limit casualties. Not true. The moment the enemy drops their guard, we'll swarm them like a pack of bees. And if they don't drop their guard? Then I guess we'll just sit here making angry faces at each other. Okay, come on. This strategy is not helpful. Look, just by being here, 
We're drastically reducing the number of kingdom soldiers the Imperial Army has to deal with, right? Which means we don't have to kick our troops into action until the Empire has marched further north. Once they're positioned to seize Blathed territory, that's when we'll move. And if it all goes wrong, the losses could have catastrophic consequences for the future of the Alliance. I'm not used to you being so worried about the big picture, Hilda. You've grown. I wasn't going to stay a kid forever, you know. Apparently not. I'm impressed. Look, Hilda, I promise you, your fears are misplaced this time. The Empire's already compensated us for any potential losses, and will continue to do so. You don't think I would have signed that fancy pact if they weren't taking care of us, right? Sure, but are they good for their word? Because I have doubts about that. I want to believe the pact will hold. I really do. But they strike me as folks who won't think twice about sticking an axe between your shoulders if the situation calls for it. Fortunately, I can be pretty ruthless myself when it suits me. If I don't like something the Empire is doing, it might even be me who ends up breaking the pact. If that's supposed to make me feel better, it is absolutely not working. Easy, easy. I'm just throwing out a what if here. Just promise that you'll always have my back, even when things look their worst, all right? I need you. Oh, fine. But only because it's you. A report, Your Majesty. The Imperial Army marches on Western Fargus. Just when we'd brought peace back to the area, too. We should get ready to provide aid at once. Rodrigue has already been dispatched to Mateus, along with all the soldiers I can currently spare. And I've sent Annette and Gustav to the Baron's side, though if it's for better or worse, is yet to be seen. I don't doubt we'd all ride to the rescue if we could, but that's clearly not possible given the situation. Agreed. Now that Claude's joined up with the enemy, we can't risk doing anything foolish. If we move our soldiers even a breath away from the Northeast, the Alliance will be all over us. All we can do now is divide our forces to keep the enemy in check and meet their attacks as they come. We never should have let this happen in the first place. But who could have seen the Empire and Alliance forming such a union? Bor, are you seriously going to just stand by and watch? They'll overrun us if we don't stem the tide. Though it smacks of desperation, I'm told the Western Front has enlisted the services of Gerald's mercenaries. They're the same band that carried the battle at Magdred Way, so I hope we can make good use of them again. Is this really the plan? Burn through mercenaries while we hole up here? Do try not to be so grim. The Empire has pushed rapid reforms on the land over these last few years. Not everyone was happy to have such changes thrust upon them, and that includes their new friends in the Alliance. The Empire is leaning over the Kingdom with such greed that they might yet trip over their own feet. Do you think there will be revolts? I'm certainly not going to plan my strategy around it, but there have been whispers, yes. The old ways must die. With that, I agree. But shove that down the people's throats, and you risk breaking the very land you're trying to rule. Yes. We've grappled for years with the aftermath of trying to enact reform. Change is a painful process, but rushed change will set the region to rot from the inside out. I wonder why they're so intent on doing this the quick and dirty way. It's difficult to say. Uh, perhaps were things different, we might have found some common ground, some harmonious way forward. But I've lost too many I care about to this war. Ingrid, chief among them. <sighs> when I think about what they fought for, what they died for, 
There can be no turning back. The Imperial Army will soon be knocking at our door. Why haven't Duval and Dominic stopped them? Baron, you'll never reclaim the title of Viscount your Lord Uncle lost if you go weak in the knees. Letting yourself be pressured into betraying the kingdom will see you cast out of the aristocracy for the rest of time. And your fickle nature would earn you the derision of both the kingdom and the empire alike. They'll view you the same way they do Count Roe. I care not. I've no interest in going to my grave just because I drew the shortest straw. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but I figured you'd want to know we finished cleaning up the enemy's advanced troops. Excellent. You certainly live up to your esteemed reputation, Captain Geralt. I've never met a more reliable band of mercenaries in all my years. It's a shame we only engaged you for the one contract. I don't suppose we could convince you to extend your term of service. His Majesty the King has heard tale of your exploits. I could arrange for an introduction. Appreciate the offer, but that would mean going to Ferdiad. Hmm. I've got reasons for avoiding that place, so thanks, but no thanks. I see. It will be a shame to lose you, but I won't pry. It's nothing against you or the kingdom, mind you. Then I'll hold out hope we might fight alongside each other again someday. Now, if you'll excuse me, the Baron and I must inspect the camp. Best of luck to you in battle, Captain. You feeling any better? <laughs> I have to say, I'm still not used to this new look of yours. That makes two of us. But it will bother me less once I'm on the battlefield. If you say so. With the war and the state it's in, the Empire is throwing everything they've got at this thing. I don't know if it's that or something else, but I've got a bad feeling. So watch yourself out there. I will. You do the same. Oh, right. I've been meaning to give you this. Never used to be without it. Cuts like a dream. I want you to have it. Swords like this are given to captains of the Knights of Saros, and mine was just collecting dust in the band's convoy. That's right. Alois mentioned you used to serve there. That was a lifetime ago. I don't plan on swinging this sword ever again. But are you sure you want to give it away? It must be quite special to you. Uh, I'd be happiest seeing you get some use out of it. Thank you. I'll do that. Be good to it, all right? We'll soon arrive at Baron Mateus's lands. Once we claim them, all of Western Fargus, roughly one-third of the Kingdom's territory, will be under the rule of the Empire. House Mateus was demoted from a Viscountcy to a Baronage for their part in some sort of revolt. The current Baron Mateus, whose father was the previous Lord, is hardly the most loyal subject of the Crown. Removing him from the picture should be a simple matter. However, the Kingdom has sent the Baron help in the form of the former Duke Fraldarius, who they call the Shield of Fargus. So long as he holds authority here, we won't be able to break their soldier solidarity. Rodrigue is Felix's father, right? That's unfortunate. Don't get me wrong, I'll fight whoever I need to. It just feels like we're pitted against familiar faces every time we turn around. And that isn't all. Our reports indicate the enemy has hired Gerald's mercenaries. We know from personal experience how formidable those foes can be. The Ashen Demon again. Say, that reminds me. What are you planning to do about that exactly? We can't keep letting one mercenary mess with our whole army. So just watch. 
I'm gonna take that monster out once and for all. Or at least slow them down, if nothing else. That hesitance doesn't suit you. Not anymore. You're far stronger than the last time your paths crossed. Just say the words and I'll give you all the power I can muster. We will prevail. I possess skill at leading surprise attacks, and Bernadetta would be making a good decoy. If we are all working together, we will reach our goal with much ease. I get a say in this whole decoy plan, right? I was only saying a fact, not asking you to be doing it. Please accept my apologies. Oh, okay. I hope you plan to leave some of the enemy for me. You are all so skilled. I often feel like the fifth wheel on a well-crafted carriage. Don't downplay your talents, Ferdinand. You give us courage every time we step on the field. I'm lucky to be surrounded by so many gifted leaders. With all of you at my side, there is no limit to what the Empire might achieve in the years to come. Victory to the Empire! Yay! Come on, Arval. Seriously? You can't drag me off to sleep like this when the battle's about to start. Sorry, but we need to talk. Do you remember the warning I once gave you? Well, I've been struck by a similar premonition now. Something feels wrong. Very wrong. Last time this happened, the Ashen Demon showed up and nearly sent me to an early grave. You think the same thing's gonna happen today? Hard to say for sure. But the feeling's worse this time around. Stronger. So if I had to guess, I'd say they're on the cusp of something terrible, an act far more dangerous than we previously imagined. Well, whatever's happening, I'm just gonna have to stop it. So long as you don't put yourself in any unnecessary danger, yes. Remember, your death would cut both of our destinies far too short. Our enemy has placed Baron Mateus front and center, while Gerald's mercenaries are over with the main position. We have no option but to defeat the enemy commander, Rodrigue. Anything beyond that, however, requires careful consideration. It will take time to ready a path to the shore. Until then, let us begin by attacking the plain to the west. The Empire's here! No! I'm too young to die! You're the lord of these lands. Show some pride. Shore up your defenses. Yeah, not bad. Do not permit the enemy to break through. If we take down the stronghold surrounding the Baron, we might convince him to lay down his arms. Let us bring the stronghold down efficiently. <laughs> Our swift strikes will be shaking the enemy's spirit. I have this. <laughs> We've decimated the enemy's forward position. Take a breather. I'm surrounded. I beg you, stay your hand! I happily surrender! I trust the man roughly as far as I can hurl him. We may find a use for him later. The Emperor's roster shames the rest of us. I must find a way to distinguish myself. Continue to the northwest, and finish that path to the shoal. Ha. Huh. I knew the Baron wasn't up to the task. We'll have to forestall the enemy ourselves. Move out and attack! 
of hidden sorcery engineers in this area who are preparing a fearsome magic that will lay waste to our foes. It did not take long for the enemy to spot our engineers. We should stage a rescue if we can. We intend to use their talents to ravage the battle with devastating magic. Their absence will completely alter the tide of battle. Rescuing them should be our top priority. I'm all right. So far, so good. Though I'm prepared for something to go horrifically wrong any minute now. I'm all for exercising caution, Lin, but could you not be such a wet blanket? It appears all the engineers are safe. Now we can truly make the battlefield sizzle. Now, send your lightning crashing across the battlefield. What horrible thunder! This sounds like a job for Alois. <laughs> Enemy detachment from Maria? Take them out now. We can't afford the risk. Good. Alois's reinforcements have arrived. Might you go help our soldiers in the Northwest, young mercenary? Consider it done. I said I'd hand them a victory, and I'm not going to back down now. It's at least simple. Well, would you look at that? Being reasonable. If we can pin him down, I think he'll listen. I've heard of you, Yuri. Perhaps we can forge a new arrangement that benefits us both. Well, when you put it that way, I guess I would prefer not to get butchered. I must stop the enemy here. We've cleared a way to the shore. We can attack from the east now. Final. Got you. Form a pincer and bear down on Rock Rig's position from both sides. I won't last long trying to hold them off in two directions. Rodriguez is in danger. We better go back. I have to convince the Empire and more to get around. Destroy the bridge and cut the mercenaries off from the main force. The bridge. I can't get back to Rodriguez. Rodriguez has been cut off. Move in and strike before the mercenaries can rejoin him. No! This is our chance to kill the Ashen Demon. There's no one to interfere. I have to reach the commander as soon as possible. We've come to help, Lord Rodriguez. And not a moment too soon. Let's show them the steel Fargus is made of. I'm taking as many of you down as I can. None of you knaves shall pass. I will capture this stronghold. I bear you no ill will, but it was your choice to come within striking distance. I come bearing reinforcements. Now go and help your You have nothing to fear from that rabble. Now remain calm and take the stroll. That stronghold went down like. Uh oh! Incoming! Ugh. That 
That's one beating too many. I leave the rest to you. Here for me? You must be eager to die. Let us bring the stronghold down efficiently. I'll take this place down before you have time to strap your armor on. The demon is too speedy. Be time for this. We are not having enough time. Clear the way! Ta! You got it, Edelgard! I got you now! Forgive me, Felix. Protect His Majesty. And Farkas. I will capture this stronghold. I'm too late. I leave to take care of one backup squad and come back to this? What a mess. Rodrigue is slain and the kingdom put to rout. Will you and your mercenaries yield? <sighs> I see no other choice. Victory is ours. Friends and loyal soldiers, raise your voices loud. Can I say? You got us. You rolled right over us and took out our employer. <laughs> I know when it's time to raise the white flag. Wait, that's it? You're giving up? We've faced you in battle many times, only to be bested at every turn. Yeah, you've pretty much run us out of business by now. It's not easy finding new clients in the best of times. And no matter how good our reputation is, none of it matters if we can't actually win. At this rate, I'll have to stop calling myself the Blade Breaker. In that case, do you have any interest in working for us? The Empire? Hmm. It's true that your fighters and mine have waged many a bloody battle. But did you oppose us out of principle, or was it merely a business decision? Assuming you have no deep-seated animosity for Adrestia, I would welcome you with open arms. In the Empire, those with talent are given an outlet appropriate for their abilities. Yeah, you should join us. I mean, by now we all know firsthand how strong you are. Sure, there might be some folks here and there who have reservations about you fighting on our side. But they'll definitely come around once they see how dependable you are. What do you say? I doubt the kingdom will have any jobs for us after all of this. No better time for a fresh start. I agree. What about you, Alois? It might be strange working against your old knight friends. I've already made my decision. I have sworn to follow this fine captain wherever he goes. If my old allies want to come grill me over a fire, I'll just have to make myself more obscure. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> if I don't slay my foes by the sword, I will do so by the joke. Well, I guess that's that. Just tell us when we start. I'll go talk to the group and smooth things over. You two, stay here with the client. Got it, thanks. Understood, Captain. Our troops will also want an explanation, so we'd better get to it. Oh. <sighs> So you're Gerald the Bladebreaker, huh? And I guess that makes you the Ashen Demon. 
You guys look tougher than a box of nails. No wonder we've had our hands full. Please, make yourself at home. The Imperial Army is most delighted to welcome you into its embrace. My name is Ferdinand von Eyre. You might say I am something of a leader figure around here, as I essentially hold the entire army together. Oh no! Not more strangers! Relax, Fern. It's not like you don't encounter strangers every time we take the battlefield. That's a good point. Wait, is it? Has anyone ever inspected you for crests before? Perhaps I might borrow you for a brief experiment. Are you having interest in a sword fight? I am curious to see the stuff of which you are made. Well, we sure got a lively crew here. <laughs> Get in there, kid. Let him show you the ropes. I suppose we didn't need to worry about bad blood. If anything, it would seem Her Majesty's path to victory just grew even shorter. By the way, has anyone seen our mercenary friend? Sorry about all this, Arval. I know you've only been giving me your powers because you want me to beat the Ashen Demon. Don't worry about it. It's for the best, right? For all my doomsaying, everything seems to be right as rain. Recruiting Gerald's mercenaries and the Ashen Demon was the right choice. I hope you're right. What's wrong? Feeling lost now that you don't have an enemy to chase around the countryside? Yeah, I guess. I mean, the only reason I wanted to get stronger was to surpass the demon. There's no reason you can't surpass an ally. What better way to see who's stronger than to fight directly by their side? Huh. That's a good point. See, no one knows you better than me. If that's what you want, then I'll just have to help you achieve it. After all... Scarlet Blaze. Heroic Bloodlines. Through a new pact with the Lester Alliance, Edelgard can direct her might at the kingdom. And though it comes at no small price, her forces steadily gain the upper hand. But the kingdom does not stand idly by. Dimitri rallies the Western Lords, led by House Dominic, blood of one of the ten elites, in a last-ditch effort to forestall the Empire. No, brother. Anything but that. You cannot force the relic onto Annette. Calm yourself. I've nearly bade her wield it, not sent her rushing off into the teeth of the enemy. It's all right, father. I know I'm the only one who can do this. Just seeing the Crest of Dominic and our hero's relic is going to improve everyone's morale. It shames me to thrust this task on you, when it should have fallen to that craven son of mine. Yes, I doubt we can expect Simon to return and wield the relic, considering how quickly he abandoned us. It seems I raised him poorly, yes. I should have taught him how our house managed to survive this long without starving or freezing. Don't look so sad, Uncle. I'll gladly carry the burden until Simon returns. But, Annette... Enough, Father. Stop worrying. After all, this is nothing compared to what the soldiers are going through at the front. So many people are fighting and dying out there. Some of them my good friends. I'm not going to cower in safety while they struggle. Especially when I'm in the best position to help. Forgive me, Annette. If you sense any danger at all, child, promise me that you'll run. I couldn't bear to lose you. I know, Father. So let's just all do the best we can to keep our land safe. The nearer we get to Blayfit territory, the more resistance we're likely to face. 
the lords surrounding the capital are the most loyal to the crown. We have Geraint, Enid, Brennius, and Bellinus. There is no telling whether these houses will choose subjection or destruction. Regardless, we cannot simply ignore them as we attempt to march on the capital. We must seize control of each of their lands and establish footholds before continuing on. The Alliance is still doing everything we expected of them. There are no changes on that front. So as long as we continue tightening the vice around the kingdom, we're certain to fulfill your majesty's goals. Glad to hear it about the Alliance. Does this mean the war will be over soon? I feel some actual motivation coming on. Well, in that case... Nope, nope, never mind, motivation gone. That was a close one, Bernadetta. You almost got yourself assigned to the front lines. As for me, you know what to do. Just put me right at the front and let me start wrecking stuff. We shall see who does more wrecking of stuff, Kaspar. I will not be letting you outshine me. Watch as I am bringing glory to Bridget and the Empire on the battlefield. I wonder if I'll find someone worth marrying before this war is over. Of course you will, Dorothea. You're amazing. Enough. It's easy to let your guard down when the end is in sight, and we can't fall victim to that. Stay disciplined, and together we will take Fodlin's future in hand. Don't worry, Edelgard. We're ready to get this done. Right then. Let's start by taking care of the enemy in front of us. You ready for this? Come at me! No hesitation! <sighs> you actually managed to dodge that. <sighs> Not sure dodge is the word I'd use. I just let my power loose without even thinking. Guess I'm still no match for you. Give yourself a little credit. It took everything I had to keep up. If you could avoid an attack like that, then you're easily on par with me. But you barely even used your power. You know, the one that throws off your enemy's perception or whatever? I wouldn't have stood a chance if you hit me with that. So you've noticed it. How could I not? We fought about a million times by now. Your power's not exactly visible, so it's definitely tougher to catch on to than mine. But I've experienced your kind of beat down firsthand, so I'm painfully aware of the damage you can inflict. Sorry about that. I couldn't afford to pull any punches back then. It's fine. Water under the bridge. So, have you had your power for long? Where'd you learn it? I was kind of wondering if I could pick it up myself. I only became aware of it when I was fighting hard against you. But... I don't think it's something a person can learn. Even I barely understand how it works. Right. Gotcha. Sounds like we're in the same boat, then. Yes. Just two strange people with even stranger powers. And... I'm not only talking about your sword. Hmm? Do you ever feel like there's some sort of mysterious presence within you? Oh. Uh. It's just that sometimes it's hard to tell what you're thinking. Like you get distracted by something from time to time. Almost like you're talking to someone else. Inside your head. Are you asking because that's what happens to you? No, it was just something I noticed. I simply thought I'd ask. If you say so. Oh, hey. <laughs> you fishing too? Um, yeah. Ease up, kid. We're on the same side now, remember? 
I know. Guess I'm just not used to it yet. We're not getting paid to kill each other anymore. We can just sit here like normal folks and catch some fish. You're a mercenary, right? For us, there's no such thing as friends or foes once that contract's paid. Yeah, I know that too. You, um, don't remember me, do you? Should I? I used to run with Burling's mercenaries. Burling? Ah, yes. That woman was an army unto herself. Yeah, but you and your company wiped us out. My captain, my comrades, every last one of them died in that battle. So that's what this is about. You have a grudge against me? No, I don't. Wouldn't be much of a merc if I held a grudge against everyone I fought. But it was tough at the time. I really liked that scruffy crew. All of us got along, even the captain. They were the best group I'd ever been with. After what happened, I made myself a promise. I was gonna get stronger. And someday, I would defeat you and the Ashen Demon. But we're allies now, so you're gonna have to let that go, huh? Looks like it. But you know, part of me is relieved. I don't think I could have beaten the Ashen Demon anyway. Hey now, what about me? Or are you saying you could take me? Oh well, no, unless I try. By the way, for a regular guy just catching some fish, you haven't even got your hook on. Yeah, well, these old mitts aren't exactly made for tying tiny knots. Give it here, I'll do it. <laughs> Not half bad, kid. Thanks. People call you a legendary mercenary, but you're a lot less dexterous than I imagined. Legendary is what they call dead people. <laughs> I'm still alive and kicking, you know. Hey, and about what happened with Berlin. I'm sorry. The whole thing was just two minor lords trying to get the better of each other. If Burling hadn't come for us, we could have avoided all the bloodshed. But she came roaring in, yelling that she would take us down and make a name for herself. My kid couldn't afford to hold back at that point. I know that doesn't make it better, but I hope it helps. What's done is done. You were just doing your job. I know that. Yuri's still not back yet? It's been five days. Hmm? What's this? A letter? Not liking to leave his stuff lying around. I wonder if it says anything about where he went. Oh, it's just sitting there. Can't hurt to take a peek, right? Are you well? Eating enough? I worry about you all the time. Thank you for sending money always. I want to see you soon. Huh. Is this letter for Yuri? It's got a different name on it. Having fun? Yuri! Wow, he really snuck up on me. When did you get back? Just now. More importantly, why are you snooping through things that don't belong to you? Choose your next word carefully, if you don't want them to be your last. I'm sorry. It was just sitting out in the open, so I thought it'd be okay if I read it. I was worried you weren't coming back. <sighs> Never mind. I can't imagine you'd have a reason to pry into my affairs. I suppose this is what I get for taking off without telling anyone. And for being so careless. Yeah, I thought you'd be the last person to leave something like this behind. You must have left in a hurry. You could say that. 
Was it because of the letter? I assume it's from someone in your family. Maybe a little brother or sister? <laughs> My mother, actually. She doesn't really have a way with words, I know. She's always been prone to illness, but lately her condition has grown worse. I try to visit whenever she asks to see me. Obviously, there are times when I can't go, but... I have to take all the time I can get, right? I never know which visit will be my final chance to see her. I understand. Once someone's gone, they're gone. But wait, the name on that letter... Is that your real name? So Yuri's an alias and you're really red? No need to say it. And yes, what parent would call their kid by an alias anyway? Fair point. It's a nice name, though. Why hide it? In my line of work, it pays to have more than a few names. And don't go telling anyone about this. You won't like to find out what happens if you do. Okay, take it down a notch. Besides, a threat like that's kind of tempting. Makes me want to slip up just to see what happens. You don't think I'm serious? Fine then. Just don't say I didn't warn you. In any case, I am sorry for prying. And for what it's worth, I hope your mom gets better soon. If it were easy to cure, then we wouldn't even be talking about it. But I appreciate the sentiment nonetheless. So when it comes to President, that is the situation. Yes, I see. Burning the midnight oil, are we? Such zeal. Ah, Hubert. What are you doing here at this hour? Up to your usual intrigues behind Edelgard's back? I would thank you not to make such blind and rude assumptions when you lack any basis for them. Well... Uh, yes. I suppose I was making assumptions. You have my apologies. Not at all. I am, in truth, up to my usual intrigues. So your amends are quite unnecessary. Oh, all right then. Uh, hold a moment. You were? In any event, what are you reading with such vigorous intent? Listen to me, Hubert. I... A book of past judicial precedent, is it? Ah, and specifically concerning the prosecution of nobles. Yes, I have a mind to settle matters with my father. The letter of the law considers rebellion a capital crime, but practically speaking, that is not the case. Members of the nobility are especially likely to be granted clemency, and all the more so in recent years. Yes, they expiate their guilt by surrendering peerage, providing assets and information, and leaning on the strength of their past meritorious deeds. In short, the nobility make full use of every excuse available to hold tight to their miserable lives. One could pluck off their arms and legs and leave them to fester in the dankest of prisons and they would still come wriggling back to the surface. So long as they are permitted to live, that is. Like with the former Marquis Vestra? That one did not serve his emperor properly and acted in a manner easily construed as treasonous. This is incontrovertible fact. Go on. Sadly, he resisted arrest and lost his life in the unfortunate incident that ensued. His guilt, or innocence, on the matter of treason will remain forever shrouded in mystery. That sounds like a careful bit of sophistry to me. It appears to anyone with half a mind that you thought him guilty and had him executed. As a noble, he should have been judged in public, as is right and proper, no? 
So long as they are permitted to live, the noble creature struggles desperately to continue doing so. Such is ever their nature. Which is precisely why I am investigating precedent. In order to block any means by which my father could escape justice. I will not allow him to stage a comeback. I will see my father properly judged for his crimes. But could you, if matters came to that? I wonder. It is not a question of can or cannot. The man will be dealt with, and by my hand, I could never forgive myself otherwise. Not as the inheritor of the title of Duke Iyer, nor as the one to succeed him as Prime Minister. It is for Her Majesty to decide such things. However, if it proves to be in Her Majesty's interest, I suspect this resolve of yours will be most welcome. Is that Lady Dorothea? Oh, it is! Hello, Monica. Oh, is something wrong? Well, I was wondering... Are you the same Lady Dorothea who is known as the Mystical Songstress? Well, yes, I suppose I am. Did you not know that? Not at first. Though it made perfect sense once I finally realized it. I find it difficult to believe it's really you. Well, I'm certainly not doing a lot of songstressy things here in the army, so I'm not surprised it took you a bit to put two and two together. But it should not have taken me this long. You have the same name, and you carry yourself in the same dignified manner as the Lady Dorothea I saw in the capital. I can't believe you're right in front of me. The excitement is so great I can barely stand. Oh, please, that's all in the past. Now I'm just another one of your allies. No, you're different. There wasn't a girl in the capital who didn't want to be you. I spent years trying to find a ticket to one of your performances. But when I finally found one, I ended up in a seat where I couldn't see the stage very well. It was so far back, I could barely even make out your face. Or the rest of you, for that matter. That's likely why I failed to recognize you at first. Well, I'm certainly pleased you came to see me, and I'm sorry the seat was less than ideal. Oh, but the costumes and stagecraft were more gorgeous and stirring than I ever could have imagined. Your songs captivated me. They reached out from the center of the stage all the way back to me in my little corner of the opera house. Just thinking about it puts a smile on my face. <laughs> You were a more passionate listener than I would have imagined, Monica. Uh, Monty? Still with me? Oh, my apologies, Lady Dorothea. I was sort of carried off by a wave of memories there. It's fine, but uh, can we maybe stop with all of the lady stuff? I find it a little unsettling. Well, all right, Dorothea. You know, I'm somewhat surprised you didn't return to the opera company once the war broke out. You're not the only one. AD and I being classmates was a big part of why I stayed, but... Suffice it to say that a lot happened, and now I'm here. It's a great honor to fight alongside you, Lady Dor... Uh, um... Dorothea. Maybe I should just return the favor and start calling you Lady Monica. Hubert, have you learned anything about my father's whereabouts? Nothing. We've not the faintest idea what he is up to. If we are lucky, he will be naught but a corpse by the wayside. I know that sounds cruel, but frankly, his death would do us a great service. You remain as blunt as the blacksmith's anvil. Still, I cannot deny the truth of what you say. I still think it for the best if he is taken into custody and given a fair trial under imperial law. 
And yet, at times, a different thought manages to creep in around the edges of my mind. There is a part of me, a very small part, granted, that hopes he has found a quiet life for himself somewhere out of the way. The man can strive for a bucolic life all he wants, but he will never have it. Adrastia looks to be at peace, but beneath the surface, many disagree with the Emperor's ways. Make no mistake. These dissidents will seek out your father and prop him up as their leader. Yes, I suppose he will never stop being the former Prime Minister and a symbol of the old regime. But to frame it as you do... I am right, and you know it. Make your peace with it. Once a man strays from the path, there is no guiding him back. I disagree. I believe we all deserve a second chance. In any case, if you find out anything about my father, be sure to inform me. I almost wish they did prop the man up. Because perhaps then... Ah. But no. By the way, it seems I will have to start taking more serious precautions. I only hope he can settle things with his father in one manner or the other. Just as I did. Our recent battles have won nearly all of the kingdom's central and western lords to our side. Those who chose not to bend the knee are making their last stand in that castle. They are weary men, unable to keep pace with the times. And now we can be rid of them all in but a single stroke. They had plenty of chances to surrender and chose not to avail themselves thus. Show no mercy. If they wish to cling to the past, let them die in its embrace. I wish they'd consider all the poor souls they're forcing to perish along with them. Sure, but I fully understand why they'd want to hole up in a castle. That's my go-to move. They are beneath a siege, not holed up. The difference is unequivocal. Sorry, what? Unequivocal. It is a new word I have been learning. Its meaning is clear and unambiguous, yes? Again, what? Look, the way I see it, we just need to bust through the gates and pummel the stuffing out of them. It unfortunately is not that simple. Most of the kingdom's castles are specifically designed to withstand a siege. Our only option is to chip away at them slowly from the surrounding forts. I agree there is no place for mercy on the battlefield. If the enemy desires a fight, we will rend them asunder and leave their bones on the midden heap. We need to move carefully. A cornered foe is capable of anything. Oh, come on. We'll have these nobodies cleared out before dinner. I hope you're ready to back that boast with action. It's time. All units to positions. Prepare to attack. As we thought, they've made Baron Dominic their figurehead because of his blood ties to the Ten Elites. But frankly, his lineage is of no concern to you. Your orders are to breach the castle, find him, and cut him down. We begin by eliminating the troops outside the castle. Split up and take control of those strongholds. I will capture this stronghold. Let's do this! Take care not to forge too far ahead now. It would be disastrous if the enemy were to seize our middle base. Take a breather. Start that stronghold in the road! I can still come back! That thinned the castle perimeter nicely. Now we must find a way to. My turn. It's a bloodbath out here! Let us in! We beg you! 
I can't leave those people out there to die. Open the gates! Yes, throw the gates wide. Let that bleeding heart get the best. No one will ravage these lands while I still draw breath. I will lay the lot of you low. fight I have left in me. I pray it was enough, my brother. Is everything prepared? All of our hopes rest on this strategy. Targeting us with their volition, Your Majesty. We must respond. Watch my back. <laughs> Grow stronger. Show yourself, Baron Dominic. Surrender, and I will spare your life. My life means nothing if I must spend the rest of it facing my people in shame. I will not abandon them in their time of need. I will not suffer you to lay a hand on my brother. a hero's relic. If we strip her of it, it could serve us well in the future. I promise to defend this castle, and I will, no matter who I have to face. Not you as well. 
How will I ever tell your mother? Alas, poor Gustav. And now I, too, go to battle for the last time. Though our fates may be sealed, we will fight to the very last. deal a crushing blow to the kingdom our campaign is not over but for now we celebrate and so I reach my end pray forgive me my weakness your majesty Annette Gustav forgive me They deified him for being the descendant of a hero. And in return, he got a life he could never control, and a death he could never ordain. Yet surely the man was happy to die for his people. He must have felt as though he had fulfilled his set purpose in life. That notion alone should tell you how warped the world has become. Still, right and wrong are spoils to be handed out by the victor of this war. Well said, Your Majesty. We must prevail if we are to change the world. This war is only the first step. I get it now. I beg your pardon. Everything's finally clicked for me. I understand what we're really up against here. Oh? I told you before, I don't always get where you're coming from. Still, you trusted me, and that was enough. But what you said just then? It made me realize we're not fighting the church or the kingdom. I mean, we are, of course. But what we're really up against is the world itself. And even if we win, there's no guarantee we'll leave Fodlin better than we found it. All we can do is try our best and hope it works out. Pretty hard to wrap your brain around, honestly. I can't even begin to fathom how you can grapple with something that heavy. <laughs> Once again, you managed to find a most surprising nugget of philosophy. I knew you'd understand, even if I can't point to the reason why I felt that way. But I'm glad to hear you say it. Thank you. Imperial soldiers, the lands of Brynius now belong to us. As you know, Brynius shares a border with Blathid territory. The enemy stronghold of Ferdiad is but a stone's throw away. At long last, we approach the final push of this campaign. Stay vigilant. But be not afraid. We shall wield our weapons as one, claim our victory, and unite all of Fodlin under our flag! Blathed land at last. The kingdom will be more desperate than ever now. As they should be. We have stripped away nearly half of their territory at this point. But we still have the remaining houses to contend with. Karen, Galatea, Fraldarius, and Gautier are all unshakably faithful to the crown. They would tear us to pieces had they the chance. Certainly not my idea of a fun afternoon. Still, we have no choice but to face them unless they decide to stop harboring the Archbishop. Do you think that's even a possibility? The people of the kingdom are quite devout after all. I highly doubt it. So let them huddle together like the cornered rats they are and... Hmm? Huh? Huh? 
What's going on? Urgent news, my lord. Massive revolts have broken out in Hrim and Ordelia territory. What? Did you say Hrim? Uh, where's Hrim again? The eastern edge of the Empire, north of Ayr, along the Aramid River. And Ordelia land is across the bank in Alliance territory. It's also where Lysithia is from. And as far as I know, her parents are still there. Unrest in both the Empire and the Alliance? This can't be a coincidence. So, those who slither in the dark have finally made their move. This is it. This is our chance to figure out who or what those people really are. Scarlet Blaze. The Rising Darkness. Having smashed the kingdom's last desperate defense, the Empire takes the battle north. Further pressure from the Alliance to the east forces King Dimitri to make a difficult choice. Will the Empire and Alliance prevail and unite Fodlan? Just as all begin to entertain the possibility, those most opposed to the idea finally emerge from the shadows. Apparently, it started with attacks by bandits and insurgents, which touched off a widespread revolt. The people have taken to the streets, and now Hrim and Ordelia territory are in total chaos. We have no choice but to intervene. At present, it is just Hrim territory. But if the unrest spreads to neighboring Imperial lands, there will be no water cask large enough to quench the flames. Especially if the fires were intentionally set. And yet, redeploying our forces to deal with the unrest could be exactly what they're after. I believe it is, Your Majesty. With the aid of the Alliance, we were on the brink of securing the Kingdom's surrender. The war was all but decided. It seems certain parties were not at all happy with that particular arrangement. You can't exactly wage a war when your own land's falling apart at the seams. No one is more reluctant than I am to turn back when victory is within our grasp. But it is the only option. Fortunately, the Kingdom now lacks the soldiers to take advantage and regain their lost territory. We'll leave enough troops to hold the line and take the main force east at speed. I'll have Count Burglies take position at Aryan Road. That sounds exhausting. But you're the boss. Do you mind if I just link off to my room and... Oh, here come the dagger eyes. Never mind! If it's settled, let's not waste another second. Every moment we delay means more suffering for the innocent people who are caught up in this. Going to Hrimland will take us close to Ire. Needless to say, I am in favor of departing at once. Let's go find the masterminds behind this mess and send them to meet their maker. But how will we be telling the innocent people from those who are causing trouble? A fair point. If we're too reckless, many good people are going to be killed. Only one thing to do. Let's get to Hrim territory and sort this out. Now! Time for a break. Let us concentrate our efforts on rousing conversation. Afterwards, I say we reward ourselves with a gripping training session and crown the evening with a meal well-deserving of our ravenous appetites. Ugh. Is something amiss? I don't know. It feels like you might be leaning a little too hard on the whole giving your all thing. You didn't used to be like this. I know you want to do your best, but it's starting to feel like I can't even relax when I'm with you. Perhaps you are right. I have been feeling rather restless lately. 
I suppose seeing my father locked away in that dungeon made me feel the need to... accomplish something. At times like these, devoting myself fully to what few things I can do is all that keeps me going. Otherwise, I would simply succumb to the reality of how powerless I truly am. The pressure is... immense. Now that you mention it, I think I finally know what was feeling off about you. It's that pressure forcing you to keep your guard up, like you're constantly braced for the worst. Take your breaks, for example. It never looks like you're doing anything even resembling relaxing. I wouldn't worry about your father, though. I know you'll find the right solution. I appreciate your counsel. I feel as though I have gained some valuable new insight into myself. After all, one can hardly notice the changes they undergo as they happen. It seems partnering with you was the right decision. Your advocacy for maximal effort continues to be an inspiration. Oh, I wasn't really trying to give you advice or anything. And that's definitely not what I'm advocating for. But if what I said helped, then I'm glad I could be there for you. I just hope you can start cutting yourself a little slack. Your future's bright, Ferdinand. A veritable wellspring of advice as always. I am deeply obliged. As long as you're feeling better. I mean, war councils are grim already, but they'd be practically unbearable with you sulking around the place. And really, it was nothing. Just here to help. Nothing? <laughs> if ever there is a time to give it one's all, it is when expressing gratitude. It seems you could learn something from me as well. And just you watch. I swear on the iron name. I will surpass my father in the most stunning fashion. He's never gonna learn, is he? And that reminds me, I actually found myself at a noble's tea party not too long ago. Oh, you must be talking about Ferdy, right? He does love his tea. Uh, no. It happened while I was doing some work as a bodyguard. The nobles who threw the party even gave me a cup of tea to show their appreciation. I didn't really know what to make of it, though. Hard to say if it was even good or bad. Understandable. Settings like that tend to choke the flavor out of any food or drink you happen to come across, among other things. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm built for all that fancy stuff. Hey, remember when I asked you to sing for me? You belted out a verse from one of your operas. It kind of reminded me of that tea. It's like, I just don't have the background for that sort of stuff. If you don't grow up in it, you're not gonna get it. Everyone has a right to those things, though. Taking in a tragic opera, letting an elegant meal dance across your taste buds. Nobody should be excluded from those pleasures just because they were born a commoner. It'd be good if that's how things worked. Hmm? You think it's not? Take my time back as a mercenary. I would have gladly eaten a half-cooked rat if it meant I was getting food in my belly. It's only since I joined up with this army that my palate's become a little more discerning. What I'm saying is, if you never have the chance to eat good food, then you'll never know what good food is supposed to taste like. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but... In that case... Uh, Dorothea? Sorry, I got a bit caught up in my thoughts there. But I think it might be just as you say. Will you indulge me for a moment? Sure, what's on your mind? When I first started singing, I did it for me. Only me. But it wasn't long until Manuela discovered my gift. So, I joined the opera company. It felt... <laughs> incredible. I wanted the whole world to hear my singing. But once I became a songstress, I started attracting more and more attention from the nobles. 
Before I knew it, I wasn't singing for myself anymore. I was singing for them. Now you can't even appreciate my songs if you weren't born with a silver spoon in your mouth. That might be true, but like I said, that isn't necessarily a bad thing. So many people would kill to be able to do what you can do. So don't belittle yourself like that. Your singing is incredible, Dorothea. I appreciate that. <laughs> I really do. But I still can't help but wonder. Wow, that was amazing. You really know your way around a sword. Oh, hey, Caspar. You were looking pretty good yourself. Wait, haven't we had this conversation before? I don't know. Must be because you're always sweeping the floor out there. Looks like I've still got my work cut out if I ever want to catch up to you. Wait, you catch up to me? If anything, I'm the one who has some ground to make up. That's nice of you to say and all, but it's not gonna stop me. I'm never slowing down. Anyway, let's get back to training. I'm gonna really knock your socks off this time. Bring it on! Actually, hold on a sec. Come on, what's the big idea? You trying to throw me off my game? That's not it. I was just thinking, we've been training together a lot lately. But if we're doing all the same drills at all the same intensity, then aren't we just gonna get stronger at the same rate? Nobody's closing any gaps, that's for sure. Oh, you do have a point. Yeah, definitely have a point. But you know what? I don't care. You don't? Nope. I mean, I don't want to run off and do some cool secret training without you. Sounds boring if you ask me. Or sort of... cheating? I want to face you head on. Same drills or not, I'm gonna blow past you no problem. Well, you fired up now? Fired up? Friend, I'm the flames. And trust me, you're about to get burned. <laughs> Only one way to find out, and I'm putting my bet down on old Caspar. It's incredible just how focused you are, Caspar. I'm honestly kinda impressed. There aren't many people like you joining up with mercenary groups, I'll tell you that much. Oh yeah? I'd have no idea myself. But hey, let's both give this our best shot. The tougher we get, the quicker we can end this war once and for all. And at the end of the day, that's the goal here. Let's never lose sight of that. Hmm. Bored, are we? Training is useless. Swords are for killing. I can see why you'd find it vexing. To you, real battles are a source of sustenance. It's easy to forget how some people welcome this war, especially the Death Knight. Without the war, I would just be killing someone less deserving. When it ends, our contract expires. Then I face my punishment. You're still adamant about that. I agree that circumstances aside, a crime like yours warrants some kind of punishment. But there are other ways to go about it. For example, you could atone for your sins by doing good in the world. Or is anything less than perdition off the table? It's not as if the members of House Bartels were completely innocent, after all. Hmm. That is what you want, not me. It is my future. I choose how I live and die. <sighs> well... I'm sorry to hear you'll be leaving us, but I do respect your resolve. I'm pleased you're choosing to live and face the consequences, 
instead of taking the Craven's way out. Let them lock me up. And, if I'm ever forgiven, this is my path. If I die in a cell, so be it. Well, whatever you seek for yourself, I hope you find it. I truly do. We all deserve to be the architects of our own lives. I believe that so fiercely that I started a war to remake the world under that ideal. You did so much for me. I'm sorry it came to this. Don't apologize. If anything, I'm grateful. Thank you, Emil. I mean, Yuritsa. Ah, so I won't get scolded for saying the wrong name? That's a step forward. <sighs> Whatever you and I expect from tomorrow, we have to keep fighting for it. Are you with me? I am. Oh, what a mess. I've really done it this time. Her Majesty is the kindest person I know, so she's likely not upset with me, but I still cannot bring myself to face her. Hello, Monica. What brings you to this particular wall for conversation? What do you want, Hubert? I lack the energy to keep you company right now, so please just... leave me alone. <laughs> Very well. I thought you might be interested to know that Lady Edelgard was overcome with grief, as she told me how deeply she regrets wounding you with her words. But, as you desire solitude, I will endeavor to keep that to myself. Good day. She did? And wait, did you not just tell me what she said? Hmm? Oh, not at all. I was merely speaking to myself. Oh, there was a painting in Her Majesty's chambers and... Subtlety is not my strong suit, to put it lightly. I asked her whose child had scribbled on such an expensive canvas, before realizing Her Majesty had actually painted it herself. So she didn't hurt me, I hurt her. Oh, I'm so ashamed. Lady Edelgard can be quite sensitive, despite how she carries herself. Perhaps she was so stunned by your comment that she made a hurtful one of her own in the heat of the moment. You need not let it weigh upon you. Such events are commonplace for me as well. You amaze me, Hubert. How are you not beside yourself at Her Majesty's every utterance? I know I said that I wanted to become her servant, but now I think it may be impossible. Her Majesty is so radiant. I'm not sure I possess the fortitude to bask in that glow every minute of the day. Perhaps some distance between us is better for me. Do you truly believe that? Even though you now have an opportunity to become her servant? Wait, I do? Once this war is settled, Her Majesty will endeavor to tear down the entire concept of the nobility. Her first action will be to separate territory from title, making it so that being a noble no longer means one must lord over some plot of land somewhere. Once she does this, I rather suspect you could remain at her side, even if you do inherit your family's title. You're right. How could I have failed to realize that? I have heard her talk about her plan so many times before, but I never considered what an impact it would have on me. Ah, oh, I am such a fool. Not at all. You simply illustrate what it is to be part of the established system. One is not easily shaken from its structure. This is why Her Majesty takes such drastic measures to rid us of the accepted practice of categorizing individuals as either noble or common. 
Honestly, I don't believe there is another more suited to serving Her Majesty than you. But I still will not give up. I'm going to become her servant too, and show everyone a new way of life for the nobility, and for whatever lies beyond. Which means I cannot simply stand here in this state of indecision. There is much work to do. <laughs> I suspected she might be stopped in her tracks for but a moment. And indeed, she has gone and left me in the dust. Well... I cannot permit myself to be left behind in such a fashion. I must keep making progress of my own. Hey, I was looking for you. Didn't think I'd find you down by the river. That's an awful lot of blood on your cloak. I thought soaking it in the water would help get it out. I don't know. That fight went on for a while, and blood doesn't come out so easily, even if you start washing it right away. If you ask me, it's more trouble than it's worth. You have another one, right? I do, but I'd still like to use this one if I can. <sighs> Something wrong? Hmm? Oh, sorry. It's just, you reminded me of Citri. Of your mother, back when we first met. How so? There was this one time when she was trying really hard to get some stains out of a handkerchief. She had your same quiet composure and everything, and when I asked her if she had another one, you know what she told me? She just turned and said, if I could still use this one, I'd rather not throw it away. Well, that's not exactly the same. Maybe not, but I still see so much of her in you. When I was first getting to know her, I never saw her laugh or cry. Just like someone else I could mention. You know, you never really used to talk about her, but you've been doing it a lot lately. Why is that? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm feeling a little regret for dragging you into the mercenary life. You've never had a place to call home, and you don't have any friends your age. And it's been one bloody battle after another since this war broke out. If she were still alive, your life would be entirely different. You'd be with her, and things would be... peaceful. I don't regret my life here with you. I might not have a home or friends, but you've always been there for me. Living by the sword suits me just fine, and I've had no shortage of allies. So... You're right. There's no cause for regrets. You really are just like her, though. You know that? What'd you bring the five of us together for, Yuri? We beaten someone up? Because I'm always ready for that kind of thing. It is always the same with you, Balthus. How can you possibly be so uncouth in my presence? Not to mention our dear, frail happy here. Stop thinking with your fists and use your brain. Who are you calling frail, Coco? It was a figure of speech, dear happy. Nothing more. <laughs> We've been topside for a while, and you guys haven't changed a bit. You really think I'd call you out here just to lay a beating into someone? <laughs> We're too busy for that. I've got a favor to ask of you all. Oh, and you as well, if that's all right. No? Sounds like you've got something nefarious cooking. Plus, I'm busy anyway. Come now. Do you really think a beautiful man like me would be up to something nefarious? The only thing I'm up to is helping people in need. Turns out some old friends are in trouble. And we're about the only people in the world who would ever think to help them. By old friends, do you mean from Abyss? The ones who followed us? Well, look at the brain on Balthus. Exactly so. 
They've been caught up in some kind of struggle, and now bandits are after them. In that case, count me in. You should know better than to take Yuri at face value. No doubt much of what he said is true, but I am certain there is another angle to it as well. One which benefits himself. I take care of my own. That's all. I think the point is that there are folks from Abyss who need help, right? So let's quit bickering and go help already. Good point. This is no time for anyone to be arguing with the shady lady here. How dare you! I am not the one who is constantly scheming at one thing or the other. Yuri Bird? Coco? Hey, hey! Save some of that fire for the fighting! Yeah, you can air all your grievances at the bad guys. Exactly. You're actually smart sometimes, friend. Sometimes? I'm always saying smart stuff. Huh? Oh, right, right. Let's go with that. That doesn't help. Eh, don't worry about it. Anyway, Yuri, it's time for the thing. You know, the thing to get us fired up before we roll out. He used to do it in Abyss all the time. Our house doesn't exist anymore. But if it means we can finally get going, very well. Let's do this, wolves. Oh, and you too, Mark. Seems like our friends fled into the mountains. To get there, we'll need to take these strongholds. No! Enemies! Get out of here! We're here! And we won't let any of you die! One of us had a bounty on their head and told us to turn them over. Uh, they were probably talking about me. Well, that's awkward. There were plenty of folks with bounties on their heads in Abyss. But no one can begin to match the rich price on yours. You're the one who summons monsters, yeah? Happy or whatever? Well, time to open up. You've got the wrong person. I don't have any idea how to summon monsters. I swear! They think that person is me? Well, I don't want that on my conscience. Guess I better. <sighs> that time already. Why is there a monster over there? You must have had the wrong person. Come on. I'm guessing they'll follow the path to the monsters now. Yeah? <laughs> Thank you. And, and I'm sorry to ask, but can you please rescue the folks of the mountain too? Just say the word, Coco. Fantastic King of Grappling is on the case. It seems news of your beauty has not spread as fast as that of your abilities. If you are being confused with a random man, fine by me. Still, do you think that mage was working for the lady who kidnapped me?
getting stronger. It's not over. Easy there. You're all right now. My turn. Happy. Hey, you'll be real proud of me. I didn't sell you out or nothing. It would seem their leader has made himself known. Give it up! Hmm. You're rather famous, aren't you? Yes, I imagine you'd fetch a tie to some. You capture me? <laughs> Not likely. Say, I didn't expect anyone would come to the aid of these rogues. Normally, I like surprises, but I am finding this one to be most unwelcome. Is it over yet? The enemy is some distance away. I will try to use my sorry excuse for magic to attack. Step down! What was that? Magic? Here goes! What are you even aiming at? Oh dear. It seems my other side has been doing some experimenting. And my magic got a bit out of hand as it was. If these arms get any bigger, I'll have to start going sleeveless. Silent. So, does that mean you can stop it now? Because we're getting burned alive over here. Apologies. But I fear my meager intellect is not up to the task. Time to settle up, Yuri! Yeah, maybe in your dreams. Bow before me. More worried about friendly fire than the actual enemy. It seems the goddess has not forsaken us quite yet, for I was able to put a stop to it. Oh, look. Here comes the big boss. <sighs> Better get this over with. That's nice, I guess. If you think me just some slapdash bandit, you have another thing coming. <laughs> A barrier. I understand this is how such folks make their living, and I have certainly been there. But these rogues are our rogues, and we are going to protect them. Yeah, hands off our rogues. Yeah, hands off our... Hey, wait a second. When did this lot become our rogues? Time to settle up, Yuri. Sam! Yeah, maybe in your dreams. Get up! Bow before me. Someone always gets in my way. Looks like it's over. You folks go on ahead. I want to talk to these rogues. Now that's how it's done. Thanks for the help. Things would have been pretty hairy with just the four of us.
I mean, we've got this guy pulling bounty hunters in from across the continent. Hey! And this gal summoning monsters. Not my fault. Also, totally necessary. And finally, the grand sorceress who rained pain down on friend and foe alike. Even your condemnation is far too kind. I was of no help whatsoever. Hey, everyone did what they could, and we all had a hand in the victory. Yeah, it worked out in the end, so buck up! It was nice to blow off some steam at any rate. And I'm certain my other self was pleased to do more field tests with the new spell. Though at the expense of my complete and utter mortification. Well, I've still got my complaints, but I suppose I gained something from this too. Oh yeah? What's that? I went ahead and hired the folks we saved. I made it look like I was doing them a favor, and those in debt never seem to ask questions of their saviors. <laughs> I'd been feeling a bit short-handed anyway, so it all worked out. <laughs> You're always looking for an angle, Yuri. That's the one thing about you that never changes. What do you mean, the one thing? What are you trying to say? <laughs> what else changed? You know, the, uh... Actually, you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, so now I haven't changed? Do you even know what you're saying? Or are words just falling out of your mouth faster than your brain can make them? Pretty much, yeah. Clearly, B hasn't changed either. Well, I have certainly changed. Alas, I have lost all of my hopes and dreams. Are you kidding? That is a hundred percent you. <laughs> you four really are old friends. We are quite the quartet, all right. But hey, why don't you make it a quintet? Plus, I could use some help babysitting this lot. They call us the Abyssal Four, but now that we're five, we'll have to change that name. Constance, did anyone ever call us that? It's hard to say. Sadly, my feeble memory has all but wasted away. We were probably called that. I mean, it's not like Yuri Bird to just make things up. Hey, what's with you guys? Do you want to be a part of this group or not? <sighs> and here I was thinking we'd all go out and celebrate our victory. I guess it's just gonna be the two of us, friend. Uh, sure, I guess. No fair. It should at least be the three of us. Hey, if you're paying, you know I'm in. Also, you're right. I think we were called the Abyssal Four at some point. Wherever you lead, dear Yuri, I shall follow for I have no desires of my own. I will happily feast upon whatever meager morsels you see fit to scatter before me. Enough yapping. Let's get out of here already. Do I want to know what you two are talking about? Is it not obvious? We are debating who might be behind the recent disturbance in the peace. The slithery people, right? Correct. Absurdly phrased, but correct. We may have ousted Lord Arendelle and the others from power in Enbar, but we knew it was not the end of their vile schemes. Which is why we have been preparing for the day they bared their fangs once more. Granted, we lack solid proof they are behind this. But it is the most likely explanation, considering the scale of the revolts, as well as where and when they all occurred. I'll keep that in mind on the battlefield. Oh, and for the record, I like this part where you all trust me enough to tell me what's going on. A strategy I strongly oppose. 
But Her Majesty insisted we keep you in the loop. Must you always antagonize Hubert? I merely state fact. Though I will admit you saved the Emperor's life once. Still, I would not be shocked in the slightest if you suddenly changed your colors and tried to kill her. Yet sharing such knowledge with you achieves a dual purpose. It helps prevent those who slither in the dark from using you, and it gives ample justification to dispose of you, should you betray us. You still don't trust me after all this time. What exactly is it gonna take? You may not have Hubert's trust, but you have mine. I'll be counting on you as always in the battles to come. If those who slither in the dark appear, we must strike them down. Constance, is that you? I don't think I've ever seen you train during the day. Good day to you. Though I fear my presence is as a storm cloud in an otherwise clear sky, my sincerest apologies for subjecting you to this wretched sight. I shall vacate the premises at once to spare you any further distress. No, wait, don't go! Since you're here, why don't we train together? You're here because you're trying to achieve your dream, right? Though it pains me to deny such kind words, of which I am truly unworthy. I am afraid my dream will likely never come to pass. This pathetic excuse for athleticism you see before you is nothing but a futile attempt to strengthen my frail body and stave off death. How could I possibly ask an exemplary warrior such as yourself to squander your time with one such as I? Training so you don't die is as good a reason as any. I'd say that's why I'm doing it too. See? Our goals are the same, so there's no reason not to work together. Well, since you have given it much more consideration than I deserve... <sighs> what a workout! I'm beat. <sighs> to think my other side would be able to keep up with such rigorous training! <sighs> you okay, Constance? Never better! In fact, I am just getting started! Are you leaving so soon? You're still raring to go? You're weirdly energetic all of a sudden. <laughs> I surprise even myself sometimes! Making my dreams a reality takes effort, you know. I cannot allow something so trifling as exhaustion to stand in my way. Who knows how long things would take if I did? Therefore, I shall spare no opportunity to train today. And tomorrow, all of Fodlin will behold my military prowess! Uh, that's all well and good. But then, why didn't you want to train before? I told you there were extenuating circumstances! Had I known you would respond in such a manner, I would have asked for your assistance much earlier! <gasps> oh! I just had a brilliant idea! I've got a bad feeling about this. We can train together and conduct magical experiments at the same time! You see, I've invented this particular spell that imbues the palms with a suction power that makes dropping one's weapon a hindrance of the past! Sure, why not? I'll try anything once. Go for it! Splendid! Let us begin, shall we? One side has an overabundance of confidence while the other is clearly lacking it. Maybe the two balance each other out. What are you blathering on about? Let us be on with it! Hey, Happy. You got a minute? I have several. Need something? 
So, I heard a little about your past, and I was wondering if you wouldn't mind telling me more about it. I see. So, now you know, huh? Not the most pleasant story. What did you want to know? I was thinking about how you asked all those questions about my mom. And I realized you were probably worried I went through the same thing as you. Yeah, that about sums it up. You do have those mysterious powers after all. When I was little, some strange lady kidnapped me. I became a test subject for her twisted experiments. That's how I ended up with my condition, or whatever you want to call it. Not that it's life-threatening. Safe to say my mom never did anything like that. I'm pretty sure I'd remember it if she did. She didn't really talk much, but I don't think she had a deceitful bone in her body. Her life was kind of just what you'd expect out in a village like that. She did keep to herself, though. Thinking about it more, it's possible she was on the run from someone. Hmm. That does sound a little worrying. But in any event, I'm glad you didn't go through what I did. And unlike me, it seems you've got a pretty good handle on your powers. Yeah, I think I've gotten the hang of them for the most part. But that still doesn't make them safe. One day that sword might overtake me and I'll turn into a monster. Like something out of a fairy tale. If that ever happens, I'll just sigh and you'll come running. Then me and all your old friends would put you out of your misery. Now that's a real fairy tale ending. Oh, that won't give me nightmares at all. But if it ever came to it, I think that's how I'd like to go. <sighs> Mercenaries need to use every weapon and tactic at their disposal. Maybe flinging these powers around isn't such a good idea. But right now, I need to do whatever I can to stay alive. Now honestly, I should probably take a page out of your book and only use them as a last resort. I think that's what makes you pretty incredible, Happy. You've got this power right there, but choose not to use it. I think that means I just gave up. You're way more amazing because you're still trying. No doubt about it. Okay, sure, we can say I'm more amazing. As long as you recognize you're right there with me. I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. Anyway, was that all? Because I feel like I need to move. Yeah, thanks for talking with me. You going to train? Yep. Figure it couldn't hurt to put in a little effort. You should come too if you're free. I hope to see you there. Come to think of it. Experiments, huh? What did that dream even mean? Today's battle wasn't half bad. And minus that close call, I guess. I tell you, when I charged ahead and saw all those archers waiting for me, a single thought flashed through my mind. Not how I'd like to go, but that's life, I guess. <laughs> I was sure I was done for. What are you talking about? It was so windy, there was no way they could have gotten a clean shot at you. You completely wiped them out. Are you telling me you didn't plan it that way? I mean, I knew a breeze was blowing, but still. You're right. You would have been Balthus-sized target practice if the wind died down. But you bet your life that it wouldn't, right? That's something only you could pull off. I never would have taken those odds. It was all lady luck, pal. Pure and simple. Where's this coming from, anyway? I thought you hated all that gambling on life and death stuff. I did, but you're living proof that it can have a place on the battlefield. You roll the dice and get the job done. Can't argue with success. I have to accept that your way actually works. All I can do is hope you win your bets every time. 
Hmm. Thanks for saying that, but what happened today wasn't calculated at all. Things were going great, then I got carried away and made a stupid mistake. It just so happened that the wind was blowing the right way. Otherwise, I'd be dead. Quit pulling my leg. There's no way that was a coincidence. It was a complete fluke, honest. That's why I was going to tell you I've learned my lesson. That I'm done gambling with my life. Really? That's the best idea you've ever had. But since you admitted my way has merit, I think I'll keep rolling the dice. I gotta do what works for me, you know? Can't let one close call make me lose my nerve. Wait, what? Isn't that what almost got you killed today? I take it back. You are definitely gonna die. Please stop. Nope. Too late. A warrior doesn't go back on their word after all. We might have had some misunderstandings along the way, but what's important is that you learned to accept me for who I am. Right? In that case, what about you saying you weren't gonna bet your life on this stuff anymore? A warrior doesn't go back on their word after all. That doesn't count. I only said I was gonna tell you. Sure, whatever you say. Your logic is flawed, but it makes a tiny bit of sense. I know, right? Ah, uh, you're a good sport, pal. If you still want to grumble about it, we can hash things out later when we're celebrating our victory. Fine, I can live with that. It's a tough job, but someone's got to talk some sense into you. Lady Edelgard? I'm sorry, Petra. Am I interrupting? It is okay. I will soon be finishing. I am offering prayers to the spirits, so they will be guiding us to victory in battle. Is this how you pray in Bridget? In Fodlin, we usually save such things for a chapel. Yes. In Bridget, we are offering our prayers to the forests, the mountains, the skies, anywhere the spirits are dwelling. In Fodlin, the people are offering their prayers to the goddess. In this, we are differing. But we are the same, in hoping to live long and fight for what has meaning. Yes, of course. Perhaps I shouldn't ask this, but... Is it not unwise for you to be risking your life here in Fodlin? You are the queen of Brigid. Your people need you to return safely to them. Yes. Your words have truthfulness. If I am dying here on foreign soil, I am betraying my people. You gave me your promise to be releasing Brigid from its vassal relationship to the Empire. And if I die, your promise will be dying with me. Yes, I suppose it would. If you died, I would have to renegotiate our terms with your successor. That wouldn't be an issue if she were as capable and reasonable as you. But would she be? And for the record, Petra, I don't want you to die. You are a dear friend. Your words give me great happiness. But I am still content to be risking my life here in Fodlin. As we get closer to cornering our enemies, there's no telling what kind of foul tricks they'll employ. Are you certain you don't wish to walk away from this? It could easily go awry, after all. I am knowing the danger, but I have done my deciding. I will not be turning my tail and running while you are standing and fighting. I'm grateful, but unlike you, I cannot back down from this fight. This war is one of my own making. And I am choosing to share it. If we lose, then we will lose. But I will not be having regrets. 
I will be fighting with you until the end of bitterness. That is the prayer I was offering. Well, I'll do my best to avoid a bitter end. Regardless, you have my thanks, Petra. Your resolve humbles me, but also gives me strength. You are the Emperor. I am the Queen. Our relationship is not one that is usual. Not everyone can be standing on equal feet with you. This is something only I can be doing. And so, I will continue standing by your side. Let no one say the Queen of Bridget is not gracious and noble. But I do hope we never turn into a couple of stuffy royals who insist on doing everything by the book. I have trust that you will never be letting that happen. Linhart, come on, this is no time to be snoozing. <sighs> really, Kaspar? It's not even midday yet. Uh, we're well into midday, Linhart. Yes, but the warm rays of the sun and gentle cooling breeze have utterly enraptured me. So on that note, it's back to sleep. I'm gonna rip that blanket right off you. Now get up, because I found something amazing! How many times in my life have I heard that from you, only to find the truth considerably less engaging? Okay, first of all, not true. And second of all, this is way more amazing than all those other times. Hmm, I wonder. But very well, astound me. Look, someone took down that gigantic bear! I'd rather not look, thank you. I have little interest in witnessing blood and gore so early in the day. Oh, but it's already been cleaned and everything. Which means some open wounds will still be present. Plus whatever blood was slopped about in the process. Fine, then don't look at that part. Just look at that terrifying face. I'd give anything to take out a monster like this. Then you should form a hunting party, set up traps, and proceed with your life's work. No, I don't want to hunt it. I want to take it down. Barehanded, barehandling, you know? I understand your fixation, but in all of Fodlin... Only my father could pull it off, is that what you're gonna say? Hey, I'm not gonna be content being in his shadow forever. Rousing words, yet I seem to remember Count Burglies was still in the Academy when he brought down a bear and emerged unscathed. You're already older than he was then. Don't care, it's not too late. I'm gonna beat a bear, then I'm gonna get armor made that's just like my old man's. You said the same when we were young, then decided to drag me along for the ride. You took me through hill and dale in search of one, which made an absolute mess of my clothes and hair. And I had to treat your wounds every time you hurt yourself, though I did become quite adept at healing magic as a result. So, win-win, right? Plus, you helped me, which I very much appreciate. I suppose we'll call it a good thing and leave it at that. But perhaps a moratorium should be declared on such behavior for the time being? Yes, I think that would be best. A uh, more a tor Sorry, what now? Our focus should be on our enemies, not a bear. For this reason, I think it's best for you to put your dream on hold until the war is over. When peace reigns anew and we live in a world far better suited for free napping, I hope you can see your dream realized. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Oh, and when that day does come, I will be happy to accompany you again. But for now, let's just focus on what is in front of us. Put the bear brawl on hold, got it. And hey, once I survive this war and get stronger, that bear will be a pushover. That's not... Actually, yes. I suppose the possibility of that isn't zero. 
let's survive this war so all of our wildest bear dreams can come true one day. Dear son, I hope this letter finds you well, and that you and your sister aren't fighting too much. It's been some time since I left the church in the kingdom, but I'm making do. Once this war is over, I hope the three of us can live together again. She seems in good health. Yes, she sent me this letter as soon as I wrote her about being reunited with you. I know she was happy to hear that. She was always so worried about you, you know? <sighs> we haven't seen you since we left House Bartels, so please go visit her when you have a chance. As you read, we were thinking that after the war is over, we could perhaps reunite. No. Why not? I cannot face her. I killed my father, slaughtered everyone in the house. Our mother shouldn't meet a murderer. Yes, I heard about that. But I'm certain you took those actions because you felt you had to, right? Just explain it to her. She'll listen to you. You do not understand. There is a murderous demon in my heart. The Death Knight inside me would cut you and our mother down without hesitation. If that happened, I would lose myself. But we're here talking right now, and you're just as you always were. You're my little Emil, who loves kittens and sweets. Mercedes. I may be fine now, and perhaps the demon in me will even perish someday. But I cannot live with you until I pay for my crimes. And considering the weight of them, that day may never come. But... I seek only to be judged by the law, and thereby atone. So that's what you've decided, is it? In that case, I have no choice but to support you, no matter how sad it makes me. But just know that Mother and I will always be waiting for you, no matter how long it takes. I look forward to the day when you can show your face to her proudly. I see. We might both be old ladies by then. But we'll still be able to talk over tea like always. Thank you, Mercedes. Well then, Edelgard, what is this new information regarding those who slither in the dark? And can I assume it is somehow related to her inexplicable presence at this meeting? Hey Liz, how's it going? Indeed, Lysipia, for you see, she is the same as us. Yet another poor soul whose fate has been bent to their nefarious will. It can't be. Then the rumors about Happy are true? Her powers came from their experiments? Yep. What, you didn't believe it? I did not, in fact. Rather, I assumed it was a lie you told to keep others away, or else slander spread by a rival. A bit overboard for slander, don't you think? But still, I'm actually glad you didn't believe it. I presume we're ready to move on to the main topic. That is, if you're following all of this. Oh, I know all about Happy's situation. Good, that makes things easier. Now then, Happy's captor was a woman named Cornelia, the kingdom's former court mage.
Apparently, she is also one of those who slither in the dark. When the kingdom learned she was planning an insurrection, they rallied an army and defeated her. But is she truly dead? A cunning woman like her might have secured a body double and escaped. We have no way to confirm for ourselves, and can only trust the kingdom was thorough in this regard. Anyway, we think we found one of her old hideouts. Seems like it might be worth checking out. Based on what we've been able to extrapolate from Happy's testimony, this base is somewhere in the western portion of the kingdom. With the war's front having moved further north, we're currently well positioned to investigate. Oh, so that's why it took you so long to look into this. You had to wait for the war's tide to shift and grant you an opportunity. And what? I'm just extra muscle in case any baddies show up? Or does this have something to do with my power? For now, you are merely serving as additional steel. However, it's possible we might find a connection between Happy's power and your own. And though it might end up being nothing, I'd very much appreciate it if you came along. Sure thing. I mean, it's my job to protect you anyway. Well, my and Hubert's job. Say, where is Hubert anyway? He usually jumps at the chance to be involved in this kind of thing. Hubert has a good deal on his plate already. Now let's be off. With any luck, this won't take long. I pray we might finally dispel the darkness that haunts us all. This is the location we deduced from Happy's statements. Hopefully we find something. I think our suspicions were correct. All signs point to their having been here. Intruders! Away with you! Yeah, I've been here before, no doubt. Our guard up. No telling when somebody's gonna jump out at us. Where was anything? I can't remember. <laughs> 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 anything here now <laughs> they did a lot of painful stuff to me here trying to amplify my crest change it that sort of thing I need to be cautious you're surprisingly calm about all this Cornelia's research seems to have had different breather. aims than the experiments I was subjected to which means it likely differs from my own experience as well for the sake of your future life I hope you find some connection but I fear it does not have promise. There are still rooms we haven't searched yet. Let's investigate those. Is this a weapon? It looks like their technology, at least. Aside from the weird shape, it doesn't seem anything like my sword. We've given this area a thorough look. Is there anything else? Hey, was I the only one who heard that? It came from over there. Is this a dungeon? I've never been in here. This air feels just like the area beneath the palace. How many have met their ends here? Be it alliance, empire, or kingdom, their evil has left its mark everywhere. <sighs> Thank you.
What triggered the door mechanism? Could my brethren have fallen? what we found and leave this place. Hubert should be able to tell us more. I thought for sure we'd find better info in this place. And also that I'd be way more freaked out. Although, it seems like it was a different experience for you and Liz. Eh, Eddie? I can't claim to be as disaffected as you, but I'm fine. No need to put on a brave face, Edelgard. I feel terrible, and I'm certain you do as well. It's just that nothing ever bothers Happy. In that case, I feel as if I've just gone digging through an entire crate of old nightmares. And yes, this base seems mostly abandoned now. But who knows how many found themselves chained to operating tables while Cornelia was still alive. Well, that kind of thing happened to all of you, right? Well, I'm glad you made it out the other side. Now we got to fight together like this. We were lucky, that was all. Sometimes I wonder if we were the lucky ones. Anyway, why don't we get out of here before more jerks decide to crash the party? Good idea. Nothing like a nice bed and a warm meal to lift your spirits after something like this. So long as that meal contains something sweet. Sweet? Uh, sure, alright. Why not? Tea time it is then, for all four of us. Let's hurry back! I mean, if that's all right with the two of you. Of course. I'm actually growing fond of our weird little band. Still, you sure you're okay with me crashing your tea party with Eddie? Seems like you guys do that a lot. Actually, I believe Monica is the one who has tea with Edelgard most frequently. No, it's definitely you, Isithia. And then Ferdinand. Don't forget about yourself. I've seen the two of you hoisting cups on more than one occasion. I had no idea everyone was so interested in my habits. You make it sound like all I do is drink tea. Oh no. If anything, you don't drink enough. You're always working yourself too hard. But you could stand to work more, Happy. And while we're on the subject of change, let's talk about Lysithia and her sweets addiction. I beg your pardon? Why, I barely have any interest in sweet things at all! And it's hardly fair to compare my work ethic with, you know, an emperor. I said what I said, and I stand by it. How rude! As punishment, I demand you give me your daily dessert ration from now on. Don't make me sigh at you, pal. Oh dear, you were all so very... odd. But I'm still delighted to count you all as allies. Well, at least someone's enjoying herself. Everywhere you turn, you see another gruesome sight. 
Look what they've done to the homes, the fields, the people. These bandits are like rats. They're nothing alone, but if you let them band together... I've been here before. It was a long time ago, sure. But I can't believe this is all that's left. Apparently, the first thing they did was find and kill Viscount Frim Standin, along with the rest of the local magistrates. With no one in charge, the bandits have taken free reign of the place. Assassinations, too? They've cut us deep indeed. But why were they killing the leaders instead of taking them hostage? Are they not wanting control of the land? It would seem their interest is little more than unadulterated chaos. Someone clearly does not wish Fodlin to be united beneath the Empire's flag. This is a sick way to show it. Though I imagine there is a method to their madness. Even I won't let myself run away from a situation like this! We need to restore order as quickly as possible and return to the Kingdom Front. Once I've brought an end to the war, I will never permit something this ghastly to happen again. Oh, Yuri, you're back? I thought you'd still be away. Well, look who it is. I figured if I didn't come back before sunset, someone might get worried and ransack my room again. And who might this someone be, huh? You're never gonna let that go, are you? Just joking, friend. No need to take everything so seriously. Anyway, it's late. Shouldn't you be getting some shut-eye? Probably, but I just got my second wind. How was your mom, by the way? Ah, well, it's not looking good, that's for sure. But she's still got some fight in her yet. I'd planned on staying longer, but she told me to do what I had to do and sent me on my way. One minute she wants to see me, the next she's telling me to go home. <laughs> Honestly, she's all over the place. Reminds me of my mom. The one who raised me, anyway. She passed away, didn't she? Judging by your expression, she must have been pretty special. She was. More than I can say. She took me in when I'd been abandoned. Taught me how to live. We weren't blood-related, but she was my mom. No doubt about it. I'm sure wherever she is now, She's very happy to hear you say that. Oh, that reminds me. I wanted to ask you something. It's been on my mind for a while now. About your real name. Your mom gave it to you, right? Where does it come from? I've never heard anything like it before. <sighs> Look up. No, a little more to the left. See that bright star over there? Bright star... to the left? Which one? There are thousands of stars up there, and they're all bright. Well, I guess it doesn't matter if you find it or not. Anyway, it's that star's ancient name. The white star that the goddess herself made into a disciple. My mother is a devout follower of Seros. But I know it's a pretty ostentatious name for a penniless kid. I don't think so. It just shows how much you mean to her. Yeah. Well, I do like it. She gave it to me after all. I'm not sure how much of the scriptures she really understands. But knowing her, I'm certain she put a lot of consideration into my name. Then doesn't it seem like kind of a waste not to use it? What with how much thought she put into it? I've used many names, and each one comes with its own mask. But when I hear my real name, all those facades fall away. The only people who can call me that are those who are truly special to me. Immediate family, or someone just as important. Which means that if you're so intent on using my name, 
You'd better be willing to spend the rest of your life by my side. What are you even talking about, Yuri? That's all a bit much, don't you think? <laughs> Obviously. <sighs> to be honest, I would have been at a loss if you had said you were all for it. Regardless, it does make me happy to hear that you like my name. And if you ever decide you're up for it, let me know, okay? <laughs> I'll think it over too, just in case. Another rough night, Manuela? You could stand to learn some manners, you know. I had a little too much to drink yesterday, that's all. More importantly, you saw me perform, right? Yeah, I was at the inn. You really do have a beautiful voice. I was impressed. I told you so. But was it just my voice you were impressed with? Well, I mean, when you were singing in front of everyone, you looked stunning. Seriously. Is that how you always are when you perform for the people in town? Oh, please. In their dreams, maybe. Yesterday was a special occasion, because you were there. We had a deal, remember? Ah, uh, yes. The hush money. You haven't told anyone, right? About what I said in my sleep and such? Nope. Not one peep to anyone. Not even about the dream where you got dumped. Shh! Don't go shouting about it now! You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with you, even when you are hungover. Really? It makes you seem like a laid-back, mature woman. Just another interesting side of you. One day you're a physician saving lives, and the next, you're a warrior on the battlefield. I like all your sides. Like, you say? It's more like I can't take my eyes off you. All the more so now, since I've seen you sing and all. You have all these different sides that come together to form a complete person. Maybe that's what draws me in. It's like, which one is the real Manuela? Of course the real me is the majestic diva shimmering in the spotlight. Ah, <sighs> if only. I'm not that delusional. Those days are long gone. Apparently, I've reached the age where I must take comfort in the glories of yesteryear. Do you really think so? I think you're probably way more attractive now than when you were all famous. Well, that's a solid gold pickup line. If only you were a handsome gentleman instead. Huh? Oh, I didn't mean it like that. Anyone would find you captivating is all. I like the way you think. Maybe you and I could sit down and plan out my future together. Actually, how does tonight sound? Oh, um, I've got some stuff I gotta do tonight. Sorry, maybe another time. Oh, really? Fine, we'll save it for another day. It'll give us more time to talk anyway. Just don't blow me off, okay? Or you'll be sorry. <laughs> uh, that was a joke, right? Manuela? Right? Huh? Oh, it's a cat. Looks like something spooked it. What's wrong, little guy? Is someone chasing you? <laughs> Not that you'd be able to tell me, anyway. <sighs> Yuritsa? What's wrong? Wait a sec. Why do I feel like this has happened before? There you are. Uh, yeah? What's up? Not you. Her. The creature who raided the pantry. Wait, you mean 
The cat? She is swift. This is not the first time she has eluded my grasp. Not the first... Oh... So this is who you were chasing the last time. Yes. She was injured. I tried to tend to her, but she fled. Eventually, another soldier apprehended her. So that's what was going on. It wasn't a person who went missing. It was a cat. Now that I think about it, I don't know if you ever said she was a person. Sorry for jumping to conclusions. The fault is mine as well. My word choice was poor. Honestly, I'm more surprised than anything. Never really saw you as a cat person. I always thought your antisocial tendencies extended to everyone, human and animal. I only loathe people. I had a cat once, back at House Bartels, with my sister. No kidding. So they weren't always scared of you? No. However, the cat vanished after my mother and sister left. Perhaps it was frightened by the sight of me covered in blood. I'm no cat expert, but they say animals can sense danger. Maybe it could tell that you'd become a threat somehow. <sighs> eh, cats are fickle. Anyway, what do you plan to do once you've caught this bread bandit? Take her with me. And make sure she never steals again. What's that supposed to mean? Look, you practically scared the whiskers right off her. I only planned to give her some food. I wonder why she was frightened. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a while till she realizes you just wanna help. Interesting theory. I'll have to make a mental note of that. Isn't it a bit late to be studying, Dorothea? Hi there, Aidy. Looks like I'm not the only one burning the midnight oil. You should get to bed. All-nighters are the bane of clear skin, you know. I assume that also applies to you. What can I say? You all work so hard, I figured I should dedicate myself to my studies. Especially when it comes to strategy and tactics. Those are real blind spots for me. You would have had a chance to learn them if we'd remained at the Officer's Academy. I suppose you missed out on all sorts of experiences now that I think about it. Aidy, please. No, wait. My decision and my actions are partly to blame for robbing you of those opportunities. I feel I owe you an apology for that. You did what you thought was right. And anyway, it's not like any of us saw all these problems with the Kingdom and Alliance coming. Yes, but... Look, I admit I may have been a little sad when the Academy went on hiatus. I mean, I worked my tail off to get into that place. It was hard. Really hard. Oh, and when the school shut down? There went my best chance of finding Mr. Right. Or Miss. I knew it was upsetting you. Dorothea, I am truly, deeply sorry. Hold on, Aidy. Let me finish. I was about to say that if we did stay at the Academy, you would have been terribly unhappy. You'd have had all this gloom and uncertainty hanging over you about your father and the future of the Empire. I think it might have broken you. A slight exaggeration, wouldn't you say? <laughs> For what it's worth, I'm glad you're free of that torment, and can now work towards building the world you envision. I like this new life working under you. 
It suits me. Please don't say that. The part about you working under me, I mean. I like to think we work side by side and hand in hand. You're always a tremendous help to me. I consider you a dear friend, and I say that not just as the Emperor, but as a peer. Thanks, Adie. Do you mind if I take that and run with it? Dorothea, dearest friend of the Emperor, has a really nice ring to it. I was fine with Dorothea the Mystical Songstress, but this new title has a real warmth and dignity thing going on. In that case, allow me to meet you halfway. Henceforth, I shall be known as Emperor Edelgard, dearest friend of the Songstress. Oh no, no, that'll never do. Because if you do that, it would make me dearest friend of the dearest friend of the Songstress. Well, we certainly can't have that. How about you just promise not to be a stranger, hmm? Whatever the rest of the world demands, I want the two of us to always be there for each other. I would like that very much indeed. Goodness, I slept too much. A little fishing ought to snap me right awake. I am hearing you, Linhart. Apparently so. Care to fish with me? Ah! Or what watery expanse will star hooked morsel fly? What pricing denizen dost thou... The... Nay, thou! Dost thou be intending to make thy quarry? Um... In days of yore, I oft partooketh of the angler's art. Yea, forsooth, I was being quite adept. But in this place, thou art knowing thy waters better. Mayhap thou art being my guide? Eh? Oh, that is wonderful. Is this about that love letter? You did say you were going to study up on the old speech. I was wondering why you were assaulting me with so many thees and thous. Fodlin's old tongue gives me much more difficulty than the young one. Absolutely. Most people struggle to even write that way, let alone speak it. I'm in awe of you, Petra. What you've done is very, very impressive. I bet you could scour the continent and only find a handful of people who can form such sentences. I mean, people haven't spoken that way since the goddess herself walked the land. So speakers of this style are rare? I have been trying with hardness to learn how to be speaking like everyone else in Foblin. And now I am finding success, but in the wrong century. I think you should be proud. This only goes to show how much of an aptitude you have for languages. You're not even from Fodlin, and you can out thou the best of us. That's fascinating. Thou art extremely fascinating, Petra. <laughs> I am not understanding the funniness. Do the people of Fodlin truly never speak in this way? Usually only if they're a professional actor or trying to make a bit of a joke. But perhaps you're about to usher in a major comeback. In fact, I think we should schedule some time for you to coach me, Professor Petra. Me teaching you? <laughs> that idea is a wonderful one. You are usually teaching me so many things, and now I can be repaying the favor. It's almost a shame you've got your life mapped out as Queen of Bridget. You'd make a fine academic. I don't suppose I could talk you into it. An academic? Yes, a sort of professional scholar. It takes passion and, more importantly, luck. But you've got both. I do? Well, there's no question you're passionate and a hard worker, which just leaves the luck part. 
And I'd say you live a charmed life indeed if people are dropping you love letters in the middle of a war. Whatever happened with that, by the way? I gave him my rejection and will never be seeing him again. What? Really? I'm dying to know more, but... Listen, just give the academia thing some thought, alright? You'd be perfect for it. Hey, Bernadetta. I'm sorry about before. No, I'm the one who should be sorry. Forgive me. Huh? No, I'm the one who wants you to forgive me. Did you hear me apologize just now? If I forgive you, will you forgive me? Then I forgive you! Please, just let me live in peace. After what happened, I went to Edelgard and asked her what I should do. She told me not to do anything and just to apologize. So I'm gonna figure out something I can get for you to make this right. No! I don't need anything! Oh, rats. He's gone. I have a bad feeling about this. Look, Bernadetta, I got you all your favorite foods! Uh, thank you? But, um, I think there's enough food here for ten people, so... Food is a foundation for building your body. If you train three times harder, you gotta eat three times as much. I mean, that's just science. And don't worry, if you can't eat it all, I'm happy to scarf down the rest. <laughs> Okay, so I can't actually train three times harder. And even if I did, I sure couldn't eat three times as much. Look, Bernadetta, I took the bow you used for training and replaced it with an extra strong one. Oh, and don't worry, I won't interfere with your training. I learned my lesson last time. Wow, this does look strong. Let's just... Oh, come on! I can't even pull the bowstring back! How am I supposed to train with this thing? Um, Caspar? Hey there, Bernadetta. What's up? Listen, I wanted to talk to you about all the stuff you're doing to apologize. Oh, yeah? Say, how's that training coming? Lousy! So please, stop apologizing already! What? But I softened up the training so it was way less than what I'd do myself. Softer? What kind of training do you even do? Well, for starters, I go 15 times harder than everyone else here. But of course, I don't have 15 times as many hours in my day, so instead, I do three times the amount, five times as fast. As for food, I generally need to wolf down about six times as much as everyone else because of how hungry all my training makes me. Okay, you're not human. Oh, and when I train with a bow, I use one with a string pulled five times as taut as normal. Oh, right, I get it! Your training is ridiculous! You think it's ridiculous? But my father came up with it, and he's the Minister of Military Affairs. Well, if he's the standard you're aspiring to, then no wonder that's how it is! Huh. You know, I never considered that my father got so strong because of how unusual his training regimen is. I mean, I don't know about all that. But your routine is definitely not normal. But I've been doing it since I was a kid. Yeah, that explains a lot. Hey, good luck with that! We're too late, Professor. She's the only one left. What an abhorrent sight. Hi, <gasps> Miguel. Give me back my little boy! I'm so sorry, but your boy is... He's gone. Please, you must live on. Come with us. Leone, will you take her? I'll check down the other way. Come with me, ma'am. It'll be all right. 
We got more bandits! They're kidnappers! Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Come on, we need to move. We are hopelessly outnumbered. It seems these streets will be my grave. Uh, this town's even worse than the others. Quickly! Wait, is that... Professor Hanneman? Does that fool really think he can contain this alone? Everyone, to me! We're mounting a rescue. I will not lose one more innocent life today. These monsters are gonna pay. This is a rescue first and foremost. We must save the townsfolk from danger, as well as the brave fighters defending them. Remember, the perpetrators of this atrocity may be hiding amidst the chaos. If you find them, they are to be shown no mercy. To protect the evacuees, we must defend this shelter at all costs. Stay on your guard. How many of these ruffians are there? I can't protect everyone forever. Professor Hanneman is in trouble. Oh, Hurry! We can't afford to lose him. The Empire is here to help. Smash that stronghold into rubble! I never doubted you would come. I'll protect you. Clear the way! You got it, Edelgard! I've got you now! Well, that was certainly close. I am much obliged for your assistance. Thank goodness we got to Professor Hanneman in time. This has been a fine place to conduct business. Keep at it, friends. There's coin to be made. Carry the loot to safety and be quick about it. What? Uh, no, I'm not him. Uh, you've got the wrong... Fine, have it your way. With me! No one is matching us! Victory will be ours! This is war! The double I planted turned out to be a stroke of genius. Now to take my leave while the taking is still good. Wait, so the other guy was a fake? No fair! You'll pay for that! Wait, I'm just a passing merchant. I'm not here. <laughs> Well, it was worth a try. Oh, lovely! Back there! I should have stayed a merchant. The money came easier. that robe before. Wasn't he one of the merchants who frequented Garrod Mock? Please! Someone help me! <laughs> Kill that man and strip his bones of whatever you can find. There's trouble to the east. Hurry! We haven't a moment to lose. 
There are still people under attack. You must be giving them assistance. Monster! You'll pay for this! Save your breath. You need to scream. As I tear your limbs from your body. You realize you're dead now, yes. Do try to pull your weight. Try it, try it. See ya. It's over. Somebody help. Please, don't leave me behind. That man may be depraved, but orchestrating all of this is beyond his meager capability. Our true enemy is those who slither the dark. Demonic beast, eh? Wager they have been quite eager to spring this little surprise on us. We can't allow any more damage to the town. We must eliminate the monster ourselves. Is this poison? You cowards least your weapons. Leone has been poisoned. Bring her to the shelter for treatment at once. Lower the bridge, so you might be able to cross more easily. the trouble. If I survive this, can I fight with you? There is always a place for a gifted ally such as yourself. Take a this breather. This is a tricky poison indeed. And while I'm no specialist, I will do everything in my power. Even death. Thank goodness. We no longer have to worry about the town being demolished. I should have known these thugs would serve as little more than bait. My name is Solon, and I am the savior of this beast-infested world. You came by those powers! It seems our adversaries know something about us after all. Another chance will present itself ere long. <sighs> we knew he would try to escape, yet still we cannot stop him. This should put an end to the disturbance in town. 
You all fought bravely. We have finished assessing the damage, and it is a grim picture indeed. Thanks to the swift action of our rescuers, we were able to free the abducted townsfolk. However, there are still countless victims who have lost their homes and families. The bandits are targeting the most populous towns here, and it appears the Alliance is dealing with the same problem across the river in Ordelia Land. I can't give back what they lost. All I can do is give them the time they need to heal and rebuild. Yet, perhaps the most vexing part is that Solon and the others slithered out of our grasp again, and we barely know more about them than when we started. My apologies, Your Majesty. Their warping magic is unlike the white magic we know, and as yet cannot be disrupted or thwarted. Additionally, a town such as this gives them far too many places to hide. I'm not blaming you, Hubert. The guy didn't even seem phased by us. What do you think they're after? Nothing savory. That much is certain. I've heard enough. Proceed as we discussed. Make sure the survivors have everything they need to carry on. Edelgard, why was it so important for us to suddenly convene like this? We are quite busy preparing to remobilize the troops, you know. Ah, Ferdinand. Have you not noticed the flock of messengers coming and going? I doubt anyone's missed it with all the commotion they're causing. What happened? I am sorry you have to repeat your report. But would you mind telling everyone here what you told us? I come with a most urgent message from Burgley's territory. Fort Mercius has been seized. It happened after most of the garrison left to deal with Hrimlands. Apparently, some of the remaining troops staged a rebellion from within. At the same time, the fort was besieged by unidentified mages, along with the army of the former Duke Eyre. Together, they managed to reach the heart of the fortress and seize control. As we speak, they hold hostage many key commanders and their families. Ayer? Then the man behind all this is... The former Duke himself, my lord. It seems he's come out of hiding. I see. <sighs> They're using the hostages as leverage over our loyal soldiers to force them into their ranks. It seems they intend to use the fort as a launch point for a march on the capital. Wait, what? That's catastrophic! My brother is stationed at Fort Mercius. Is he even doing anything about it? Count Burgley's successor, who was serving as the provisional garrison commander, was taken prisoner. Apparently he made the prudent decision of refusing to join the rebellion. Not sure if that's good news or bad news, but I know I'm glad he's not dead. The former Duke Eyre has vowed to overthrow the Emperor, and is even now calling on the other lords to join the cause. To my knowledge, there have been no takers so far, but given time, who can say? There is no shortage of rotten nobles, whose status and interests were set aside by Her Majesty's reforms. There is unrest ahead in the Empire. Make no mistake. As if we haven't dealt with a lifetime's worth already. Obviously, these people don't care about anyone but themselves. This is calling for swift action. We must retake the fort with quickness. Our fortunes continue taking one poor turn after another. Still, there's nothing for it. We must deal with Ayer's machinations immediately and decisively. Try to look on the bright side, Your Majesty. This could be our chance to dispose of everyone who opposes you in one fell swoop. Scarlet Blaze. Severing the Past.
After a furious march, Edelgard's army restores a measure of peace to the imperiled lands of Krim, only to learn of a revolt at Fort Mercius, staged by the deposed Duke Eyre. The disturbance in Hrim was but a feint to give those who slither in the dark time to capture Mercius, and eventually the capital of Enbar. But Edelgard moves to thwart them. Have you heard, Duke Eyer? Viscount Menya has hastened from afar to join your cause. Our houses, Fenya and Menya, share a distant blood ancestor. And now we stand together again to save the Empire from her plight. Hastened from afar with what? That miserable smattering of soldiers? From what I hear, Menya's heir is a rabid supporter of the Emperor. Are you certain the father is not being foisted on us just to get him out of the picture? Absolutely not. And besides, all of House Fenya is united behind you. If we appeal to the other lords jointly, I'm certain a multitude of troops will flock to Fort Mercius. I should hope so. I've no idea why they'd side with that pathetic excuse for an emperor. Only I, Ludwig von Eyer, can restore Adrestia to its former glory. About those mages, they say they want to, uh, alter the fort's defenses? Fine, fine. Let them do as they wish. So long as we're outnumbered, we must embrace creative solutions. Edelgard will strike the moment we give any indication we're after the capital. We'll lure her troops inside, then dispose of them all at once. It will be an easy victory. I always knew you were a brilliant tactician. They will never see it coming. Now, if we might discuss key posts in your future administration. I can only hope Her Majesty is weak and foolish enough to be so ensnared. It was never my intent to divide the Empire in war. That's not what I wanted. If she'd said one word, one word, indicating there might be a place for me, None of this would have been necessary. Enough. I must purge my mind of such thoughts. I must win. I must prevail over her. And if I cannot, you must be the one to cut me down, Ferdinand. Edelgard, do you have a moment? Of course, Ferdinand, but please keep it short. It is about my father. My pleas for a fair trial cost you time and delayed his sentencing. It also gave the Knights of Saros an opening to conduct their raid, which provided him ample opportunity to stage an escape. I am to blame for all that has transpired. Let me hurry you along to the point, if I may. What are you going to do about it? Or, more likely, what do you want me to do about it? Put me in the field when we retake Fort Mercius, and permit me to rectify my own mistake. Will you allow me that? <sighs> I was wondering when you'd ask. Don't worry, I've already made the arrangements. But you mustn't do anything reckless. You will stick to the battle plan, and that is a direct order. Ah, Edelgard, you are the very picture of reason, the very epitome of wise stewardship. Enough. You can gush over me after the battle if you still feel the urge. We've no idea how things will go after all, and you may be in a very different mood. True. All the same, I am grateful. Thank you. You can come out, Hubert. I know you're listening. I came to give you the latest reports, Your Majesty. 
but decided to wait until this other business reached its conclusion. Then you know what must be done. Make sure he's given protection. Oh, I will if I find the time. You do keep me quite busy, after all. You found a way to take care of them? I can assure you, those Cretans will rue ever setting foot in Her Majesty's fortress. They wanted thick walls, and we will give them the thickest ones a coffin can provide. This is our chance to decimate the forces of those who slither in the dark. Excuse me. May I ask for your ear? Sure thing. What's on your mind? I have the desire to be learning more about mercenaries. It is a subject of much fascination to me. Uh, sure, I guess. But I think you've heard most of the exciting bits by now. Nonsense. Each word you speak is full of excitement. Please give me more illumination. For example, are you receiving payment for your work here? Sure. Me and Edelgard have a contract. Lucrative one, too, as these things go. Guess the boss thinks pretty highly of me. You said money was of importance for people who sell their swords. But what if an enemy offered a bigger payment? Would you be taking it? Are you kidding? I'd tell them to get lost before they could finish the offer. But there are plenty of mercs who wouldn't. Gold sings loudest, you know? Still, if an enemy can outbid your current employer, it means they've got a good shot at winning. And nobody who enjoys breathing wants to wind up on the losing side. So in Fodlin, one must try to be allies with the side that has more richness? See, that's the thing. Trust is its own currency, too. I mean, let's say someone shows up with a pile of gold and asks you to switch sides. Tempting, right? But you gotta be careful. You could take them up on their offer, only to learn that the money was just bait, and the guy actually wants you dead. And to make things worse, the honest employer you just stabbed in the back now knows you're as reliable as a three-legged horse. Point is, integrity means more to a mercenary than money. Probably should have led with that, actually. I have understanding. Trust is of importance to everyone, but that has even more truth for a seller of swords. You got it. Oh, and trust me. Folks who hire for the best jobs make sure to know everything about you before extending the offer. But there's a flip side to that coin. If you're the type of employer who likes to leave mercs in the lurch, you better believe that word will get around. Hard enough to stay alive without that nonsense. That is a thing we all share in common. We wish to keep breathing, as you said. And what if I was offering a job? We are on the same side. Would that be betrayal? Bridget is a land of richness. We can offer much in exchange for the selling of your sword. Sounds tempting, but... Uh, I can't. I've got to see my current contract through first. Also, didn't we just get done discussing how terrible it is to abandon a job before it's done? I knew you would be declining. You are the model of a mercenary. Ah, it's you. How's it going? Any developments to report? You mean with my power? Not really, no. Hmm. Perhaps using it regularly won't be enough to provoke growth. Good to know. Hey. I thought you said you weren't interested. I mean, how many times are you gonna come ask me if anything's changed before you're happy? Weren't you the one so keen on piquing my interest? I only wanted to check how that was going. If you don't think it's possible, just tell me and I'll stop asking. It's too soon to say, really. 
Right, of course. We'll just have to keep trying then. How about this? Describe the circumstances in which you first awaken to your power. Maybe we can reproduce the situation and see if lightning doesn't strike twice. Well, I was staring death in the face when it happened. I'd been beaten so badly, I could barely stand. But I kept telling myself I wasn't ready to die yet. Then out of nowhere, it just came to me. Hmm. I suppose we shouldn't try to recreate those conditions. Nobody wants a dead officer on their hands. Let's consider some other potentially relevant factors. Who was your opponent? Where did the struggle take place? What time of day was it? Do you think your emotions played any part in it? I was fighting the Ashen Demon, of all people. I hope we get the chance to cross swords again someday. As for the when and where, we were in a forest at night. Pretty sure it was a full moon, too. And that leaves my emotional state. But I don't know how I could replicate the intense emotions of being at the brink of death like that. I see, I see. That context would prove quite tricky to simulate. And if your power functions similar to a crest, revealing itself even when you don't intend it... That leaves only one option. Observing you on the battlefield at all times. Ugh... This is turning out to be more work than I signed up for. Hey, weren't you telling me not to give up just a second ago? If I can do it, then so can you. Hmm, I'm not so sure. <coughs> it's horrible! Bernadetta, what's wrong? Is there a rat in the base? I didn't mean a real rat. I was talking about an enemy spy or something. Oh, right. Anyway, it's something kind of like that, but different and still really, really bad. Kind of like a spy, but different? Slow down and tell me what you saw. Well, you see, there was this lady in the camp earlier who didn't look scary at all and even seemed kind of nice. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Shyness and fear of strangers got you down, huh? Let's see if I have something that can help. Thanks. Hmm. I think I've got just the herb. It's gonna put you out a good few gold coins, but this baby will do wonders for relieving stress. And then... Ah, I've got something a little more, shall we say, tasteful. Real under-the-table kind of stuff. It's a pot that makes people like you. I would probably recommend against it, but the thing's on sale if you really want it. Uh, you okay there? I just remembered something! Oh, how could you forget, Bernie? There are lots of scary people out there who pretend to look nice just so they can prey on you! And you must be one of them! Well, that was weird. I'm not that scary, am I? And that's how it all happened! I would have been dragged off and murdered if it wasn't for you! But wasn't that just Anna? She's here all the time selling her wares. I mean, not all of it's the most reputable stuff, but I don't think she's trying to cheat anyone. And she's definitely not a murderer. This is all my fault. I should go apologize to her later. Huh? She's not... evil? Not that I know of. I'm also pretty sure it's not the first time you've met her. I don't know! I'm bad with faces! 
You're pretty judgmental, you know that? Huh? <sighs> what do we do? What do we do? How about this? There's this merc I've got in my crew. A real terrifying looking hunk of muscle. Sweetest little teddy bear on the inside, though. If anyone's gonna help you overcome this, it's him. Okay, I accept this challenge. You've got this, Bernie. So, I think you might be a little off here, Kaspar. The interpretation is more like this. No kidding. Well, so then this part here would actually mean something like... Hey, are this and this the same? I think they connect to that one thing from before. Nice one. So now you understand that part, right? really made some progress today. Yes, you've been doing quite well. You used to only train your body, but lately you've been spending more time on your mind. Kinda got a better opinion of me now, huh? I mean, no way did I become a genius in just five days, but this still isn't bad. You've been hitting the books a lot yourself lately. Wouldn't you rather be out on dates or something? Not at all. I'm working very hard for the sake of our future. Also, studying together like this is sort of fun. I get it. It's kind of like training. The more you do, the more you get out of it. But I also noticed that my training has gone better since I started this whole studying thing. Um, <clears throat> and perhaps having a partner is helping too? <laughs> Still, it makes me kind of sad. We'd probably be studying together like this a lot more if the Academy hadn't shut down. I don't know about that. I mean, if we hadn't ended up in this war... Would I have found a reason to study like this? Honestly, I kind of doubt it. Kaspar, whatever's bothering you, you're not going to solve it by muttering to yourself. Yeah, you caught me. Up until Edelgard decided she was going to fight, I didn't know much of anything. Not about the evil guys who came into the Empire, and not about the problems in Fodlan. Not saying I fully understand that stuff now, either, but at least I want to try. <sighs> Seeing you now is like looking at an adorable baby brother. I just want to pinch your cheeks and cheer you on with everything I've got. Uh, okay. I mean, sure, I'm the second son and you're older than me, but... Perfect. Then go ahead and start thinking of me as your big sister. You know what? I actually don't mind that. Well then, just keep watching me grow, big sis. <laughs> I thought you'd just laugh that off. With the passing of five sunrises and five sunsets, even a boy can virgin into an impressive man. Ah, uh, what? Is that another part of Francis's story? Oh, that's my little secret. <laughs> Still, whatever am I to do now? Let's just continue bringing the best out of each other, for the sake of our post-war future. Our meaning... Eh, never mind, I'm with you. Let's keep giving it our all together, Dorothea. Oh, I've really done it this time. Well, if it isn't Balthus. What's wrong? That was a legendary sigh. Yuri, pal! Hear me out for a sec, will ya? They were these mercs, and I may have made a bet with them. Yeah, yeah, you lost, I get it. But we've got bigger issues to discuss. Must be a pretty big deal if it's more important than me losing my dinner to those mercs. It's come to my attention that one of my business associates is looking for a certain... giant broke fool. What? That's it? I'll just break him in half, and then we can move on with our lives. Not a problem. I figured you'd say that. Which is exactly why I came to tell you not to. 
You see, this particular associate hires out quite a few of my people. I can't have a bruiser like you turning them into corpses. Can't I just rough them up enough to get them off my back? A few broken bones never killed anyone. Come now. You know there's no way I'd let you get away with that. I'd use every last one of my contacts to make sure you never win another bet for the rest of your life. Whoa, cut a guy a break, would ya? I wouldn't put it past you to actually follow through. I take it we've reached an understanding, then. I suggest you lay low until things blow over. Clear? Even after all this time, her ability to enrage people still manages to astound me. Hey, it's not as bad as it used to be. The price on my head's never been lower. On the flip side, the price for my skills has only gone up. I've been making money hand over fist as a mercenary. But the stakes keep getting higher and higher, so my pockets remain as empty as ever. I can't help but sigh in disappointment listening to you talk. You're seriously lucky I'm not happy, or you'd be neck deep in monsters. <laughs> Alright, I hear you. But enough about me. What have you been getting up to since you left Abyss? Oh, I just went back to my old gang. They were my home before the Officer's Academy, after all. But I still had to take on some mercenary work to keep my people fed and things running smoothly. It's been a rough couple of years, and thanks to that, my once stunning physique has been spoiled by all this muscle. <laughs> really? You still look pretty scrawny to me. Your skill with the blades improved, though, that's for sure. Well, when you're forced to fight, you either improve or you die. Still, I've got nothing on you. You practically live for a good brawl, after all. These fists have never let me down. No matter the enemy, I'm always the one who walks away. Say, Yuri, I just had a brilliant idea. I have a feeling I'm going to regret asking. But sure, let's hear it. If this associate of yours doesn't catch me, you and your underlings are gonna have to take responsibility, right? Most likely. I knew what I was getting into when I told you to back down. I've made my peace. Yeah? Well, I'm not about to leave my buddy Yuri holding the bag while I sit on my hands. Balthus? So, to make things fair, let's have ourselves a little wager to decide which of us is gonna take the fall. That way, if you lose fair and square, it'll give you an out, yeah? You'll have no other choice but to take your goons back from that client, and they won't get pummeled by yours truly. Problem solved! Hypothetically, if I were to take this bet, what happens if you lose? I'll do what I always do. Take my shirt off, jump out in front of them, and run away as they look on in awe. This is what I get for trying to help. You love taking off your clothes almost as much as you do gambling. No wonder your pockets are always empty. Coco, I'm not gonna make it. Happy? What in the world do you mean? You look rather unsteady all of a sudden. I'm so sleepy. Why not just end my suffering now? Can you not pull yourself together? You were the one who volunteered for guard duty in the first place. I know, but whenever it's just the two of us like this, it reminds me of how things used to be. And then I get all nostalgic and sleepy. Usually I'd be in bed right now, you know? Well, I cannot deny feeling a little nostalgic myself. I can't believe we're still together after everything that's happened. First we had to help the Knights, then we wound up in the Imperial Army. 
Wild, right? I don't know how to describe it. It's almost like we're best friends or something. Have you already forgotten what you once told me? You said that you would be so utterly lonesome without me to keep you company that it would only be a matter of time before you began to sigh. It was necessary that I stay with you in order to avert certain disaster. I had no choice in the matter, you see? Did I really say all that? You did indeed. It was the very day we left Abyss, if memory serves. All right then, fine by me. I wonder what everyone else from Abyss is up to now. We know Balthus and Yuri are alive and well, and I believe it is likely everyone else is thriving too. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Do you ever wish you could return to those days, back in Abyss? Me? Nah, not really. Most of the people here don't know about my power. They actually treat me like a normal person. Indeed. Plus, you're here. It's like you said, I'd get lonely without my Coco. What about you? Would you be lonely without me? Well, lonely is not necessarily the word I'd use. Hmm, so it's just me then, huh? Okay, fine. I would! I would be positively despondent without you here! There you go. That wasn't so hard, was it? I'm glad you finally admitted it. You knew? Why must you always tease me so? Come on, you were pretty happy when I volunteered for guard duty, weren't you? Yes, well, you see, that was because it had already been assigned to me. I merely thought it would be easier to have a partner with whom I was already familiar. Same here. That's why I volunteered. I knew you'd be my partner, Coco. Ugh, I simply cannot win with you. We get all of them? Ugh, that's the trouble with poachers. You never quite know where they are. Well, we've hit every likely hideout, so I'm guessing we cleared them all out. I'm glad you were here, Leone. You really know the lay of the land. Well, Sawin is my home. But you've been here before too, Captain. Sure, but that was a long time ago. And I don't remember it all that well. Ill news, Captain. Another group of poachers has taken hostages from a neighboring village. These people are a disgrace to poaching. Saying so makes it sound like you believe there was some honor in the activity to begin with. These hostage takers must be friends of the poachers who were just here. According to the people of the village, they were involved in kidnapping as well as poaching. They made it sound like more than a few people have been taken from the surrounding villages recently. Sawn too? Yes, they said there was one. Oh, it makes me so mad. These folks sound like bad news. We'd better do something before these new victims are dragged off and never heard from again. House Gloucester's orders were to deal with the poaching issue in Sawin. We did that. Our work is done. How can you be so cold? If you see someone in trouble, you help them. That's just basic decency. I don't see anyone here, do you? You know what I mean. Easy, Leone. The kid was just stating a fact. I'm sure no harm was intended. How could you possibly raise such a cold and unfeeling person, Captain? I wasn't always the best dad, I admit. Uh, perhaps we should shelve this conversation for now and determine our next move? Plenty of villagers helped me out the last time I was in this neck of the woods, so it's only right I pay it back. Plus, I'm not just gonna sit by while poachers run wild in my apprentice's home turf. Captain! 
but we can't linger long. We track down the bad guys, free the hostages, and go home. Got it? I knew you'd do the right thing. You don't have any connections here, so it's your call if you want to pitch in or not. Nobody will think worse of you if you decide to duck out on this little goose chase. Uh, I'll come. I wouldn't want anything to happen to Leone's home. Good to know I can count on you, at least. I'm sure you'd manage without me, but many hands make light work and all that. Then let's roll. Leone, you're in charge. Leave it to me, Captain. Now, enough deliberation. The time has come for plain old liberation. Uh, sure. Right behind you. The hostages must be further in. Maybe we can draw the bad guys away from them first. A fine plan, Captain. Once we've done so, we can easily rescue the hostages. Here we go, then. Let's make some noise and get their attention. How many decades has it been since I was here last? Where are those things coming from? I know what you mean, Captain. Though not literally, of course, as I don't believe I was with you at the time. None of you were with me the turn. last time I came here. That makes sense. She would have been too young. I was with the Knights of Seraphs. Get out of here! Not yet! The feet of Raven! Just stand there with your mouth tight open! Attack! Well, we've drawn them out. Now's our chance to rescue the hostages. Okay, let's take care of any enemies who held back and rescue those hostages. Guess we should mop up the rest of them, huh? Please, Captain. <laughs> when I first met the Captain, I was a weak little village girl. And now, I'm a mercenary. You really have come a long way. You? Weak? That's hard to imagine. Captain Gerald taught me how to determine the flow of battle by capturing key points on the battlefield. He's the best. I didn't realize Gerald was into strategy. Always struck me as more of a hit him until they stop moving sort of guy. Oh, he's strategic when he needs to be. Underhanded, even. He does whatever it takes to win. You ready, Leone? Sure am, Captain. You were ready for me. Hey, you're Leone from Sawin, right? Wow, you've really grown up. Thanks for the help. <laughs> I'm surprised you recognize me. Though maybe I don't look all that different. Looks like everyone from the village is okay. Just have to get them to a safe place now. No way we're just gonna let you walk out of here. Get them! Most admire how persistent they are. The hostages are in danger. In my own face. <laughs> Apologies, but I could use a hand. <laughs> No matter how much I rambled on about this or that, you still hung on my every word. 
Well, I didn't know how to write. So the only way to remember your lessons was to concentrate as hard as I could. Not yet. What the? I should be able to extend this. Some poachers in the name of justice, huh? Well, you meddlers should have minded your own business. That must be the leader. Let's make him pay. Okay, now we're really done. Let's beat it. Yes, sir. I told jokes to the hostages as I delivered them safely back to their villages. You could say I had a captive audience. We've restored peace to this whole area, Captain. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Mercs like us are only supposed to work for pay. But a freebie every now and then won't kill me. Yeah, I would have regretted it if I'd gone home. Thank you for doing the right thing. I just followed orders, that's all. Well, I'm thanking you anyway. Now the villagers can live in peace. I was supposed to stay here and be a hunter with my father, you know? But once I met the captain, I knew I had to try and make it as a mercenary. My father and the rest of the village always supported me, before the academy and after. It's been a long, strange path, but I finally became a mercenary and was able to help my hometown in the process. I don't think I've ever been happier. It feels like I've repaid some debts, although not my actual debt from school. I'm still working on that one. I'm glad we helped you give back, instead of helping to give you back. Alois, you mind reporting back and letting Count Gloucester know what happened? Oh, and, and don't forget to grab the reward money. Understood. I will away at once. Leone, why don't you run along to Sawin and let everyone know things are good now? Tell him I'll stop by later. I will, Captain. Thank you, again. You two should head back to base. I've got to pay my respects to the village elder and Leone's old man. Probably won't make it back until tomorrow. You expect them to throw you a feast, don't you? I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, yeah. That's why you sent Leone ahead so the villagers could prepare for your arrival. I mean, you got rid of the poachers and now Leone's telling them you're on the way? You're practically begging them to serve you up a fancy meal. It's not like that. Although, if I get there and they just happen to have a feast ready, it'd be rude to refuse. And poor Alois doesn't even get to join in on the fun. Shame. Hey, that guy hasn't had a drink in years. He's not missing anything. Now then, this is an evening for grown-ups, so you kids get on home. If anything comes up while I'm gone, you can handle it yourselves. Well, time for me to set off. Ah, there's nothing like that first drink after playing the hero. I'm impressed with your old man. That's a savvy move right there. I'll have to follow his lead someday. You would emulate him? 
Eh, probably not now that you're asking. Well, guess us kids should shut up and head home. Maybe hold hands so we don't get lost. Must we hold hands? Only joking. I swear, the only thing duller than your blade is your sense of humor. Our scouts have returned from Fort Mercius. There's less movement than we anticipated. That likely means the former Duke Iyer wants us to attack the fortress to make up for his disadvantage in troop strength. The numbers don't lie. One needs three times the forces of their enemy to claim a castle in a siege. Although, that's if you attempt to take it head on. So, do we have a plan or what? I mean, Fort Mercius is basically impenetrable. <laughs> Actually, this one time we came home well after curfew and had to try and sneak back in. Turns out there was no way in. The guards mistook us for bandits, and Father shouted at us until he lost his voice. <sighs> good times. The good news is that we have learned of a passage into the fort which has been kept secret since its construction. The bad news is that I are likely also learned of the passage when he was Prime Minister. Unless his reason has completely taken flight, the man will take some sort of measures to defend it. The fortress is huge in size. We should organize small teams and be attacking from many points. If we achieve success, we can open the gates from the inside and be giving the enemy a surprise. It only serves other regions if the Empire starts shedding Empire blood. We should find a resolution that minimizes casualties on both sides. Um, is this the part where I chime in? Because, um, if you want to coax someone out of hiding, breaking down the door is the wrong way to go about it. That'll only push them further into their shells, so... I think we should try talking to them instead. Is it just me, or is our corner of the world an uncontrolled mess? Why don't we just put all of your plans into action? We've got the numbers to do it. We can sneak soldiers in, use the secret passage, talk it out, and apply brute force all at the same time. As long as one of those approaches works, we'll win. That's actually not a bad plan, and it didn't even come from me. Amazing! I mean, the brute force part is a little risky, but I dare say, you're learning. Hmm. An intriguing idea. But what about the hostages? If we force our way in, they're likely to be killed. I will not permit that to happen. While my father may be a fallen noble, he is still a noble, and not the sort of man to start butchering innocent people when the tides turn. I pray you are right, Ferdinand. Though I believe you never know what a person is capable of until they act. We will proceed with this plan at once, adapting as the situations dictate. We cannot fail. Not here. Not now. Good news. We've dislodged another foothold. Those who slither in the dark held in Empire territory. Good news? That's great! So that soldier was one of theirs after all, huh? He was. It's uncanny how you managed to identify their agents so precisely. Ordinary spies would be one thing, but these villains are another entirely. I'd like to say it's just intuition, but there's more to it than that. It's my power. Their magic is almost identical to the one I use, so it's not hard for me to pick up on. Guess we have Hubert to thank for connecting the dots between the two. How strange that you would hold such an important key. The more I look back, the more I realize... Without you among our ranks, I may never have broken the stranglehold those who slither in the dark exerted on the Empire. Me? What did I do? 
Our hidden foe was deeply entrenched in almost every facet of Adrestian society. The two were almost inseparable. And so I turned a blind eye to the lives that were being lost to their cruel designs, opting instead to focus my energy on preparing for war. But then you came along and helped show me a way to kill two snakes with one stone, as it were. You were the cog that was missing from the turnwheel, the one final push that urged me to act. Right. Well, I'm not sure I can take credit for that, but I'm glad I could be there for you all the same. Really makes me wonder why you all didn't trust me, though. Yes, I can see your point. It was my mistake. In any case, I'd like you to know just how pleased I am to have you fighting alongside us. You were a perfect stranger who owed nothing to the Empire. Yet you're still here. That means much. Eh, it wasn't that big a deal. I just needed some gold and figured if anyone was gonna have the coin to spare, it'd be the Empire. You know, some things are best left unsaid. Oh, and you were really quick to compliment me back at the Academy. That left an impression for sure. I mean, most nobles don't give us marks the time of day. But you were different. It's nice to hear you say that. And hey, I was right about you. I wouldn't be shining half as bright as I am today if I didn't hitch my wagon to yours. Trust me, no regrets here. <sighs> anyway, we flushed those who slither in the dark out of another one of their hiding spots. Which seems like cause for celebration, if you ask me. You, uh, remember how to do it? I don't want to get left hanging like I did back in Enbar. That wasn't my fault. I had simply never done it before. We will reach the end of this path soon, all of us, together. Hmm. Ah! Why are you always doing that? A question, if I may. Have you had any further contact with our slithering friends since that day? Not in the slightest. Why, do you know something? Yes, actually. What with the riots in Rim territory and the former Duke Ayer's attempted rebellion. Thanks to that, we now have a lead on the insurgents within the Empire, as well as those who slither in the dark. Speaking to the latter, I also tried to determine if they had been attempting to reach you, or otherwise thought you an ally. But at present, it seems neither is the case, regrettably. At present? You still don't trust me, do you? In our conversations? The future of the Empire? Promoting commoners? I would have hoped you'd ease up at least a little after all that. Believe me, it brings me no joy and, in fact, some guilt to doubt you so. But I must be prepared for any eventuality. When needs must, I have made even my greatest enemy feel as though they are a trusted friend. Yet, at times, I have also shown extreme suspicion towards those who were, in all manners, undeserving of it. Yeah, I get it. Keep your cards close to the chest. Never let them know what you're actually thinking. You really are something, you know that? I'm just glad we're on the same side. I must admit, I only tell you all this because I do, in fact, consider you deserving of my trust. Even if you were once connected to those who slithered in the dark, that is clearly behind you now. So believe me when I say, I have the utmost confidence in you. I'm not sure how much you really mean that, but I'm glad to hear you say it at least. Thanks, Hubert. 
How very diplomatic. Just the response I would have expected from you. Enough on that, though. Our problem now is what lurks beneath your mind's veneer. What do you mean? I can sense another you, bubbling away behind the one you present to the world. Call it intuition. What really worries me is that you may one day shed this husk you bear now and become that someone else entirely. <laughs> Another me, huh? Well, I appreciate the concern, but even if that someone does exist, I won't let them overtake me. I mean, come on! I'd shove that other me right back where they came from and earn your trust once and for all. Though, just so we're clear, I don't think you have anything to worry about. Very well. I suppose I will have to take your word. For now. In any case, I hope that as we inscribe Fodlin's new future, we do so with you by our side. Interesting. Her Majesty refrained from drinking tea today. A bit unusual, don't you think? I believe the last time that happened was 15 days ago. Ergo, we can conclude she tends to renounce the beverage when... Hey, remind me why I'm doing this again. What's the point of recording all this stuff? Why not just hang out with her? It is not stuff. These are Her Majesty's great exploits. They must be accurately recorded and preserved within the annals of Imperial history. Not sure I'd call her tea habits great exploits. No one's ever gonna need that information. And how do you remember all this? I couldn't even tell you what I had for breakfast this morning. <laughs> I remember everything Her Majesty does. Every word she has ever spoken to me, every morsel she has ever eaten, not to mention where and when she ate it. Every sigh that has escaped her lips, each and every one of her favorite. Yeah, let's stop there. This is all sorts of weird. Why do you say that? These are simply records that need to be kept. Just think about it for a minute. Have you ever read a book on Adrestian history that lists the number of times an emperor sighed? There has never been a historian with a memory like mine, nor one who could keep such accurate records. Until now. The sole reason I have this excellent memory is to ensure that Her Majesty's great exploits are documented properly. But if your memory's so good, then there's no reason for me to help, is there? Oh, but there is. Her Majesty places a great deal of confidence in you. She often engages you in conversation, and the two of you spend an insufferable amount of time together. As such, you're able to obtain information I could not otherwise verify on my own. There is nobody more qualified than you to assist me in this undertaking. <sighs> all right, fine. I get that you're serious about all this. I don't mind lending a hand when I'm not busy. And there doesn't seem to be much harm in it. For Edelgard, anyway. Spoken like a true confidant of Her Majesty. How dependable of you. It's no wonder she trusts you more and more each day even if it is maddening. And so, the time has come for me to grant you a very special privilege. I will permit you to devote yourself to Her Majesty as a sign of your undying love. Why would I want permission to do that? The answer is simple. There is no greater pursuit in all of Fodlin than expressing one's undying love for Her Majesty. I don't know. I could think of a few things. So, yeah, I think I'm good on the whole devotion front. Hmm. Very well. 
you clearly still fail to appreciate the full extent of Her Majesty's charm. However, I am confident you will come to your senses the more you assist me. I hope that one day you will ascend and become a true admirer of Her Majesty. Uh, yeah. You do that. What am I supposed to say to Ferdy? Oh, this is such a problem. All my animosity towards him has been due to a misunderstanding on my part. I really owe him a... Mm hmm? Dorothea! Ferdy? What in the world? I shall not approach any closer. So pray, stand there and hear me out. My deepest apologies for what happened the other day. I fear I may have wounded you most grievously. As I am a fool who knows not how I upset you, you may freely laugh and jeer at my inadequacies. There's some kind of lover's quarrel, maybe? You think he's cheating on her? Nah, couldn't be. But then again... Oh, for the love of... Please stop screaming our private business for all the world to hear! But you told me to stay away from you! And I must not disregard your wishes in the matter! I implore you to forgive me! I have no wish for our relationship to end in such a horrid manner! <sighs> this is getting good. Can't say the lady looks too into it, though. True, but if two folks really and truly love each other, they can overcome anything. <sighs> I forgive you, Ferdy! Now for the love of everything, stop shouting! <sighs> thank you for forgiving me, Dorothea. And thank you for hearing out my thoughts on the matter. Oh, I think everyone heard you out. Uh, I see. And you are still cross with me. Listen, Ferdy, you don't need to apologize. Does this mean you will never forgive me for as long as I live? Oh, whatever am I to do? Just listen to me for a second. You don't have to apologize to me because I'm the one who should be apologizing to you. Oh? But why? I should not think you have any defects to speak of. I overheard you and A.D. talking the other day. When you were telling her about the water nymph you saw in the fountain in Enbar? Well, I'm fairly sure what you thought was a nymph was actually... me, as a child. Come again? That was the day I met Manuela, and was invited to be a singer, and I was over the moon about it. I slipped into the fountain to wash up, hoping to scrub some of the dirt off of me. And then you appeared. I... see. But... if the beautiful water nymph was actually you, then that means... Uh... <sighs> yes! Right. Anyway, I got embarrassed thinking about it, which is why I told you to stay away. That's all. Uh, yes. Well, uh, I am glad we were able to clear that up. <laughs> Bernadetta? What are you doing here? Uh-oh. Looks like I'm interrupting. I'll be going. Lenard! Listen to me! Uh. Remember the two people we saw out on a date here? Well, the guy died. Sadly, that sort of thing does happen. Another tragic love story for the books, I suppose. I really believed they'd live happily ever after, and... I can't take an ending like this! It's so awful! 
Perhaps so, but this is the result of the Empire choosing war. But... I thought the power of their love for each other would see them through, safe and sound. You expect too much from love. Yes, there are instances where emotion allows the body to go beyond the bounds of what should be possible. But the effects are quite minor. It's certainly not going to bring the dead back to life. I know that, Linhard. I just think it's sad. I mean, don't you think it's sad? If pushed, yes, I would consider that to be sad. What is wrong with you? I didn't even know the man's name. Also, plenty of our enemies die, so why are we only sad for allies? Because they're, you know, our allies? I wouldn't want you to die, of course. That would make me quite sad. And I don't want to see you die either, Linhart. I'd cry even more if you died. Just the thought of it makes me... Makes me... <laughs> Oh dear, please don't cry over things that haven't happened yet. Oh no, that's what I'm doing. I'm so sorry, Linhart. It's fine, but to that point, let's just make sure you and I both survive this war together. If we can do that, what you said will have come true and I'll happily apologize. Um, apologize? For what? For disputing the idea that two people's feelings for each other can help them overcome the risk of death. After all, the two of us surviving the war would refute any arguments I've made to the contrary. Oh, I get it. So you and me and the power of our feelings for each other could... Uh, wait, are... what now? All of this earnest conversation has me exhausted. Time for some sleep. <sighs> Again? Oh, don't you dare fall asleep on me now! If you do that, I'm leaving you here! <sighs> what a rest. Hmm? What's going on there? Is... is this really happening? Oh, my prayers have been answered! When I was about to die, your face floated into my mind, and then a miracle happened. It seems reports of his death in battle were greatly exaggerated. I'll have to let Bernadetta know. Although given her sensibility, she's as likely to think he's a ghost as she is to be happy about it. Leopold von Berglis, I am challenging you to a duel. Meet me at the time and place designated. Signed, Petra McNeary. <gasps> Sorry, but my father won't be coming. Why not, Kaspar? Because I got a hold of your letter before it could reach him. He doesn't know a thing. Why are you making interference? You do not have the right. Because I can't stand the thought of you dying. You're a great fighter, Petra. But you don't have a prayer against my father. You've got to know that. <laughs> then you can be dying in his place, Kaspar von Berglis! Huh? What the... Uh! Why are you backing away? Just finish me off. That would be achieving nothing. I thought you said you were gonna kill me in my father's place. I was losing control of my emotions. Okay, so now what? You gonna start following my father around again? What are you thinking? I don't know. 
I mean, I know he killed your father, so if you really hate him that much, then go for it, I guess. But I'm gonna try and stop you because I don't want you two killing each other. Kaspar, for certain reasons that are not being public, I am queen of Brigid now. A queen cannot be acting on personal grudges. And why did you challenge my father to a duel? I do not know. It was a mistake. It was not normal for me. Well, I guess even a queen can't push her feelings down forever. I can't imagine what it must have been like to go through what you did. But I think I can still relate. Um... Hey, here's an idea. From now on, take it out on me. No, this is silliness. There is no point in killing you. I'm not talking about killing, Petra. What I want you to do is unload on me. Tell me off. Just talk to me about whatever it is you're feeling. If all your hate becomes too much, dump it on me. If you want to hit something, I'm your guy. I just want us to keep being friends. All right? We will stay friends by yelling and hitting? I am not certain that is the kind of friendship I am wanting. But I am thanking you all the same. I will be giving it thought. Great. Then just tell me when you need me. If everyone is prepared, it's time to make our move. Our troops attacking the gates have been instructed not to force their way in. Before long, the enemy will notice as much and realize we're already inside. We need to locate and strike down the rebel leader. That should put an end to the insurrection. Along the way, you may encounter suspicious agents. They are the true masterminds behind the rebellion and must all be eradicated. Got it. Now let's get going before those bloodthirsty monsters hurt any of the hostages. I haven't been this angry in a long time. When is that man going to stop being a thorn in Her Majesty's side? Ah, how splendid. But do try not to become so flush with rage that you make a foolish error. Perhaps if you grew flush with rage every now and again, you wouldn't have the complexion of a coffin dweller. Quiet, both of you. You don't have to do this, Ferdinand. You can always stay back if you have doubts. No. Fate put me on this path. And now, I must walk it. Enemy soldiers have breached our fortifications! To arms! Defend the glory of the Empire! We've seen through our rooms already. Prepare to take the fort. The detachment is safely inside. We should wait to see how the enemy responds before we deploy them. Start by seizing the inner ward. Mercenaries are no better than common bandits. How could my father make a deal with such a pack of rogues? Unleash the catapults. Break our enemy's spirit. <laughs> Looks like they're here. And once we kill them all, we'll have more riches than we know what to do with. <laughs> Short-handed. That barrier was formed with dark magic. We must eliminate the caster in order to pass. They only delay the inevitable. We have the enemy where we want them! Unleash the arrows! Those ballisti 
require stopping. Force our way through this. Time has come to call upon our detachment. Observe! A weapon of that scale is certain to be controlled by some kind of device. On your command, we can use the agents we scattered amongst the rebels to throw the enemy into disarray. This will be amazing! I guess we'll attack here. Getting stronger too. Titans are here. Enemies here. Kill them all. Get in there and hammer them while they're pinned down by that magic weapon. Now die. Are you kidding me? Reinforcements. This day just keeps getting better. Must be a second device. Keep looking. Who gave these wretches leave to scurry in? Exterminate them. Well, we've smashed their little toy. Let's see what their next move will be. But Talus gave me that. Oh, I am so mad at you right now! Would somebody please step up and do something about those other vermin there? Hey! Why can you wield that power, huh? Who even are you? Why don't you tell me? You seem to know more than enough about it already. You everything, These defenses crippled in short order. Out of the way! No. This is wrong! I can't die! I never expected much from those shifty birds. And here I am, with the cold embrace of the grave hovering at my shoulder. Let's link up! Witness our power! We'll do it together!
is not left but to resist with all our might. Help me push them back. The writing is on the wall, but those fools would sooner perish than admit it. I don't know how we made it, but we did. I'm the fire orbs! We'll rain death down upon them from above. Fire orbs? Those must be me. A little ghost, if you ask me. They look real dangerous, though. Also, what's a ghost? It's time. Conjure magic shield to safeguard our comrades. Pay attention now. Your Majesty, forgive my weakness. The outer defenses only just come. On the cart. Your timing is perfect. Is that Voldemar? Curse that man. Why must he always show up at the worst possible moment and ruin everything? Well, that was an impeccably staged entrance. Are you just biding your time in order to put on the best show possible? Really? This is not fun! You know, Ben Hart, there are times you take after me. And then there's most of the time. Take a breather. Viscount Fenya. Viscount Minya. Forgive me. I'm coming for you, father. Leave the enemy no place to hide. Seize every key position in the fortress. The enemy is getting too close to Duke Iron. We must hurry to his side. Oh, but you are far too late now. I'm unstoppable. Von Eyer. I see the Empire in the throes of a terrible sickness. And I intend to cure it or die in the attempt. That is enough. There is no escape for you. <laughs> Go on, then. I'll leave for you the final blow. You leave me nothing. This was ever my burden to bear. Father! No. You are just a traitor now. In light of your crimes against the Empire, the punishment is death! Send a runner to House Menya and have them deliver the letter I drafted. Also, take the soldiers under your command and begin investigating any magic constructs abandoned by the enemy. At once, Lord Hubert. <laughs> it must be awful to end your own parents' life. Come on, Ferdinand. Let's get going. No. You may continue without me. I would like to stay here a moment. Just a moment longer. Hubert, we have a messenger from the Alliance, and I need to know where our Western campaign stands. Ferdinand, may I have a word? I thought I'd let you decide how to punish your father's followers now that they've surrendered. Ah. Uh. 
Furthermore, this incident has led to the end of Fenya and several other noble houses. We need to settle the matter of the next Duke Iyer, and we need to do so quickly. So if you don't mind... Is this your attempt at solace, Edelgard? What? I will punish the troops, and I will find a way to administer my father's lands. You can trust in me, Your Majesty. And thank you for considering my feelings on the matter. I never expected we'd have our hands this full after returning from Fargus. Still, we've managed to quell the turmoil and maneuver our way back to Enbar. Due to the valiant efforts of Count Berglis and his Aryan Road garrison, the Kingdom's counteroffensive has hardly put a dent in the Western Lines. I wager the reinforcements reached them in time. It's a good thing we do not have to maintain a large military presence in Leicester. But of course, that was Her Majesty's plan all along. We'd be up to our shoulders in trouble if we hadn't settled hostilities with the Alliance. Do you think people in the Empire will be all right? I'm worried about the Opera Company, of course, but I'd also be devastated if anything happened to my friends in the capital. The end result of all this was the complete expurgation of the Empire's remaining dissidents. <laughs> in a way, we should be thanking them for handing us this opportunity on a gilded platter. Adrestia deserves some stability for a change, so I think it's good that Her Majesty has total power now. With the opposing nobles wiped out, it's a breath of fresh air after the way things were under the old Emperor. Lynn, think about who's here. It is all right, Dorothea. I have moved on. It's funny, though. I was sure my father would take part in the rebellion, but he just didn't. I mean, I feel like all he ever did was complain about Her Majesty, you know? I guess he was so scared of the church that he decided to stay holed up in Garrick Mach. What is our next action, Lady Edelgard? If we are returning to the Western Front, I will have preparedness. Fighting your own people sure takes the thrill out of battle. So let's go wall up the kingdom instead and put an end to all this. Who's with me? All that remains is for Adrestia to claim victory. And along those lines, I wish to present an idea. One last stratagem to ensure that we prevail. We were successful in striking down Cronia at Fort Mercius. However, Lord Arendelle, which is to say Talus, remains at large. And any schemes Solon may be plotting are so much conjecture in the wind. Still... His efforts in Hrim territory effectively empowered the late Duke Iyer to stage a coup. Whatever the case, he must have a very good reason for seeking to prevent the kingdom's fall. But why would they help the people who are harboring the Archbishop? It makes no sense. Unless their aim is simply to prevent the war from ending by any means possible. We know the Kingdom's court mage, Cornelia, is connected to those who slither in the dark. They may have planted other associates in Fargus as well. If they already have the King's court dancing on strings, it stands to reason they would focus their attention on obstructing the Empire. I agree the theory hangs together, but does that mean we should expect more interference? We should, Your Majesty. Though I would at least like to think they no longer have anyone left who can act brazenly in the open. And need we worry about our mercenary friend? I was under the assumption that they had your implicit trust. Absolutely, but not enough to purge all of the doubt from my heart. I once trusted my uncle, as well as the late Duke Iyer, and he wasn't even replaced with a doppelganger. People who come in contact with those who slither in the dark are not the same afterward. 
How am I to trust anyone in a world where such a thing can happen? I do not disagree, Your Majesty. Yes, well, we must remain vigilant until the war is over for good and all. Although I wonder if we can rest easy even then. We still don't really know much about Solon, Kranya, and Talus. I was thinking this would be a chance to learn about my power, or who you actually are. But oh well. Oh well. Is that all you have to say for yourself? I mean, I'm still curious, but my attention right now is on the battles ahead. And hey, it's not like knowing the truth would change much for you anyway. Even if I am related to those slithering people somehow, it's not like I'd want to split up with you. That's music to my ears. It's incredible to see just how fast you've matured. Makes me proud to call you my partner in destiny. <laughs> Is this what being a parent feels like? Uh, yeah. I guess. Anyway, this war will be over soon, so let's do what we've got to do to see it through together. I'll be counting. Scarlet Blaze. Torment of the Ego and Lion. Edelgard succeeds in containing Ayer's insurgency, and while she is concerned by the absence of the nefarious Tallis, she prepares her army for the next step regardless. The time is nigh to crush the kingdom and central church's growing momentum and put an end to the war once and for all. I've gathered you here in Garrick Mark because the time has come. We are returning to the front. Oh yeah, I've been waiting to hear that forever. Let's go wreck things. For the next phase of our campaign, we'll be working with the Alliance's leader, Claude, to tighten our cordon around the kingdom. Rather than try to advance on the Western Front, we'll join forces with the Alliance and press in from the East. This means we'll be marching northeast from the monastery and infiltrating Galatea. I hope we can finally end it this time. I don't think I can deal with doubling back again. Agreed. This slog has slogged on long enough. Worry not, friends. I'll not be blindsided twice. I promise you that. We won't rest until all of Fodlan is united. We will fight tooth and nail for it, and we'll do so together. So, we're finally dusting off our armor and going somewhere, huh? You must really want to end this war if you're letting the two of us loose on the kingdom. Quite right, Captain Geralt. We will not accept anything less than the fall of the royal capital. You and your mercenaries will be marching with us. This is not a problem I trust. Let's just say I have a history with someone at the capital and leave it at that. But if the time's come for me to sort that out, then so be it. In any case, we're ready to go, right, kid? We'll earn our keep. Gotta say, I'm excited to be fighting with you for a change. We made some headway on the Western Front once the Empire pulled its main force back. What does it matter when their Minister of Military Affairs still holds Aryan Road? Even if we were in a position to keep throwing troops at those walls, we're never going to crack them. But if we keep digging our heels in here, their main force will be on us again in no time. It appears they have already dealt with the insurrection at Fort Mercius. If they don't come at us from the west, they'll soon waltz right in from the east. Might I offer a suggestion, King Dimitri? Of course, Lady Rhea. We should retake Garrick Mark. It is the only way to reverse our current fortunes. 
If I call upon the church's faithful, they will come running from every corner of Fodlan to liberate the monastery in the goddess's name. With Garrick Mach under our control, we will be able to keep the Imperial Army in check. Additionally, it might convince some of the more fickle Alliance Lords to reconsider their loyalties. I mean no disrespect, Lady Rhea, but this proposal hardly seems... There is more. As you know, the Bishop of the Southern Church is currently seated at the Monastery. If we remove him, it reminds the world anew that Archbishop Rhea is the rightful head of the Church of Seros. I believe this will shake some of the more devout Adrestian lords from their Emperor's grip. While their faith may waver now, Adrestia is still the cradle of the Church of Seros. There are yet many pious believers among their nobility. If we can pull them to our side, it may shift the war back in our favor. We should strike while the iron is hot. I will get the word out at once. Hold, Lady Rhea. While I now concede that your plan to retake the monastery has some merit, I must ask that you alert no one. And why not? I need only say the word, and an army of believers will flock to our cause. Yes, and the moment the enemy spies people flooding in from across Hill and Dale, they'll realize what we're planning and bolster their defenses. You believe their defenses are mightier than the faith of the people? By the goddess, have our enemies truly become so powerful? In that case, what do you propose? We entrust the Eastern Lines to houses Karen and Galatea, and ride in mass toward Arian Road. The enemy will think we intend to assail the Silver Maiden, but instead, we break east. East? Then we'll be attacking the monastery through the Valley of Torment. I get your thinking now. If we attack from the west, Arian Road would be at our backs, and the Empire could box us in. Very well. I have no objections. My church members will assist in guiding your soldiers through ALL. The monastery is holy and precious to us, and by the name of the goddess, I swear, it will be ours again. Good. Then I'll ready the troops. Lady Rhea, Seteth, I place all of our futures in your hands. Perhaps I will ask Edelgard to handle this matter. As for this one, it seems as though I have no choice but to do it myself. Uh, if only I could spare the time. Hey, Ferdinand. You should probably think about getting some sleep. That's an order, actually, from Hubert. But I agree with him. My apologies. My list of responsibilities has grown rather unwieldy of late. Exhausted as I may be, I will be done here shortly. You need not fret. Ferdinand, come on. I thought you were supposed to be giving everything your all. If you're really that tired, how are you going to be in any shape for what's coming tomorrow? Go on and give your all to a good night's sleep. Ah, uh, yes, you are right. How could I, of all people, not realize the error in my ways? I shall take that to heart. Glad to hear you're coming around. Anyway, good night. Tomorrow's another big day. Wait. Hmm? What's up? Uh, never mind. Thank you for the concern. I will be sure to convey my gratitude to Hubert later as well. Don't forget. He's really worried about you, you know. Is he now? Usually he finds any occasion to criticize me. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> Is that so? And here I thought he had taken a shine to you. If he has, he sure doesn't show it. Ah, before I forget. What would you think about coordinating our schedules tomorrow? I've been so absorbed in my work of late, 
You've scarcely had the chance to spend time together. I have been pouring all of my effort into rising early, training, eating, and in the process, I have neglected our friendship. As fellow advocates of giving one's all to all of life's pursuits, I say we work together to draw out each other's dormant potential. Works for me. My schedule's pretty light these days. It'll be good to spend some time together. But just so we're clear, we are not on the same page with this whole giving or all thing. Splendid! This should serve as all the motivation I need to continue pressing onward undaunted. And with that settled, I believe it is time for us to devote ourselves fully to a tranquil slumber. Come, our lump-riddled camp beds await our zealous efforts. Okay, this time you are joking, right? It's seriously impossible to tell with you sometimes. La 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 How was that? I, uh, yeah, good. Still the same reaction, huh? Sorry, me and singing just don't mix very well. Though, it did make me feel warm inside. Kind of like I was a kid again, with my mom. Hey, you do get it! That was a lullaby from a long, long time ago. Nowadays, nobody remembers the lyrics, though. Or sings it to their children, for that matter. A lullaby, huh? I guess that's why it took me back the way it did. But wait, if nobody knows the words, how are you so sure that's even what it is? Just from how it sounds? Well, there was this scholar who researched it a few years ago and said as much. Couldn't tell you if they were right, though. Huh. Honestly, I kind of like that it didn't have any words. That way it can hit you straight in the heart without all that lyrics and meaning stuff getting in the way. I'm glad to hear you giving music a little more thought now. And I'm glad I've had so many chances to listen to you sing. Your voice touches people, Dorothea, even if they don't have the knowledge to really appreciate the high-level art of it. I mean, look at me. Bottom of the barrel and you still practically move me to tears. Come now, don't talk about yourself like that. It doesn't really bother me. And I'm not wrong, am I? No birth parents, no real background to speak of, the whole wandering Merc gig. It is what it is. <laughs> That's quite the positive attitude. I'll have to try a little bit of that myself sometime. In the meantime, I've once again been able to rethink my singing thanks to you. I lost much of my emotion about the craft during my time as a diva, but I can feel it coming back now. <laughs> you really are incredible, you know that? How do you mean? I don't know, there's just something beautiful about the way you speak. It's like your thoughts just come out of your mouth fully formed, almost perfect, and find their way straight into people's hearts probably has something to do with all the training you did to become a diva, and all the training you've continued doing since. Meanwhile, here I am, struggling to even make proper sentences when I try to talk about your singing. Thank you for the kind words. It, it makes me feel a lot better hearing you say those things about me. But, for the record, I don't think you're bad with words at all. Even your little speech now was the definition of smooth. If I didn't know any better, I'd think you were trying to flirt with me. <laughs> so in the end, it seems we're no closer to unveiling the truth about your powers. You can say that again. At this rate, the war will be over and done with by the time we make any headway. That would admittedly be cause for celebration, at least. Your power, like that of a crest, 
is undoubtedly meant to be wielded as an instrument of war. And as the tides of battle recede, your chances of encountering a life or death situation grow slimmer and slimmer. Therefore, you'll be forced to use your power less and less often. And that's probably for the best. Why is that such a good thing? Because we still don't know enough about its effects, both during and after its use. You know, they say even a hero's relic wielded by its corresponding crest bearer will still drain a portion of that person's life. It's reasonable to suspect your power could have a similar impact on both your body and mind. Hey, you're starting to scare me here. Honestly, I was just planning on going back to being a regular old mercenary after the war ends. Can't really imagine life without a blade in my hand, you know? I should have guessed. I imagine your expert services will be in high demand even once the conflict is over. In fact, Edelgard herself seemed keen on asking you to settle down in Imbar to support the Empire. Really? Not that I'm not flattered, of course, but putting down roots isn't really my thing. No, I suppose not. Though I have to admit, it would put my mind at ease to have you by my side once this is all over. You want me by your side? Would you care to elaborate on that? Consider the possibilities. A seemingly unarmed attendant who's able to produce a sword in the blink of an eye. It would be a great crime deterrent, don't you think? You'd prove quite handy on my travels. I figured that's what you meant. A pure Linhart answer, if I've ever heard one. But how's that any different from a regular bodyguard? Seems like you could just hire one of those and be done with it. Maybe so. But I don't want to be spending the rest of my life with a random bodyguard, do I? Hold on, what? Oh, well, look at the time. It seems I've forgotten an urgent matter I need to attend to. Bye for now. Wait, Linhart, come back! Hubert, what do you make of the Ashen Demon? Aside from having proven to be both impossibly powerful and a constant thorn in our side, a correction was a constant thorn in our side. I must admit, the little terror has put in some fine work for the Empire recently. We're fortunate to have gained so powerful an ally. Why do you bring this up, Your Majesty? Is there something on your mind? I'm not entirely sure myself. My apologies, Hubert. Pay me no mind. Like as not, I am overthinking the situation. Surely you realize that telling me to pay this no mind only gives me greater cause for concern? <laughs> I didn't mean to worry you. I'm simply having trouble putting this feeling into words. I just felt... I don't know, as if something was drawing me to the Ashen Demon. I wonder, could it be the influence of my crest? Your crest? Now I am truly becoming concerned. Forget it. Whatever it means, we don't need to find out right away. We have a war to win first. As you wish, Your Majesty. So long as you realize, I will be taking the liberty to investigate this most thoroughly. I thought you might say as much. Do as you must. Honestly, Hubert, you never change, do you? When I emerged from beneath the palace all those years ago, you acted as though nothing had happened. Do not worry, you said. I took the liberty to investigate while you were indisposed. For the record, my blood was boiling. However, as there were others present, I kept still my tongue. 
I could not risk showing my anger, lest they find a way to turn it against you. My role to play is the cold, crafty, unreadable servant. I am happy with the casting, so let us leave it at that. I'm certain you are. But just once I'd like to see our roles reversed. Your Majesty, you cannot possibly be serious. <sighs> not in the slightest. I'm well aware I am not cut out for the kind of work you do. Nonsense. There is nothing beyond your capability. That said, I prefer you best when you are the one in charge. Command me as you see fit. No matter how daunting or impossible the task may be, I will come through every time without fail. Thank you, Hubert. It's good to know that I can always rely on you. Constance, I think I am starting to have more understanding of you. Both parts of you are the true you. The part that cannot be accepting is existing alongside the part that can. These two are always fighting inside you. It is very difficult. I would venture to say that you have described me most aptly. There is still much about myself I have yet to understand, but the idea that the two parts of me exist in a state of conflict is most intriguing. Before, you were telling me there was no point in having conflict over the past. You were letting go of the past to be living in the present. Your words were touching my heart. Yes, I do suppose I may have said something to that effect. How mortifying. But then you fled before I could be responding. That was showing me that you have difficult feelings for me after all. This is also one part of you battling with the other, I think. It is entirely possible that such is the case. As I could never hide the truth from you, I must admit I found you somewhat intimidating. Despite my springing the topic on you without warning, you stood strong and listened, and were even gracious enough to discuss it afterward. You dazzled me, and I do not respond well to dazzling. I am weak and pathetic as I am now. No, that is not weakness. It is balance. The weak part is existing, so the other part can be strong for you. Are you not agreeing? Why ever would you think that? Because I am the same. I am also having a weak part. Like you, I am always pretending that the past is not bothering to me. But my father is dead, as are many of my people. This gives me great sorrow, and I am unable to be accepting. The weak part of me is winning. Why is it that I am still living, when so many others had to be dying? That is a thought that I ponder often myself. For what purpose am I even here? Why is it that I am the only one left to suffer? Is there anything left for me to live for? All I feel is the pain of the people I have lost. But I know now that someone like you, a person as dazzling as the other part of me, also shares that same pain. Of course. May I be so bold as to ask what it is that gives you solace? My brother and sister back home. They're still very small, but thinking of them always provides me with strength. If I am not able to be claiming the throne, they are likely to be killed. Bridget expects me to be a strong queen, a warrior. Only I can be improving our relations with Fodlin. I must be rising to the challenge. Where are you finding your solace? I take peace in the dream the other part of me still believes in. The dream that one day, House Nouvelle will be restored to its former glory, 
As unlikely as this seems, I find I am unable to discard it entirely. Then let us both be taking heart. We will be living and we will be fighting. We are sharing a past of sorrow. But together, we can be overcoming it and walking on towards tomorrow. You have my deepest thanks, Petra. Alone, I may never have found the courage I need, but with you beside me, there is hope. I had no idea these grew outside the village. Oh, um, uh, hi, Happy. Got some fruit there? Yep. I used to eat them all the time when I was a kid. Care for some? Huh? Oh, um, thanks. I'll just have one. Hmm. Oh, wow. It's sour, but also sweet. They're my favorite. With all the edible plant life around here, you never need to worry about being hungry. Well, I suppose I've seen edible plants around, but are there really all that many? Sheesh, I need to get out more. I didn't even notice. But you must have noticed. You raised them. Like the carnivorous one I saw earlier? But... I don't eat my carnivorous plants. I'm sorry. Did we or did we not have a long conversation about how delicious they are? <laughs> In fact, I was just thinking that the jug-shaped one would be divine if we stuffed it with grains and... Uh, Bernie Bee? <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sorry. I was just imagining you eating my adorable little carnivorous plants. Which I have done. A lot, actually. Haven't you? Of course not! Why would I eat my plant babies? Because they're delicious. Okay, that's it. I'm going to cook you up a carnivorous plant feast right now. Come on. Here you go. Dig in. This is the one with the leaves that act like a mouth. Uh, but instead of bugs, I stuffed it with grilled meat. Oh no! Poor little guy! But... It would be an insult to its little plant spirit if I just threw it out, so... Oh. <laughs> well, do you like it? It's my favorite, so I hope it ends up being your favorite, too. Bernie Bee? Was it so delicious you passed out? Okay, come on. Stop kidding around. Hello? I can see you drooling, Bernie Bee. Are you even listening to me, Linhart? I know what I saw. Oh, I heard you the first time. I just think you misunderstood what your eyes were telling you. The guy didn't have a head! What could I possibly misunderstand about that? From a distance, many things could resemble the indistinct shape of a headless torso. It's irrational to assume it was a ghost. There must be a simpler and more scientific explanation. And you'll never convince me otherwise, no matter how much you howl. So best to just let it go. You're being real stubborn about this. Wouldn't it be easier to just mumble something about how he might be right and move on? A fair point. But you see... Father? Well, this is unexpected. You too, Father? What are you doing here? I had some matters to discuss with Her Majesty, and prefer to do so in person. And I came to consider the continued unrest in the East of the Empire with the court. And you thought it might be nice to pay your dear sons a visit while you were in the area. A sensible conclusion. Death awaits around every corner in these times. 
Each visit could be our last. You are a fountain of positivity, my son. We're not just here to bandy words. There's a fight waiting for us, and a lot of you are going to help. Uh, all of us? He can't possibly be counting me among those slated to help, can he? Father? I was against the idea, but as you might imagine, Count Burglies would have none of it. You know some of the former Prime Minister's rebel sympathizers escaped, yes? Well, we've tracked them down in a town near to here. Leopold means to mount an attack and wipe them out in one fell swoop. With just us? I hope you have more troops on the way. Sorry, but this is all we've got. My army's engaging the kingdom on the Western Front, and Her Majesty's forces are busy with preparations for the next battle. Now come, we don't have much time. Right, got it. And what do you think will happen to us if we let the two of them go it alone and they end up dead? Hmm? Oh, fine. As you said, it's not like we can talk the Count out of anything once he's set his mind to it. And Caspar is just as bad. That apple is so close to the tree, it may as well be part of the roots themselves. I assume we can count on you as well, friend. It will be a hard battle, and I cannot vouch for our safe return should you refuse. I don't see how I can say no when you put it like that. You're just as bad as Count Burglies in your own special way. You appear to have a bond of mutual trust. Nicely done, son. I'm not sure that's how I'd phrase it, but moving on. If we're going to do this thing, I suggest we move out and do it already. Yeah, if we don't hurry, Caspar and his dad will be drowning in bad guys before we even get our boots laced. Come on, we gotta catch up. See? I knew I could rely on you. Hmm. I get the feeling this is going to be quite the bother before it's all said and done. So much for catching the enemy unprepared. Though no matter, we'll wipe out what's left of this rebellion regardless. That rocket you caught outside of town certainly didn't help. Still, at least they've been drawn out. It's been a while since I fought alongside my father. Better step it up. Even more than you usually do? In that case, I'll try to keep out of your way. Are you kidding? My usual approach would get blasted away by my father's battle cry alone. A good point. I'll stay away from him as well. When did we two last fight side by side? During the Troubles in Enbar, perhaps? Quite recently, though. Hopefully things go better this time around. Your training is starting to pay off, son. You've become much more disciplined. Oh, now I feel his eyes watching my every move. Better not let him down. What's that noise? Are they onto us? It's not over. These bandits seem unrelated to the rebels. Still, we might as well deal with them. Mowing down weak enemies is so very dull. What say you, Caspar? Care to compete over which group can rack up more kills? You and Count Hevering versus the three of us? I like those odds! Or you can leave us out of your absurd contest entirely. Come on, Voldemar! You're falling behind! I don't know why you insist on this foolish competition, Leopold. You know full well I could never keep up with you. I'll take the lead, Caspar. 
Counting on you, Linhart! You know better than to expect much. How's this? All right, that's one down. Come on, give me another. Can't we just have a nice, normal battle? Counting bodies is so tacky. More bandits over there, Voldemort! Work me in! Another one-man assault? My turn. Well, if that's what you want. A wise man is ever ready. Would you like to be warped as well, Caspar? I personally think it's a terrible idea, but I'll let you make your own decision. No thanks. I'm running on pure, clean Caspar power this time. We'll go on ahead to escort the prisoners. I think we knew this would be the result. Still, it's always good to try, yes? It seems someone's training has been lacking. Perhaps it's time we put these lads through their paces. What say you, Voldemort? So be it. I do not promise to match your intensity. Special father training? Sleep? Count me in! Show me what you've learned. Every technique and talent. Pull no nothing back. Fight against the strongest man in the Empire? You got it. I'll give you all you can handle! Painful! Are you sure you have the right son here? Because I much prefer to stay out of this. My force of will seems rather weak in the face of the might you display so casually. Sorry, you can tell your heart's not really in this. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm gonna prove how strong I am! Well, Linhart, seeing as we're here, I might as well put you to the test also. Yes, you. And what exactly are you hoping to prove with this test of yours? It doesn't feel like I've posed much of a challenge to you. Sorry. Sorry. That was about what I expected. This will be amazing. I'll put in the effort if you do. Really? It's about time! Out of my way! Yes. Yes! Give me more! Ah, the vigor of youth. Let this battle be your proving ground. You have surpassed me, Caspar. Well fought. I am proud of you. Well, this day has been simply awful. Time for me to hurry home and fall into bed. Bed? It's still early. I bet my father has plenty more training in store for us. <laughs> so you finally bested your old man, huh? I'm proud of you, Caspar. And Linhart, you've come a long way as well. Oh, and it puts my mind at ease to know these two have a companion like you around. Don't you agree, Valdemar? Any peace of mind I may have gained will doubtless be wiped out soon by more of your antics, Leopold. But yes, as one never knows what will happen on a battlefield, it is always good to have capable allies. Wow, did you hear that? My father isn't easily impressed, so you must have really knocked his greaves off back there.
It's an honor to get complimented by such a renowned military mind. Ha! Well, if you ever want to test your might, you know where to find me. I don't think that was ever on the table. No? Well, that's disappointing. Anyway, here. A reward for all the work you put in. Consider this as a thank you for letting me drag you all on my little adventure. Hey, now we're talking. After all those years as a merc, I always expect some kind of reward after a tough battle. You throw yourself vigorously into the fray to help your friends, yet also keep a tight grip on the strings of your purse. You would make for a fine civil servant, if you ever had the inclination. Tempting, but I think I'd rather fight people than paperwork. Gals like me aren't cut out for the civilized life. I prefer to let my sword do the talking. Wait, you have a talking sword? What? Uh, of course not. <laughs> if only you trained your mind with the same vigor as your muscles, my son. Hey, speaking of minds, where's Linhart? He's been awfully quiet through all this. Did he seriously just pass out? Hmm? Oh, are we going? Wow, look at that. I have a second wind. Just enough energy to get me home and into bed. Long story short, the kingdom is preparing to ride west with a huge army. It looks like they're gonna throw everything they've got at Aryan Road. Yes, we have received similar reports. It's a pretty strange thing to do. I don't trust it. Then you believe it to be a feint? Interesting. Well, if true, there are only so many places they could go. They cannot ignore our troops and attempt to take Deirdre. That would be folly. So the only other place I can imagine they would be after is Garrick Mark. That's what I was thinking. So what's our play? We can't risk losing the monastery. We'll have to send more troops to defend it. But at the same time, we can't unclench the fist we are trying to bring down on the kingdom. Our only choice is to mobilize the full resources of our regions. Spoken like a woman with might to spare. I'm afraid we in the Alliance are already at our limits. But hear me out for a second. If the Kingdom really intends to attack Eric Mach, they won't approach from the west. That would put them smack between your forces in Aryan Road and the Monastery. It'd be suicide. That leaves them with only one option. You're saying they'll take the northern approach through Aelau? Yep, the Valley of Torment, which just so happens to be the route we were planning to use ourselves. The Church of Saros will likely mobilize every knight they've got, and that is a very big army. Supposing you are correct, what do you suggest we do in response? Should we change our marching route to avoid clashing with them? Nope. In fact, I vote we do the opposite. The Kingdom will catch on no matter how we try to deploy our troops, so I say let's meet them right there in Aelel. Interesting. But the valley path is treacherous and difficult to navigate, which will blunt the impact of our superior numbers. Why would we play into the enemy's hands like that? Because sometimes trying to claim every advantage can be a double-edged sword. Leveling the playing field can often be the key to bringing an opponent down, especially if you know you can handle it. Besides, what better way to keep casualties to a minimum than by finishing them off in one battle? You know how to convince me. Very well. I can get behind this plan. Hmm. Is there anything you would like to add, Hilda? You appear to be deep in thought. Huh? Who, me? Nah, I'm good. 
I'm just standing in because Clot asked me to. If it brings the war to an end quicker, I'm all for it. This war is going on and on. Do you think we will ever have sight of the end? Yeah, I do. Maybe not today or tomorrow, but it's definitely out there on the horizon. It will be good to be putting this war behind us. When the war is finished, what are you wishing to do? That's a pretty big question. Then I will give more clarity. How will you be supporting yourself when your contract is completed? If you have the desire, you could come to Bridget with me. Wait, seriously? I thought you were just pulling my leg about that. I would never be pulling your legs. Also, I am speaking with seriousness. After losing the war with the Empire, Bridget was forced into becoming a vassal state. But this war is giving Bridget the chance to stand on equal feet again. We will be opening our borders to Fodlin. The exchanges between us will flourish. I am needing a person I can trust to give me help with this. <laughs> Please, accept my apologies if the offer was given with too much suddenness. No, it's not that. I was just taking a moment to admire you. This war has been particularly ugly, and it seems like we're tearing each other apart on a daily basis. But people like you and Edelgard are already thinking about what comes next, how to plan for it. You're every bit the ruler they are. No, I am different. I am the Queen of Bridget. We are the proud isles, placed upon the sea by the spirits, who are watching over us to this day. Our future has the brightness of the sun. I am hoping you will be at my side as we are shaping it. Powerful words. And I'm happy you put that much stock in me. Honestly, it's a good fit. I've got nothing tying me down. No family, no titles, no property to speak of. I am not asking for your answer in this moment. I know your sword is sold right now. But when this war is over, I hope the making of a decision is at the top of your to-be-doing list. That is why I am approaching you so early, because I am very, very sneaky. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll keep that in mind. And I don't blame you for trying to sneak ahead of the competition. Honestly, I'm kind of flattered. So, how about this? Let's both make it through this war unscathed and decide what comes next together. Perfect timing, Caspar. I was just looking for you. You were? Oh, I get it. You want to go a few rounds, huh? Fine, we'll take you down without even breaking a sweat. Well, no, I mean, okay, yes, at some point, but that's not what I'm here for. Your dad's around, right? I was sort of hoping I could get a session in with him. You know, a little lesson from the Minister of Military Affairs himself. Yeah, you might not want to do that. Why not? You're training with him, aren't you? Well, sure, but I've been doing that since I could barely even talk. And it still knocks my backside into next month. A regular person like you wouldn't stand a chance. What about this looks regular to you? Come on, I'm serious. Don't say I didn't warn you. You want my advice? Don't eat anything beforehand if you don't want to be cleaning it off your armor later. Oh, and uh, cancel all your plans for after, because I can guarantee you are not going to make them. Just keep that in mind, okay? It can't be that bad, can it? You're kind of scaring me here. Oh, trust me, it can. I'm just making sure you don't get blindsided by the pain. Training with my father? 
It's a marathon of blood, sweat, and tears that'll leave you feeling like you're face to face with the goddess herself. You still alive? I can't feel my legs. Don't worry, you'll be fine. You're just out of energy is all. You know, my father praised you. Nobody's ever kept up with him as long as you did. Apparently, he's gonna come up with even tougher training now. Though I really wish he wouldn't. I think... I underestimated you, Kaspar. I don't know how you can handle training like that every day. Getting used to it was kind of my only choice growing up. I mean, I'm not as clever as you, so I had to make up for it by being tough as nails. That's why I'm always so gung-ho about getting stronger. Though, I don't know if that's really the most efficient way to go about it. No, that training... Efficiency has nothing to do with it. I think I get where that unwavering focus of yours comes from now. Yeah? Well, in any case, I'm glad you're still alive and kicking. Our enemies aren't gonna know what hit them next time we get out on the battlefield. Uh... <sighs> <laughs> you know, it's a nice change of pace seeing you like this. Please don't laugh at my pain. Uh, hi. Bernadetta, listen. I'm sorry about what happened back there. Oh, it wasn't your fault. I'm the one who should be apologizing. I didn't realize things could even go that bad. I'm glad we managed to get you in front of the meanest looking guy in my company. But that didn't last long before the nerves got to you. Quickest I've ever seen someone run, let me tell you. And then I accidentally stepped on that horse's tail, so it started going wild and totally trashed the place. It'll probably take weeks for them to clean that up. Oh, you really did it this time, Bernie. Kind of a shame. It would have been way cheaper to just buy the herbs from Anna and be done with it. And with how much repairs ended up being, we could have even tossed in that creepy pot. <laughs> no. That aside, though, you still want to do something about your shyness, right? I can see why this is a bigger problem than your whole staying indoors thing. Your anxieties can be quite the hurdle to overcome. You're right. But hey, I haven't been keeping to myself at all lately. Bernie's out in the open! Either way, now we know how things turn out when we try to force the issue. Looks like we're better off taking an incremental approach. How's that work? Well, we can start by having you hide nearby while I talk to someone you're afraid of. Then, I don't know, if the conversation gets interesting, maybe you can come out and join in? I'm not going to care whether it's interesting or not! It doesn't matter if they're serious or boring or the most fascinating person in the world. All I care about is that they don't scare me. Yeah, I guess that's gonna be tough to manage on its own, huh? Well, maybe the incremental approach won't actually be as hard as we think. Really? How do you figure? I mean, I did used to think you were pretty terrifying. But with all this stuff we've been doing together, I've actually gotten used to you. And now I'm not really shy around you, am I? <laughs> I'm not exactly flattered to hear that, but... Well, I guess I'll just be glad I don't scare you anymore. Sounds like spending time with someone is the key. Which means we'll just have to toss you straight into the deep end and see if you can swim. I hate the deep end! Sorry, sorry, just messing with you. 
Anyway, here's hoping you and I can keep getting closer, Bernadetta. Right. <sighs> You're in better spirits than I expected. You look at least two shades less pale than you did after the battle at Fort Mercius. <laughs> oh, but your majesty does enjoy telling it like it is. Would it be the end of you to show a little compassion? <sighs> no. Then you would just be pitying me. I do not know which is worse. Regardless, I am well. Thank you for noticing. Ask of me what you will. And I shall see it done. I don't need anything from you, Ferdinand. Or at least not in that way. Just give me your usual effort. And that should be enough to get us through the upcoming battle. You can count on me. Point me at a foe, and I will dispatch them with all haste. I cannot afford to die now. Or my page in the history books will end in a most horrid fashion. Plagued by the guilt of striking down his father, Ferdinand welcomed the cold embrace of death on the battlefield. Or some such hogwash. Yes, I killed my father. And I would be a liar if I said it did not wound me nearly beyond reckoning. But I will not hate myself for it. It was the correct choice. I did the right thing. Well, don't feel too bad. Imagine what they would write about me if we lose this war. Despite her futile attempts to wrest power from the Prime Minister, the Emperor's people turned against her and her life ended in abject failure. The end. I know exactly what the world would say of me, which is why I have no intention of losing. I will not permit such a thing to happen. If ever my life were to be weighed against yours, I would gladly perish in ignominy if it meant keeping you alive and well. <laughs> what? Did I say something amusing? No, it's just... You're so strong, so proud. If all the world's nobles were like you, there would be no need to dismantle the aristocracy. That's all. I know it's a futile thought. Nothing is futile. Though even I must admit it seems to be so, given the circumstances. Still, you vastly underestimate the potential of the aristocracy. For generations, our ancestors worked hand in hand, sharing knowledge and wisdom to administer our great land and ensure it was well protected. They acquired knowledge of the region and developed good policies to rule it. And in doing so, they earned the trust of the people. We cannot throw away everything they have built. It would be folly. Of course not. What do you take me for? I'm dismantling the aristocracy, not their legacy. The common folk will take up the torch and carry on. Do you believe they are ready? No matter how gifted they may be, they are only commoners. In order to replace the nobility, they need to be educated. Wait a moment. I see your plan now. You intend to establish a school. One that is not merely for nobles and wealthy merchant children like the Officer's Academy once was. A school where anyone can enroll regardless of wealth or standing, and get an education rivaling that of any noble. Ferdinand? I cannot begin to guess where that idea sprung from, but this is exactly why I need you beside me as we shape the future of Adrestia. You mean to say that you did not actually... So I was... Well, it is nice to be needed. Dorothea, are you all right? I heard you were injured in our latest battle. I'm fine. I can't say the same for my clothes, but at least my body will heal up quickly. Oh, what a relief. It would be terrible if you were wounded, 
but even a single scar marring your perfect skin would be a tragedy. No need to make such a fuss over it. I have plenty of scars already, Mommy. I'm aware, but a large one would present a different type of problem altogether. Wait, how do you know that I have scars? Actually, no, I'd rather not find out. By the way, Dorothea, there's something I was hoping to ask you. I heard you were hurt because you hesitated to kill an opponent and left yourself open to an attack. Is that true? It is. My enemy was a young child, and she was all skin and bones. I thought perhaps she was an orphan, and pity stayed my hand. So it is true. I'm sorry. I suppose my failure to act must have been something of a burden on everyone else. I don't consider you a burden. But still, why do you keep fighting if you have such a kind heart? How can you even stand it? Don't you want to run away? Don't you want to leave the army and return to your opera company? Oh, of course. The little voice inside my head is always telling me to pack up and go. But I have too much self-respect to do that. Or perhaps I'm simply too tied to my position. If I hadn't been given the opportunity to become a songstress, if I'd remained an orphan, I might well be in the same position as the child I face today. I might have been pressed into battle without being taught how to fight properly. I doubt I would have lasted long out on the battlefield. And when I think about that, I can't run away. I can't be the only one to flee to safety when everyone else is in danger. I had no idea. Plus, Adi matters a lot to me. I want to stay by her side and support her. You know all about what that's like, right? <laughs> Even though you have the option of working in the capital, you've chosen to stay here and fight. Well, you have me there. No matter what hardships might come, I can't imagine ever abandoning her. That makes two of us. Dorothea? My apologies. There's something I need to confess. I went to Her Majesty and... asked her to reassign you to the rear guard. But after speaking to you, I now realize that was a great mistake. Even if it's difficult, and even if you get hurt, you still have a desire and a right to be on the front with Lady Edelgard. You don't have to apologize, Mommy. I understand. So, let's keep giving everything we've got to this fight. Yes! With the two of us at her side, Her Majesty will be flanked by beautiful flowers. Wait, Her Majesty is also a beautiful flower, so, um... Upon the stage of battle we shall bloom, an army of countless flowers bursting into full glory. There you are. What's going on? It's not like you to send for me. I have something to give you. Well, this is new. What is it? Here. Flowers? Oh, I'm really surprised. I mean, you've never given flowers to anyone before, have you? I had to ask some of our allies for advice because I wasn't sure the best way to communicate my feelings. What do you mean? I'm really thankful that you're my captain, but also that you're my father. I've never really told you that, so I wanted to make sure you knew. Ah, oh, kid. When I asked, everyone said I should give you flowers. Apparently that's what they used to do back at the Officers Academy. I wonder what it would have been like there. The Officer's Academy, huh? You might have just been a student there if things had happened a little different. 
Or who knows, maybe you'd have ended up like Alois and forced into giving seminars or something. Not that you're really qualified to be a teacher. Hmm. Anyway, these flowers did the trick, kid. Consider your message delivered. Though, to be honest, I kind of already knew. You might not give a lot away, but you're not completely unreadable. Sorry for making you think I had no idea. That's all right. I'm just glad you know. By the way, why'd you choose this kind of flower? Did someone suggest them? No, I picked them out myself. I thought they were nice to look at. Calming, in a way. <laughs> uh, you even like the same flowers as your mother. Can you inherit that kind of thing? I used to give these to Citri all the time. I'd pull them out from behind my back, and her whole face would light up like the brightest torch you'd ever seen. Maybe this is how she felt whenever she got them. I'll keep that in mind for next time. I want to see how this mercenary life of ours is going to play out, together. Those feelings are never going to change, and I'll do what I must to make sure you know that. Huh. Thanks, kid. We will reach ALL soon. The Kingdom and Church approach from the West, and our friends in the Alliance from the East. We know their movements, so we need to assume they also know ours. This final battle will be intense and bloody, but no matter what happens, we must emerge victorious. At the very least, we have numbers on our side. Though the Kingdom has all of those heroes' relics, that can't be good for us. We must keep our eyes open, and we must stay on the same page. We can't have anyone rushing ahead to fashion themselves a hero. I'd say things are really heating up, but that's just the ground literally burning. It's sweltering. Whose idea was it to wage a battle in this place again? I will take heat over cold every day. Cold has its way of slowing you down. I'm fine with hot or cold, so long as it's in the comfort of my own room with the door locked. Do the words final, bloody, or battle not make you even the slightest bit nervous? Take this seriously. Show your pride as members of an army which serves the greatest empire the world has ever known. No need to get everyone worked up, Ferdy. When you dislike war as much as I do, you start to appreciate the lighter moments. <laughs> I am inclined to agree. Now, what do you say we show these adherents to the status quo a taste of true power? They don't stand a chance. To arms, then. Today we claim our victory for the good of all. The Alliance, the Kingdom, even the forces of the Church. To think we would all meet in such a cramped locale. Hold on. Does anyone actually see the Knights of Saros amidst all this? I wonder if they're not even here to begin with. We strike at the Imperial Army today. Do not let the Alliance distract you. Yes, as you command. The party's already starting, huh? It's too bad we couldn't throw it for something a little more civilized. Would it kill you to be serious for once, Claude? <sighs> for the last time, Flane, I am against this. It is not too late to retreat. And for the last time, I intend to fight. Besides, it would seem the battle is about to begin.
Well then, just give the command, Edelgard. Good. Our very hope depends on you. Brave warriors of Adrestia, the time has come to demonstrate the Empire's valor, to prove our supremacy. Any who dare stand in our way must be cut down. Now! As one, attack! <laughs> I'll be counting on the Alliance's wisdom and strength this day, Claude. Don't worry. Our brilliant teamwork will send them scattering. Shore up our defenses, and then advance on the enemy's forward position. So far as we know, the enemy's objective is to breach our defensive line and pass through the valley. We must not let that happen. <laughs> Riders, charge! Tear their defenses apart! Yeah, not bad. I've heard troubling tales about Fargus's cavalry. We'll be in deep trouble if we don't take them out soon. My turn. I'll carve my way right through them. No, not yet. <laughs> not on my watch, pal. Watch the ground. Even a single wrong step will cause undue pain. <laughs> All right, you'll do. Let us go. Hit their right flank. That's where the Alliance army is weakest. They're gonna come all the way over here? No fair! We can't let the enemy create holes in our defenses. We must head over and assist. Send the Alliance's Wyvern Company to cover our right wing. <laughs> Need your strength! Uh -huh. hey. You got it! Let's go! I've got you now! I'm still on my feet, and I can still hold a sword! Which means I can keep fighting! Uh -huh. You think a few nicks and scratches will send me packing? Stand down, Felix! <laughs> it's a wonder you can still stand. Now would you please let us handle the rest? You better come back alive, Sylvain, or else... <laughs> I hope you're watching me grin. Today is the day I avenge you. Out of the way! Let's take the stronghold. Forgive me, your majesty. May fortune favor you in battle. You too, Sylvain. What am I supposed to do now? I'll find him! We keep this up. The battle may be over before it can even begin. It's unnerving how well we're doing. I hope that means we're headed for a quick victory. Thanks for coming for me. That could have really gone either way there. We're shorthanded enough as it is, Hilda. 
compels me to be more careful. I will heal your wounds. Please, be careful out there. This should be of use. What is this? The second coming of Saint Sabine? Strike her down and put an end to it already. Why must you hurt each other like this? You are all brothers and sisters! This place will never fall with me around! I cannot take much more. Yet the others will be in grave danger if I flee. I need your strength! You got it. Let's go! Flame, no more! Get to safety! Very well, brother. But you must swear not to put yourself in unnecessary danger. You will go no further. In the name of his majesty, you will perish here. to lose you I take the field every last one of them will yield to me or they shall perish courage now the time has come to bring our war with the kingdom to its end King Dimitri is keeping the Empire busy break through their defenses Witness. I coordinated that well. I'm almost impressed. Move to intercept at once. I was wondering when Sedith would show up, and wouldn't you know it, there he is. Take careful aim now. Don't let any of them breach the defensive line. Archers! must have seen our attack coming. That man is a force of nature. I cannot hope for ordinary officers to stop it. I'll take this place down before you have time to strap your armor on. Right there. The Empire and all who prostrate themselves before Help it me, will be punished yeah. by my hand. By your will. Your life is forced. I cannot hurt you. Child is playing. I did not credit your strength enough. Gone are the days when the battle field would shudder before me. But I am not beaten yet. I defy you. Rested again, but I must live on for flame. Take a breather. Watch this. That was the Archbishop's aid, but there's still no sign of most of the Knights of Saros. With Sethus retreating, the rest falls upon my shoulders. 
we fail to act, Dimitri will reach our defensive line. We must stop him at all costs. Our conflict ends here. I shall see to your demise with my own two hands. I'm up against the King of Vargas himself. But I'm not about to back down. Last one. No! All would be lost if they breach our defensive line. Let us crush their defenses! It's not too late, Dimitri. Sever ties with the Central Church and return to your people. And I'm to believe that will end your aggression? You'll come for me anyway. Your thirst for blood is unquenchable. I will sacrifice my own body if I must. Every ounce of my being I offer for the future of Vargas. With me, Hubert. For the Empire! <laughs> All who oppose us will fall! Get out of my way! Right when I was so close to ending her. He came at us like a maelstrom, but we managed to take the wind out of his sails. We drove off the kingdom in the central church. It's a start, but... But this war is not over. We will hunt Dimitri down and put an end to the struggle. Well, would you look at that. We won. Thanks to you. Actually, I'd say you pulled most of the weight. The Kingdom and the Church had a ton of grizzled warriors on their side. We would have been in real trouble without you and your mercenaries. You were pretty impressive yourself. You barely even broke a sweat out there. I appreciate the compliment, though. I'm glad we got the chance to team up like this. Me too. The war's not over yet, though. I'm hoping you'll stick around to the end. Of course. The Ashen Demon has proved a greater asset than we could have ever imagined. You must be relieved to see your gamble pay off. If nothing else, I'll be a lot less busy as your partner in destiny going forward. Hmm. What a thing to imagine. Urgent report, your majesty. After his failed charge, Dimitri forced his way south in retreat. He has fled the battlefield. And the Archbishop's right-hand man, Sedeth, has escaped to the north. We've lost sight of him and his troops. Dimitri's the one to go after. Things will get complicated if we let him get away. We can move the fastest, so leave the pursuit to us. Just don't forget to send reinforcements, all right? I want the two of you to follow Claude. It's not that I don't trust him, exactly. I just want to make sure we're the ones who apprehend Dimitri. Leave it to us. Now that I think about it, there's something else to be concerned about. Where was the Archbishop? Where was the main force of the Knights of Seros? Rhea would have relished a battle like this, yet she was nowhere to be found. No. Hubert, let me ask you something. When the Archbishop escaped from Garrick Mach, we found no evidence of how she managed to reach this valley. Correct? Indeed. We searched high and low, but it was only by chance that we picked up her trail in ALL. That is how we knew she had entered the kingdom. Without that clue, she would have been in the wind. Just as I suspected. What is it, Ferdinand? Is Garrig Mach in danger? I fear so. There could be a secret path between this valley and the monastery that only the church knows about. And in that case, the Archbishop might be using it to stage an attack on Garrig Mach. 
It's certainly possible. Hubert, your thoughts? I will look into it. But I am almost certain that Ferdinand's theory is correct. We should assume this is the case and take action immediately. Of course it is correct. Very wise of you to see that. In that case, we'll divide our troops. The main force will proceed with occupying Galatea. We'll lead the remaining third south to Garigmach and continue our pursuit of Dimitri. There's no sign of them. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. Just thinking how the time has finally come. Scarlet Blaze. The Hour of Vengeance. It's over! Oh, how I've waited for this day. The day that I kill you! Run away while well, you can. You're free to try, but you won't get away from me that easily. I'll carve out your monstrous heart and put an end to the beast dwelling within. Your destruction is everything I've ever fought for. What happened to our mercenary friend and the Ashen Demon? They took the lead, did they not? Hmm. Strange. It is unlike them not to report back. Ill news, your majesty. Some kind of mages have assumed a battle formation up ahead and are poised to intercept us. Mages? It must be those who slither in the dark. But how? When they lack a proper army. There's something we're not seeing. Your Majesty, we've sighted our missing units in the middle of the enemy ranks. And I don't understand why, but they appear to be fighting each other. And that mercenary is clearly the aggressor. Hubert! So our cell sword has finally turned, eh? I hope we can solve this without violence, but if the worst should come to pass... You plan to kill her? But we've come all this way together. Perhaps I'm being soft, but I want to see how this plays out. Besides, we have to get to them first, and that means we must defeat the enemy. Leave this foul task to me, Edelgard. If our friend must be struck down, I will drop the blade quickly and with mercy. No, this task falls on my shoulders alone. Everyone stay on guard. We have no idea what's waiting for us. I will hunt you until my dying breath. Get back here! We have to reach them and put a stop what? to this madness! the slightest notion of what is going on. But I am happy to destroy them all! We must eliminate you. Gotta keep pushing myself. Those who slither in the dark, if we hope to clear a path to the mercenaries. See how those beasts crawl to the slaughter. Let me get you out of your misery, beasts. You're done! I'm tired of playing with you ingrates. Come on, snap out of it. Stay out of 
this. It does not concern you. This is like talking to a different person. I don't think we'll be able to reason our way out of this. Hang on, kid. I'm coming. I must move us away from all of these foolish distractions. What? They warped away! Rather than waste our time running in circles, we should direct some units to move in, while others lie in wait elsewhere. Why do you insist on interfering? More of a fight than I expected. Deploy the reserves. These fresh soldiers must be dealt with. Well, this is just delightful. That mercenary is. No, it cannot be. I'll not permit this chance to slip away. <laughs> Relentless. This is our what must I do to shake the man? The others should have been here by now. Something must be holding Edelgard up. Your Majesty, we've sighted Claude pursuing Dimitri here in the mountains. The two of them are nearby. We need to get those who slither in the dark out of the way so we can send our troops. I could take a lesson from your persistence. Not yet. I dislike ending things on a low note. As such, prepare to die! <clears throat> Let's get through this. Blade Breaker style! They consider them broken! Your guard is down! Watch this! How could I lose to beasts? I need 
need to get this flesh underground. So it's true. You really are from Shambhala. Forgive me for this soul. But without your sacrifice, this world can never be made clean. Oh, great Saharas. Veil of night fluttering in the abyss. By the laws of creation, throw wide your infernal gates and swallow my foes. Ever thought of maybe calling it a day? <sighs> You're a fine one to ask me that. Not a moment goes by without you on my tail. Hey, you stop running, I'll stop chasing you around. <sighs> Worth a try. It's a surprise to see you here, Dimitri. I wouldn't be, if Claude would simply deign to leave me alone. As if. You're the one who put yourself in this... <laughs> uh, this is... No! <clears throat> It has been a long, long battle. My race wavers at the brink of extinction. And so it falls upon me to reclaim this world, that what was stolen from my people might be theirs once more. Which is why I was born. Yes, I created you. The cycle of the world, the rehousing of souls, how desperately I sought this secret art. But it demanded precision. One defect, one essence wrongly transplanted, would lead to consequences most irreparable. I knew I must oversee the process myself in order to save my beloved people. When my consciousness first initialized, I was nothing. I remember the sound of water, of bubbles, the sound of a massive object slowly lurching along. I thought the noise would continue for eternity, but then, a change. Something gave way. The water began rushing rapidly. Pale shadows closed in around me. Amidst deafening sounds, I walked desperately in search of light. That was an unforeseen accident. I was sure all had been lost to the waters. It was fortunate I had created you, for you proved useful in a way I never expected. I am to become you. That's why I'm here. That's why I've been compelled to remove any obstacle in your way. Only by destroying the abomination inside the Ashen Demon can we bring salvation to the world. So you understand. Then return that body you two share to me. It pains me to do this to you, but alas, all was written from the beginning. Scarlet Blaze. Into the Chasm. Where am I? Let's hold off on the weapons for now, okay? Probably best you don't move at all, actually. Wait, Claude? Hold on. What are you all doing here? I have the same question. It appears we've been swallowed up by some kind of strange magic. That was your doing, wasn't it? <sighs> when we came to, we were sprawled on the ground here. Charming place, if you ask me. Have you truly forgotten everything? You transformed and began attacking your allies. Thankfully, we managed to knock you out and capture you. But soon you awoke and fled, 
Those who saw you said you were like a different person. Hmm. I guess that kind of rings a bell. The last thing I remember is Arval telling me to slay the Ashen Demon. At least, I think it was Arval. Arval? The voice in my head. We've known each other for a few years now. Uh... huh. Sounds pretty out there, right? This is why I never mentioned it. And you claim this Arval suddenly decided to turn on you? I know how it sounds, but... yeah. There are two things I can say for sure. The first is that Arval's magic is what dragged us all in here. And the second is that there's no one in my head anymore. How can you be certain? Because I don't feel them. At least, not in my mind. Arval's somewhere else now. Somewhere... distant. Well, that's vague. How are we supposed to make heads or tails of any of this? At any rate, you appear more like yourself again, which we can take as a positive sign. And I truly do want to believe you. At the very least, I hope you know a way out of this fathomless prison. About that, I know I said distant, but Arval's definitely here with us somewhere. If we can find them and figure out what magic they used on us, we might just be able to escape. That sounds wildly optimistic. It sure does. But considering we don't know a thing about this place, we might as well give it a shot. In that case, let's begin looking around and see if we can't find any clues to where we are. I have to say, this isn't how I imagined Fodlin's three most powerful leaders would be coming together. Indeed. I hesitate to even consider the look on Hubert's face right now. I don't think anyone's too worried about me, though. Vanishing without a word is kind of what I do. So much for being a reliable leader. Or perhaps it's the opposite, and your people think you reliable precisely because you always return. It must be nice having friends you can depend on to handle important matters in your absence. And it must feel lousy to realize no one wants to do your job, Edelgard. I'm glad to see your tongue remains as agile as ever. Let's try moving our feet instead, shall we? Hey, I can do both if you want. It's definitely not an either-or kind of situation. So, Edelgard, say the four of us get out of here in one piece. What are you planning to do about Dimitri? Maybe we should join forces and take them on together. You're such a bore sometimes, Claude. And is that a serious proposal? Hmm. Well, I suppose it would be easier for me if the kingdom stuck around. After all, I get the feeling that if we divide Fodlin between the Empire and the Alliance, I'll be the one holding the short end of that stick. Our goal is to deal with Rhea and the Central Church, not to unify Fodlin. You never have been one to mince words, have you? Well then, allow me to match your honesty. It would be more convenient for me if the kingdom ceased to exist. The Central Church has a much closer relationship with Fargus than with the other regions. Even were we to capture the Archbishop and force her to dismantle the upper echelons of the Church, it wouldn't be enough. The roots of that organization run deep. Hey, hold on. You're just looking to capture Rhea? You're not gonna, you know, get rid of her? Is it not enough to subdue a foe and remove them from power? I'm just surprised. I would have expected you to be more... thorough. And here I thought you wanted to pursue a peaceful solution. Hey, give me some credit. If I didn't like to rock the boat, Lester would have been swallowed up by the Empire ages ago. I have ambitions, Edelgard. Real ones. I won't go into details, but I'm definitely fighting to make them a reality. 
All that, and you're not planning to enlighten me? Unreliable and stingy. I, for one, have no qualms with telling you my ambitions. I seek to destroy the irrational power structure that shackles Fodlin. Just Fodlin, huh? Come again? Hey, don't get me wrong. That's a goal I can get behind. That's why we're working together. But I'd be grateful if my own ambitions can be fulfilled at the end of your path of conquest. I'd like to believe that is possible. At least for now, we can work together to achieve a common goal. And perhaps someday, our pact will become a more permanent one. I hope so, at any rate. Same here. But before that, we need to find a way out of this place. <sighs> Enough with the searching glances, Dimitri. Say what you're going to say. I was just thinking that I find it difficult to speak with you. Even now that we have the opportunity to exchange words peaceably. Too many have died for us to suddenly have meaningful heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Oh? That's not how I feel. Unless you mean you don't wish to speak with the tyrant you consider responsible for their deaths. In which case, let's just believe what we believe, accept that our paths have diverged and see this through to the very end. You're placing words in my mouth. Still, I suppose that does cut to the heart of the matter. I will not claim that all my choices were right, but I accept responsibility for them. I made them carefully and with full knowledge of the consequences. And I'd like to think I can say the same. But this is unproductive. We need to get out of here. Fair enough. But first, answer me this. Do you know what became of your mother and Selma? Why would I? Someone told me that you would know how she met her end. Although I suspect that was nothing more than the dying ravings of a madwoman. It was. I haven't seen my mother since I was a child. It would have been right before she was exiled. You would know what happened better than I. I suppose so. Regardless, thank you for answering. Now, shall we get back to finding our way out? Please, we can't resolve anything so long as we're trapped in this... was quite the tremor. Whatever this place is, I find myself liking it less by the moment. Can you stand? Yes, thank... <laughs> Perhaps we can put our differences aside, if only for the moment. The hostilities will do us no good here. Yes, I suppose you're right. I can agree to that. You know, I just remembered something, from back when I was but a child. I had fallen to the ground and was met with a kind hand reaching out to help me up. I took it without thinking, without even looking first to see who it was. I suppose that shows you how much I've grown. Uh, uh. Dimitri, what is it? I have a similar memory. One of helping a little girl who had fallen in the dirt. Knowing you, such occurrences would have been commonplace in your youth. Don't try to imply we share a memory. No, I rarely forget an important face. Often to my own woe, I might add. Enough. Let us end this before we both make greater fools of ourselves. We need to escape. That's our only priority. Edelgard, I... What are you doing? You should know I won't hesitate to leave you behind. Indeed. I'm coming, El. 
Yeesh. You can't tell forward from back in here. Let's try over that way, maybe? Good idea. It seems different from the rest of the void. Look out! So it failed. Has my skill degraded that sharply over the years? Arval. I have been searching for you. And look what you brought me. The three who fancy themselves sovereigns, ruling over that abomination's wretched spawn. What unexpected luck. I do hope you are all prepared to face death this day. So this is Arvel, is it? Undo this sorcery and return us from whence we came, demon. Oh, I do not think that will be happening. But even if I desire to accede to your wishes, the great forbidden spell of Zaharas is a one-way journey. None can escape this eternal darkness. I vote we kill this thing and see what happens. Who's with me? Something tells me they wouldn't lay this trap, only to suffer the same fate as us. If this being can free themselves from this void, it stands to reason that so too can we. Then try cutting me down if you like. Sadly, what you see before you is but an illusion. I have a task to fulfill, and once it is accomplished, I shall leave this place alone. Arvel, wait! What task are you talking about? Why did you use me? What are you trying to do here? Ah, but you are mistaken. I am not Arval. My name is Epimenides, an ordinary man who vowed to kill the beast which set the Earth ablaze. Do you not comprehend my purpose? I must save this world and its true people. That is why I chose to pass my consciousness down through the ages. And you, you are the vessel for that consciousness. What does that mean? I don't know what's going on, but I do know whoever that is needs to be stopped. And how far are you willing to go? Will you cut down your own friends to reach me? Hubert? No. It must be a double. If so, it's completely indistinguishable from the real thing. This is vile sorcery indeed. God, no! Don't do this! Don't believe you would hurt me! This is harder than I thought. I mean, how do we know for sure they're not real? The Emperor is before you. Deal the killing blow. You can't fool me. If it were real, we'd understand. Why are we consorting with the enemy? So he's right where you want him. Why are you... No. This is a deception. The man I know would never raise a weapon at me. Wait, that's it? So real. There. It's done. But steal yourselves. Don't know who will confront next. Are we being warped away? No. Space itself is distorting around us. Our surroundings have changed. This place is so twisted you can't even tell where you are. Aren't you sad for your comrades, murderers? There it is. There is your rage. Uh-oh. 
I can spot one fake, but how do I tell which Edelgard and Dimitri are on my side? Perhaps each of us should take on their own double to prevent confusion. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. This darkness is a mirror for the soul. And once a soul is imprisoned here, it is eternally severed from the real world. Just imagine how much easier our task will be with the two of us. A nice thought, yes. But I'm sad to say I fail to trust even myself. Why are you helping the Emperor, you wretch? You mourn your friends. Avenge them! It's a blessing I get to face you. There is truly no one I more desire to end. Stop playing the kind soul. Everything we've ever wanted is before us, right for the taking. If you're really me, then you already know why I'm doing this. I don't like leaving my fate up to luck. Leave it to me. I'll protect you. Clear the way! You got it, Adelgard! It's pleasant watching my own death. You got my back? Let us go together! We'll do it together! I've got you now! or no, I must thank our adversary for letting me experience that. Don't let anyone get away! We'll do it together! I feel like I just slew my twin brother. That's the last of the illusions. So it had seen. At least now we're certain they're not real. We can cut them down without mercy. Again? Please tell me we're gonna find that guy this time. Right. Let's get searching. Oh, but you four are a marvel. To think you are already adapting to this place. Now have the grace to lay down your lives and let the world you've torn apart heal. Now, when might I see the real sparks fly? Ah, there you are. My partner in destiny. You're not our boss. And even if you were, I'd fight you all the same. Not yet.
You fool! Why must you resist me so? You know my reason! The tomorrow we're fighting for! You are to me! It's incredible. Just how strong you've become. Orval. You have grown more than I ever thought possible. And yet... <sighs> I've never felt more alone. like we made it out in one piece. Are you sure about that? I still have no idea what's going on. Arvel, or Epimenides, I suppose, has vanished, and we've been returned to where we started. Perhaps we should just consider this a victory, an ironic one, as we achieved it by working together. Fair enough. So, what happens now? It would be foolish of me to permit either of you to leave this place alive. Yet without you, I'd still be in that prison. I'm not the type to dispose of someone the moment they stop being useful. That's not my style either. Momentary truce, then? Agreed. Let's consider all debts paid. But just to be clear, I crushed you once. And I can do so again. Sorry about that, Edelgard. I put you in a pretty bad spot back there. In truth, I can't say I much expected any of this. Still, it got us talking again, and that's gotta be worth something. Well, I should be off. I hope we can do this again sometime. The speaking part, anyway. I think I'll be on my way, too. My people are probably pulling their hair out by now. Until we meet again. Come, we're leaving. If my suspicions are correct, Garrig Mok is in grave danger. We need to hurry. Scarlet Blaze. A path forward. The Empire somehow manages to prevail over the Kingdom and Central Church's coalition, but Archbishop Rhea is nowhere to be found. Edelgard and the others soon realize the Archbishop aims to use Alel's secret trails to lead a surprise attack on Garrig Mach, so the Empire regroups and moves to intervene. Dire news, my lord! Ah, what now? What's happened? Another fire? Has a horse escaped? Don't tell me it's an assassin! Where's the body? Uh, no, my lord. Worse. There's a legion of soldiers closing in on Garrett Mach. We think it's the Knights of Seros. Ah, but we're safe in here, yes? My life is of great military importance, you know. Protect me! Put those troops Her Majesty sent to use! Count Varley, the enemy is inside the monastery. We couldn't hold them back. But these walls are thick! How did they breach them? The walls yet stand, my lord. But it appears they have made use of a number of unknown secret passages. Now they are inside and wreaking havoc, and it's only a matter of time before the monastery falls. We have the numbers to stop them, but that matters little if we don't know where they actually are. We must flee, my lord. All hope is lost. Urgent news, my lord. Spare my life, I beg you! 
An unknown army has appeared and started attacking the Knights of Saros. Her Majesty's reinforcements! Doubtful, my lord. This army wields large-scale magic and is also attacking the Imperial forces. The battlefield is sheer chaos. It's impossible to tell friend from foe. What in the blazes is happening? Church or Empire, I care not. Eradicate them all. Engulf them in our darkness. It will be done. At last we can finally give the foolish descendants of those beasts the lesson they deserve. We will expose their filthy underground resting place and steal every last one of their essences. If we can breach it. The hole in the forest that the bandits raided was secured with a seal. Shall we deal with it after we take the monastery? We tear this disgusting rat's nest apart. Lady Rhea, who are these people? They're attacking both sides indiscriminately. A clandestine organization that wields dark magic. Could it be? Have they returned to seek vengeance on Fodlan? But why show their hand now? Deal with them, Catherine. Not a single one of them can survive. They pose a far greater threat to our world than the Empire. Yes, Lady Rhea. Make way for Thunder Catherine! Clear a path or die! And that appears to be the current situation. The Knights of Saros are one thing. We came prepared to deal with them, and we can do so. But now you say those who slither in the dark have turned this into a three-way battle? Why? I am as baffled as you regarding a possible motive. Perhaps it was vital they seized the monastery before we could get here. If they knew we were engaged in a lengthy fight at ALL, they might have seen this as their chance. Well, they saved Count Varley's life either way. So be it. We will use this situation to our advantage and conduct a rescue. We can't afford to lose Garrick Mach or Count Varley. With one battle, we'll destroy the Central Church and put an end to those who slither in the dark. It's strange. I stopped caring about my father a long time ago, but the thought that he might die is... It's... He is not dead yet, Bernadetta. Unless you intend to be leaving him to his fates. No. No, of course not. I'm going to save him. If we're sloppy about this, we'll get dragged into the ongoing battle and suffer heavy losses. I would prefer to make this as easy for ourselves as we can. Let's find out what's going on in there, then look for the safest way in. I can tell you one thing. If Lord Arundel is here, I will choke the life out of him personally. I'll even let you watch, Your Majesty. Yes, just try not to overdo it. If that is settled, we will accomplish nothing more by brooding down here. Agreed. We'll begin the attack as soon as our preparations are complete. I want to apologize again. I'm really sorry. I can't believe I tried to kill you. It's alright. I know that wasn't really you. Still, the one who did it was a part of me. Literally. You asked me about this before about some mysterious presence within me. That's right. Well, sorry I couldn't give you a straight answer back then. Arval told me not to tell anyone. That's the name of the presence that was inside my head, by the way. The one that took control of my body and tried to kill you. Or maybe it was someone else entirely. The one that called himself Epimenides. Arvel and Epimenides, hmm? I wonder what manner of beings they are. 
beats me. And it's not like I can just go and ask them now. Honestly, I kind of wish I'd talk to Arval more now that I can't. That's how these things work, sadly. When you're ready to talk, the person you want to talk to is no longer there. But there's still so much I don't know. Remember how I got trapped inside that void with Edelgard and the others after our fight? That's when Arval used the name Epimenides, and then tried to kill us. Are Arval and Epimenides the same being? I'd like to think they're different, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Epimenides is just Arval's true identity. I don't know if they were just using me, or if they had some other goal in mind. All I've got are a bunch of mysteries that I'll probably never solve. I did notice one thing. What's that? It was when we were fighting, and you were being manipulated. It seemed like Arva was trying to keep your body from getting hurt. They could have fought more recklessly. I don't see why it would have made a difference to them, but they were making sure you weren't harmed. Seriously? Arval was protecting me? It's just a feeling I got, but yes, I think that could have been the case. I guess Arval's the only one who knows the truth. Or as the Saros folks say, only the goddess knows, right? But hey, thanks for telling me that. Really. It does make me feel better. I've got no choice now but to keep moving forward. Live out the destiny the two of us once shared. Funny. I came here to apologize, but you ended up cheering me up instead. I'll catch you later, okay? Only the goddess knows, hmm? Well, the goddess may have been the one telling you that. Uh, well, this is great. Having some trouble there, Gerald? I wanted to replace the clasp on my gauntlet, but I can't quite get the blasted thing to stay. Here, let me try. Oh, look at that. You got a real knack for these things. Thanks, kid. I'm surprised you've survived this long with those ham hands. Being a good mercenary isn't all about dexterity, you know. Besides, when you've lived as long as I have, your body just doesn't work as well as it used to. Trust me. You don't look that old to me. You can't judge a book by its cover. I might not look it. I'm practically an ancient tome. Not to mention I've lived pretty hard. Might just be a gut feeling, but... I've started feeling like the goddess might call me to her side before long. Come on, it's not like you're at death's door. Besides, you really think the goddess would be calling you of all people? You don't hold anything back, do you? If the goddess won't have me, then I'll just have to make do in hell. Do you think you'd have any regrets if you died right now? Not one. <laughs> Except maybe living too long. What about leaving your kid behind? Can't say I wouldn't be worried, especially because that kid isn't exactly normal. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I've never seen a power like that before. Not even generals with crests measure up. True. It's not like my training was all that rigorous either. But before I knew it, my kid had become the Ashen Demon. Just a personal quirk, I guess. Makes it tough to find friends, though. In that sense, I'm glad we're here. There's tons of young folks around. And maybe the kid will take a shine to you, since you're both mercenaries. Who knows? I've been hoping we could talk more, at least. Is that so? I'm glad to hear you say that. It takes a load off my mind. 
Now you really sound like a dad. I was never much of a parent, but I do worry all the same. You know, I think we were meant to end up on the same side. Can you do me a favor and look after my kid? When you put it that way, it really does sound like you're about to die. Hey, it's possible. Tomorrow's never guaranteed in this line of work. I meant what I said. Can I count on you? Yeah, sure. I'm not gonna refuse a dying man's wish after all. <sighs> you must be exhausted, Your Majesty. I was beginning to believe that council would never end. Should I make tea? Thank you, Monica. Why don't you join me? Oh, I would love to. I can hardly remember the last time I saw you rest. You need to stop overworking yourself. We can't afford for you to get sick. Her Majesty has invited me to tea and she's worried about my health? Oh, this is the greatest day of my humble life. Come now, I've always cared for your well-being. And it's not as if we never have tea together. Oh, I'm aware. This is the 253rd time you worried about me, and our 139th time sharing tea. I've been keeping a record on paper, and in my head. Now I'm even more concerned. Aw, thanks. I suppose it just shows how hard you work for me. I hope you feel I do enough in return. If there is anything you need, don't hesitate to ask. Truly? You'd really listen to my request? Your Majesty is actually willing to make Monica von Ox's impossible wish come true? Well, let's keep the wishes within the realm of the plausible, if you please. Alright. In that case, may I... Oh, this is so disrespectful. May I hold you in my embrace? Just for a minute? I... I don't see why not. What kindness! I promise to be even more loyal to you from now on, Your Majesty. As if such a thing were possible, you've given me more loyalty than I could ever rightfully expect. Oh, that reminds me. There is something I've been meaning to tell you. It seems as if you have been upset with yourself because you were planning to leave me for dead. But I just want you to know that had such events come to pass, I still would have died happy. I would have been at peace because I helped you achieve your vision. Well, I should go see to that tea. She really is something else. I knew she was strong. Yet she always finds new ways to surprise me. Thank you, Monica. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I suppose that will be enough for today. Splendid spear work. You are every bit the ideal of a nobleman. One who wields both lance and pen with equal aplomb. Hubert, as ever, you manage to materialize when one least expects it. If you insist on showing up in the middle of training, do not complain if you find yourself mistakenly skewered. Yes, accidents do so often happen during such exercises. Why, you could stab the life out of me here and now and still readily explain it away as a mere accident. Enough, Hubert. Even if you are joking. Although, I suppose it was I who first spoke flippantly. You have my apologies. I am ever at a loss to reply when you insist on apologizing so earnestly. In any event, your training has a certain ghastly quality about it of late. I found myself curious what it was that so impelled you and came to check on the situation. I should think it obvious. 
The climax of this war is upon us. Thus, I have to focus myself all the more and work vigorously toward ultimate victory. I do this for my comrades, for the Empire, and for a better future. And perhaps for your departed father? Why would you think that? The father I looked up to, the one who served as a pillar of the Empire, died long ago. The man we fought at Fort Mercius was nothing but a traitor who lost sight of how to live. At this point... Listen to me, Ferdinand. If you wish to deny my claim, just tell me I am mistaken. As they say, those who protest over much admit the truth unwittingly. That was not my intention. Yet I cannot deny there is a part of my heart which thinks exactly that. You have changed. Well, no. Your true nature has not changed a bit. You are stubborn as ever, but there now also exists a rather flexible side to your personality. And you never change. And have not since the days when I was an ignorant young man. Since that time, you have proceeded unerringly along this road at Edelgard's right hand. But now all walk that same path. And it is the two of you who stand at the vanguard. If you have something to say, dispense with the flattery and speak plainly. Fine. I mean to join you both at the forefront, so our Emperor will have loyalty at both her right and left. We shall be Hubert and Ferdinand, the twin jewels of the Empire. The twin jewels? Of the Empire! <laughs> uh, was it truly so amusing? I've been looking for you, Lin. Here you go. Ah, the notes from the War Council this morning. Thank you. Say, why do you always ask me to do this now? Well, you know the situation, so it just makes it easier. Especially now that I've had more projects dropped on my lap. They're projects that you yourself proposed. Besides, your handwriting is beautifully legible. Your way with words makes the material quite easy to digest. Really, it's delightful. If you think I'm going to keep being your scribe just because you compliment me, think again. Hello, Dorothea. How good to see you recovered. Yes, I'm better now, thanks. The fever's all gone. Though, I'm way behind on everything because of it, so if you'll excuse me, I need to get caught up. Here. Are these... notes? Wait, did you take notes for me the whole time I was recovering? Yes. I summarized any essential information I thought you might need. War councils, scouting reports, that kind of thing. So, this is your handwriting? Like, yours, yours. Why do you look so surprised? You do this exact same thing for me all the time. It's only natural that I'd step in for you during a time of illness. Huh. You really are a strange guy. You know that? You never want to do anything that takes even the slightest effort, even when someone asks. And yet you went to all this trouble for me. So, like I said, you're strange. And a little infuriating. If you say so. Personally, I think everything would be a lot easier if everyone behaved as I do. Actually, that would be great. Our war councils would take five minutes a day, tops. And be pointless. Most days we'd probably just have an empty room because no one bothered to show up. Oh no, it would absolutely be like that. You know, I feel like I understand you a little better. 
being understood sounds like a bother in its own right. Oh well, I suppose we'll cross that particular bridge when we arrive at it. But for now, I'm afraid I'm quite tired. Of course you are. Well, since I'm all better now, why don't you go ahead and sleep on my behalf? I'll take care of things while you do. Better not. You're still recovering. Oh, and I forgot to mention that I found people to handle all your assigned work. So, take a day off and enjoy a long nap, all right? I wish you were this nice on a regular basis. But despite that, you do have your charms. Hmm? I'm perfectly happy lacking charms, so don't bother looking for weird new ones in me. <sighs> okay, seriously. An opening! Be good, friend. I concede. Yes! I won! You didn't fight like yourself today, and I mean that in a good way. You fended off everything I had, then saw an opening at the last second and really showed me what's what. You turned my own height advantage against me. I never saw it coming. Yeah, it was quite the ending, all right. That said, it wasn't my idea to fight like that. Linhart mentioned it was the only way for me to beat someone with your height. Still, even if it wasn't your idea, you're the guy who put it into action. So no need to be humble. Puff that chest out for Linhart's sake. I'll do just that. But now I found myself with a new goal to worry about. This victory came from me getting outside advice. Next time, I want to win it all by myself. Hey, it's okay to have ambitions in junk, but... Look, if you ask me, I think there's more value in winning with someone than in smashing skulls alone. Wait, you do? Yep. When it comes to a fist, the more people behind the punch, the stronger it gets. Me, for example? I've got Holst backing me up. That guy's helped me tons of times in my life. You're old childhood friends, right? Sure are. We're two peas in a rotten pod. Although right now, each pea is off in a different place. But I know we'll see each other again somewhere down the road. Not a doubt in my mind. In that case... I guess Linhart is my host. We're the same, you and me. Warriors who fight with childhood buds backing up their fists. Except that our friends aren't the tiniest bit alike in terms of personality or military skill. Nothing wrong with that. It's natural for folks in different positions to have different ways of life. All you and I can do now is live life with everything we've got. If you train with all your heart, you can live and die without a single regret. Yeah, you're right. We've got nothing but fighting. So let's fight and fight and fight until this war is over. Oh, hang on, pal. I've got money and women to think about too, you know. And I've got martial arts, brawling, and hand-to-hand -hand combat to think about. That's all fighting! Thankfully, we're not too late. Count Varley is still holding strong. If the reports can be trusted, Rhea is here. And so is a mage that fits the description of Arendelle, which is to say, Talus. That puts our two biggest adversaries in one place. We should deal with them here and now. I suppose this is a fateful battle for you as well. Yeah. I know my power came from those slithering jerks, and I know they tried to manipulate me. But I still have so many questions about, well, everything else. And this might be my last chance to get some answers. 
I hope you do, or else Hubert might spend the rest of his life distrusting you. After what happened in ALL, he suggested disposing of you again. Not my favorite plan, to be honest. Looks like I'm gonna have to use this fight to clear my name. Indeed. I look forward to it. But just so you know, you've already proven that a dozen times over. Then I'm still a few dozen short. I gotta show you what the mercenary spirit's all about. This is my first time hearing of such spirit, but I'm eager to see it in action. Enough idle chatter, though. Everyone is in place. It's time to commence the final battle. We're gonna win. For you, for me, for all of us. And for a new Fodlin. One that'll go down in the history books as the best ever. It seems Rhea and Talus have both breached the monastery. And for the sake of Fodlin's future, we will make it there too. The barriers conjured by the enemy will hinder the movement of our troops. Then we've no choice but to proceed in two groups. Take care that neither one is wiped out. There are the reinforcements! No, I don't want to die! We should rescue Count Farley if at all possible. It will not be easy to find another man to wear the lead. A new path has been cleared. Let's take it. They've broken through the walls? No! Send reinforcements at once! I am the Bishop of the Southern Church, and you are obligated to protect me! Now do so, and be quick about it! Some help, Monica? For you, Lady Edelgard! I'll be sure to return the favor! Get out of my way! The Southern Church's bishop is an enemy of the goddess and must be destroyed. Deploy magic to attack Count Farley from below. Can it be good? You honor your humble servant with this daring rescue, Your Majesty. I am your man. Grand display of sympathy for my plight. I suspect you abandoned the monastery just so you might coward here. But I will have your full explanation once time allows. Why? I mean, of course I am. My death would be a crippling blow to the Empire. The man is in court. Someone keep an eye on him. We're not out of the woods yet. The enemy's wretched mage there has conjured barriers that are hampering my escape! I mean, my ability to fight! There must be a sorcerer or someone cute. Let us smite him and his magic here and now. I hope that keeps Count Varley safe. Imperial dogs, stop interfering and learn your place. An ambush? I should have known things would not be as simple as they seemed. Where is the perfect place to unleash my secret weapon? Let fly the arrows! Not. Coming from. Ah! Let us rain carnage on them. <laughs> it will be nothing so boorish. This is war! Goodness me. Only the Count still had some fight left in him. I may be a bishop, 
but I still know when to stay the hand of mercy. I am above such games. Where did he go? We need to dispel those barriers at once. If he retreated to the upper floors, I do not see how we can reach him. But there must be some way around the barriers. We've received multiple reports of enemy troops appearing out of thin air. Perhaps they have some sort of warping device. That certainly sounds likely. We should check every hiding place we can think of. I have seen such warping devices beneath the monastery. They are controlled by a separate mechanism located elsewhere. Then we need to find that, too? Ugh. from reaching Lady Rhea. And now the Imperial reinforcements are closing in. Well, I'll just have to go intercept them myself. I don't have any interest in exchanging words with you. You attacked us. And that's all I need to know. to be your sword. That must be the control device. Try to activate it. Does this mean we can warp now? Let's use the device to go after that dark mage! Come, Hubert! Let us show these knaves the power of the Twin Jewels! My turn! The Twin... What? Now see here. If you desire my assistance, you can start by doing away with the strange epithets. Not be caught off guard. Good. The device works. <laughs> My sin is in danger. Help them. Let us rain carnage on them. <laughs> there will be nothing so forest. This is war! before we take any more casualties. So this is where I expire. I pray you might finish what must be done, Thomas. The dark barriers have vanished. Now we can join our forces. The twin jewels are well, I admit the two of you do shine together. I knew you would understand. Now, please remind me that at every opportunity. That dark magic has dissipated. No! I mean, strategically retreat! It's not over. Take a breather. About time! I'll fight until my dying breath to protect Lady Rhea. Cyril, the wound 
burdens you carry. Please be safe. As the goddess is my witness, this is as far as you go! Annihilate them and reclaim all that is ours! Don't stop now! Not when the future we seek is within our grasp! We can't use these ourselves, hmm? What a bother. I'll give you ten times the pain you inflicted on Lady Rhea! No one does not know the meaning of the word surrender. Let's do it, Petra! I am meeting your strength, Casper. I got more than enough to go around! Out of my way! I hope that was enough to save her. The way to the monastery is clear. This is the moment we've been fighting for. Rhea and Talus will be waiting just ahead. It's a boon that the Empire's two greatest enemies are both within striking distance, yet we mustn't forget they are capable of anything. This situation could very quickly become dire. No kidding. We're talking about the heads of the Church and those who slither in the dark. I hope you are all mentally prepared. Because once this begins, we cannot afford to waste even a second. Lady Edelgard, we await your command. Through some strange twist of fate, we find ourselves capturing Garrick Mok for the second time. Our first victory signaled the start of the war, and today's victory will be a giant step toward ending it. Today, together, we usher in a new era. And at the end of this path lies our future. The time is now. All Imperial forces, advance! Come on, victory's nearly ours! <laughs> You ignorant fools dare stand against me? Your reckoning has come, Thomas. Now you will pay for all that you did to my father and the Empire. The enemies that remain are undeserving of human works. On your command, we will purge them with fire. Sure to return the baby. Get out of my way. I no longer care. For the sake of my people, you must die. Well, you should care. Because I'm the one who's gonna kill you. I won't allow it. We dispelled the darkness. Now all that remains is Rhea. No matter how many years pass, you people will always be little more than fools. Return the land you stole from us! Judge you! Sorry, but I think I'd rather fight you instead. I will correct the mistake I made when I took you in by ending your life. You must not fall here. You boast blood of the Hrespas and the heart of a traitor. 
Your sins run deeper than all others. I wear my sins proudly, for they are the reason I fight to free Bolin from the goddess's so-called judgment. You have left me with no other choice. Watch over me, mother. So be it. I will crush you where you stand! Can shapeshift too? That form. Then you are the Immaculate One. So be it. Today we destroy you and secure our future. to die here after all lost drops. Just you wait, Father. I'm going to distinguish myself and return home a hero. Let us rain carnage on them. <laughs> there will be nothing so boring. This is war! I am Petra McMillan, Queen of Bridges. I honor my pact by fighting with the Empire. Take a breathe. This will be amazing! We will prevail today, even if it costs me the life that Her Majesty so graciously saved. I am needing your strength, Caspar. I got more than enough to go around! Out of my way! I Take pray a this fight is the one that ends this wretched war for good. Well, I suppose I can allow myself one day of truly giving my all. We will never yield to you, no matter how large or powerful you might be. I won't keep attacking, but you can pretend I'm not here. Onward to victory and glory! Your strength! Huh? Ah! You got it! Let's go! I've got you now! Stolen from us! I will destroy you by my own hand! We will surpass you both and move forward! I don't know what the future holds, but we're not gonna stop until we claim it! Together, everyone! Let's finish this! Carry on for the sake of my mother's fallen comrades. <laughs> I will not allow- 
allow you to sully this sacred place! Then die along with it! There's no way they could have survived that. Well then, just one thing left. Must we do this now? <sighs> but I suppose you earned it. Just this once. At last, Fodlin has been freed from that which bound it. Today marks a momentous new chapter in its history. And we shall be its authors. It is now 1183, Blue Sea Moon. The Empire has freed Garig Mach and put the Knights of Seros and those who slither in the dark to rout. Amidst the fighting, Archbishop Rhea and Tallis both go missing. With no one to lead, the central church's influence wanes, and those who slither in the dark vanish. As the Empire and the Leicester Alliance reaffirm their friendly relations, Edelgard prepares for her final battle with the kingdom, determined to see her vision made real. What an adventure we've had. Hard to believe it all started with one little dust up in the woods. We've seen each other through so many battles, and yet I know we've got a lot more to go. Chances are I'll stay and fight for this place, but don't hold it against me if I slip away from time to time for an adventure of my own. And while my future isn't set in stone, I know one thing for certain. Right here, right now,